In this world, students have to hold an egg in class, and at night, they even hatch the egg in their blankets while sleeping. Once successfully hatched, a powerful beast that matches them well will be formed. They can then become a beast tamer and enjoy special privileges. For example, they can choose not to do the homework assigned by the teacher. During summer vacation, they can even rest for an extra half year compared to other classmates. But other people's eggs are colorful, and some even have patterns. While mine looks plain and gray, just like a stone, classmates mock me, saying it's a bad egg and that it won't hatch into a pet at all. But only I know. Compared to those flames, red, and ice blue, my colorful gray one is the coolest, not only having 50 more health points than others, but also the most amazing thing is its unlimited potential for growth. There are no limits. With such an amazing egg, even if someone says I got it for free, I wouldn't mind, due to the extremely high price of the eggs. So almost all the students who have eggs at school come from wealthy families. As a child from an ordinary family like me, the only way to get an egg is through the black market, and the quality cannot be guaranteed, mainly through opening a blind box. That day, when my desk mate Lee Hui and I went to the black market to choose the eggs, as soon as I placed my hand on that plain gray egg, a series of information flashed through my mind. Demon domain type, SSS level beast egg with unlimited growth potential, blood value 98. At that moment, I was stunned for a full 10 minutes. As is well known, the information about a beast egg can only be known after it is bound by a contract with its owner, and only the owner knows it. But now, I just touched it lightly and could directly see all the information about the beast egg. Suppressing the excitement in my heart, I knew that I had awakened some kind of special ability. But what excited me even more was that with a casual touch, I actually touched a super SSS level demon egg. You should know that the most powerful ones on the entire blue star are only S level. To avoid letting the boss see through my thoughts and deliberately raise the price, I calmly picked up a nearby beast egg and asked the boss, are all the beast eggs at this stall the same price? I'm interested in buying. The boss, with a cheerful smile, came over and said, yes, 5,000 each, fair and square. Then, I pretended to be indifferent on the surface, looking at this and that. Finally, I picked up the least conspicuous SSS Extreme Demon Egg, as if making a big decision, and said to the boss, just this one. Just then, I suddenly caught sight of the boss's face, which changed from calm to ecstatic. I couldn't help but be surprised. Could the system have made a mistake in its evaluation? Coincidentally, at that moment, a passerby looked at the beast egg I was holding in my hands and couldn't help but sneer. No one wants such a stinky egg, and yet there are still fools willing to pay for it. I pretended to be about to put the egg back. The boss got anxious when he heard that. Hey, young man, don't listen to that nonsense. This egg of mine is a real treasure. Ask around in the black market. How could I, the one-eyed dragon, sell you a rotten egg? I told the boss that the guy just now called it a rotten egg, he repeated it three times. He saw me saying that, but didn't show any intention of putting the rotten egg down. He finally understands. I was trying to lower the price. In the end, the boss waved his hand and let it go. How about this, if you buy this mythical beast egg, I'll throw in an extra one for you. I was determined to get this beast egg in the first place, and now I can get another one for free. It was already 2am when I got back home from the black market. I couldn't wait to take out the beast egg and perform the contract binding. When the blood dripped onto the mythical beast egg, the intricate patterns floated on the shell. In a daze, I felt a crack deep in my spirit. An invisible thread connected me and the beast egg. With the successful contract binding, the enhancement followed. Congratulations, host. Successful contract binding. Special reward of 15 free attribute points. I wasn't sure how to allocate these points. After thinking for a while, I called my classmate. If I want to allocate attributes to my beast egg, which value should I prioritize? Li Hun answered without hesitation, it must be added to the HP value. Although the higher the racial value, the greater the increase in various values in the presale, racial value can only be improved during the presale upgrade. Moreover, attribute points cannot be added to the racial value. The racial value of ordinary beast eggs is around 50 points, and the corresponding HP value is also around 50 points. At this point, I became even more puzzled. He said that the racial value is generally around 50, but my beast egg has a terrifying racial value of 80 points, already leading most others at the starting line. Just as I was about to allocate the only 15 attribute points to the equipment value, I was suddenly stopped by an inexplicable force. As the host with the most awesome cultivation system, Ding can directly allocate attribute points to the racial value, and all other attributes will be correspondingly improved. With this kind of cheat, it's truly extraordinary. With the increase of 15 racial points, the HP value and other attributes have also increased by 15 points, especially the HP value, 
which has soared to 113 points. The next day at school, the teacher had us, students who had successfully contracted with the beast, undergo an HP value test. Normally, the HP value of those who have just successfully contracted is around 70. To avoid shocking the teacher and my classmates, I only used about 60 to 70% of my strength during the test, yet even so, I easily reached 80. As a result, I instantly became the center of attention in the class. The class beauty, Chen Sisi, couldn't wait to sit beside me and quietly asked, Pang Zun, how did you manage to increase your HP value so much? I stared at him intently and then casually said, last night, I watched a movie with my skinny egg. The next morning, my energy and blood inexplicably increased. You know, energy and blood are related to the human body and exercise. Chen Sisi is no ignorant little girl. After hearing my explanation, her tender face blushed, but she eagerly tried to increase her energy and blood, then asked softly if it was true. Of course, I said. After school, I'll take you to my house and teach you how to do it myself. Hearing this, Chen Sisi was overjoyed. She nodded eagerly and said, I'll definitely come tonight. At that moment, the head teacher walked into the classroom and announced, Today's lesson is to visit the excellent students in the next class and see how they cultivate beast eggs. You all should observe and learn carefully. Jian Peng, the top student in class 4, is a second-generation rich kid. It is said that his family spent over a million to buy him an S-grade beast egg. But as soon as we arrived at the breeding room of class 4, seeing Jian Peng's beast egg soaking in nutrient solution, I couldn't help but chuckle. Because when I stared at this beast egg, a row of information that only I could see appeared before my eyes. Red Rock Dragon Beast Egg Level, also known as Imperial Beast Egg, has the highest potential of S-grade, but its condition is extremely poor. The Red Rock Dragon cannot absorb the nutrient solution, which may be a chronic poison for it. The correct way to cultivate it is to roast the Red Rock Dragon Beast Egg over a fire to improve its quality to S-grade. Successfully hatched in advance, the current vitality value is 103 points. But the students in our class all looked envious. You see, the nurturing solution is very expensive. It's because of Jianping's high-quality beast egg. He's able to hatch it for free using the nurturing solution provided by the school. At this moment, Chen Sisai sighed and said, it would be great if my beast egg could also be nurtured here. Unexpectedly, this remark provoked Jianping. Look at yourself. My dad is the owner of the breeding center. It's because of my S-class breeding beast egg that I got this opportunity. But Chen Sisai is not the type to give up easily. She immediately retorted, just because you can't, doesn't mean I can't. What's with your arrogance? Relying on his family's wealth, Jianping is used to being domineering in school. Unable to bear what others said, he rolled up his sleeves and immediately shouted at Chen Sisai, What, do you want to fight me? I forgot to tell you, I have a full 103 points of vitality. Are you sure you want to fight me? Hearing this, Chen Sisai lowered her head with unwillingness in her heart. She knew she was definitely not Jianping's match. At that moment, she felt her small hand being held by a large palm. I stood in front of Chen Sisai, looking at Jianpeng mockingly. How impressive, 103 points of vitality. I was about to stand up for Chen Sisai and demand justice. At this moment, Jianping's homeroom teacher walked over and said that the vitality detector assigned to the class has a lower version, and the detected values will have a larger error. The precise detector at the hatching center provides the most accurate data. He found out from our head teacher that my initial equipment was over 80 and he also wanted to take this opportunity to see how high my actual data really is. When the students from our class and the students from the neighboring class 4 were all present, Jian Peng was the first to reach out to the detector. He started exerting force, and on the precise blood and energy detector, the number began to soar in an instant, eventually stabilizing at 105. The students in our class all looked very grim, because currently, it seems that only Chen Sisi has the highest blood and energy value in our class, but there is indeed a significant gap between her and Jianpang. This not only made his head teacher very proud, even the school leaders praised and applauded him. Next, it was Chen Sisi's turn to go for the test. He exerted all his strength to unleash his blood and energy, and in the end, the blood and energy value remained at 86, ranking him second in the school, just below Jianpang. But he couldn't be happy at all, because a month ago, his blood and energy value had already reached 86, which means there had been no improvement at all for a whole month. After that, Chen Sisi quietly started crying. He had always worked very hard, but his family didn't have enough money to support him in buying expensive nutritional fluids. Otherwise, he could have reached nearly 100 by now. And just at that moment, when my gaze fell on Chen Sisi's beast egg, the most suitable way to nurture his beast egg appeared in my mind. I never thought that the karmic system would tell me that Chen Sisi's beast egg needs powerful force to slam it, and the harder it slammed, the better the effect. 
But if I were to tell him this, I don't know if Chen Cici would kill me. It's my turn to be tested now. In order to uphold the honor of our class, I held nothing back this time. The moment my energy burst forth, everyone present was suddenly shocked. When I quietly asked what my energy level was, the head teacher, with a trembling voice, slowly said, Xu Yen, your energy level has reached an astonishing 113 meters. Chen Cici was the first to recover from the shock and excitedly grabbed my hand, cheering nonstop. Just then, a voice of dissent was heard. Don't think that having a high energy level makes you powerful. Without enough resources to nurture the beast egg, it might not even hatch. Just the nutrient solution alone costs 100,000 per barrel. These words were spoken by Jin Peng from class 4, who felt unbalanced upon seeing my energy level higher than his. Seeing Jin Peng's distressed look, I grinned and said, let me tell you a secret. Do you know why your originally S-level beast egg is now only A-level? The expensive nutrient solution you bought is actually useless, it's having a negative effect. You might as well find a place to roast the beast egg over a fire. I knew that even if I told him the correct way to nurture the beast egg, this bizarre method would only make Jin Peng think I was mocking him. Sure enough, I saw my friend getting angry. The school leaders around us sensed that something was amiss and immediately walked over. The principal, smoothing his own silky bald head, looked at me and asked, Xu Yen, your energy level can rise to such a high degree. Can you share how you nurture the beast egg? If you want to share, go ahead. If not, I won't force you. Different pre-sales involve different methods of nurturing pre-sale eggs. If the nurturing is lacking, it may not grow at all for a month. Just like Chen Cici. When the principal asked this question, everyone present perked up their ears, even Jianping, who had been looking proud just a moment ago. Amidst everyone's eager anticipation, I casually tossed the beast egg into the sink when I spoke. It couldn't be considered nurturing at all. But judging from their expressions, it was obvious that they hadn't washed it at all. They unanimously thought I didn't want to speak, and that was the truth. An SSS-level beast egg doesn't need any special nurturing methods. Allowing it to develop naturally is the best approach. Seeing the situation, the principal didn't say more. Xu Yen, your blood energy value has reached 113 points. Would you be willing to join the seed plan? The principal's voice had just fallen. The homeroom teachers of our class and the adjacent class, as well as the surrounding leaders, were suddenly struck as if by lightning. They stood motionless, their faces contorted, as if they had heard something extremely terrifying. It was the first time I had heard this term, and I couldn't help but feel curious. The onlookers also had a look of confusion. The principal explained that the seat plan is aimed at preparing for the martial arts school joint exam of five key high schools. Our school will gather students with higher talents for concentrated training and will also receive corresponding resource support from the school, striving to enable more of our students to excel in the martial arts school joint exam. Those who enter the top 10 in the joint exam can receive a pre-sale skill book, and the exam is exactly one month away from now. However, just as my classmates looked at me with envy, I refuse to participate in the seed plan, but I will take part in the five school joint exam a month later. The main reason for not participating in the plan is that I am afraid the school will take away my beast egg. The reason I chose not to participate in the seed plan is not just the 50,000 yuan registration fee, but more importantly, I firmly believe that the school's nurturing method is definitely not as amazing as the system. And every time my wealth increases by 10,000, I can exchange for some freedom attributes in the system, so now my goal is to make as much money as possible. With the system's ability to analyze the optimal way to cultivate any beast egg, this alone is enough for me to make a huge profit. With this in mind, I asked the school for a week off, planning to make good money during this time. As a result, my decision made me appear unambitious in the eyes of the class monitor, Chen Cici. On the contrary, I am very disappointed in you. You know how important the seed plan is for ordinary families like us. You actually gave up like this. We had agreed that I would guide you on pre-sale knowledge, but seeing you looking unambitious, I feel it's no longer necessary. Chen Cici's face was puffed up, as if greatly wronged. I didn't expect that she would be angry about such a thing. In that case, forget it. I was originally planning to use my secret of blood growth to exchange for your help in guiding me on the basics of pre-sale. Originally, Chen Cici, who was full of resentment, was stunned when she heard my words. In the end, she couldn't help but feel tempted and said, okay, it's a deal. I'll come to your house tonight, then blushed and walked away quickly. I arrived at the most luxurious commercial street in Jinling, set up a simple stall, and hung a banner with pre-sale cultivation, ask if you don't understand, fair prices, no deception. But unexpectedly, from the afternoon until evening, not a single customer came. Just as I was about to close up and go home, a pair of twin sisters came to the stall. Among them, the colder-tempered woman took out a ball from her pocket. 
Sir, my beast egg has been acting strangely recently. Could you please take a look and see what's wrong? When I saw the beast egg handed over by the woman, I was surprised. It was definitely a third order green beast egg worth over 2 million in the market. Upon closer inspection, these two sisters had extraordinary temperaments. At first glance, they were obviously the daughters of a wealthy family. No more idle talk. I placed my hand on the girl's beast egg, and the moment I touched it, all the information appeared in my mind. Ancient Frostbird, Ice-type beast with S-level talent, cultivation direction, feeding ice blocks can help the Frostbird quickly reach level 10, with 120 HP, currently in an abnormal state. Due to excessive absorption of nutrient solution during hatching, it has caused a buildup in the body, damaging the Frostbird. It must be immediately placed in a low-temperature environment and frozen for three days to fully recover. As I put down the beast egg and pretended to be knowledgeable, and disclosed the cause of the Frostbird's abnormality, as soon as these words were spoken, the aloof girl's beautiful eyes lit up. Previously, she had naively believed that nurturing a beast egg was a matter of sentiment, so she had spent a lot of money buying a pile of nutrient solutions. But who knew, the condition of the Articuno behind got worse and worse. The people at the pre-sale center said it wouldn't survive more than three days. We searched all the pre-sale hospitals in the entire Linhai city, but to no avail. This time they came to me, treating it as a last resort. Unexpectedly, I hit the nail on the head and pointed out the answer he wanted. The man looked at me with anticipation and asked, Sir, please tell me, how should I treat it now? I can offer any reward. I still maintained a mysterious look and slowly said, The solution for this bird is actually simple. It just needs to be summoned. Then put it in an extremely cold environment and freeze it for three days, and it will recover on its own. The girl was puzzled and asked, An extremely cold environment? Should I go to the North Pole or the South Pole? Is this the mindset of the wealthy? I decided not to pretend anymore and casually said, No need for all this trouble, just put it in your home's large refrigerator, that will do. Little did I know, after saying this, the girl's face instantly turned dark, Sir, are you trying to fool me? I'm the Euro, and I can't stand people like you who deceive others. I spent nearly 3 million on this Pokemon egg. Can you take responsibility if something goes wrong? I didn't expect that telling the truth would make people even more disbelieving. Seeing E. Euro getting angry, I quickly blurted out a series of information, Articuno, Ice-type, Legendary Pokemon, Cryogonal 120, Base Stat 50, as a series of numbers burst out of me. Just as Ye Euro was about to get angry, she stood there in shock. And Ye Yusin, who was beside her, was even more surprised. Miss Kai, how could you tell all the data of the Articuno to the swindler? The pre-sale data is extremely confidential for a pre-sale agent. It's not something people would easily disclose. Even parents wouldn't know, apart from the individual themselves. However, at this moment, Yi Euro did not answer her sister's question. Instead, she took out a bank card and handed it to him. Then, without even caring about her sister and still holding the beast egg, she ran outside to the Phoenix Commercial Street. Judging from the look of the other person, it seemed like he already believed what I said. But the next second, I suddenly realized that he hadn't told me the password yet. I turned the card over and saw a faint line of words in the lower right corner. It read Ye Family, Ye Euro, 775-8258. At that moment, I never expected that a small bank card would bring him so much trouble. When I returned home after closing the stall, Chen Cici and Tang Yi were sitting on the sofa chatting. This big mouth of his actually told Tang Yi about me rejecting the seed plan during the day. Tang Yi was my parents' colleague. Since the year my parents both passed away due to a work injury, Tangy saw me become an orphan and moved in with me. Her care for me can be described as meticulous. Now, seeing me come back, she questioned whether my refusal to participate was due to money. I glared at Chen Cici, blaming her for being talkative, because if Tangy knew, she would definitely help me raise the money. So, I quickly took out the card that Yi Euro had given me. Tangy, this is the money I earned from doing business, so I won't participate in this plan. It really isn't because of the money. Tangy saw the situation and didn't say anything more. I didn't expect her to completely misunderstand my meaning, thinking that I didn't go to school to earn money because I was short of money, and she secretly made a decision. The next day, the school invited a first-class sun beast master to come and tell us about the new properties of the beast eggs. Just then, the classroom door was suddenly pushed open, and then a group of fully armed special police rushed in. Then the leading captain shouted, Who is Xu Yen? Come with us. The security bureau is the armed force of Linhai City and there are some outstanding beast tamers among them. Trying to escape from them is undoubtedly a fool's errand. Xu Yen didn't resist at all and let these people take him away. Xu Yen didn't say anything, but the students who witnessed the scene started whispering and discussing Xu Yen. 
It was not a trivial matter for one's fellow student to be taken away by the police, especially when the person taken away was Xu Yan, who had been in the limelight these past two days. Could it be a fight? It feels like it might be related to some case. People were discussing, and at this moment, Class 4 monitor Zhou Ping threw out a speculation that made everyone uncertain. Xu Yan's qi and blood have improved so quickly, he might have used some forbidden drugs. That's why he was caught after being so arrogant for just two days. He's really unlucky. Zhou Ping shrugged, with a look of disdain on his face. Other students looked at Zhou Ping, then at the school teacher. Some curious and bold students couldn't help but ask Fang Wen, who was on the platform, Teacher Fang, are there really forbidden drugs like what Zhou Ping said? Indeed there are, but Xu Yan shouldn't have access to such things. The people from the security bureau probably found him for other reasons. Fang Wen pondered for a moment, neither denying nor confirming. However, his words sounded to the students as good as an admission. After all, at this age, few would admit to being inferior to others. The thought of Xu Yan surpassing them in a short time by using forbidden drugs turned the admiration of the crowd into ruthless disdain and mockery. How could someone who relied on external substances be a match for them? The proud sons of heaven who had worked hard and steadily. Old man, what's going on? Xu Yan has been with me these past two days, where would he find the time to buy forbidden drugs? Could it be a mistake by the security bureau? Chen Cici found the old man Lu, asking anxiously. Perhaps because she thought Xu Yan might be similar to herself, Chen Cici didn't believe that Xu Yan could have access to the so-called forbidden drugs, so she found the homeroom teacher to try to defend Xu Yan. However, the expression on the old man Lu's face was extremely grim. He knew quite well about Xu Yan becoming a beast tamer. Xu Yan's beast taming egg was purchased in the black market, a lawless place, who knew if he had bought other forbidden drugs or the like. Cici, don't worry about this matter. Take the students back to the classroom, I'll go find Director Wang to ask about the situation. After instructing, the old man Lu walked towards Director Wang. Xu Yan was his student in class 10, so he had to clarify things. Rewind to an hour ago. Linhai City, below the headquarters building of Tianhai Construction Group. After the security guard called Manager Zhou and explained the situation, he soon received instructions from Manager Zhou to let Tang Rou in. Manager Zhou instructed me to let you in, so solve the matter quickly. If you don't come out in an hour, I'll come in and drag you out. Thank you, thank you, big brother security guard. Tang Rou politely thanked the security guard before hurrying into the group. She had worked here before, so she was familiar with the place, and in no time, she arrived at manager Zhou's office door. Knock 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 come in. Tang Rou pushed the door open and immediately saw manager Zhou, wearing gold-rimmed glasses, sitting at the desk. Manager Zhou, long time no see, how is the work injury compensation for Xiaofan's parents going? Tang Rou's tone was very polite, not aggressive, and her calm tone made it hard to detect any emotional fluctuations. Tang Jia, why are you here again? Didn't I say the company is having financial problems recently and it will take two months to resolve? But Tang Jia, our Tianhai Construction Group is a prestigious company in Linhai City, would we make things difficult for you, a worker? We can't afford to lose this person by talking about this matter. You can rest assured. Manager Zhou, wearing gold-rimmed glasses, pushed his glasses and patiently explained to Tang Rou. But this has been dragging on for several years. Xiao Fan is going to participate in the Imperial Beast examination this year. I can't delay him. Manager Zhou, think of a way, urge them. You don't have to give it all at once, just give three to five thousand as emergency funds. Tang Rou's tone became somewhat unyielding. The compensation for the delay was too long. She knew that the hope of getting compensation was slim, but after hearing about Xu Yan's talent to become an Imperial Beast Master, Tang Rou felt that she had to try no matter what. Tang Rou, it seems you completely misunderstand my meaning? The group is currently working on projects for the Yi group and cannot come up with so much money. If you want money, you just have to wait patiently. Manager Zhou's limited patience was wearing thin. Tang Rou's face changed slightly. Manager Zhou, what do you mean? He, Tang Rou, don't think I'm afraid of you just because I call you Tang Jie. Listen to my advice, that bastard has nothing to do with you. I will personally compensate you with 50,000 yuan. This matter ends here. Don't bother me anymore. And don't think about standing up for that bastard. The manager was furious in his heart, apparently annoyed by Tang Rou's persistence. Manager Zhou, what do you mean? The compensation from Xiao Fan's parents adds up to over a million. Why are you only giving 5,000? You think I don't know what you're thinking? You just have your eyes on the Jung family's million yuan compensation, right? You, this despicable woman, now crawl over and kneel at my feet. How much do you want? I'll give you. Manager Zhou no longer pretended. His gloomy gaze looked at Tang Rou with disdain. Tang Rou was about to go crazy from manager Zhou's vulgar words. She touched the recording pen hidden in her pocket, then sighed heavily, fine. 
50,000 it is, help me transfer the money to this card. Tang Ro took out the bank card Xu Yan gave her and handed it to manager Zhou. Hat, calling you a despicable woman is indeed fitting, as soon as money is mentioned, you can't walk away, truly an animal. Considering your good looks, are you interested in being my lover? I'll give you 20,000 yuan pocket money every month. Manager Zhou greedily scanned Tang Ro's enchanting body. Even though Tang Ro was dressed very modestly today, the visible roundness and curves still made manager Zhou react. Disgusting. Hurry up and transfer the money to the card, if you dare to have any evil thoughts, I'll call the police immediately. A whore still wants to set up a memorial arch, hee <laughs> hee. Tang Ro's reaction was within manager Zhou's expectations. She only reacted this way because she thought the money was too little. She would have a chance to deal with her properly sooner or later. With this in mind, Manager Zhou picked up the bank card Tang Ro handed over. Just by looking at the bank card, Manager Zhou was stunned. Where did you get this exclusive bank card for Imperial Beast Masters? This black and white gold card is specially issued by Zhang Jian Bank for use by first-tier Imperial Beast Masters and above, how did it end up in your hands? Although Manager Zhou was not an Imperial Beast Master, the boss of Tianhai City Construction Group was. Having been around the boss for a long time, Manager Zhou naturally understood some privileges of Imperial Beast Masters. Today, Tang Ro actually took out a black gold card that a commoner like her level couldn't have, which startled Manager Zhou. However, Manager Zhou immediately understood, this black gold card should not belong to Tang Ro, she might have picked it up on the roadside or stolen it? This is getting interesting. Manager Zhou chuckled, then ignored Tang Ro's puzzled look and directly dialed the phone number of the Public Security Bureau. At noon. Inside the interrogation room of the Linhai City Public Security Bureau, Tang Ro, who had just finished recording her statement, was temporarily left in the room. M.S. Tang, the matter of the black gold card is not trivial. I hope you can understand and cooperate with our work. Comrade, is there a problem with this card? It's really just something I picked up on the street. I really don't know anything about this card. Tang Ro's eyes were a bit moist, with a hint of evasion, confusion, and unease in her gaze. Obviously, she had never expected that a simple bank card would prompt the intervention of the Public Security Bureau. Of course, Tang Ro's biggest concern at the moment was not her own situation. The bank card was given to her by Xiao Fan. So where did he get this bank card from? Could it be related to the Beast Master, to crime? She couldn't reveal the fact that Xiao Fan gave her the card no matter what. Tang Ro gritted her teeth inwardly, and suddenly someone pushed the door open and placed several papers in front of Tang Ro. Xu Yen? Is he also one of the people who had contact with this black gold card? Let's bring him to the Public Security Bureau first. Oh no, this is really bad. When Tang Ro heard Xu Yan's name mentioned, she closed her eyes in pain. Before long, Xu Yan was brought by several police officers into a separate interrogation room. There was no sunlight in the interrogation room, and Xu Yan could only see the light from a desk lamp placed in front of him, unable to see anything else. Shortly after, a young police officer with a pale face entered the interrogation room wearing a name tag that read He Yuan Liang. Name? Xu Yen. Age? 18. Do you know why we brought you here? He Yuan Liang's dark eyes stared at Xu Yen, like a hawk eyeing its prey. Please officer, you brought me here for no reason, and now you're asking me? Along the way, Xu Yen had actually thought about his recent actions, wondering what might have caught the attention of the Public Security Bureau. After much contemplation, Xu Yen felt that it might be his visit to the black market. After all, the black market was a gray area of the law and if they accused him of breaking the law, Xu Yan really had no defense. He could be detained for days or even weeks, just like being caught gambling or soliciting prostitution. Do you recognize this bank card? Seeing Xu Yan remain silent, He Yuan Liang picked up a transparent plastic bag from the desk, containing a black and white card with a hint of gold olive branch. Isn't this my bank card? How did it end up in your hands? Xu Yan recognized the bank card at first glance as the one he had given to Tang Ro earlier that day. But how did it end up at the Public Security Bureau if it was in Aunt Tang's hands? Your bank card? According to our investigation, the owner of this card is Yi Euro from the Yi family in Linhai, and it's a black gold card. He Yuan Liang's gaze was piercing, as if trying to discern something from Xu Yan's behavior. Yes, she gave it to me, what's the problem? It's just a small bank card, is it necessary to make such a fuss? Xu Yan was a bit speechless. He was brought here in front of so many teachers and classmates just for a card. How could he interact happily with his classmates in the future? Just a small bank card? This is a black gold card exclusively for Beast Masters. Seeing that Xu Yan seemed unaware of the card's significance, He Yuan Liang immediately began to explain to him about the 10-point annual interest rate for deposits, the ability to withdraw up to 1 billion without advance notice, 
and how only First Order Beast Masters could obtain it, symbolizing strength and prestige, and so on. Xu Yan finally understood that the Black Gold card was a Super VIP card from the bank, with the cardholder having only one for life. Just for this? Wouldn't you call the original owner of this card to confirm? Do you think it's too overbearing to bring me over just because you suspect me? You are suspected of embezzling the property of a beast tamer. Our security bureau has the authority to bring you back for interrogation. It's clearly stated in these legal provisions, not exceeding the limits. What? Are you so biased towards beast tamers? Xu Yan did not expect that even the law specifically protects beast tamers. Beast tamers are truly the privileged class on Blue Star. Now, Xu Yan finally understands why so many people want to become beast tamers. This profession is too good, even better than the iron rice bowl of a civil servant in the previous life. Comrade, may I ask where the person who previously had this bank card is? Is he also at the security bureau? Of course. Anything related to beast tamers is of great importance, and all suspicions cannot be overlooked, He Yuanliang said fiercely. Xu Yan. Later, He Yuanliang asked Xu Yan some basic questions. So far, the questions he Yuan Liang asked were neither here nor there, just to understand Xu Yan's family situation and how she obtained the bank card. Everything was going smoothly, as long as the Yi family members come over later to prove her innocence, so Xu Yan did not appear particularly nervous. However, after 10 minutes, there was a slight change in the situation inside the interrogation room. He Yuan Liang, who was in charge of interrogating Xu Yan, was called out, and a man with a hooked nose entered. At first, Xu Yan didn't pay much attention to this man with a hooked nose, but when his gaze fell on the owl on the man's shoulder, her gaze froze. Beast, Night Owl, Type, Flying Beast, Level, LV9, Talent Level, B, Growth Potential, A, Status, Injured. Decrease in Vitality, Decrease in Spirit, External Skeleton Damaged, Internal Skeleton Damaged. Training Direction, The Night Owl was injured in a recent battle and needs to consume 100 rats to recover its vitality. Vitality, 124, Spirit, 8, External Skeleton, 3, Internal Skeleton, 5, First Tier Skill, Bewitchment, Bewitchment, inflicts a small amount of spiritual damage on enemies with lower spiritual strength than oneself, and causes the enemy to enter a confused state for 10 seconds. This is an injured first tier beast. Damn, do I have to deal with such a trivial matter? If my little knight hadn't been injured, would I have been bothered for this amount of money? The man with the hooked nose sneered, simply glanced at Xu Yan, and no longer paid attention to her. Little knight, use bewitchment on him. As soon as the man with the hooked nose spoke, the night owl on his shoulder suddenly opened its eyes wide. Two large blurry circles were projected in the air, and a dizzy feeling instantly rushed into Xu Yan's brain. However, this dizziness lasted only for a moment. Ding, the night owl has used bewitchment on you. Ding, your spiritual strength is far higher than that of the night owl. Bewitchment has failed. Ding, because your spiritual strength is far higher than that of the night owl, the night owl suffered spiritual backlash. Three consecutive sounds rang out, and the night owl on the man's shoulder staggered twice, then directly fell into the man's arms and fainted. Little knight, you've worked hard. Just after the battle ended, you have to use your skills again. The consumption must be significant, right? Tonight, I will prepare a nutrient solution for you. The man with the hooked nose did not know that his night owl fainted due to spiritual backlash. Instead, he attributed the reason for his beast's fainting to fatigue. All right, let's make it quick. Since you are now in a confused state, you will be at my mercy for the next 10 seconds. Say, I demand to end the adoption relationship with my foster mother Tang Ro, and I demand that she repay the 1 million death compensation she embezzled from my parents over the years. At the same time, Tang Ro must immediately leave the Ma Grass River community and leave my home. In a confused state, as long as I guide him a little, this kid will obediently follow my script and say the lines. Making a hundred thousand yuan easily, being a beast tamer is really amazing. Eagle Hook Nose felt secretly proud. Relying on the seduction skill of the Night Owl Eagle, he became the interrogation expert of the Lai Hai Security Bureau at a young age. Normally, Eagle Hook Nose would not easily use the skills of a beast tamer, he was also afraid of being caught by the security bureau. If it weren't for his recent financial difficulties and his night owl being injured and needing a big remedy, Eagle Hook Nose would never do such a thing for a hundred thousand yuan. But it doesn't matter, it's just dealing with an ordinary student, just consider it as earning some extra money. Eagle Hook Nose did not hide his disdain, in his eyes, the current situation with Xu Yan was just a temporary, insignificant matter. No big deal. Hmm, why hasn't it worked yet? The chaotic state is about to end. Eagle Hook Nose, who was originally confident, couldn't help but look strange as time passed. This time, he finally looked directly at Xu Yan. Not looking was fine, but as soon as he saw Xu Yan looking at him with a mocking gaze, Eagle Hook Nose's heart skipped a beat. 
Failed? How is that possible? A beast tamer using such despicable means, you are truly a disgrace among beast tamers. Xu Yan chuckled, completely unconcerned about Eagle Hook Nose's retaliation, and directly stated his attitude, even if he didn't fall for it, not only that, when he left later, he would expose him, what could he do to him? Eagle Hook Nose's face turned pale and then green, he couldn't understand why the seduction skill had failed. This skill was foolproof even when used on the director, so why did it fail on this kid? It must be because of Night Owl's injury. Thinking of this, Eagle Hook Nose's curious and puzzled expression suddenly turned fierce. If being soft didn't work, then he would use force. Once he subdued this kid, he would spill everything. As for abusing the prisoner, he would let Night Owl use the seduction skill on the director later, and he wouldn't face any punishment. With this in mind, Eagle Hook Nose looked at Xu Yen with a fierce gaze. He clenched his fist and a sly smile appeared on his face. Dude, you want to fight? Your health points are not as high as mine, so let's skip the fight. Xu Yen could tell from Eagle Hook Nose's expression what his intentions were and joked, how ridiculous. Even if Night Owl is injured, it still transfers 124 health points to me. Do you, an ordinary student, have more than 124 health points? Do you think you are born with some kind of divine power, ancient sacred body, or a super scion? Dai, yeah, 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 ya with a wicked smile, Eagle Hook Nose pumps towards Xu Yen. Hey, you know quite a lot, but I don't have any of those, yet I can still beat you. In an instant, the interrogation room was filled with the sound of clashing. In no time, the security bureau personnel rushed in, pushed open the door, and couldn't help but gasp at the scene before them. The youngest first-tier beast tamer in the security bureau, the most famous interrogation expert in Lihai City, the colleague of Eagle Hook Nose, who was unbeatable in the entire Lihai City Martial Arts Hall, was now being trampled underfoot by Xu Yen like a dead dog? Woo 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 Seeing their colleagues from the security bureau, Eagle Hook Nose, whose mouth was being stepped on by Xu Yen, couldn't help but whimper. It was too terrifying, too terrifying, this student was too terrifying. He was just a high school student, yet he, a first-tier beast tamer, was no match for him. Is this world going crazy? In the office of the security bureau director. At this moment, Xu Yen and Eagle Hook Nose were sitting on opposite sides, eyeing each other. From their recent interaction, Xu Yen learned the name of the Eagle Hook Nose who targeted him and Tang Yi, Peying Hao. In the office, director Lu Tianfeng looked at Xu Yen and then at his capable subordinate Peying Hao, feeling a bit overwhelmed. Before director Lu Tianfeng received the news of the fight between the two, a call came to his phone. It was none other than the head of the Lu family, a true third-tier beast tamer. The other party on the phone only said one sentence, if there is any problem with the person holding the black gold card, your family, Lu Tianfeng, will not have a good ending. This sentence completely confused Lu Tianfeng, who was taking a nap. This student named Xu Yan has a strong background, and the fact that the Yi family had personally intervened already speaks volumes. Just when Lu Tianfeng was relieved that he hadn't done anything excessive to Xu Yan, he immediately heard that Xu Yan had fought with Peying Hao. This news made Lu Tianfeng feel dizzy, almost unable to recover. Xiao Cheng, take Xu Yan to test his physical values and make a record. The fight between Xu Yan and Peying Hao could be classified as an attack on a public official by Xu Yan. However, Peying Hao is a beast tamer, and many laws do not apply to ordinary people. In other words, if Xu Yan, as an ordinary person, defeats Peying Hao, he deserves it. Lu Tianfeng was extremely troubled. He initially thought it was a good thing when he received the report about the black gold card, helping the beast tamer retrieve the lost card, earning a favor from the police bureau. But now it seems that this is not a good thing at all, but rather a hornet's nest he poked into. While Xu Yan was being taken to test his blood and energy, the chief of the police bureau expressed his doubts to Peying Hao with great concern. He didn't know why he was telling Peying Hao these things, maybe he found him agreeable and wanted to give him a warning. However, Peying Hao clearly did not take Lu Tianfeng's warning to heart. If it weren't for being injured by that First Order Beast Tamer criminal during the mission a few days ago, how could this kid still studying in school be my opponent? Pei Ying Hao was very indignant. The scene of Xu Yan stepping on his face was something he would never forget. I don't care what you think, but Xu Yan is related to Yi Chang. Don't provoke him again. Lu Tianfeng snorted coldly and said no more. The two sat in the office chatting for a while, but they never expected that Xu Yan, who had been taken to test his blood and energy, and the Yi family head, Yi Chang, would arrive one after the other. Upon seeing Yi Chang, Lu Tianfeng ignored Xu Yan and warmly greeted Yi Chang. A third order beast tamer like Yi Chang was like a god in Linhai City, as long as he said a word, even the chief of the Linhai City Police Bureau couldn't do anything. Mr. Yi, this is the black gold card of your daughter, Ling Qian. Lu Tianfeng smiled and handed Yi Yu Rose black gold card back to Yi Chang. Hmm, indeed my daughter's black gold card, 
Where is the gentleman with the goatee? The gentleman with the goatee? Lu Tianfeng and Pei Yinghao were puzzled, then exchanged glances. Lu Tianfeng smirked and looked at Yi Chang, whose face bore a striking resemblance to Peng Yuyan, and asked, Mr. Yi, have you not seen that person? Can you describe his appearance for us? We need to keep a record at the police bureau. Of course, if you don't want to, it's okay. After Lu Tianfeng finished speaking, Pei Yinghao beside him also smiled awkwardly. Yi Chang was not a fool. After seeing the two's demeanor, his tone became serious. You two didn't offend that gentleman with the goatee, did you? Let me tell you, that gentleman is a benefactor of our Yi family. If you offended him, you better apologize now. Yi Chang's voice carried a chilling tone, bringing a layer of frost to the previously warm atmosphere. Lu Tianfeng and Pei Yinghao quickly shook their heads and denied, No, no, we have never seen any gentleman with a goatee. Oh, by the way, Mr. Yi, do you recognize this person? Lu Tianfeng stepped aside, exposing Xu Yan to Yi Chang's gaze. Xu Yan and Yi Chang stared at each other for more than 10 seconds before looking away. Who is this kid? Nest, Lin Hai's pawn Yu Yan? Yi Chang was puzzled, while Xu Yan looked completely confused. I don't know him. Didn't you say you found the person with this black gold card? Please take me to see him. I have an important matter to discuss with that gentleman. When Yi Chang received a call from the security bureau, he was observing a frozen bird in his underground ice cellar with his daughter Yi Euro. This method was obtained by his daughter from a mister. Bazihu on Phoenix Business Street yesterday evening. At first, Yi Cheng thought this method was absurd. Nowadays, with the advanced level of technology, there are specialized animal treatment hospitals and various medicines available on the market to treat animal injuries. Even the medicines developed by top domestic teams cannot save a frozen bird, so Yi Cheng naturally did not believe that freezing alone could revive a dying frozen bird. However, in the end, Yi Cheng still accompanied his daughter in a desperate attempt. Last night, he and his daughter placed the frozen bird in the ice cellar. When he woke up this morning to check, he found the frozen bird performing a miraculous recovery. The bird, which originally had shriveled limbs and no strength, now had the strength to stand on one foot. It was truly unbelievable. After seeing the condition of the frozen bird, even though Yi Chang was incredulous, he had to admit that his daughter had encountered a master. A master's guidance is rare and cannot be sought. Yi Chang was planning to use all his resources to find Mr. Bazihu when the security bureau called to report that they had seen someone using his daughter's black gold card. What is meant by speak of the devil and he appears? What is meant by a stroke of luck comes without effort? What is meant by the chosen one? Yi Chang felt that this was an opportunity for the Yi family, an opportunity for his daughter. If this opportunity was not seized, even the ancestors in the underworld would not forgive him. So now Yi Chang urgently wanted to meet Mr. Bazihu and have a good discussion with him. Speak up, where is he? Yi Chang was excited, but when he saw Lu Tianfeng and Pei Yinghao not saying a word, his face instantly fell. Um, Mr. Yi, I'm afraid you'll be disappointed. We didn't see any Mr. Bazihu, we got that black gold card from this kid here. Lu Tianfeng and Pei Yinghao pointed at Xu Yan, with a meaningful smile on their faces. It seemed that Yi Chang didn't even know Xu Yan, and the person he was looking for was not Xu Yan, but a Mr. Bazihu. This was going to be interesting. The two sneered at Xu Yan. Previously, Xu Yan had embarrassed them at the security bureau, so they naturally didn't want Xu Yan to have an easy time. Got it from him? Yi Chang pushed aside Lu Tianfeng blocking his way and walked straight to Xu Yan, scrutinizing him from head to toe. Your vitality is so strong, but you still look like a student at this age? Where did the black gold card come from? What is your relationship with Mr. Bazihu? Who is Yi Chang? He is a dignified third-level animal trainer, naturally able to see Xu Yan's vitality at a glance. The vitality of this young man in front of him was not inferior to that of his daughter, who had successfully hatched the frozen bird. This kid was terrifying. After observing for so long, Xu Yan could see the situation clearly. Paying how when the beer-bellied security bureau chief clearly wanted to set him up. However, they showed great respect for the young man in front of them, who seemed to be related to Yi Euro and held significant power. It seems that the advice I gave Yi Euro last night worked, so the Yi family came looking for me. In response to Yi Cheng's question, Xu Yin thought for a moment and then said directly, I am Mr. Ba Zihu. With these words, all three people in the office turned their gaze to Xu Yin, each thinking, this kid can lie without batting an eye at such a young age, he will definitely be a big scammer in the future. Pei how couldn't stand Xu Yin's lies anymore and stepped forward, saying, you don't even have a beard, and you dare to impersonate someone? If you are Mr. Ba Zihu, I will walk the rest of my life with my legs crossed. Who cares about you? Xu Yin glanced at Pei Yinghao, then calmly looked at Yi Chang, Uncle, hello, the person you are looking for is me, 
May I ask if there is a new problem with your daughter's freezing bird? Xu Yan's calm and composed demeanor surprised Yi Cheng secretly. When he heard Xu Yan immediately guessed his intention, Yi Cheng's heart skipped a beat. Is this young person in front of him really the mister? Batsi who his daughter mentioned? Did he shave his beard overnight? But he looks too young, right? It feels unbelievable. The scene of Xu Yan talking to Yi Chang now is like a three-year-old teaching an adult, which would seem absurd to a normal person. Xu Yan looks like a student, and doesn't seem to know anything about beast cultivation. Don't believe me? You can video call your daughter to confirm, I'll be here, not going anywhere, Xu Yan shrugged, feeling a bit speechless. Reminded by Xu Yan, Yi Chang remembered the video call with his daughter. Taking out his Huawei phone, he opened the chat box with the nickname Rose's Wound and saw his daughter, Yi Yuro. Just as the call connected, Yi Yuro excitedly shouted to Yi Chang from the video, Dad, the freezing bird can now walk on two feet, and my energy has exceeded 130 points, it's unbelievable. Hearing this good news, Yi Chang was happy for his daughter. But realizing there was still business to attend to, Yi Chang turned the camera towards Xu Yan's face, Daughter, is this the young man you saw last night, Mr. Batsi Hu? Dad, you're almost shoving the phone into his nostrils, how can I see? Pull the camera back a bit. Oh, why isn't there a beard? That day, Mr. Batsi who wore big sunglasses covering half his face, I couldn't see his face clearly. It's hard to recognize without a beard, Dad, figure it out yourself, don't get fooled, I want to feed the freezing bird some Kobe beef, bye. With a click, the video call ended, Yi Chang wanted to say more, but stopped himself. He felt he lacked authority as a father in front of his daughter. Lu Tianfeng and Pei Yinghao chuckled to themselves, but stopped when Yi Chang glared at them. Just then, a female secretary in a professional OL suit walked in. She handed Lu Tianfeng the test data of Xu Yan's body and then left. Lu Tianfeng looked at it, Xu Yan, energy value 128. Wow, this kid's energy value is so high, a full 128 points, can he directly enter the Jinling Beast University? Although Lu Tianfeng had some guesses when Xu Yan defeated Pei Yinghao earlier, he was still shocked when he saw the result. Looking down, when he saw the value of spirit on the list, Lu Tianfeng was completely dumbfounded. Spirit, 41, damn, did the spirit testing device malfunction? How could the spirit be so high? While Lu Tianfeng was in a daze, Pei Yinghao also glanced over. The next moment, his face froze just like Lu Tianfeng's. Spirit, 41, more than the sum of his own five spirits combined? Is this damn sure the device isn't malfunctioning? What are you all so surprised about? What are you looking at? Yi Chang also approached, and the next moment, he too petrified on the spot. Reaching 128 energy points is one thing, but the spirit is also as high as 41 points? I only broke through the 40-point mark after contracting with three spirit beasts, isn't this kid's spirit a tribute too outrageous? Did he grow up meditating? After the three of them finished looking at Xu Yan's attribute data, sweat beads couldn't help but appear on their foreheads. Even the 16-degree air conditioning couldn't stop the sweat pouring down the backs of the three people. Impossible, absolutely impossible. Pei Yinghao was the first to scream, but the next second he was heavily punched to the ground by Lu Tianfeng. Yi Chang also came to his senses at this moment, eagerly running over to hold Xu Yan's hand, 8-character beard, you are definitely the 8-character beard. Yi Chang vigorously rubbed Xu Yan's hand, although Xu Yan smiled, he discreetly withdrew his hand from being touched by a big man. Damn it, even if you have a face like a middle-aged Peng Yuyan, you won't be able to bend me. Xu Yan thought to himself, maintaining an elegant and calm demeanor as the eight-character beard. Do you believe now? Believe, believe. Yi Chang nodded like a chick pecking at grains. Lu Tianfeng, watching from the side, couldn't help but feel bitter. What the hell was wrong with him, actually helping that idiot Pei Yinghao go against Xu Yan? With Xu Yan's background, not to mention the top 10 Beastmaster universities, even the top 2 Beastmaster universities in the country would accept him, why bother protecting his subordinates and offending such a promising young man? Stupid, stupid, simply beyond stupidity. Thinking of this, Lu Tianfeng viciously kicked Pei Yinghao on the ground. If there wasn't still a need for Pei Yinghao, Lu Tianfeng would have no qualms about kicking him out now. Pei Yinghao on the ground grunted twice without daring to speak. Although he had used his seduction skills on Lu Tianfeng many times in the past, subtly making the other party treat him as one of their own. But when faced with a stronger force, a stronger relationship, this kind of relationship would instantly collapse. With Xu Yan, this monstrous kid, Pei Yinghao could only consider himself unlucky. Director Lu, I think you must investigate the actions of Officer Pei thoroughly, and I want to see the follow-up results. Also, I hope you can release Aunt Tang now, she has nothing to do with this matter. And if she has been frightened because of this incident, I think the police bureau should compensate her for some mental damages. 
Xu Yan knew he was leveraging Yi Cheng's influence, so he didn't speak too harshly. His abilities were indeed good, but without hatching a beast, his body was just slightly stronger than an ordinary person. If he really clashed with the police bureau, it would definitely not end well. After all, his talent was only decent, but in the eyes of those in power, his talent was nothing. Xu Yan was aware of this. All right, all right, but Peiying Hao was our expert investigator at the Lai Hai Police Bureau, replacing him now would have a significant impact on the case, dealing with him may need to wait until after the case is closed. Oh, is that so? In that case, let's see how the police bureau arranges it. But the guy who framed me and my aunt Tang must be caught, the police bureau should be able to do that, right? Xu Yen didn't actually know who had framed him, but he wanted to see how the police bureau would handle it. Even if the police bureau used a scapegoat, Xu Yen would accept it. After this visit to the police bureau, Xu Yen truly understood the necessity and urgency of becoming a beastmaster. By entering one of the top 10 beastmaster universities and becoming a beastmaster, even if he was implicated in similar incidents in the future, he could handle it calmly, rather than relying on borrowed power. Mr. Zhang, can we talk privately? It had to be said that beastmasters were awesome. When Yi Chang mentioned talking privately with Xu Yen, Lu Tianfeng immediately cleared his large office for the two to talk. He took paying how to handle the matter Xu Yen had mentioned earlier. Mr. Yi, just say what you need to say, this time I owe you a lot for helping me through this difficult situation. Whatever you need, just say it. As long as I can help, I won't hesitate. Upon hearing this, Yi Chang looked at Xu Yen in surprise. If he had a stats panel like Xu Yan's when he was Xu Yan's age, he would have been unstoppable and would have done whatever he pleased. But Xu Yan was different. Despite looking like a child, his words and actions exuded a calm and composed demeanor that not just anyone could achieve. Yi Chang couldn't help but take another look at Xu Yan. It's like this, Mr. Jiang. After hearing about the method you taught my daughter for treating spirit beasts yesterday, I was truly amazed. So today, I sought you out for two reasons. Firstly, I want you to come to my house for a follow-up appointment to check on that urgent frozen bird. Secondly, I want you to take a look at my little bean sprout. A follow-up appointment is no problem, but who is this little bean sprout? Little bean sprout? Little bean sprout is my third spirit beast. Please take a look, Mr. Jiang. With that, Yi Chang took out a spirit beast ball. He gently activated it, and a green elf with a large flower bud on its head appeared in front of Xu Yan. Little Bean Sprout hung its head, showing no interest even when it saw its owner, Yi Chang. Spirit Beast, Little Bean Sprout, Type, Grass Type Spirit Beast, Level, LV29, Talent Level, B, Growth Potential, A, Status, Mentally Depressed. Little Bean Sprout itself doesn't know why it feels down. Despite being in its flowering period, it has yet to bloom. Xu Yan was greatly surprised to see a level 29 grass type spirit beast. When he saw the cultivation method for little bean sprout, a strange expression appeared on his face. So, Mr. Zhang, have you figured out the reason? Yi Chang asked Xu Yan with a testing attitude. Upon learning that Xu Yan was Mr. Botsi, Yi Chang, who had calmed down, realized a problem. Xu Yan was just a student who hadn't hatched a spirit beast. Even though he had unique insights into treating the urgent frozen bird, could he make accurate judgments when faced with a third-tier spirit beast like Little Bean Sprout? After all, spirit beast doctors, like spirit beast trainers, were also divided into different levels. Advanced spirit beast doctors could diagnose simple spirit beast illnesses, but lower-level ones couldn't handle complex spirit beast diseases. Could Xu Yan really identify what was wrong with his Little Bean Sprout? Was he only skilled at treating first-tier spirit beasts, and clueless when it came to those above first tier? It's not a big deal, actually. If you follow my instructions, it will be fine in three days. Xu Yan briefly explained the cultivation method he had seen for Little Bean Sprout. Although he tried to be tactful because the method involved burying the spirit beast alive, Yi Chang was still angered by Xu Yan's implication. He almost threw out the other two spirit beast balls at Xu Yan. Are you treating spirit beasts? Are you trying to physically eliminate my Little Bean Sprout? But this kid's method of treating the urgent frozen bird is quite peculiar. Could it really be as effective as he claims? burying Little Bean Sprout for three days? Looking at the mentally depressed Little Bean Sprout, a hint of pity flashed in Yi Chang's eyes. The decision was in Yi Chang's hands. Whether to bury the spirit beast alive or not depended on whether he believed Xu Yan's words. Since he had already spoken, Yi Chang had no choice but to trust himself. Mr. Yi, if there's nothing else, I'll take my leave. I'll come for the follow-up appointment on the weekend. Is that okay with you? Yi Cheng nodded, still immersed in the dilemma of whether to bury the beloved bean sprout alive, with no time to listen to Xu Yan. 
Leaving Yi Chang in the office, Xu Yan just walked into the lobby of the security bureau and saw Tang Ro sitting upright on a chair, looking extremely nervous. And Tang, Xu Yan called out, and Tang Ro turned to look, her body trembling as if shocked, then she rushed towards Xu Yan. Xiao Fan, you're okay, that's great. If something really happened to you, how can I explain to your parents? Tang Ro cried, feeling greatly relieved. Xu Yan and Tang Ro just left when they saw a police car leaving the security bureau. Besides seeing the figure of He Yuanliang who interrogated her initially, Xu Yan also saw the figure of Pei Hao. Pei Hao had not faced any punishment yet and was even able to go on missions with other officers. This made Xu Yan feel uneasy and curious about what case required the involvement of Pei Hao, a first order beast tamer. Forget it, it's none of my business, let's go home first. At this moment, Xu Yan was unaware that Pei Hao and others were heading towards Ma Chao Zheng community. It was already 4 or 5 in the afternoon. After buying groceries with Tang Ro, they headed home. As they reached the community gate, they saw the police car that had just left the security bureau. Xiao Fan, look, isn't this the police car that just left the security bureau? Tang Ro was now very sensitive to anything related to the security bureau. Xu Yan nodded without saying a word. A police car was parked at the entrance of Ma Chao Zhang community, and many nearby residents gathered around, blocking Xu Yan and Tang Ro's way home. Xu Yan asked an elderly lady about the situation and she pointed to a building, there's trouble on the 10th floor, and the security bureau people have gone up. After some inquiries, Xu Yan finally understood the situation. The security bureau had arrested someone in apartment 501 on the 10th floor of Ma Chao Zheng community, which happened to be right below his own apartment. Was this a coincidence? Xu Yan was unsure. He suddenly remembered the telescope he saw on the balcony of 501 when he escorted Chen Cici that night. That telescope wasn't for stargazing, but for observing the surroundings, right? What a meticulous criminal. As the crowd split into two, He Yuan Liang, whom Xu Yan had met at the police station, walked out with a stern face, seemingly unharmed. But Pei Hao, the first order beast tamer, was different. Xu Yan clearly saw that his left hand had been twisted and deformed to the extent that even the bones inside seemed shattered. Xu Yan had not even reprimanded him yet, but he was already injured. Xu Yan felt no sympathy for him and found it somewhat amusing to see Pei Hao injured. Besides He Yuan Liang, Pei Hao, and other police officers, there were also several guys with black plastic bags on their heads following behind. Four or five police officers surrounded these people, obviously the criminals that everyone was talking about. One, two, three, four, a total of four people, enough to play a game of mahjong. There was actually such a criminal gang hiding downstairs in their own building. Xu Yan was secretly shocked. It's useless for you to arrest me. Our boss will avenge us. You'll see. Among the four people with black plastic bags on their heads, one of them seemed very agitated, shouting loudly to boost his own and his companion's morale. Stop making noise. Move. A police officer slapped the arrogant criminal's head hard, silencing him immediately. It sounds like one of them escaped? Xu Yan pondered to herself, but since they've already escaped, they probably won't dare to come back here, right? Passing by these investigating police officers, Xu Yan and Tang Ro went home and carried on with their usual routine of cooking, bathing, and so on. At 11 o'clock in the evening, Xu Yan took out the notes given to him by Chen Cici and reviewed them again. The mental clarity brought by the 41 points was beyond imagination, allowing Xu Yan to memorize the notes word for word even after just reading them once or twice. After memorizing the notes, Xu Yan prepared to sleep. Just as he lay down, Xu Yan suddenly felt a cold breeze. Turning his head, he noticed that the window in the room was not closed. Aunt Tang, my room's window is not far from the construction site outside. Didn't I ask her not to open the window to prevent dust from coming in? Tang Ro used to help him open the windows for ventilation and clean the room, so Xu Yan naturally assumed that Aunt Tang had forgotten to close the window. The window in Xu Yan's room did not have a security screen, so pushing it open halfway allowed one to lean out. Ugh, this air, I'll move out once I make enough money. Glancing at the construction workers not far away, Xu Yan muttered irritably and then lowered his head to close the window. But the next moment, Xu Yan froze. On the windowsill, he clearly saw a very faint footprint. Xu Yan's heart skipped a beat, and he leaned out to look at the wall outside the window, where he saw two more faint footprints. The size of the shoe print seemed to be around size 42 or 43, similar in size to an adult male's foot. And these three footprints extended from room 501 all the way to the window. What did this mean? Someone entered his room, entered his home? Was he still here? Why couldn't he sense the other person's presence with his 128 points of vitality? Gone? Countless doubts flooded Xu Yan's mind. He surveyed his room for any possible hiding spots, finding only a wardrobe and under the bed. 
Stay calm, if the other person is here and I can't detect them, it means their vitality is even greater than mine, and they can freely control the external and internal release of vitality, indicating extremely strong power. With this in mind, Xu Yan thought back to Pei Yinghao's severed arm in the afternoon. Whoever could injure Pei Yinghao, a first-order beast tamer, to such an extent must be at least a first-order beast tamer themselves, with formidable strength. At this moment, he absolutely could not act recklessly. After closing the window, Xu Yan let out a long sigh, seemingly casually saying, Oh, I can't sleep. How could there be a criminal gang downstairs? Are they going to harm me? I'll go sleep with Aunt Tang tonight. With that, Xu Yan picked up his pillow and headed towards Tang Rou's room. A knock on the door, the door opened and then immediately closed, everything returned to calm. After about 10 minutes passed, a sudden noise came from under Xu Yan's bed. In the darkness, a hand suddenly reached out from under the bed. Hiss the sound of someone gasping in shock echoed in the quiet, empty room. A man with a big belly emerged from under the bed. He rubbed his belly and muttered to himself, Damn, such a mama's boy, so heavy, squashing my belly flat. This guy must be even fatter than me. The big belly clearly had some complaints about Xu Yen. Ever since Xu Yen lay on the bed earlier, the weight of the big belly had been compressing his stomach severely. The space under the bed was cramped, making the big belly extremely uncomfortable. Damn, how did the police find their way here? Was I betrayed? Forget it, let's hide here for a couple of days and then leave. Rewind to 10 minutes ago. Xu Yen had just knocked on Tang Ro's room door, and the next second, he saw Tang Ro standing in front of him in a black lace nightgown. Not only was the glimpse of her fair skin through the lace enticing, but Xu Yen could clearly see the seductive part at the center of the lace nightgown. Xu Yen didn't dare to look closely. His body reacted, but the drowsy Tang Ro had not yet realized the situation. Xiao Fan, what's wrong? Can't sleep? Not wanting to worry Tang Ro, Xu Yen didn't tell her the truth. And Tang, I'm a bit scared of what happened today. Can I sleep with you tonight? Xu Yen wasn't sure if someone was in his house, let alone where they might be hiding. So even though Tang Ro had already fallen asleep, Xu Yen still came to knock on her door, worried she might be in danger. Hearing Xu Yen say he was scared, the motherly Tang Ro hugged him. Xiao Fan, don't be afraid, I'm here. You can sleep with me tonight. Feeling the softness of Tang Ro's body, Xu Yen entered the room with her. In his past life, Xu Yen had hardly been in Tang Ro's room, so his impression of it was very vague. After being led into the room by Tang Ro, Xu Yen discovered that Tang Ro's room was surprisingly girly. While keeping the original furniture and decor unchanged, Tang Ro had bought a bunch of doll plushies to hang on the wall. Her bedding was all pink, even the tabletop. Apart from some Stitch and Pokemon posters, the most eye-catching item was the Doryman carpet on the floor. The room was decorated like that of a child. Tang Ro, who had just woken up a bit, also realized the issue with her room. She blushed and said, this room, it's decorated according to Xiao Xiao's preferences. Feeling embarrassed, she couldn't admit to liking such a childish style. Ha, huh, let's go to sleep. We have to get up early for school tomorrow. Tang Ro awkwardly laughed, then casually turned off the light and pulled Xu Yen onto the soft bed. Suddenly, Tang Ro stumbled and fell on the bed, and Xu Yen, who was holding her, ended up inadvertently pressing her down. Time seemed to stand still. Xu Yen could smell the faint fragrance emanating from Tang Ro's body, while Tang Ro could feel the masculine scent coming from Xu Yen, mixed with pheromones, almost instantly making her eyes flutter seductively. Fortunately, Xu Yen didn't get carried away in this ambiguous atmosphere, it wasn't the time to think about such things. After observing Tang Ro's room when he entered, Xu Yen didn't find any hiding spots. He also checked under the bed using the floor mirror in the room. There was no one under the bed, meaning the possible person wasn't in Tang Ro's room. Xu Yen felt much more relaxed now. He had a full 128 points of qi and blood, and his spirit had reached 41 points, his attribute data could be said to be very strong. And with the precedent of defeating Pei Yinghao today, Xu Yen was not particularly afraid of the possible villain hiding somewhere in his house. His only concern was Tang Ro, in case the villain took Tang Ro as a hostage, which would be difficult to handle. Now that he knew there was no danger in Tang Ro's room, Xu Yen's heart also relaxed. He cleared his throat, straightened up, and moved a little away from Tang Ro. And Tang, I'm a little thirsty, I'll go out for a drink, you go to sleep first. Xu Yen got up and left the room, planning to search elsewhere in the house. Of course, the last place he would search would be his own room. That room had already been classified by Xu Yen as a high-risk area. Tang Ro was still immersed in the ambiguous atmosphere just now. When she heard Xu Yen say he wanted to drink water, she came back to her senses and covered herself with the blanket like a startled rabbit. At this moment, Tang Ro finally realized that the clothes she was wearing were a bit too revealing. She had bought this outfit back in college at the urging of her dormitory classmates, 
and she hadn't worn it in real life yet. Thinking about this, Tang Ro blushed and cursed herself for being shameless. After leaving Tang Ro's room, Xu Yan took a spare key from the living room drawer and locked Tang Ro's room. This way, if there was any danger, Aunt Tang wouldn't be harmed. After doing all this, Xu Yan began to plan his next steps. He turned on all the lights in the living room and subconsciously searched the house for possible hiding places. Nothing in the living room. Nothing in the kitchen. Nothing in the bathroom. Nothing in Aunt Tang's room. The only remaining suspect was his own room. The first place the villain would enter the house would be his own room. Xu Yan quietly approached his room, leaned against the door, and listened. No sound? No, just using qi and blood wouldn't reveal anything. Mental power, activate. Xu Yan didn't really understand how to use mental power, but he concentrated hard, trying to figure something out in his mind. After a few minutes of concentration, Xu Yan suddenly felt a strange sensation. In this state, he felt like a bud about to bloom, like a life about to break free from its shell. Xu Yan's spirit shook, realizing that he had connected to the spirit egg's consciousness. Ding, you have achieved a resonance of qi and blood with the spirit egg, temporarily increasing your qi and blood by 10 points. Qi and blood resonance? Is this what Director Wang called qi and blood resonance? Xu Yan remembered Director Wang mentioning this before. Qi and blood resonance was a practical exam subject for the five school joint exam in a month. The requirements for qi and blood resonance were twofold, deep communication with the spirit egg and reaching a certain level of compatibility with the spirit egg. Only then could qi and blood resonance be performed, temporarily increasing qi and blood. Xu Yan had actually achieved qi and blood resonance just by concentrating? Xu Yan was stunned. The phrase qi and blood resonance sounded simple, but the difficulties involved in establishing a resonance with the spirit egg for the top students of Lin Hai High School were immense. He had just surpassed the top students of Lin Hai High School by a large margin? Xu Yan smiled. He opened his personal attribute panel and found that his qi and blood value had reached an unprecedented 138 points. After reaching 138 points of qi and blood, everything in the room became clearer to Xu Yan. Apart from his own heartbeat, Xu Yan heard a heartbeat in Tang Ro's room and another heartbeat in his own room. Without a doubt, the heartbeat in his room belonged to a person. Indeed, someone is inside. Xu Yan's eyes narrowed into a slit. At this moment, a plan formed in Xu Yan's mind. Although his qi and blood had reached 138 points, Xu Yan was not careless. He tiptoed into the kitchen, effortlessly lifting a gas cylinder with one hand, not making a sound. Thanks to the use of bottled gas instead of natural gas pipelines at home, Xu Yan had the means to take action, or rather, to strike the criminal. In the kitchen, Xu Yan cut a pipe connected to the gas cylinder. Along the way, Xu Yan also grabbed two towels from the bathroom. With the gas cylinder, pipe, and towels ready, Xu Yan began to act. He pressed his ear against the room door, listening to the movements of the person inside. When he heard the guy crawl back under the bed, Xu Yan quietly stuffed the gap at the door with a towel. Of course, all these operations were carried out in the dark. Xu Yan wouldn't leave any loopholes. After plugging the door gap with a towel, Xu Yan flattened the ventilation pipe and inserted it into the door gap. With everything ready, an evil smile appeared on Xu Yan's face. He gently opened the valve of the gas cylinder, and the gas inside the cylinder found its way out, escaping wildly. As the gas slowly filled the room, the man in the room, with a big belly, began to react. What's that smell? It's awful. The man used his belly to push against the bedboard, then turned over, trying to avoid the strange smell. However, the man wasn't foolish. After briefly recalling the smell he inhaled, his face suddenly changed. Wait, is this gas? Did that damn guy forget to turn off the gas? Even now, smelling the gas, the man with a big belly didn't suspect that Xu Yan had discovered him. After all, as a skilled expert just a step away from the second level of beast control, the man didn't think Xu Yan's every move could escape his perception. Just now, the man had sensed Xu Yan standing at the door for quite some time. Otherwise, he wouldn't have crawled back under the bed in frustration. So the man simply thought it was the family's negligence, forgetting to turn off the gas. In the man's eyes, Xu Yan was an old man who was afraid and ran to sleep with his mother, a mama's boy. It wasn't surprising that he made such a basic mistake of not turning off the gas. Should I go help them turn off the gas? The man with a big belly was conflicted. With the gas leaking, he and this family were in the same boat. A beast tamer was also human and could be poisoned by gas. Forget it, let sponge ball handle it. After thinking for a moment, the man with a big belly took out a beast ball from his pocket. Sponge ball, it's up to you. The man gently tapped the beast ball on the ground, the next moment, a yellow sponge cube the size of a textbook appeared in the room. This yellow sponge cube had hands, feet, and even big eyes and a small mouth. Just like a real sponge baby. 
It's just that the beast was clearly a cube, so why did the man call him Spongeball? Following his master's command, Spongeball bowed like a westerner and crawled out from under the bed. However, as Spongeball was about to walk out of the room, he suddenly noticed a half-meter tall great giant egg. The next moment, Spongeball's knees buckled, and he knelt down. His legs and arms, the size of chopsticks, turned into noodles. Spongeball, what's wrong with you? The man with a big belly asked softly. Seeing Spongeball's lack of response, he struggled to crawl out from under the bed, and the great giant egg came into view. In fact, the man with a big belly had seen this beast egg from the moment he entered. However, he prided himself on having a sharp eye, and could tell at a glance that this seemingly dull imperial beast egg was a bad egg that couldn't hatch an imperial beast at all. So, Dabuna had never paid much attention to this imperial beast egg. But now, seeing his sponge ball react like this to the imperial beast egg, Dabuna's attitude towards this grey imperial beast egg immediately changed. The imperial beast inside this egg can suppress my sponge ball even before hatching? With this thought, Dabuna was overjoyed. He had never expected to stumble upon an unexpected gain just by casually intruding into someone's home today. I'll gladly accept this imperial beast egg, he he he. Although Dabuna had taken a liking to Xu Yen's imperial beast egg, he did not immediately put Xu Yen's imperial beast egg into his pocket. Dabuna understood the principle of not rushing into things. The top priority now was to shut off the gas leak in the kitchen. Otherwise, if news of a first-tier imperial beast master being poisoned by gas made it to the hot search the next day, he would be ridiculed by his peers. Since he was already out, Dabuna decided not to let the sponge ball go either. After retrieving the sponge ball into the imperial beast ball for recuperation, he quietly approached the door and opened it. Damn, feeling a bit dizzy and nauseous, too much gas inhalation? I need to shut it off quickly. These people should thank me. If I hadn't accidentally hidden here today, they might have been poisoned by gas. I never thought that after being a bad guy for so many years, I would also have a day of saving lives. Dabuna shook his head and opened the door, only to see the gas tank in front of him. Huh, why is the gas tank blowing towards this room? Dabuna was momentarily confused, and the next moment he felt a blackout, as if something had covered his head. Not good, I've been tricked. At this moment, even if Dabuna's reaction was slow, he had already realized what was happening. It wasn't just a matter of forgetting to turn off the gas, the damn gas was coming at him. Yashu Yen swung a vase directly at Dabuna's head. At the same time the vase shattered, Xu Yen's energy and blood exploded, pressing directly towards Dabuna. Being attacked by Xu Yen with the vase, Dabuna was extremely angry. He could feel blood seeping from his head, feeling a bit painful. Yeah yeah yeah, you're infuriating me, how dare you plot against me. I'll show you how powerful a first tier imperial beast master can be. Huh, why is your energy and blood value higher than mine? It was too strange. The guy in front of him should be a prospective imperial beast master who hadn't hatched an imperial beast yet. How could his energy and blood intensity be higher than his? Dabuna only had about 130 points of energy and blood, while this guy in front of him had 135 or even 140 points? Under normal circumstances, Dabuna wouldn't be able to easily sense Xu Yen's energy and blood strength. But now, with Xu Yen fully exerting his energy and blood in front of him, it was as if Xu Yen was mocking Dabuna by saying, See, my energy and blood value is higher than yours, what are you gonna do about it, can't handle it? Dabuna was completely at a loss. He would rather face the police officer named Peiying Hao today than fight against the guy in front of him who was physically strong and had an abnormally high energy and blood value. Moreover, he had just inhaled a lot of gas, and now his body felt nauseous and uncomfortable like never before. Wait a minute Dabuna wanted to plead for mercy, but Xu Yen didn't give him a chance. Wait my foot. Xu Yen delivered an elbow strike directly to Dabuna's head. With this blow, Xu Yen heard a crack sound. Upon closer inspection, the fat man had actually dodged his attack, his elbow hit the wall, creating a large hole. Although he didn't hit Dabuna, Xu Yen was still shocked by the power of his own strike. The wall in his house was made of solid brick and concrete structure, all bricks. This blow can actually create a big dent in the wall. If it hits the fat guy's head, will it crush his skull? Xu Yen was excited, everything had to be tested to know. Under Xu Yen's powerful attack, the gas-inhaling fat belly gradually showed signs of defeat. The fat belly's eyes were bloodshot, and his hands trembled from Xu Yen's punches. Suddenly, he shouted, Kid, I am a beast tamer. The fat belly, who was dazed from the beating, finally came to his senses. Why did he have to confront this guy head-on? He was a beast tamer, couldn't he just deal with him using beast tamer methods? In front of a beast tamer, human vitality was just a joke. Kid, you've really made me angry. The fat belly foamed at the mouth, but that didn't stop him from taking out a beast taming ball from his pocket. 
Sponge Ball, it's up to you. Activate skill, Water Whirlwind. As the beast taming ball hit the ground, a bright light rose, and a yellow cube appeared in front of Xu Yan. It's a beast. Xu Yan's heart skipped a beat, he had experience dealing with beasts, having countered Peying Hao's Dark Knight Owl at the police station with his strong mental values. But this time was different, the yellow cube with blue water elements swirling around it seemed to be preparing for a real attack different from a mental one. Could he resist it? Xu Yan felt nervous, but that nervousness disappeared the next second. Because he clearly saw the yellow cube, which had accumulated water elements, suddenly wilt. The creature's thick hands and feet softened like noodles, the whole body collapsed like a sponge on the ground, motionless. Sponge ball. The fat belly's pupils shrank at the sight, the next moment, as if suddenly remembering something, his gaze fixed on a half-meter-high gray beast egg that Xu Yan had placed in the corner. How could he forget about this? This gray beast egg could clearly suppress his sponge ball, he should have put this beast egg in the beast taming ball earlier. A moment of hesitation led to the current situation. The fat belly was almost in tears. Although he didn't know why the beast summoned by the fat man had wilted, Xu Yan naturally wouldn't miss this opportunity. Xu Yan smiled sinisterly at the fat belly, and then the room was filled with the sound of ping pong. Before long, Xu Yan successfully knocked out the fat belly, then he found some rope at home and tied the fat belly into a turtle shell shape. Don't ask why Xu Yan knew how to tie like this, he definitely didn't learn it in his past life. After everything was taken care of, Xu Yan breathed a sigh of relief. What a joke of a beast tamer, he doesn't look so tough. Xu Yan shook his head and began to search the fat belly's belongings. First tier vitality potion, second tier white beast taming ball, and used, low level water type beast universal skill, water whirlwind, and some miscellaneous items. Calculating based on market prices, these items should be worth around 500,000. Could these things have been stolen by this fat guy and his accomplices? Considering what happened in the neighborhood this afternoon, Xu Yan thought it was very likely. These guys were a group of criminals, and he couldn't think well of them. But is it necessary for a first-tier beast tamer to commit a crime for items worth 500,000? Could there be some other hidden agenda? It seemed necessary to interrogate the fat belly properly once he woke up. Xu Yan calmed his mind, looked at the sponge lying on the ground, and decided to tie it up as well. A family must be neat and tidy. Just as Xu Yan finished dealing with this outsider, there was a knock on the door from Tang Ro outside. Xiao Fan, what's going on? I heard a loud noise in the room, did something fall? Are you okay? And Tang, I'm fine. You go to sleep first. Oh, remember to leave the door for me, I'll go to sleep later. After Xu Yan finished speaking, there was no sound outside the door. About two hours later, Dadunna woke up groggily. Xu Yan looked at the clock on the table in the room, 2.40. Night interrogation, starting now. Name, gender, age, occupation, home address. Tell me everything clearly, or don't blame me for being rude. After a fierce performance in front of Digdana, Xu Yan finally made him speak. I, I'm called Zhong Liang. Gender, gender, male. 35 years old this year, occupation, considered a third-rate beast tamer in society, currently homeless. Moon Xu Yan was very satisfied with Zhong Liang's answers. These pieces of information were actually irrelevant, Xu Yan's purpose was just to make him speak. As long as the other party spoke and answered, the next interrogation could proceed. Xu Yan then asked some irrelevant questions, and Zhong Liang answered truthfully. Seeing that the timing was right, Xu Yan finally asked the question he cared about the most. What is the purpose of you and your group renting downstairs in my house? Xu Yan would not allow dangerous elements to stay around him. He was not a true beast tamer yet and he was very vigilant in this unfamiliar and somewhat familiar world. Xu Yan's question seemed to touch on Zhong Liang's secret. Zhong Liang, who was willing to answer questions just now, now remained silent, as if he hadn't heard Xu Yan's question. If you don't speak, don't blame me for being ruthless. Zhong Liang still didn't care, in his eyes, Xu Yan was just a kid who didn't know anything. What's the use of making threats? At most, he would be beaten up. Does this kid really dare to kill me? This city kid probably hasn't even killed a chicken. As Zhong Liang had expected, although Xu Yan said he wouldn't spare Zhong Liang, he didn't make any move to harm him. Seeing this, Zhong Liang couldn't help but feel smug. He didn't think he was caught by Xu Yan because the other party was too strong, but because he underestimated the situation and inhaled too much gas, causing his physical condition to deteriorate. As long as he had some time to recover, he could break free and then neither this kid nor his old lady would be spared. Wait and see, kid. Wait to face the wrath of Grandpa Zhong. As Zhong Liang was thinking this, the next second his narrowed eyes suddenly widened. Because he saw Xu Yan coming back from the bathroom with a bucket of water, then grabbing his beloved sponge ball and rubbing it on the floor. Hey, it was a bit intense just now, the room is a mess, let's clean it up first. 
The sponge ball rubbed on the tiles in the room made a squeak squeak sound, accompanied by a woo-woo sobbing sound, like a melodious symphony. At this moment, a tenor suddenly sang out, Ah ah, bastard, what did you do to my sponge ball? I'll kill you. Zhong Liang shouted hoarsely, but Xu Yan found him too noisy and directly stuffed a piece of cloth into his mouth. Xu Yan spent a whole hour cleaning the room. After squeezing out a bucket of filthy water from the sponge ball's body, Xu Yan gently wiped the sweat off his forehead with his arm and pulled the cloth out of Zhong Liang's mouth. I'll talk, don't hurt my sponge ball. Zhong Liang cried out hoarsely. Seeing his beast sponge ball being completely destroyed by Xu Yan, Zhong Liang felt like his heart was breaking. The sponge ball had been his beast companion for nearly 10 years, now being treated like this by Xu Yan, wouldn't it break his waist? I would have stopped earlier if you had said so, why all this unnecessary trouble? Xu Yan used a hanger to clamp the hands of the sponge ball, then hung the sponge ball on the clothes rack to dry. After doing all this, Xu Yan showed a pure and innocent smile to Zhong Liang, go ahead. At this moment, in Zhong Liang's eyes, Xu Yan was like a devil with horns on her head, so he dared not disobey her. The reason we rented the apartment below yours this time is actually on someone's behalf to observe the residence on the sixth floor next door. I heard that the person is a student from the Imperial Beast University, who is going home to visit family these days, our task is to catch her and hand her over to the client. After the job is done, we can get 10 million. But we didn't expect to be targeted by the security bureau before we could even make a move. When the security bureau people came in the afternoon, I was outnumbered and had to strategically retreat, hiding in your room. Zhong Liang looked defeated, then pitifully looked at Xu Yan, little brother, I really didn't mean to harm you, please let me go in good faith. I swear I won't retaliate against you. And I can't even escape now, I won't commit any more crimes. They came for Song Yunxi? Xu Yan was surprised, but it made sense. After all, with Zhong Liang, a first-tier beast tamer involved, they must be targeting another beast tamer. Since they weren't after him and not planning any terror activities around the Ma Chao Zhang community, Xu Yan felt relieved. Is that so? Xu Yan took a second to seriously consider Zhong Liang's suggestion. In the end, he decided not to accept it. If Zhong Liang, the walking 500,000 yuan reward, escaped today, the security bureau would definitely issue a wanted notice. When the notice was out, he could hand over Zhong Liang and make a big profit. Maybe he could realize his dream of changing houses this month. Xu Yan's eyes turned cold as he knocked Zhong Liang unconscious. Then, like hiding a body, he stuffed the unconscious Zhong Liang under the bed. Ah, another sleepless night tonight. I'll call old man Lu later to ask for a day off. I'll deal with this fat guy first and skip school for now. At 5.30 in the morning, Tang Ro got up to make breakfast. She left the door open for Xu Yan last night, but fell asleep without realizing it. When Tang Ro woke up in the morning and didn't find Xu Yan by her side, she felt a bit down. She had wanted to take advantage of their time together to say something like you can rely on me more, but now that plan was ruined, and she didn't know when she would have another chance. Tang Ro sighed and quickly cooked breakfast. After waking Xu Yan up to eat breakfast, Tang Ro had a little herself and then went to work. Not going to work for two days, she expected the boss at the factory to give her a good scolding. At 7 o'clock in the morning, Xu Yan called old man Lu and told him he wasn't feeling well, so he took a sick day. The whole morning, Xu Yan waited in front of the local TV station in Linhai City. The heavens favored the diligent, and Xu Yan waited until noon when Linhai City's news broadcast announced a reward for Zhong Liang. Our city's security bureau raided a certain house in the Ma Chao Zhang community yesterday and captured four criminals. There is currently one first-tier beast tamer criminal mastermind on the run. The information on the fugitive is as follows. Name, Zhong Liang. We urge the masses of Linhai City to actively provide clues if the fugitive is caught. The Linhai City Security Bureau will reward 1 million in cash. Other informants can also receive varying amounts of cash rewards. This station will continue to follow up on the case. Beep beep beep. What, he's been caught? Perhaps due to the negligence of the TV station staff, the studio had just switched screens, and the voices from the backstage were clearly heard by everyone watching the live news broadcast. Everyone looked puzzled, wondering what had happened. Beep 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 dear viewers, we interrupt this broadcast with an urgent news update. Thanks to the efforts of the civic-minded Mr. John, the suspect Zhong Liang has been captured and brought to justice. The reward for his capture is cancelled. The suspect Zhong Liang has been captured and brought to justice. The reward for his capture is cancelled. The suspect Zhong Liang has been captured and brought to justice. The reward for his capture is cancelled. Less than a day after leaving the coastal city police bureau, Xu Yan was back. Today, just like yesterday when he was taken away at school, he was also escorted by a police car. However, compared to yesterday when he was guarded and escorted by several police officers, Xu Yan's treatment today was much better. 
Inside the police car, He Yuan Liang, who was sitting in the back with Xu Yan, took out a box of cigarettes from his pocket. At the same time, he also took out a Zippo lighter from his shirt pocket. Zhang Gu, have a cigarette. Sorry, officer He, I'm just a student and I don't smoke. Xu Yan shook his head in refusal. He was not fond of cigarettes or alcohol, neither in his past life nor now. Zhang Gu, you are truly a great man. Not smoking, not drinking, and still so skilled. I knew you were extraordinary when you punched Pei Yinghao yesterday. I never expected you to catch this first order beast tamer fugitive, for an ordinary high school student like you to achieve this, it's not an exaggeration to say you can rival the gods. He Yuan Lian praised Xu Yan excessively, afraid that Xu Yan would not remember his face. There was no trace of the cold attitude he had shown when interrogating Xu Yan in the interrogation room yesterday. If Xu Yan was willing, He Yuan Liang might have pressed his hot face against Xu Yan's cold but by now. Xu Yan knew that capturing Zhong Liang was a great achievement, but he didn't want He Yuan Liang's flattery to go overboard. Officer He, your attitude towards me yesterday was not like this, did you encounter any difficulties that made you lower your proud head? Xu Yan teased He Yuan Liang. This remark clearly hit He Yuan Liang's sore spot. His face twitched for a moment, then he looked dejected and said, Yesterday, I was on a mission with Pei Yinghao. His arm was broken by this first order beast tamer named Zhou Liang. Now the bureau is holding me accountable, and I become the scapegoat. Not only that, even director Lu blamed me for the conflict with Zhang Gu yesterday. Can you imagine how unhappy I am? I just hope Zhang Gu, you can be magnanimous and not dwell on yesterday's interrogation. After all, I was just following orders. If Zhang Gu is still upset, I can offer compensation to avoid punishment. He Yuan Liang looked at Xu Yan eagerly, hoping to hear any useful information from him. However, Xu Yan was a cunning person, having lived two lives, he was extremely shrewd. How could he sympathize with He Yuan Liang just because he called in Jiang Gu a few times? Xu Yan remained silent, but in his heart, he was thinking of ways to deal with Pei Yinghao. The guy named Pei was not a good person, he had committed numerous wrongful acts in the past, relying on the night owl to cover up and he hadn't settled his own score yet. Today, he had to bring this guy down, so he wouldn't continue to harm others in that position. Xu Yan was a typical grudge holder, whoever crossed him, he would remember and seek revenge. Even if he didn't retaliate immediately, he would find an opportunity to strike back hard. And now, an opportunity presented itself to Xu Yan. Paying Hao's arm was broken, which would definitely affect his career, and capturing the First Order Beast Tamer Zhong Liang was a significant achievement. If he could leverage the power of the Yi family, bringing down Pei Yinghao would be a piece of cake. Xu Yan followed He Yuan Liang to the chief's office. Chief Lu Yuan Feng had been eagerly awaiting Xu Yan's arrival. The young man named Xu Yan left a deep impression on Lu Yunfeng. Far surpassing Pei Yinghao in vitality, far surpassing his own spiritual value, now there is another strong man who can subdue a first order beast tamer barehanded. Just thinking about it made Lu Yunfeng's scalp tingle. This kind of talent is almost certain to be able to enter the top 10 beast taming universities, it just depends on how the other party chooses. Faced with such a young talent, Lu Yuanfeng had every reason to make friends. Xu Yan had just appeared at the office door, and Lu Yunfeng quickly went up to greet him, showing concern for Xu Yan. Throughout the afternoon, Xu Yan discussed the reward money and paying house situation for a full two hours. The final result reached by the two was, Xu Yan received a reward of 1 million. Pei Yinghao was transferred to the town police station to do clerical work and was not allowed to return to Linhai within five years. Xu Yan was very satisfied with this result. In the course of chatting with Lu Yuanfeng, Xu Yan also learned why Pei Yinghao and his night owl had been injured before. It turned out that recently there had been several malicious attacks against beast tamers in Linhai city. The police station mobilized forces to investigate and finally identified Zhong Liang and his group. Even before yesterday's battle, the police station had clashed with those involved in the case, Pei Yinghao's injury was left from that time. According to the information we have at the police station, in addition to Zhong Liang's group, there are other criminal groups that have not surfaced. Mr. Zhang, although you are not a beast tamer, you still need to be careful. Xu Yan nodded at the words. After meeting with senior Song Yunxi tomorrow, I should discuss with her. I always feel that this world is not as simple as I thought. Even someone as strong as Zhong Liang, a first order beast tamer like Pei Yinghao, turns to crime, enriches himself, and looks like he's on his last legs. Is there some other reason behind this? In the evening, at the entrance of Lin Hai Middle School, since Xu Yan was taken away by the police station yesterday, discussions about him have not stopped. At first, everyone speculated that Xu Yan might have taken some forbidden drugs to forcibly enhance his vitality, which led to the police station's investigation. However, the school immediately stepped in to stop the rumors. But rumors are like a plague, 
without controlling the source, they cannot be stopped. Xu Yan did not come to school all day today, and the topic exploded instantly. Some said Xu Yan had been secretly detained by the police station, some said Xu Yan had a side effect from taking forbidden drugs and was now lying in the hospital, even more absurdly, some said Xu Yan's body had already been cremated because they heard from an unknown source that a young man had been cremated at the Linhai City Crematorium today. Of course, besides the topic of Xu Yan, the news from Ma Chaozhang community yesterday also remained a hot topic among the students. After all, the thought of terrorists led by beast tamers lurking not far from them made people feel scared and a little excited. That Mr. Jiang is amazing, the news said he single-handedly subdued a first-order beast tamer, incredibly brave. I really want to meet this hero. Su Ji Wei, who came out of class 10, said with admiration. Beside him, Zhang Biao also looked admiringly, I heard Mr. Jiang is just an ordinary person, and an ordinary person can defeat a beast tamer, really extraordinary. Do you think this Mr. Jiang could be Xu Yan? Chen Cixi, who was walking among the crowd after school, asked absent-mindedly. She happened to overhear Su Ji Wei and other students talking and approached to ask, Class monitor, are you going crazy thinking about Xu Yan? I know you are very worried about him, but anyone who knows Xu Yan would never associate Xu Yan with Mr. Jiang. Zhang Biao, who sat in front of Xu Yan, shook his head. Su Ji Wei also agreed. But Chen Cixi always felt something was strange. Ma Chao Jiang community, Mr. Jiang, isn't this coincidence too much of a coincidence? Are all the residents of Ma Chaozhang community surnamed Jiang? Hey, I don't know what's going on with Xu Yan. If he doesn't come to school tomorrow, let's go check on him, okay? Su Jiwei and Xu Yan have been deskmates for over a year, and they have a deep bond as classmates, which is why Su Jiwei took Xu Yan to the black market. Xu Yan caused a stir for a few days and was suddenly taken away by the security bureau. He must have been scared out of his wits, I can imagine him shivering under the covers, trembling as he says, Uncle Policeman, I know I was wrong. Ha ha, Zhang Biao laughed heartily, and Su Jiwei joined in. However, Chen Cixi, who was with them, was not in the same mood. After bidding farewell to Su Jiwei and the others, Chen Cixi decided to go to Xu Yan's house in the Macau River community to see what had happened. As the class monitor, it was her duty to care about the well-being of her classmates. Finding an excuse in her heart, Chen Cixi took a bus to the entrance of the Macau River community. She entered the old neighborhood and went straight to the door of room 601 in building 10. She knocked on the door repeatedly for about 10 minutes, but no one came out to open it. Is no one home? Xu Yan was indeed not at home. After coming out of the security bureau in the afternoon, he planned to visit the black market again. With a reward of 1 million, Xu Yan's personal wealth had exceeded 1 million. With money in hand, he naturally wanted to spend it. The items in the black market were diverse, and he might find some treasures. Xu Yan also wanted to exchange his beast egg for a beast ball. The beast ball was like a house for the beast. If a first-tier beast ball was a commercial property, then the low-quality beast ball that the one-eyed shop owner gave Xu Yan was like a rural mud house, far inferior to the former. After his experience at the black market last time, Xu Yan went alone with a large sum of money towards the black market. At 5 o'clock in the afternoon, Blackwater Town. The sun had not yet set, and the whole town was bathed in dazzling light. However, many ordinary people living in Blackwater Town never knew that beneath their feet was an underground black market where various shady transactions took place. Xu Yan arrived at a small courtyard in Blackwater Town. Here, he met the person who had received him when he came with Su Jiwei and Zhang Biao a few days ago. Xu Yan hadn't noticed anything wrong a few days ago, but now, looking at the person who received him, he could clearly sense a strong aura emanating from him. It was estimated to be at least 100 points. Although not much, such a high aura value was rare among ordinary people, and even among some aspiring beast masters. This person with an aura value of 100 was just a gatekeeper. How terrifying must the controlling force of this black market be? Xu Yan remained calm and didn't engage in small talk with the man. In such an unfamiliar place, keeping quiet was the best choice. Although Xu Yan remained silent, the man who received him kept his gaze on him. After a while, the man couldn't contain his curiosity and asked Xu Yan, I'm called Tiniu, young man, do I look familiar to you? Have we met before? Xu Yan remained silent. Tiniu furrowed his brows and continued to ponder. It hadn't been long since Xu Yan and the others had come to the black market, and after a brief thought, Tiniu connected a memory of someone with Xu Yan. If he wasn't mistaken, this young man in front of him had bought a stinky egg for 5,000 yuan in the one-eyed shop a few days ago, right? After a few days, his aura value had surpassed his own. How was that possible? Tiniu was shocked, from every angle, this young man was the same kid who had bought the stinky egg a few days ago. After all, there are not many people willing to be taken advantage of these days. 
It is rare for someone to be willing to spend money at the One-Eyed Dragon's shop, let alone pay 5,000 yuan for a cursed item. Xu Yan originally didn't want to pay attention to Tiniu, but his strong spirit allowed him to feel Tiniu sizing him up. It's not a good thing to have this uncle staring at me all the time. Why is the elevator so slow today? Xu Yan pondered for a moment, then cleared his throat and asked, Brother Tiniu, I remember that there are different levels of purchasing here, if I want to buy something higher end, how can I increase my purchasing level? Xu Yan, Su Jiwei, and Zhang Bia were only allowed to stay in the black market for half an hour last time. Only a few shops like the One-Eyed Dragon allowed them to make purchases. This time, Xu Yan's goal was to buy a tier 3 beast ball. The higher the tier of the beast ball, the higher level beast it can contain. Xu Yan calculated that after receiving the reward money from the security bureau today, he had a terrifying 114 system points available for allocation. What does 114 points mean? Xu Yan had only added one point to the species value of the beast egg initially, and his health had reached 113 points, more than Zhou Ping from Linhai High School's key class. Xu Yan planned to allocate all these system points to the species value of the beast egg after returning home tonight. With all 114 system points added to the species value of the beast egg, Xu Yan couldn't imagine how high his beast value would expand to. If he chose a normal or low tier beast ball, it was very likely that he wouldn't be able to contain the beast egg. That's why Xu Yan decided to come here to buy the beast ball on a whim. You need to spend a certain amount in the black market to increase your purchasing level. By the way, little brother, what do you want to buy? I can help you calculate how much money you need to qualify for the purchase. Last time he came with Su Jiwei, Tinia didn't even look at him directly. But this time, the other party was so thoughtful in helping him plan. Sometimes Xu Yan couldn't help but marvel at this world where the strong prey on the weak. I plan to buy a tier 3 beast ball. My budget is within 200,000. The market price of a tier 3 beast ball is 200,000. Xu Yan didn't choose a regular beast store but came to the black market, not only with the mentality of getting a bargain but also with a bit of a treasure hunt. For a tier 3 beast ball, the lowest price here is 150,000. And to buy a tier 3 beast ball, little brother, you need to spend over 100,000 in our black market. This 100,000 doesn't count towards the purchase of the beast ball. Tinio carefully calculated for Xu Yan with his fingers. Xu Yan's eyes widened at the words, So you mean if I want to buy a tier 3 beast ball from you, the minimum spending would be 250,000? Little brother, 250,000 is already considered low. Do you know that someone spent 10 million here yesterday to buy a beast egg? That was a spectacular scene. Your money is just a drop in the bucket. And this 250,000 is different from what a barber shop would ask you to become a member. Everything you buy with your money will go into your own pocket. We only take a cut from the shop owners in the black market. Tiniu was afraid that Xu Yan would be dissatisfied and explained several more sentences in a row. Xu Yan wasn't really concerned about the 250,000. He just felt that this kind of forced spending was a bit annoying. Ding while the two were chatting, the elevator reached the bottom floor. Just as Xu Yan and Tiniu stepped out of the elevator, Tiniu whispered a few words to the two people standing next to the elevator. After a while, Tiniu returned to Xu Yan with a smile on his face, little brother, I've talked to them. Even if you don't spend here tonight, you can stay for two hours. During this time, you can explore here, when the time is up, I'll take you out. Tiniu was really giving Xu Yan face. Last time Xu Yan came, the other party was strict and said she could only stay for half an hour, and it was indeed only half an hour. Not even giving face to Su Jiwei. But this time, Tai No unexpectedly made an exception and let Xu Yan stay for two hours. From this move, it is clear how much he values Xu Yan. Xu Yan is not a fool, even without Tai No saying it, he can understand Tai No's intentions. After parting ways with Tai No, Xu Yan wandered alone in the black market. Last time she came in a hurry, Xu Yan only noticed the shops related to mythical beasts in the black market, but she did not expect that besides the mythical beast shops, there were also shops selling aphrodisiacs, love potions, and other strange things in the black market. It's no wonder it's called the black market. Things that are on the market, things that are not on the market, can all be found here. Woof 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 Xu Yan had only taken a few steps when she suddenly heard a barking sound not far from her. Looking in the direction of the sound, Xu Yan then realized that the creature making the barking sound was not a normal dog at all, but a fire dog engulfed in flames. And this fire dog was currently unleashed, flames were constantly bursting out all over its body, directly igniting the shops next to the black market. The fire dog rampaged, destroying over a dozen shops with its poisonous touch. Now, this dog was charging towards Xu Yan at lightning speed. Damn, does this dog have rabies? It doesn't look quite normal, Xu Yan immediately dodged upon seeing this lion-sized flame dog. 
At the same time, his gaze swept over the dog, and several pieces of information appeared in front of Xu Yan, mythical beast, flame dog, type, fire type mythical beast, level, LV50, talent level, A, growth potential, S, status, suppressed in frenzied, training direction, the flame dog has just entered the tyrant period from adulthood, its body is burned by unbearable heart fire. Severe pain has plunged it into a suppressed and frenzied state, trying to give it some love potion can help the flame dog absorb and transform the heart fire, thereby enhancing its strength. HP, 793, Spirit, 50, External Skeleton, 120, Internal Skeleton, 132, First Tier Skill, Flame Charge, Second Tier Skill, Burn. A level 50 flame dog, the highest level mythical beast Xu Yan had seen so far. However, the situation of this mythical beast was somewhat unusual, as it actually needed a love potion to be cured. Could it be that this dog was in heat? Xu Yan looked at the rampaging flame dog with a strange expression. Finally, after the dog had wreaked havoc for a full 10 minutes, a plump lady in a mink coat appeared, holding a mythical beast ball and recalled the flame dog into it. Baby, my baby, what's wrong with you? The plump lady's fiery red lips kissed the trembling mythical beast ball, tears streaming down her big eyes, showing a deep empathy with the flame dog. Phew, it's finally over. Everyone in the black market breathed a sigh of relief when they saw the plump lady appear. Xu Yan also sighed in relief, about to leave but was suddenly stopped by a man with a creepy appearance, hey handsome, do you want to buy some love potion? Guaranteed effective, 1 drop, the goddess turns into a slut, 2 drops, the slut turns into a bitch, 3 drops, endless entanglement, and transparency. Xu Yan. Just as he was speechless, the situation in the field suddenly changed. The mythical beast ball that the plump lady had been trembling with suddenly exploded. Yes, the mythical beast ball exploded. The explosion wasn't the most important thing, what was important was that the flame dog that ran out of the mythical beast ball was now standing next to Xu Yan. Oh my goodness. The boss who was selling strange potions to Xu Yan immediately dropped the potion in his hand and ran away. Xu Yan had also wanted to run, but when he saw the flame dog staring at him, he immediately dared not move. Xu Yan dared not easily expose his back to the eyes of this flame dog, otherwise he would not know how he would die. A man and a dog confronted each other at the entrance of the shop selling love potions, with Lao Lu, who didn't mind big things, taking photos on the side. The atmosphere gradually became tense. The flames on the flame dog became more intense, and Xu Yan was about 3 meters away from it, feeling like his body was being dehydrated by the heat. Is this the power of a fifth order beast? Even if it doesn't move, it can still bring me so much pressure. Facing a fifth order beast, Xu Yan felt a great pressure. However, despite the pressure, Xu Yan was not afraid. In a few breaths, Xu Yan's heart sank, and suddenly he fiercely threw the love potion in his hand towards the flame dog. One bottle was not enough, so he threw two. Xu Yan recklessly squandered the strange potions in the shop. Damn it, don't you want to eat this? I'll let you eat your fill for free. Xu Yan threw all the love potions in the shop out, and after some time, he felt the heat dissipating around him. When Xu Yan came to his senses and looked closely, he was surprised to see that the previously ferocious flame dog was now lying on the ground, licking the water stains on the ground bit by bit. And a part of this flame dog was still emitting a flame that flowed like water. After the flame dog licked up all the remaining potion on the ground, it affectionately walked over to Xu Yan and rubbed against his body. This scene stunned everyone present. Auntie Pang, in particular, looked incredulously at her flame dog, as if she was getting to know her beast all over again. Of course, some were happy and some were crying. The owner of the love potion shop was bleeding in his heart at this moment. All his good stuff had been ruined sob. The flame dog seemed much gentler now, was it the effect of the love potion? With a curious attitude, Xu Yan looked again at the flame dog rubbing against him. Beast, flame dog, type, fire type beast, level, LV50, talent level, A, growth potential, S, status, confused and infatuated, training direction, overdosing on love potions will damage the flame dog's body if not treated in time, causing a significant decrease in physical values, can be improved by soaking in water for 24 hours. Health, 793, spirit, 50, external skeleton, 120, internal skeleton, 132, first tier skill, flame charge, second tier skill, burn. Watching the flame dog constantly rubbing against him, Xu Yan twitched his mouth. Did this guy drink those strange potions like they were drinks? Baby, oh my baby. Just as Xu Yan was about to leave, he saw the fat Ann and Mink suddenly rush out and pounce on the flame dog. After affectionately cuddling for a while, the tears in the fat ant's eyes finally stopped. She looked at Xu Yan, who waved his hand as if to say no need to thank him, but then heard the other party's reproachful voice, you scoundrel, how dare you throw things at my baby, you're really impatient. If there's anything wrong with my baby, you'll see how I deal with you. 
Xu Yan's expression stiffened, then a wave of anger rose. Hey, auntie, I just helped cure your dog. If you don't thank me, that's fine. But to scold me, isn't that a bit unreasonable? Dog? What dog? You're the dog. My baby is a top-level beast. Look at what you are. Even if you cured my baby, with your appearance, are you even qualified? The fat aunt sneered, and the people around, seeing her so arrogant and domineering, did not step forward to help Xu Yan, and some even flattered the fat aunt. Xu Yan could see that this fat aunt should be quite influential in the black market, which was why she spoke so confidently. Heh, if you don't believe it, forget it. Just wait until your beast's strength plummets, then I'll see where you'll cry. Xu Yan couldn't be bothered to argue with this fat aunt. Such unreasonable and rude people have no boundaries when they go crazy. Although Xu Yan is not afraid of her, she also doesn't want the other party to bother her. Hmph, if it weren't for my baby not feeling well today, I would have killed you. The fat aunt looked in the direction Xu Yan was leaving and spat on the ground fiercely. The incident with the flame dog was just a small episode. After browsing the black market, Xu Yan spent another hundred thousand yuan to buy another beast egg. I'll keep this wind chaser beast egg at home, wait for the opportunity to hatch it, and use it to guard the house. Not only beast eggs signed with beast masters can hatch beasts. Those without a contract can also hatch beasts, but they have strong independent consciousness, are dangerous, uncontrollable, and cannot be used for battle. To tame them, one must rely on establishing bonds and increasing intimacy. If beasts signed with beast masters are considered partners, then those without contracts are no different from wild monsters. Xu Yan spent a hundred thousand yuan to purchase this beast egg mainly due to the situation last night. He didn't want a repeat of what happened last night, so he had to be cautious. After spending a hundred thousand yuan on the wind chaser beast egg, Xu Yan's permissions unlocked to level 3, allowing him to purchase third tier beast balls. Xu Yan randomly entered a shop, showed his permission level, and obtained permission to enter. Customer, what items do you need? A man with an eye patch walked out in the shop. Xu Yan was stunned when he saw the man, one eyed dragon? Why is it you? The man with the eye patch, who was the shop owner, said, Sir, you misunderstood. I am not the one eyed dragon, I am his brother, one eyed worm. He is blind in his left eye, and I am blind in my right eye. Xu Yan, do you think I'm a fool? He, he, sir, you haven't been to the black market many times, it's normal not to know. In fact, we are twin brothers. He sells beast eggs, and I sell beast balls, potions, and other items. All right, all right, I don't care if you're a dragon or a worm, just get me a third tier beast ball. Xu Yan was not interested in listening to his chatter. Even if this shop owner was called one eyed maggot, it was not his concern. He just wanted to buy the beast ball and go home quickly. He, sir, don't worry, I'll get you the third tier beast ball right now. By the way, sir, we just received a batch of beast eggs in the store, all good quality. Are you sure you don't want to take a look? Everything is at least 20% off. Okay, I'll take a look, you get me the beast ball. In fact, Xu Yan had seen beast eggs in many shops before, trying to find a rare one like the SSS grade demon egg. However, it was clear that SSS grade beast eggs were rare finds. Xu Yan's luck in finding one was already a stroke of luck, so it was unlikely to happen again. There probably won't be any good beast eggs here. Xu Yan casually scanned the incubation dishes containing beast eggs, not seeing many, but noticing a strange figure in a black robe holding a small hammer and tapping on a beast egg. Aren't you afraid of breaking it and having to compensate the owner? Xu Yan joked. This guy seemed interesting, so Xu Yan couldn't help but approach and inquire. Of course, being interesting was one reason. The main reason was that Xu Yan clearly saw that the beast egg this guy was tapping with the small hammer had a growth talent reaching SSS grade. Wind spirit snake beast egg type, wind element beast egg talent level, SS status, unhatched health, zero spirit, zero external skeleton, zero internal skeleton, zero SS level beast egg, rare and hard to come by. If it weren't for the price of this beast egg being 2 million, Xu Yan would have bought it without hesitation. The black-robed person ignored Xu Yan and continued to tap on the wind spirit snake beast egg with their small hammer. Brother, let me advise you, this beast egg is just a bad egg, don't waste your time with your little hammer, you'll really lose 2 million. The one next to it priced at 1 million is good, it has reached S-level growth value, by that one, it's more cost-effective. Xu Yan touched his nose, calmly persuading the black-robed person. The beast egg priced at 1 million, Xu Yan recommended it with a mindset of you buy what I recommend, I won't buy it. Xu Yan also had thoughts about this wind spirit snake beast egg, but due to financial constraints, he could only persuade the black robed person to give up the 2 million one and choose the 1 million one. He planned to come back and buy it secretly when he had enough money. Do you understand how to choose a beast egg? Xu Yan kept hovering around the black robed person, occasionally interjecting, like an old man watching others play chess, giving advice. Even if the black robed person had a good temper, 
Xu Yan's words made him somewhat impatient, and he casually asked, Huh? This voice, why does it sound like a woman? Whether it sounded like a woman or not was not important, keeping this black-robed person engaged was Xu Yan's top priority. I am a regular customer of the shop owner, very familiar with the things in his shop. You can trust my judgment, but compared to trusting you, I trust the little hammer in my hand more. The black-robed woman chuckled and continued to tap on the wind spirit snake beast egg with her small hammer. She only stopped when the one-eyed bug came over. Sir, here is the beast egg you wanted, original price 150,000, with a 20% discount, you can take it for 120,000. 120,000 was lower than what Xu Yan had imagined, so he paid without hesitation. Shopkeeper, I'll buy the beast egg priced at 2 million. Just after Xu Yan finished the transaction with the one-eyed bug, the voice of the black-robed woman sounded next to him. All right, I'll pack it for you. Well, it's over now. Xu Yan pursed his lips, feeling somewhat helpless. If he had money, he could compete with the other party, but now that his pockets were empty and he couldn't produce 2 million, he had no chance against this wealthy woman who appeared out of nowhere. Out of sight, out of mind, Xu Yan watched the precious beast egg fall into someone else's hands, feeling a pang of regret and immediately left. After leaving the one-eyed bug shop, Xu Yan wandered around the black market for a while. Suddenly, someone tapped his shoulder. When Xu Yan turned around, he found that it was Iron Bull. It hadn't been two hours yet, why was he looking for him? Iron Bull, what's the matter? Xu Yan asked calmly. Hey, little brother, I've been looking for you. Do you know that the organizers of the black market are looking for you? Iron Bull looked worried, with a hint of fear in his anxious expression. Looking for me? Why? Xu Yan was puzzled. Oh, what else could it be? Do you remember that dog just now? That was the beast of the town mayor's wife. You fed that dog so many strange potions in a hurry, and now that dog is half dead. So the town mayor's wife is ready to catch you to vent her anger. Hearing this, Xu Yan furrowed his brow. It hadn't been long since then, how could the side effects of taking a large amount of love potions start so quickly? Hey, little brother, come with me quickly, I'll take you away from here. It'll be too late if we wait any longer. With that, Iron Bull grabbed Xu Yan's hand and ran. Okay, Iron Bull, thank you so much. Xu Yan was full of gratitude towards Iron Bull. If it weren't for Iron Bull, I'm afraid I would have been taken hostage by that fat ant and her black evil forces. Hey, why are you saying these things? Actually, I've long been fed up with the mayor and his gang. You helped me vent my anger by messing up the mayor's wife's dog, but it also helped me. Help each other, help each other, it's only right. Xu Yan smiled shyly. The two of them ran a little way and spent about 10 minutes finding a dark alley to hide in. At the entrance of the alley, Iron Bull stuck his head out and looked around. After a while, he breathed a sigh of relief when he saw no suspicious individuals appearing. Phew, luckily no one is following us. Yeah, luckily no one is following us. Behind Iron Bull, Xu Yan, who had initially appeared somewhat timid, suddenly raised his voice sharply. Iron Bull was slightly surprised to hear this voice, and as he turned around, he saw a coconut-sized beast ball heading towards his forehead. Ouch! Iron Bull's left eye was suddenly struck by Xu Yan, and his eye instantly swelled up. What are you doing? Iron Bull couldn't understand why this kid, whom he was clearly helping, was now hitting him with a beast ball. What am I doing? I'm going to beat you, dare to deceive me, see if you have the ability. I have sharp eyes, how could I be deceived by trash like you? Xu Yan said as his actions continued. His whole body erupted with 128 points of chi and blood, and Iron Bull was immediately struck hard by him, screaming in pain. After Xu Yan had hit him countless times, Iron Bull's figure began to become illusory. At one moment, the once tall and mighty Iron Bull disappeared, replaced by a small, weak man. This man had an ordinary face, but what stood out was the eye patch he wore on his head. In addition to the eye patch, a lizard about the size of a palm was perched on his shoulder. One-eyed dragon, it's you. Xu Yan immediately recognized that this person was the one-eyed dragon who had just traded a tier 3 beast ball with him. All right, you have no integrity at all, planning to deceive others, huh? Xu Yan's forehead veins bulged, and he quickly understood. He had sensed something was wrong when the Iron Bull, disguised by the one-eyed dragon, held his hand earlier. Xu Yan could view information about beasts or beast eggs when touching them, but it had no effect when touching people. When Iron Bull touched him earlier, Xu Yan's mind received several pieces of information, beast, disguised lizard, level, level 9, skill, disguise, beast trait, weak attack, outstanding disguise ability. With this information and the previous doubts, Xu Yan immediately discerned that the Iron Bull in front of him had ill intentions leading to the scene of Xu Yan attacking wildly with the beast ball. When did you realize? The one-eyed dragon's other eye swelled into a big lump from Xu Yan's strikes, making it difficult for him to open his eyes. Oomph, 
I noticed it at first sight of you, Xu Yan boasted without blushing or panting, as long as he could show off in front of the one-eyed dragon. A few days ago, when I saw you, your chi and blood were similar to an ordinary person's, today, when you came again, it had surpassed mine. I was curious about what was going on. Is that your reason for attacking me? Xu Yan furrowed his brow, not having felt it during his last visit. This time, he personally experienced the danger in the black market. Traders like the one-eyed dragon, who deceive others, were not uncommon in the black market. This was a gray area where the law couldn't reach, making it easy for those with weak strength or no powerful background to be targeted. Yes, and I quickly have an answer now. Despite being hammered by Xu Yen and turning into a pig's head, and his disguised lizard hiding in his pocket, the one-eyed dragon remained confident. Boasting shamelessly, now it's your turn, let's see if you can still act mysterious. Xu Yen hates the kind of villain who acts mysterious and profound even when facing death, although he has never killed anyone, he must learn some things for his own safety. Have you seen my twin brother yet? His name is One-Eyed Worm. After he finishes dealing with the situation over there, he will come here to meet me. Let's calculate the time, he should be almost here, right? If you run now, you might still make it, he he he. Ha, is that guy really your brother? Are you talking about him? In Shuyin's confusion, a woman's voice suddenly sounded at the entrance of the alley. Who is it, playing tricks, come out. One-Eyed Dragon, although appearing calm on the surface, actually lacked a sense of security to an extreme degree. His only eye was almost blinded by Xu Yin's blows. Now, anything unexpected made him feel targeted. And indeed it was. The sound of a heavy object falling to the ground rang out, and One-Eyed Dragon was frightened and quickly dodged to the side. Brother, help me this woman, this woman is not easy to deal with, One-Eyed Dragon, although unable to see clearly, knew from the voice that it was his brother. Xiao Chong, Xiao Chong, are you okay, nothing happened? Brother, this woman is a cop, she's enforcing the law, I'm no match for her at all. One-Eyed Worm was at a loss, he had been in the black market for at least 10 years, never expecting to fall on his face in front of a woman. Are you okay? A woman dressed in a black robe approached Xu Yen to inquire about the situation. Obviously, Xu Yen shrugged. He had also treated the One-Eyed Worm as an ordinary guest before, not expecting the other party to have another identity. I see you don't have a contract beast, so I thought you might be in danger. I didn't expect you to be able to beat a first order beast tamer so badly on your own. Xu Yan smiled awkwardly without explaining. The reason he was able to beat One-Eyed Dragon like this was not only due to the unexpected attack but also because One-Eyed Dragon had significant issues himself. This guy was far inferior to Zhong Liang, his vitality and blood values were even lower than his own. Such a guy was actually a first order beast tamer, Xu Yan felt there was some exaggeration in this. I didn't expect to have unexpected gains on this return to Linhai. The woman in black robe took out a beast ball and threw it at the disguised lizard of one-eyed dragon. In the next moment, the beast ball forcibly absorbed the disguised lizard. Your beast ball can actually absorb other people's beasts? Xu Yin, seeing this scene, was surprised. Oh, you mean this. I just used some special techniques to temporarily take it away. If I could really take away other people's beasts, the whole world would be in chaos. The woman in black robe smiled, seeming to think that what she said was not a secret, so she did not hide it. Are you from the security bureau? No, just happened to come to Linhai to make some extra money, didn't expect to have unexpected gains while strolling in the black market today. With that, the woman in black robe stretched out her embroidered robe, and a one-foot-long snake with a green body and a pair of small wings on its back wrapped around her arm. Xiao Qing, use furious wind. A light blue vortex blew out from the wings of the green snake and swept over the two brothers of one-eyed dragon. The two were immediately blown dizzy, staggering, obviously passing out. Xu Yan stared wide-eyed at the small green snake on the woman in black robe's arm. Wind spirit snake. Didn't you just get its beast egg? How did it hatch so quickly? Xu Yan was dumbfounded. He was very sure that the green snake in front of him was the one that was still in the beast egg just now. After all, the system wouldn't lie to him. Hatching a beast is not difficult. You probably haven't successfully hatched a beast to become a beast tamer yet, right? Don't be surprised. Many things you don't understand will become clear once you become a beast tamer. At this stage, just enjoy the fun of hatching a beast little by little. The woman in black robe chuckled with her hand covering her mouth. Saying it's the same as not saying it, Xu Yan pursed his lips. He just took a glance at the wind spirit snake, which is healthy with no major problems. However, there is a major problem in the direction of cultivation. If not reminded, the black robed woman may have a hard time cultivating this wind spirit snake. Xu Yan just thought about it in his heart and didn't speak up. By the way, one of these two people was captured by me. You can take them to claim credit, but I also want a share of the treasures on them. It's best to split it 
Of course, if you think you're strong enough to take it all, I have nothing to say. Xu Yan pointed at the one-eyed dragon. He seemed to be negotiating with the other party, but he was also a bit nervous. After all, there are no laws to bind this place, and if this little girl really wants to do something bad, he would only have to run for his life. Fortunately, Xu Yan's worries did not come true. After listening to Xu Yan's words, the black-robed woman just smiled and casually threw the beast ball containing the disguised lizard that she had just taken away to Xu Yan. Here, now this lizard is yours. Xu Yan? I don't need it, and this lizard's species value and talent level are not high, except for the disguise skill that is eye-catching, it has no special features, you need it more than I do. Xu Yan was stunned, how do I tame it then? It's up to your own ability. If you can't handle it, take it to the beast center in the city, or you can sell it directly or release it. The black-robed woman didn't say much to Xu Yan, she murmured softly, snow shadow doll, ice freeze. As her voice fell, a freezing beam shot from the black-robed woman's chest towards the one-eyed dragon and instantly turned them into an ice sculpture. After doing all this, the black-robed woman turned to Xu Yan and said, I'm waiting for someone here, do you want to come with me? Her voice carried a hint of teasing. It was like an older school sister teasing a younger school brother. No, you go ahead, I left the gas on at home, I have to go. Xu Yan left with the beast ball, not wanting to get involved with mysterious people. Although this woman is a bit strange, she is surprisingly generous. She just gives away a beast when she says she will, I hope she doesn't regret it. Xu Yan didn't stay any longer, he left the black market and returned to the surface. It was already past 7 o'clock in the evening. Xu Yan hailed a car and headed home. On the way, Xu Yan passed by two vehicles from the Lehigh City Security Bureau. At 10 o'clock in the evening, in a dark room in Blackwater Town. A woman in a black robe opened the door under the knocking of the Lehigh City Security Bureau officers. Among these officers, the director of the Security Bureau, Lu Tianfeng, was particularly prominent. As soon as the black-robed woman appeared, Lu Tianfeng, who looked nervous, immediately pushed aside the officers next to him and squeezed over. Miss Song, why didn't you tell me you were coming back to Lehigh City? You quietly helped Lehigh City catch two wanted criminals again, I don't know how to thank you. Director Lu, you're too polite, Lehigh City is still my home, even though I don't live here anymore, I still come back occasionally. And thanks to the reward from Director Lu a year ago, I was able to get into the Golden Capital Beast University. This time, the reward for these two guys is also up to Director Lu. Lu Tianfeng was stunned for a moment, then immediately instructed the officers beside him, come over and record the merits for Miss Song Yanshi, and immediately request approval for the reward from above, quickly. On his way home, Xu Yan stopped by the bank to withdraw the money from the card that Yuru had given him. It had to be said that Yuru was indeed generous. There was a full 1 million yuan in this card. This 1 million could buy a 100 square meter apartment in the center of Lehigh City. Xu Yan was in a good mood after withdrawing tens of thousands of yuan from the ATM, but after withdrawing several times, something that puzzled Xu Yan happened. His wealth increased, but the system points did not increase? Xu Yan, who doesn't believe in superstitions, tried several times, but the system points did not increase. Could it be that the money earned through the system's abilities cannot be converted into system points? Xu Yan thought it was very likely. If he relied on the system's abilities, he was confident he could achieve a small goal in a year. The system would not allow such a bug to exist. It seems that to become a top beast tamer, I also have to work hard myself. Xu Yan was not discouraged. There is no such thing as a free lunch in this world, and the system had already given him a lot. When Xu Yan returned home, the house was empty. Tang Ro was still working the night shift and wouldn't be back so soon. During this time, Xu Yan brought his half-meter high demon egg to the living room. Now I have 114 system points, just like last time, let's add them all to the racial value. Beast egg, type, demon beast egg, talent level, SSS, racial value, 81 points, HP, 128 points, spirit, 41 points, external skeleton, 0, internal skeleton, 0. After scanning the information of the demon egg, Xu Yan directly added all the system points to the racial value of the demon egg. Ding, racial value reaches 100 points. The current racial value is full, and it can continue to increase after the beast evolves. When the racial value of the demon egg increased from 81 to 100, Xu Yan heard a system prompt in his ear. So I have to evolve before I can continue to increase the racial value? Xu Yan was surprised and checked the panel information of the demon egg again. Beast egg, type, demon beast egg, talent level, SSS, racial value, 100 points, can continue to increase after the beast evolves, HP, 150 points, spirit, 65 points, external skeleton, 0, internal skeleton, 0, training direction, hold the beast egg in the sun for 2 hours every day, continue for 10 days, unlock 25% of the hatching progress, 
The HP and spirit values have increased significantly, but not as obvious as the first time. It seems to have reached a bottleneck. Xu Yin frowned. He spent 19 system points, but the results were not very satisfactory. If a real beast tamer knew about this, they would probably be shocked. Before hatching, the HP reached 150 points, and the spirit reached a terrifying 65 points, higher than most first-tier beast tamers. After increasing the racial value, the demon egg actually has a hatching progress. It seems that the time for this little guy to hatch is not far away. After thinking for a while, Xu Yan organized all his gains for the night and went to the kitchen to make dinner. The night passed quietly, and Xu Yan woke up early the next day. The homeroom teacher, Old Lu, called to inquire about Xu Yan's health. Xu Yan, are you feeling better? Today is the day to pick up Song Yunxi. If you're really not feeling well, I'll have Su Jiwei go in your place. Don't worry, I'm feeling fine. What time will Song Senior arrive? I'll go with other classmates to pick her up later. Xu Yan didn't want to miss the opportunity to ask questions freely to Song Senior as a junior. We'll leave the school at 9 in the morning. If you're not feeling well, just be at the school before 8.30. Okay. Since old Lu had excused him from class, Xu Yan naturally didn't need to pretend, and rested at home for the morning. At half past 8 in the morning, the sun rose. Xu Yan appeared on time at the entrance of Lin Hai High School. Besides himself, Xu Yan saw four other classmates who were going to pick up someone with him. You must be Xu Yan, I'm Zhou Hao from class 1, with an HP value of 110 points. A sunny youth stepped forward from the crowd to greet Xu Yan. Hello, I'm Xu Yan. I heard your HP value has reached 113 points, is that true? If it is, wouldn't you be the number one in our Lin Hai High School? A girl with neat bangs smiled mischievously at Xu Yan and asked, 113 points of vitality is quite a lot, but many of those participating in the seed plan also have vitality values exceeding 110 points. By the time of the five schools joint exam, their vitality values should have a breakthrough. Thinking about 113 points carefully, it's not that high. Just as the girl finished speaking, a man with glasses interjected, that's right, those who participate in the seed plan are all freaks, Zhou Hao, didn't you also participate in the seed plan and take a temporary leave to come out? How are those people? Wang Jing, Long Kuan, you two don't need to praise me, compared to those guys, I'm just slightly above average. Zhou Hao chuckled at the two, then looked at Xu Yan, it's a pity that Xu Yan didn't participate in the seed plan, otherwise that guy with the surname Ji wouldn't find it so easy to secure the top spot in vitality. Xu Yan listened to the conversation among the group, realizing they were talking about the seed plan but he wasn't particularly interested. By the way, Xu Yan, why did the security bureau take you away the day before yesterday? Since you're here today, there shouldn't be any issues, right? Wang Jing, the girl, asked Xu Yan with wide eyes, a curious expression on her face. Oh, nothing much, just assisting the security bureau in catching a petty thief. Xu Yan casually replied. He he, helping the security bureau catch petty thieves, Will the security bureau also send a flag of punish evil and promote good to your house later? Long Cohen with glasses sneered. Xu Yan ignored this guy, who was clearly dissatisfied with him. Xu Yan generally tried to stay away from such people as much as possible. Sensing the awkward atmosphere, Zhou Hao laughed and changed the subject. Let's not talk about this anymore. Our task today is to pick up Senior Song. Look, Principal Wan's Toyota Alfred Keys. Let me show you the luxury car of Principal Wang. Zhou Hao grinned and invited Xu Yan and a few other classmates into the car, resembling a taxi driver soliciting passengers. After about 10 minutes, they arrived at the Lehigh City High Speed Rail Station, where Zhou Hao stood at the exit with a large sign that read Senior Song Yunxi. Little did they know that a voice behind them suddenly spoke, You guys are students from Lehigh Middle School, right? Hiss, why does this voice sound familiar, could it be? Upon hearing the voice behind him, Xu Yan stood still in a daze for a while. Are you Senior Song Yunxi? Zhou Hao and the others immediately turned around upon hearing the greeting from behind, their faces showing joy. Xu Yan also turned his head, and the two locked eyes, both momentarily stunned. Ha, huh, it's you? At this moment, Song Yunxi looked completely different from the figure in a black robe last night. Standing at one, seven meters tall, she wore a black and gold school uniform that accentuated her exquisite figure. Without makeup, she was still a stunning beauty, even more so than female celebrities on TV. Her ponytail highlighted a sense of competence, giving a reliable and reassuring feeling. Senior Song, hello. I'm Xu Yan. Xu Yan nodded towards Song Yunxi, but he was puzzled, didn't she return early? Why did she come to the school to pick someone up? The woman in the black robe he encountered yesterday was undoubtedly Song Yunxi, and Xu Yan was very familiar with her voice. Seeing that Xu Yan and Song Yunxi seemed to know each other, the four accompanying classmates were taken aback. 
Zhou Ha from Class 1 asked in surprise, Xu Yan, do you know Senior Song? We've met before. Xu Yan didn't want to talk too much about the black market incident, so he just casually replied to Zhou Hao. However, the more he brushed it off, the more suspicious his classmates became. After all, students of this age group were all active thinkers with a high ability to imagine scenarios. Wow, Xu Yan, you actually sneaked out and contacted Senior Song first. Are you and Director Wang involved in some kind of shady deal? Wang Jing said casually, with a critical look on her face towards Xu Yan. Hee hee, I never expected that the two of us would have such a connection, seeing you is like seeing myself from a year ago. Song Yunqi was in a good mood, teasing Xu Yan intentionally by not speaking. Senior Song, please don't make fun of me, I still need to work hard, Xu Yan modestly smiled. The way these two acted made others look at them with suspicion. Long Kuan, who had not been friendly towards Xu Yan earlier, had a slight change in expression and asked, Senior Song, how did you meet Xu Yan? That's a long story. In short, Xu Yan helped me solve a big case, and I haven't even had a chance to thank him yet, Song Yunqi chuckled, and everyone turned to look at Xu Yan, their expressions more intriguing than if they had just opened a can of worms. Solved a big case? Could it be that what Xu Yan said earlier about catching a small thief was true? This kid Xu Yan, who was about the same age as them, how could he do such mysterious and strange things? Even Senior Song praised him so much? Among the five people who came to pick up Song Yunqi, the other four were students from the key class of Linhai High School. They usually looked down on students from regular classes. If Xu Yan hadn't reached 113 points of vitality, they wouldn't have paid any attention to him. Even though Xu Yan's vitality had reached 113 points, they felt that their skills were similar to his, just lacking a bit of luck. Now, hearing Song Yunqi say that Xu Yan quietly helped her solve a big case, everyone was stunned. As students, they wouldn't dare to think about such things, but Xu Yan had already done it? The atmosphere at the scene was a bit awkward. Long Kuan, who didn't like Xu Yan, remained silent, his face somewhat gloomy, lost in thought. On the other hand, Song Yunqi seemed oblivious to the emotions of the others, continuing to chat with Xu Yan, appearing quite close to him. Song Yunqi's friendliness made Xu Yan a bit overwhelmed. Senior Song, it was just a small favor, you don't have to be so polite to me. Alright, let's walk and talk, it's already noon. Let's have lunch together before heading back to school. We can chat and if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Originally, the itinerary was supposed to be arranged by Zhou Hao, but Song Yunqi quickly convinced everyone to forget about the instructions given by Director Wang to pick up Song and return to school. Okay, let's go eat. I'm a bit hungry too. After Zhou Hao nodded, the other students had no objections. The group found a private room in a restaurant and asked Song Yunqi various questions about being a beast tamer. Senior Song, what was the scoreline for the Golden Capital Beast Taming University this year? Is there hope with a vitality value of 105 points? If the vitality value was above 95 points last year, the chances were quite high. But in recent years, universities across the country have been optimizing their student sources, and the scoreline keeps increasing every year. With 105 points, it might be a bit challenging. However, the universities in Jiangnan province are expanding their enrollment this year, and there will be more policies coming up. Just stay informed and don't miss the opportunity. Song Yunqi shared the information she knew. Ah, uh, 105 points are still not enough. I had to use several cans of Vitality Potion to break through 105 points for my beast egg. Wang Jing pouted, looking a bit disappointed. Don't worry, there are still two months left until the Beast Tamer exam. If you hatch your beast during this time, the chances are still very high. Hatch a beast? That's like a fantasy. Among the five of us, it feels like Zhou Hao has the best chance. Long Kuan adjusted his glasses and sighed involuntarily. Zhou Hao has high vitality, and with the school's resources tilted towards him, plus what we heard from teacher Fong about the relationship between beast tamers and intimacy, he has gained a lot. Even director Wang said, when it comes to who has the most hope of hatching a mythical beast before the imperial beast examination, Zhou Hao is definitely one of them. Long Kuan obviously knew a lot, and with a few words, he exposed Zhou Hao's background, making Zhou Hao a bit shy, that's just director Wang's praise, I'm actually just average. Despite saying that, pride still showed on Zhou Hao's face, indicating that he was very confident in hatching a mythical beast before the imperial beast examination. The conditions for hatching a mythical beast are actually generally the same, and one of the most important prerequisites is to have a qi and blood value of at least 120 points. Song Yunqi's gaze was sharp as she scanned the whole room, finally landing on Xu Yan. Although it's not absolute, in my opinion, the person among you most likely to hatch a mythical beast before the imperial beast examination is none other than Xu Yan. As soon as these words fell, the previously chatty classmates all fell silent. Xu Yan was eating something noisily when suddenly Song Yunqi turned the topic to him. 
He looked confused as if he hadn't heard Song Yunchi's words just now. But at this moment, Xu Yan wanted to tear Song Yunchi's cherry mouth apart. This woman was deliberately causing trouble for him. Why drag him into this? After a moment of silence, Long Kuan skeptically said, Senior Sister Song, I know you have high hopes for Xu Yan, and his qi and blood value is also the highest among us, but in just a little while, his value will be surpassed. You shouldn't be so absolute. Long Kuan, be polite when speaking to Senior Sister Song. Long Kuan's words already had a hint of opposition to Song Yinchi, so even though Long Kuan was speaking up for himself, Zhou Hao had to speak up to remind Long Kuan to be more considerate. Long Kuan sulkily lowered his head, his face showing his lack of acceptance, directly exposing it to Song Yunchi. Song Yunchi just smiled without arguing with him. Xu Yan, your qi and blood have improved a lot, haven't they? When I saw you yesterday, your qi and blood weren't as strong. Song Yunchi's eyes narrowed into crescents, as if she could see through everything on Xu Yan. Yes, yesterday I bought some materials for cultivating mythical beast eggs there, so my qi and blood got a little boost. Xu Yan explained casually, his qi and blood had increased by 22 points last night, a difference that Song Yunchi, as a mythical beast master, could definitely sense. Is that so? Song Yunchi was somewhat skeptical, but she didn't press Xu Yan for more details. Let's just leave it at that, everyone has their own opportunities. I see my shadow in you. Last year, I was just an ordinary student in the class, with average family conditions. Song Yunchi sighed, as if she were an old lady in her 70s looking back on her life feeling a lot of emotions. What, Xu Yan's qi and blood value has increased again? Song Yunchi's reaction to Xu Yan's increased qi and blood value was very calm, but Zhou Hao and the others were not. Just a few days ago, Xu Yan had already surprised everyone by reaching 113 points in qi and blood after contracting a mythical beast egg. Now, just a few days later, his value had increased again? What the hell was going on? Although Zhou Hao and the others were skeptical, as mythical beast masters, they had no reason not to believe Song Yunchi's words. Did senior sister Song notice Xu Yan's qi and blood value before saying he has a chance to hatch a mythical beast before the imperial beast examination? Xu Yan, what is your current qi and blood value? Has it reached 115 points? Wang Jing and Zhou Hao asked one after the other. Among the four, these two often talked to Xu Yan, while Long Kuan and another person had hardly spoken to Xu Yan alone. Seeing that the matter of qi and blood couldn't be hidden, Xu Yan smiled awkwardly, it should be around 115 points, I haven't tested it, so I'm not sure. You little guy, you've made progress quietly. Following last year's song Xu Ejie, this year our Lin Hai High School is going to produce such a monster like you. Zhou Hao's tone was sour, one hand hooked around Xu Yan's neck, showing a trend of strangling Xu Yan. After some playfulness, several people began to ask about Song Yunxi. The fourth classmate who had not spoken much was named Wang Tao, and his qi and blood value was the lowest among everyone, only 100 points. When Song Yunqi explained the admission score for qi and blood values at Jinling University, Wang Tao's expression seemed somewhat unnatural. After holding back for a while, Wang Tao couldn't help but ask, Senior Song, with my 100 points in qi and blood value, do I have no chance at all? This question silenced everyone present. Upon hearing his question, Song Yunqi did not consider Wang Tao's feelings and straightforwardly said, the chance is not more than 10%, you should be mentally prepared. But my uncle said I have a good chance, Wang Tao persisted. Song Yunqi, your uncle? My uncle is Director Wang. Wang Tao said somewhat proudly, puffing out his chest. So it's Director Wang, he has been in Linhai City all along and doesn't understand many things. He probably still uses last year's score line as the standard. This year's situation is somewhat special. If you want to enroll in Jinling Imperial Beast University, 100 points in qi and blood value is definitely not enough. What's so special? Wang Tao was puzzled. This year, the entire Jiangnan province's imperial beast education industry is undergoing industrial restructuring. President Liu of Jinling Imperial Beast University advocates increasing the burden on students to achieve the teaching goal of learning and applying knowledge. Song Yunxi shrugged helplessly. After hearing this, everyone's faces fell. Does this mean that even if we pass the imperial beast entrance exam, there will be even more intense competition when we enter university? Zhou Hao asked uncertainly. Exactly. The country is in great need of imperial beast masters now. If you want to develop in the direction of an imperial beast master, you should be prepared. Imperial beast masters have never been a privileged class. Only through effort will there be rewards. You are just ordinary people now, so you think imperial beast masters are superior. But once you become an imperial beast master one day, if you want to return to the peaceful days like now, it won't be so easy. Song Yunxi's words contain warnings and reminders, with a hint of envy. This speech left everyone present stunned. Xu Yan even sensed something different from Song Yunxi's words. 
It seemed that becoming an imperial beast master would entail certain dangers that ordinary people could not anticipate. Song Yunchi did not elaborate, and after a few casual remarks, she changed the topic. However, Xu Yan remembered her words. Although he didn't know what he would face after becoming an imperial beast master, his goal of becoming one remained unwavering. In this second life, he didn't want to die in confusion, only by having power could he calmly face the coming storm and protect everything he wanted to protect. After the group finished eating, it was already past 12, noon. During this time, everyone exchanged phone numbers with Song Yunshi. Song Yunshi bluntly stated that they could call her if they had any questions in the future. However, Xu Yan didn't hold much hope for this. After today, whether this phone could be connected was still unknown. The symposium hosted by Song Yunshi was scheduled to start at 3 p.m. After returning to Linhai High School, Song Yunshi was led into the office by the principal, Director Wang, and other school leaders for a discussion. As for Xu Yen, Zhou Hao and the others each returned to their respective classes. Before parting ways, Zhou Hao and Wang Jing had some tough words for Xu Yen. Xu Yen, although you are currently leading in Qi and blood value, we won't lose to you. Just wait to be stepped on by us in the five school joint exam at the beginning of next month, ha. Huh? The two didn't have any ill intentions, just a strong competitive spirit, wanting to compare themselves with Xu Yen. Xu Yen couldn't help but feel a bit amused by this. At noon, Xu Yen didn't plan to go home, so he decided to go back to the classroom to rest and prepare for the afternoon classes. But as soon as he reached the classroom door, his body suddenly froze, a pair of eyes staring at Xu Yen like a cheetah spotting its prey. Xu Yen, where have you been these past two days? Chen Cici walked over with a pout. If it wasn't for the teacher saying you were going to pick up Song Xu Ajie today, I wouldn't have known you were still alive. Xu Yen. At one o'clock in the afternoon, the sun was shining brightly. In the principal's office of Lin Hai Middle School. As the principal of Lin Hai Middle School, Zhou Yofu did not sit on his own leather office chair, but gave the chair to Song Yunchi and sat on the side sofa with Director Wang and others. Student Song, it's really a great honor for our school that you could come back to Lin Hai Middle School today. Zhou Yofu shamelessly offered Song Yunchi all the flattery he had learned in his life. Song Yunchi was indifferent to this, her attitude was average, even though Zhou Yofu in front of her was a former teacher from her alma mater she didn't show much emotional fluctuation. This meeting is just a side trip for me. I have more important things to do back in Linhai after this afternoon's meeting. I also need to use the school's beast center. I hope Principal Zhou won't refuse. Of course, of course. Zhou Yofu nodded, but with a look of doubt in his eyes, he asked Song Yunchi uncertainly, are you in a hurry to use the beast center? Could it be true as the rumors say that you are about to advance to a third level beast master? Zhou Yofu, as the principal of Linhai Middle School, was well informed so he couldn't possibly be unaware of any news about Song Yunshi. Song Yunshi, the beloved daughter of heaven who walked out of Lin Hai Middle School, attracted many high-quality students to the school. Zhou Yofu naturally paid attention to Song Yunshi at all times. Whenever the other party achieved something, Zhou Yofu would be eager to publicize it and raise the reputation of Lin Hai Middle School. I just advanced last night. Song Yunshi didn't hide it, she frankly confessed to Zhou Yofu. Upon hearing Song Yunchi's answer, Zhou Yofu was so shocked that his eyes almost popped out. Although he had guessed it earlier, when the fact came out of Song Yunchi's mouth, his body couldn't help but tremble. A third-level beast master, there was only one in the entire Linhai city, belonging to the Yi group. And Song Yunchi became a third-level beast master after just one year of contracting with a beast egg. It took the old man from the group who knows how many years. Such a beloved daughter of heaven, actually appeared in our Linhai middle school? Just the thought of it made Zhou Yofu feel dizzy and unreal. While chatting with Zhou Yofu, there was a knock on the office door. Chief Lu Tianfeng of the Security Bureau, dressed in a Security Bureau uniform, walked into the office. Principal Zhou, Director Wang, Miss Song, you're here too. Lu Tianfeng held a red banner in his hand and greeted everyone in the office one by one. Although he was the chief of the Security Bureau, his position was higher than Zhou Yofu, Director Wang, and others, but he didn't dare to act superior. After all, Zhou Yofu and Director Wang were also first-level beast masters like him. Chief Lu, what brings you here? Come, have a seat and have some afternoon tea. Director Wang welcomed him. Oh, no need for tea. I actually came this time to present a banner to a student in our school. Lu Tianfeng chuckled. Oh, how interesting. A small banner requires Chief Lu to personally deliver it. What earth-shattering event did this student in our school do? Zhou Yofu was delighted to hear that Lu Tianfeng had come specifically to deliver a banner. It seemed that in the hundred-year history of Linhai City, such a thing had never happened before. Chief Lu, is it for Xu Yen? Song Yunchi seemed to understand something when she saw Lu Tianfeng's appearance and joked, 
Chief Lu, you're not being very considerate. Yesterday catching those two twin brothers, I should get half the credit, why didn't I see you sending me a banner? Song Yunqi was not really interested in banners, but she felt that Lu Tianfeng was making a big deal out of it by personally sending a banner, so she made a joke. Ha, Miss Song really hit the nail on the head. This banner is indeed for Xu Yan, but not because of what happened last night, but for another reason. Oh, Song Yunqi was surprised by this revelation. It wasn't about last night's incident? Could it be that Xu Yan did something even more impressive than capturing the one-eyed dragon last night? Although Zhou Yofu and director Wang didn't know what Lu Tianfeng and Song Yunqi were talking about, they could sense that many things were related to a student named Xu Yan. Who is this Xu Yan? Zhou Yofu whispered to director Wang. Principal, have you forgotten? That young man with an energy value of 113 points, I invited him to join the seed plan before, but he refused. Director Wang had a deep impression of Xu Yan, so when he heard the name, he remembered the previous incident. Oh, him. Wasn't he taken away by the security bureau a few days ago? The security bureau has not informed the school of the situation, so I thought he had committed a crime. The sudden removal of Xu Yan by the security bureau caught everyone at Linhai High School off guard. The security bureau did not explain the reasons to the school in the past few days. Today, when Lu Tianfeng, as the director, came on behalf of the security bureau, it surprised Zhou Yofu and other school leaders. I believe you are all aware of the incident in the Ma Chaozhang community yesterday, right? Our security bureau organized an operation and raided a criminal gang's base. The main culprit is a first order beast tamer. During the arrest operation, he escaped in the chaos, broke the arm of one of our first order beast tamers, and finally hid in Xu Yan's home upstairs. At night, Xu Yan discovered the situation was not right, fought with him, and eventually subdued him. Lu Tianfeng's words were simple, but the situation was probably more thrilling than anyone could imagine. An ordinary high school student facing a first order beast tamer criminal who kills without blinking. The power gap between the two was like a chasm, and it could be said that Xu Yan was like a small ant in front of the other. Not only was Xu Yan not taken hostage by the other party, but he also managed to capture him alone. It takes a strong mental resilience to achieve that. Song Yunxi was also a bit confused. She thought Xu Yan was strong, and when she saw him dealing with the one-eyed dragon alone last night, she thought he was promising. But Song Yunxi could not have imagined that before dealing with the one-eyed dragon, Xu Yan had already had practical combat experience and achieved remarkable results. This junior brother is really unexpected. Song Yunxi sighed. A year ago, if she had encountered such a situation like Xu Yan did, she would probably have died many times over. Principal Zhou, Xu Yan's contribution must be recorded in his academic file and properly commended. Lu Tianfeng smiled and casually took out the physical data Xu Yan had provided at the security bureau earlier. When Zhou Yofu saw the data, he was completely stunned. The others gathered around to look, and they were all shocked. Yes, these are the class notes from the past few days. Take a good look. Don't think you can neglect your cultural studies just because you have a high energy value. Even if your energy value is high, if you fail in your cultural studies, it won't be easy to get into the Beast Tamer University. Chen Sisi handed the notebook to Xu Yan with a serious expression. Thank you for your concern, class monitor, Xu Yan said with a smile as he accepted the notebook. Xu Yan's academic performance was not bad, and Chen Sisi's notes could be a helpful addition, so he was happy to accept them. Don't give me that smile. Tell me honestly, why did the security bureau take you away? Be careful not to leave any negative records at the police station, otherwise those records will have an impact on your enrollment at the Beast Control University. Chen Sisi's worried look made Xu Yan can't help but find it somewhat amusing. Class monitor, you can rest assured. If something really happened to me, would I still be standing here talking to you now? I would have been in jail eating prison food a long time ago. Yeah, class monitor, why are you still worried about this kid? Just now I heard people from other classes say that he quietly solved a big case with Senior Song yesterday, and he's basking in the limelight. Su Jiwei's voice came from the classroom door, followed by several other classmates from class 10 who were also taking the Beast Control College entrance exam. Their eyes were filled with surprise and envy as they looked at Xu Yan. Senior Song? Big case? What's going on? Chen Cici was still puzzled, unable to understand what Su Jiwei was talking about. Class monitor, you don't know yet? The students from the top class have already spread the news, Xu Yan has known Senior Song for a long time, and they even caught a few criminals together yesterday. Hearing this, Xu Yan, as the person involved, couldn't help but smirk. Without thinking, he could guess who spread this news. Who else could it be besides Zhou Hao and the others who went to pick up Song Yunxi together? However, Xu Yan did not expect that what happened in the morning would be widely known in the afternoon. The speed of this news spreading was too fast, wasn't it? Case? 
Is it the case in the Ma Chaojun neighborhood? Shen Sisi was still confused. The only case she could think of was the criminal gang in the Ma Chaojun neighborhood the day before. Hey, it's not that one, Xu Yan is not that capable. The case he solved with Senior Song took place in the outskirts of Lehi City, in the town of Heishu. Su Jiwei waved his hand, indicating that Chen Sisi should not make baseless guesses. Hey hey, Xu Yan, you're quite something, quietly getting close to Senior Song. I heard from the students in the top class that Senior Song is a first-rate beauty, did you not do anything with Senior Song? I'm telling you, we are still high school students, we shouldn't be dating early, right, class monitor? Zhang Biao, who sat in front of Xu Yan, chuckled, his words filled with teasing and ambiguity. Young students are like this, whenever they see a male or female student getting close, someone will come out to make a fuss. Obviously, this time Zhang Biao was playing the role of a troublemaker. Originally, Zhang Biao wanted to call class monitor Chen Sisi over to lecture Xu Yan, but who knew that after hearing Zhang Biao's words, Chen Sisi's face darkened. What does it have to do with me if he's dating early? Zhang Biao, why did you put the trash can in front of the classroom during your last duty? The head teacher said it affects the class environment, your duty was unsatisfactory, so you're being punished to redo your duty for a week. Ah, isn't that in the past? Class monitor, can you help me out? Zhang Biao pouted. I did help, but the head teacher didn't accept my plea. Chen Sisi said coldly, then went straight back to her seat to prepare for the afternoon classes. Zhang Biao looked aggrieved, and Su Jiwei walked over and patted his shoulder. Zhang Biao, I hope you don't get punished for stepping into the classroom with your left foot tomorrow. Zhang Biao, huh? Until everyone dispersed, Zhang Biao stood there dazed, not knowing what he had done wrong. The first class in the afternoon was supposed to be a physical education class, but the sports teacher suddenly fell ill, so the homeroom teacher, Old Lu, took over the class. In response, the entire class 10 groaned in unison. Ahem, quiet. Our class 10 is the noisiest in the entire senior year, don't you feel embarrassed? Besides, I'm not not giving you a physical education class, I just have something to say before we start the class. Old Lu's gaze swept past Xu Yan, with a joy almost overflowing from his eyes. However, no matter what, he was still a veteran teacher, able to control his emotions and not show any special signs of losing control. The first thing is about the students in our class who are preparing to take the Beast Control College entrance exam, listen carefully. The old man Lu paused for a moment, then continued, Do you remember the Beast Master Jack Ma? After Master Jack Ma donated resources to support the development of our education in Linhai, he teamed up with the Linhai Public Security Bureau to launch the Ant Guard program. The Ant Guard program aims to cultivate excellent public security and criminal investigation forces in Linhai City, Hangchun, and other areas. Participants will receive a large amount of resources from the Ant Group. Moreover, after you graduate from university, you can directly enter the public security bureaus in various places. You can have a stable job with the government, and the highest level can enter the National Security Center. Old Man Lu's voice was not loud, but everyone present listened attentively. With such generous conditions, few people could refuse, and voices of excitement could be heard in the classroom. Teacher, what are the requirements to participate in that Ant Guard program? Curious Su Jiwei asked. The Ant Guard program has just started its first phase, with a total of three pilot cities, and our Linhai city is one of them. There is no registration system due to the small number of people. Priority is given to students with high vitality and outstanding contributions to social security in Linhai city. After old man Lu finished speaking, everyone in class 10 was stunned. Undoubtedly, the ant guard program sounded very attractive, but with only one spot, most people were destined to miss out on this opportunity. After a moment of silence, Su Jiwei, who had the second highest vitality in the class, spoke up first, Xu Yan has the highest vitality in our class and in our school. Let's choose Xu Yan. Yes, let's choose Xu Yan. Nobody else will be as good. Other students echoed Su Jiwei's words. Most young students did not have ill intentions, and they naturally chose those with strength. Xu Yan was undoubtedly the best choice. The crowd pushed Xu Yan forward, but to their surprise, old man Lu shook his head, Xu Yan's situation is special, let's talk about it later. Besides Xu Yan, do we have anyone in our class with high vitality and outstanding contributions to social security? Think carefully, there is a student in class 1 who reported his own father for drunk driving 2 years ago, and this kind of action is being considered. Have any of you done similar things? Good deeds also count. Old man Lu's words made the students in the class feel uneasy. Reporting your own father for drunk driving? Few filial children would do such a thing. After thinking for a while, the students in class 10 could only think of small deeds like helping an old lady cross the street, guiding an elderly man in the park to play chess, or stopping a park auntie from dancing in the square. Of course, these small deeds were all dismissed. 
Old Man Lu looked at the students in the class, his expression unchanged. He could understand his students, after all, when he was their age, he was just a nobody who couldn't do anything. Not everyone could be as extraordinary as that guy. Old Man Lu glanced at Xu Yen. Teacher, what's so special about Xu Yen's situation? Can you tell us? Suddenly, a curious voice rang out in the classroom. The students knew very little about Xu Yen. After all, Xu Yen was just a marginal figure before, average grades, messy hair, no ambiguous relationships with female classmates in the class, and many people overlooked his existence. If Xu Yen's vitality hadn't suddenly surged like a dark horse, many people would have forgotten his name the day after the college entrance examination. This is the second thing I want to say. Xu Yen assisted the Public Security Bureau in solving a major criminal case, and his contribution was significant. The Public Security Bureau has already commended him, and the director of the Public Security Bureau, Lu Tianfeng, personally stated that as long as Xu Yen is willing, he can join the Public Security Bureau at any time. With benefits such as social security and pension, the treatment is equivalent to that of the bureau chief himself. With that, old man Lu brought his hands from behind his back to the front, and a red banner appeared in front of all the students in class 10. The banner was unfurled, with the eight large golden characters brave and clever, showing divine might appearing in front of everyone. At the bottom, the five large characters Linhai Police Bureau made people couldn't help but feel a sense of respect. Seeing this banner, Su Jiwei was the first to react, old ban, is it the case that Xu Yen and Song Xueji assault together in Haishuasen yesterday? The news of Xu Yen and Song Yunqi working together to solve a major case had long been circulating in Linhai Middle School. Now, as long as any student from Linhai Middle School is questioned, they would know about this. Xu Yan's reputation had long been echoing throughout Linhai Middle School along with Song Yunqi. The students of Class 10 looked as if they understood, and they were extremely excited about the conditions set by the Linhai Police Bureau. Many of them might never reach the height that Xu Yan had achieved, so saying they didn't envy or feel jealous would be false. However, the old man Lu, who was on the podium and heard Su Jiwei's question, was puzzled, who is Song Xu Ejie, and what is Hai Shuizen? Ha, huh? isn't it? Seeing the old man Lu looking confused, everyone couldn't help but be stunned. I'm talking about the case in Macau Jiang community the day before yesterday. The criminal gang that the police bureau arrested the day before yesterday was living downstairs in Xu Yan's house. That day, after the police bureau mobilized and carefully arranged everything, a leader of a first order beast tamer managed to escape. The criminal leader hid in Xu Yan's house and was discovered by Xu Yan. Xu Yan engaged in a fierce battle with that leader and ultimately won through sheer perseverance. The more the old man Lu spoke, the more excited he became, and scenes of Xu Yan fighting the criminal automatically played in his mind, with a mix of shock and amazement. No wonder this kid took a day off yesterday, it turns out he didn't get sick at all, but caught the leader of a criminal gang and went to the police bureau to collect the reward. Xu Yan, you really fooled me. As the old man Lu's mind raced, the entire class 10 fell into absolute silence. Everyone had their mouths wide open, eyes widened, seemingly forgetting to breathe and blink. Gulp the sound of swallowing saliva was clearly audible. Could it be that Mr. Zhang mentioned in the news report is Xu Yin? Someone murmured, and then everyone erupted in an indescribable shock at that moment. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. It's Xu Yin? It's unbelievable, he took down a first order beast tamer by himself? Could Xu Yen be an undercover police officer planted by the police bureau in our class? This record is amazing. Among them, Su Jiwei was probably the most incredulous. He had expressed disdain more than once for Chen Sisi, a zealous citizen who suspected that Mr. Zhang was Xu Yen. He said Chen Sisi didn't understand Xu Yen. He said Xu Yen couldn't possibly have the guts. He said everything was just a coincidence. However, reality slapped Su Jiwei hard and told him that all of this was not a coincidence but inevitable. Su Jiwei's mindset collapsed, since the day he took his desk mate to the black market, Su Jiwei found that he could no longer see through him. The classmate who used to chat with him now seemed so unfamiliar, Xu Yen, you really kept me in the dark. Chen Sisi's pretty face blushed, she had already guessed something, so she wasn't as surprised as the others. But the fact that Xu Yen didn't tell her about such a big thing made Chen Sisi pout, hmph, stinky Xu Yen, not telling me about such a big thing, he really doesn't regard me, the class monitor, in his eyes. Xu Yen, who was at the center of the whirlpool, smiled bitterly at this moment. He hadn't intended to be so high profile, he estimated that all of this was arranged by Director Lu without his consent. The same scene was also unfolding in other classes at Lin Hai Middle School. Xu Yen defeating a first order beast tamer with the strength of an ordinary person was already a legendary story, coupled with the police bureau's publicity, now saying that Xu Yen was a rising star in Lin Hai Middle School or even in Lin Hai City was not an exaggeration. 
Fortunately, this matter was suppressed by the afternoon symposium of Song Yunshi, allowing Xu Yen to extricate himself from the classmates' intense gaze. The symposium hosted by Song Yunshi lasted until 5 o'clock in the afternoon. After the meeting, Song Yunshi got into the police car and left. Xu Yan also went home after school. To Xu Yan's surprise, as soon as he opened the door today, he saw Tang Ro sitting on the sofa. Normally, she would still be working the night shift at the factory at this time. And Tang, why are you back so early today? Is there nothing to do at the factory? Xu Yan wanted to take the opportunity to talk to Tang Ro about work, now he was fully capable of earning money, and Tang Ro didn't need to do those low-paying jobs with long hours anymore. The factory gave me the day off today. And the factory manager told me not to work the night shift anymore. Tang Ro, upon seeing Xu Yan, had no idea how to react. Her head was spinning since she received a call from Xu Yan's homeroom teacher in the afternoon, almost crying several times. What's wrong, is the boss not satisfied with you, and Tang? Xu Yan frowned. Tang Ro quickly waved her hand and said hoarsely, No, no, my salary remains the same, and I now have two days off instead of one. Moreover, the factory manager also gave me a bonus. What's going on? Xu Yan remembered that Tang Ro's factory manager was an extremely strict and stingy person. How could such a person give Aunt Tang such preferential treatment? Could it be some ulterior motive? It's all because of you. Everyone in the factory now knows about your situation. My situation? What situation? Xu Yan was puzzled. It's about you helping the police catch a first-order beast tamer criminal. After the factory manager heard this news, he called me to his office and said he would promote me to workshop supervisor. I won't have to work and just supervise others. Tang Ro's tone was full of emotion. She never expected her situation to change so drastically in just one day. It must be that Jiang Gu and the others are watching over me in Xiaofan, right? With this in mind, Tang Ro suddenly remembered something. That night, you said you wanted to sleep with me because there was a criminal hiding in the house? Tang Ro's gentle gaze fixed on Xu Yan. She found it strange that night. Why would Xu Yan come to her room to sleep? Putting together the news she heard today, Tang Ro immediately understood everything. That night, the First Order Beast Tamer criminal must have been discovered hiding in the house by Xiao Fan. Thinking about the thrilling events that took place in her room while she was asleep, Tang Ro shuddered. If something had happened to Xiao Fan that night, she wouldn't be able to live with herself. As she thought about it, tears welled up in Tang Ro's eyes. Xiao Fan, you must never try such dangerous things again. If something happens to you, how can I face Jiang Gu and the others? Tang Ro cried uncontrollably, clearly frightened. Seeing this, Xu Yan wanted to say something, but in the end, he just walked up and gently wiped the tears from Tang Ro's face with his hand, softly saying, And Tang, rest assured, I will never do such risky things again in the future. After receiving Xu Yan's promise, Tang Ro finally managed to hold back her tears, but she still said to Xu Yan in a huff, Words are cheap, let's pinky swear. Tang Ro hooked her pinky finger, and Xu Yan, seeing Tang Ro's childish gesture, couldn't help but find it amusing. Although childish, Xu Yan still extended his pinky finger to hook Tang Ro's finger, saying, Pinky swear, never break, promises must be kept. After having dinner with Tang Ro, it was just past 7 o'clock in the evening. After dinner, Xu Yan talked to Tang Ro about buying a house. And Tang, the police department gave me a 1 million reward. In a few days, let's go together to look for a new house. There is no security in the Macau River community, and the property management is also absent. I don't want to experience what happened the night before yesterday again. Xu Yan said this naturally to make Tang Ro accept the idea of buying a house. Based on his understanding of Tang Ro, if he only mentioned buying a house, Tang Ro would definitely not agree to move in with Xu Yan, even though she wouldn't say it out loud. She has that kind of personality. That's why Xu Yan used Zhong Liang's situation to prompt Tang Ro to make a decision. Sure enough, after Xu Yan mentioned buying a house, Tang Ro hesitated for a long time before nodding. I have a friend who works in sales at Hohat Mansion. We can go consult her, Tang Ro said after some thought. Hohat Mansion? In the city center, right? Okay. Besides, the housing prices in Linhai City are not expensive, Xu Yan agreed without hesitation. At 7.30 in the evening, just as the sun had set, the sound of square dancing blared from a nearby square. Xu Yan suddenly remembered the fake lizard that Song Yunqi had given him yesterday. He took out the beast ball and absorbed all the information about the fake lizard. Beast, fake lizard, type, insect type beast, level, LV5, talent level, B, growth potential, A, HP, 124, spirit, 8, external skeleton, 5, internal skeleton, 2, skills, disguise, attack power, 0, disguise, the fake lizard can imitate any object it has seen for a short period of time, status, restless, disconnected from the owner, the fake lizard is irritable and poses a risk of attacking people. 
Training Direction 1, Taming. Taming plan, open the TV or computer, play Pokemon, and force it to watch the first season. Training Direction 2, Release. Release plan, hand it over to the staff of the Linhai City Beast Center. You will receive a certain amount of money as a reward for releasing it. Xu Yen almost didn't need to think about which training direction to choose. He was not short of money now, and the fake lizard's disguise skill was very practical. It could mimic any object, making it convenient for various situations. With such a versatile little spirit, Xu Yen had no reason to release it. Pokemon? Looks like I need to show you what it means to have a partner and a bond, following that one-eyed dragon guy will only lead you astray, Xu Yen said with a smile. He casually threw out the fake lizard and grabbed its tail the moment it appeared. The fake lizard kept trying to bite Xu Yen with its tongue, but Xu Yen's HP had already reached 150 points, so it was no match for the small lizard. After effortlessly binding the fake lizard, Xu Yen opened his phone and started playing Pokemon. I got a Pokemon. Ding ding ding, the familiar opening lines and sound effects played, and as Xu Yen held the fake lizard's head, he immersed himself in the game. Xu Yen watched for a while and found it quite enjoyable. Around 11 o'clock in the evening, Xu Yen went to bed. The fake lizard's limbs and head were taped to the table by Xu Yen, undergoing Pokemon training day and night. At midnight, in Heishui Town, Haifeng Mountain, a vehicle from the Linhai Security Bureau stopped at the foot of the mountain. Song Yunxi, dressed in a black and gold Jinling Beast University uniform, stepped out of the car. Lu Tianfeng got out of another police car and handed a file to Song Yunxi. A level wanted criminal, name, Wang Jun, identity, second tier beast master, former member of the Jinling Security Bureau. Beast, exploding fire monkey, earth splitting snake. Miss Song, this is all the information we have on Wang Jun. Our people have tracked him to this location. The entire Haifeng Mountain is now surrounded by us, but he is a second tier beast master, so we dare not act rashly. We need your help, Lu Tianfeng said politely. Director Lu, no need to be polite. This was originally a matter from Jinling, but it has caused trouble for Lin Hai. Song Yunxi shook her head, looking relaxed but keeping his gaze on Wang Jun's information without moving. A second level beast tamer? But the person Wang Jun killed was a third level beast tamer. The next morning at 7 o'clock, Xu Yan got up on time. Today he had a task to take the beast egg outside to bask in the sun for two hours. After getting up and checking on the disguised lizard, Xu Yan was startled to see the creature stiff on the table. Did I kill it? Xu Yan quickly checked on the lizard and thankfully found it still alive, just a bit stiff but otherwise fine. Phew, false alarm. After tidying up, Xu Yan used the newly bought third level beast egg to store the demon egg and took it to school. Xu Yan was not sure how to properly bask the egg in the sun, but he thought that if he had to, he should do it thoroughly. Choosing the time when the sun was strongest at noon should be correct. After breakfast, Xu Yan went to the classroom and, with the help of Chen Cici, reviewed the cultural lessons from the past few days. During the lunch break, seeing most students leaving, Xu Yan casually asked Chen Cici for some sunscreen and went outside. The hatching task required Xu Yan to hold the beast egg in the sun for two hours, so he naturally did so. However, Xu Yan had already made ample preparations, sunscreen clothing, sunscreen lotion, sun hat, everything was ready. Hey, if only I could borrow Song Xuejie's snow shadow doll. It's so hot, carrying the snow shadow doll in my pocket would be very cool. At noon, some students did not go home and naturally saw Xu Yan wandering around the school field with a half-meter high beast egg, unable to help but chuckle. During this time, Su Jiwei and Chen Cici also asked Xu Yan why he was doing this. Xu Yan explained truthfully that he was hatching the beast. However, this only earned him my roles from the others. Everyone laughed and scolded Xu Yan for being crazy, saying that beast eggs don't hatch like that. Did he think it was a mother hen hatching chicks? Xu Yan didn't bother to explain further, as he had spoken the truth, and it was up to them to believe it or not. The school field faced the school gate, and Xu Yan, sweating profusely, continued to wander around with the beast egg, when suddenly his eyes lit up. He saw an ambulance and several police cars driving towards the school gate. The ambulance passed by with a woo-woo sound, and one of the police cars stopped as it passed Xu Yan. The window rolled down slowly, and police bureau chief Lu Tianfeng's head popped out from the back seat. Mr. John, why are you carrying such a large beast egg? Lu Tianfeng couldn't help but ask, finding Xu Yan's actions too strange. I'm hatching my beast egg, but forget about that, why is the police bureau making such a big fuss coming to our school? Did something happen? With ambulances and police cars around, the first reaction of a normal person would be this. Lu Tianfeng didn't understand Xu Yan's ancient hatching method and, Seeing that Xu Yan didn't want to elaborate, he changed the subject. Looking at the ambulance in front, Lu Tianfeng sighed, a tinge of guilt flashing in his eyes. Ah, forget it. 
It's all our fault at the police bureau, otherwise, Miss Song wouldn't have encountered such a situation. Hearing this, Xu Yan raised his eyebrows. He had just mentioned Song Yunqi's snow shadow doll, and now he heard news about her, which was quite a coincidence. Did something happen to Miss Song? Xu Yan asked tentatively. Yes, Miss Song went with our police bureau on a secret mission last night. She fought a criminal in Haifeng Mountain who could kill a third-level beast tamer. Although Miss Song managed to kill the criminal, she also tsai. Lu Tianfeng stopped halfway through his words, choosing not to continue. From the other party's words, Xu Yan could also feel how dangerous the situation was last night, and Song Yunqi should be seriously injured. Shouldn't the injured person be taken to the hospital? How did you bring her here? Xu Yan subconsciously thought that Song Yunqi was on the ambulance just now. And that was the case. Miss Song ordered it. She said she's fine, she wants to treat her spirit beast first. Treat the spirit beast? Did something happen to senior sister Song's snow shadow doll? Xu Yan was not worried about Song Yunqi in her mind, but rather concerned about Song Yunqi's snow shadow doll. At a certain moment, Xu Yan even imagined Song Yunqi being seriously injured and passing away, and then she would receive Song Yunqi's spirit beast, inheriting her will, and continuously climbing towards the peak of spirit beasts. Hey, you'll know when you go to the spirit beast center at Lin Hai High School. Lu Tianfeng waved his hand, suddenly thinking of something, and his gaze that had just moved away fell on Xu Yin again. Mr. Jiang, didn't you treat Mr. Ye's daughter's spirit beast before? And the feedback was good. Do you want to go take a look? Lu Tianfeng remembered that the first time he saw Xu Yin, it was because he treated the Yi family princess's spirit beast and established a relationship with the Yi family. Now, bringing Xu Yin over to check on Song Yunqi's spirit beast situation might be helpful. Upon hearing Lu Tianfeng's suggestion, Xu Yan thought for a moment. It wouldn't hurt to go take a look, and if he could help Song Yunqi in passing, maybe she would lend him the snow shadow doll for a few days without any problem? Xu Yan underestimated the midday sun, feeling the scorching heat all over his body, and if he could borrow the snow shadow doll, maybe the situation would improve. Of course, the premise was that Song Yunqi could still remain conscious. Retrieving the demon egg into the spirit beast ball, Xu Yan got into the police car and arrived at the Spirit Beast Center at Lin Hai High School. The last time Xu Yan entered the hatching center inside the Spirit Beast Center, but this time he followed Lu Tianfeng and others to the medical center. In the whole city of Lin Hai, apart from the city-level Spirit Beast Hospital, the Spirit Beast Medical Center at Lin Hai High School was the most powerful. There were often Spirit Beast Masters coming over, but students from Lin Hai High School were rarely seen. In the medical center, Xu Yan saw Song Yunqi. To Xu Yan's disappointment, Song Yunqi didn't seem to be in any serious condition, his wishful thinking of taking advantage of her situation and inheriting Song Yunqi's will it failed. Song Yunqi's condition was very stable, and when she saw Lu Tianfeng and Xu Yan arriving, she smiled and greeted them. Director Lu. And Xu Yan, why are you here too? Did you come to visit me because you heard that I was injured? Xu Yan chuckled, just now Director Lu said that senior sister Song seemed to be in critical condition, and my heart was in knots, but now that I see, senior sister Song is perfectly fine, making me worry for nothing. The two bantered back and forth, making Lu Tianfeng standing beside them feel a bit awkward. And he felt that Xu Yan's words were somewhat pointed. When did he say that Miss Song was in critical condition? How dare he spread rumors about Miss Song? Xu Yan, don't you cause trouble for me. It may not show on the surface, but I did suffer a bit of injury. Song Yunqi shook her head, knowing that if it weren't for a professional, her condition would be hard to understand. I know, senior sister, you were injured by the wind spirit snake, right? Hmm. Originally, Song Yunqi didn't have much hope for her recovery. After all, her injury was not a common illness, but caused by the spirit beast backlash. Ordinary medical methods were difficult to treat, and only in big cities like Jinling could it be cured. Unexpectedly, Xu Yan suddenly interjected, pinpointing the issue with her body. This surprised Song Yunqi greatly. Where did you hear that from? Besides Xu Yan hearing about her situation through hearsay, Song Yunqi couldn't figure out how he knew. Xu Yan was amused by Song Yunqi's question. What do you mean? Where did I hear it from? Can't it be something I figured out myself? Song Yunqi's eyebrows furrowed slightly as she looked up and down at Xu Yan. Ha, huh, you have this ability? Can you help me treat it? Looks can be deceiving, just like how you can't measure the sea. Song Yunqi understood this principle well. After a brief surprise, she composed herself and tentatively asked Xu Yan. I'm not a doctor, how would I know how to treat someone? But I do know a thing or two about your wind spirit snake. When she saw Song Yunqi controlling the wind spirit snake in the black market that night, Xu Yan noticed something about the little snake. What's the situation? Tell me in detail. Song Yunqi listened attentively, not underestimating Xu Yan just because he was young and only a high school student. 
it's because you hatched it too quickly. Although I don't know how you managed to hatch the wind spirit snake egg in such a short time, such hatching methods usually have drawbacks, am I right? Xu Yan said each word carefully. Song Yunqi nodded in agreement, not denying what Xu Yan said, as if she knew about this situation herself. The beast eggs in the black market were not purified with special methods, so the hatched beasts are full of wildness. By hatching the beast egg in a short time, you actually forcibly suppress the beast with your own blood and energy, without gaining its trust and intimacy. But with your strength, you shouldn't have been easily backlashed. The reason for the backlash is probably because during last night's battle, a higher ranked beast exerted pressure on the wind spirit snake. You exerted physical pressure on the wind spirit snake, while the higher ranked beast exerted absolute bloodline pressure. So it's only natural that the wind spirit snake rebelled against you. Xu Yan combined the information he saw about the wind spirit snake with what he learned in class, which was pretty close to the truth. Indeed, after hearing Xu Yan's words, Song Yunqi remembered the earth cracking snake released by Wang Jun during their battle last night. It was a third rank snake beast, and after its appearance, the previously fine wind spirit snake underwent a mutation, almost causing harm to Song Yunqi. Xu Yan understood all this? Seeing Song Yunqi's stunned expression, Xu Yan knew he had impressed her. Although I can't treat your injuries, I am confident that I can help you tame your wind spirit snake. Even if a situation like last night occurs again, it will obey you and not rebel. The root cause of this incident was Song Yunqi hatching the beast egg too quickly. If she had followed a normal hatching cycle and nurtured intimacy with the beast egg during incubation, this situation would not have occurred. Tell me, what's the solution? Song Yunqi's heart warmed at the words, as she was troubled about how to handle the wind spirit snake without delaying her upcoming journey. If she followed the normal treatment plan, it would take at least half a year to cure the wind spirit snake's problem. But Song Yunqi couldn't afford to spend that much time, so if Xu Yan had a better solution, she was willing to try it. The wind spirit snake situation is unique, but with my help, correcting its issues and turning it into a true beast is not difficult. It can be done in 10 days. Xu Yan calculated quickly, casually mentioning a number that coincidentally matched the time he needed to sunbathe the demon egg. 10 days? Are you sure you can solve this problem in 10 days? Song Yunqi's delicate face showed a rare excited expression. She grabbed Xu Yan's shoulders, her starry eyes staring directly into his, as if trying to absorb him. If I say 10 days, then it's 10 days. But, well, this treatment method is a bit special, I don't know if you can accept it. As long as it's not a matter of principle, I can accept it, Song Yunqi said directly. Okay, this is actually not difficult for a girl like you. But I can't help for free, you have to agree to my conditions. Xu Yan remained calm and composed. Song Yunqi was seeking his help now, so he couldn't appear too eager, otherwise, this shrewd woman might catch on to something. You say, come closer, this is a secret palace formula, don't let others hear it. Xu Yan motioned for Song Yunqi to come closer. When Song Yunqi leaned in, Xu Yan could feel a faint lily fragrance and a cool breeze emanating from her body. Xu Yan was excited. Of course, not because of the fragrance on Song Yunqi, but the coolness coming from her body. If he guessed correctly, the source of this coolness must be the snow shadow doll hidden in Song Yunqi's pocket. If he could sneak the snow shadow doll into his pocket, the cooling effect would be amazing. In a few words, Xu Yan explained his treatment plan and requirements. After listening to Xu Yan's words, Song Yunqi's beautiful face changed several times. After a while, she hesitated and said, I can lend you the snow shadow doll temporarily, but your treatment condition is a bit too embarrassing, isn't it? Ha! Huh? Senior sister, you are the one asking for my help now, not me asking for your treatment. You can think whatever you want, this is the method. I, Xu Yan, am upright and have no improper thoughts towards you, senior sister. Xu Yan spoke confidently, as if he were the only true gentleman in the world. Song Yunqi's expression changed constantly, struggling in her mind. Let's give it a try, maybe it will work. Song Yunqi, you are confused. This kid is obviously deceiving you, and you actually believe him? The little demon with horns and the angel with a halo in Son Yunqi's head were arguing. In the end, evil triumphed over justice. Okay, let's try tonight. I'll go prepare things first, and come pick you up after school. Song Yunqi finally made up her mind, but there was a hint of blush on her cheeks. After understanding Son Yunqi's situation, Xu Yan left the beast control center. He continued to bask in the sun outside the school playground with the demon egg. When it was almost time for class, Xu Yan finally heard the completion notification from the system. Phew, it's so hot. I haven't had lunch yet. Seeing that it was almost time for class, Xu Yan hurried back to the classroom without eating. There was an elective class in the afternoon about beast knowledge, and he couldn't miss it. When Xu Yan returned to the classroom and was about to get some water to drink, he suddenly saw two bottles of mineral water and a lunchbox on his desk. 
Nice, Su Jiwei, you actually brought me lunch. Xu Yan casually opened a bottle of mineral water and drank it all, then opened the lunchbox and started eating. How does it taste? Su Jiwei's expression was a bit strange, but Xu Yan, who was eating, didn't notice. Delicious, how did you know I like tomato scrambled eggs? And this braised fish, sweet and sour ribs I never had such a good meal at home. Having a wealthy buddy is different. In between bites, Xu Yan reached out to pat Su Jiwei's shoulder. According to Xu Yan's estimate, the price of this lunchbox plus two bottles of mineral water was almost 40 yuan. A meal for 40 yuan in 2013, what does that mean? Xu Yan felt that only families like Su Jiwei's, who changed their fruit phones every year, could afford it. Although Xu Yan had money now, his thoughts were rarely focused on eating and drinking, but more on spending on beast control. I didn't treat you, it was the class monitor who saw you hadn't eaten all afternoon, so he went to the snack street outside to bring it back for you. You just eat and enjoy yourself. Su Jiwei gave Xu Yan a fierce look, Chen Sisi was the real class flower in the class, and many people even considered her the school flower of Lin Hai Middle School. Only someone like Zhou Ping, who was obsessed with mythical beasts, would not respect the class monitor and even speak ill of her. In other cases, the class monitor would be happy to have a conversation with him for a while. But this kid Xu Yan actually managed to win over the class monitor without making a sound, which made Su Jiwei extremely jealous. Class monitor? Isn't her family's spending level low? 40 yuan is the pocket money she can save in a week. Xu Yan knew this mainly because in a previous life, after some exercise, Chen Sisi, who was lying in his arms, told him. You brat, you even know these details. Tell me, when did you confess to the class monitor? If you hurt the class monitor, I'll strangle you. Su Jiwei said, pretending to strangle Xu Yan. Before Su Jiwei could actually strangle himself, Xu Yan immediately begged for mercy. Don't, I can't breathe. Su Jiwei, don't be so rude. What if you hurt Xu Yan? Unexpectedly, at this moment, Chen Sisi suddenly appeared out of nowhere. Xu Yan and the others were stunned, Su Jiwei's face froze, his hands hanging in the air, looking bewildered. The situation became awkward for a moment. Class monitor, we were just joking. In the end, Xu Yan broke the silence. Chen Sisi, who didn't know the truth, blushed when she saw their actions, I know, but it's easy to choke while playing around during meals. As the class monitor, I just felt it was necessary to remind you. Let's focus on eating during meals, and talk about other things later. With these words, Chen Sisi returned to her seat. The whole afternoon, she didn't occupy Su Jiwei's seat. It was Xu Yan who shamelessly went over and pushed away Chen Sisi's deskmate. 5 o'clock in the afternoon. After the last class ended, students from Lin Hai Middle School gradually walked out of the school gate. Perhaps because it was Friday, many students were discussing where to go for the weekend while walking home in groups. However, at this moment, a Porsche 911 suddenly stopped in front of Lin Hai Middle School. Song Yunqi, wearing a black and gold Lin Yun Beast University School uniform, got out of the car. But this time, her appearance was somewhat different. In addition to the black and gold school uniform that accentuated her figure, Song Yunqi let down her tied ponytail. Her black hair was as smooth and straight as a waterfall, like a cover girl from a fashion magazine. Moreover, the black lace stockings on her long legs were unique, attracting everyone's attention with just one glance. All the students coming out of the school gate couldn't help but sneak a peek at Song Yunshi. The girls were full of envy and jealousy, while the boys were more amazed and filled with impure thoughts. Such a beauty, if one could have a moment with her in bed, it would be worth it even if one died. However, although many people had such thoughts, no one dared to approach her. Song Yunshi's aura was too special, as if she deliberately exuded a distant coldness that made it difficult for people to get close. Senior Song, why are you here? A voice suddenly rang out at the school gate, Song Yunshi, who was waiting for Xu Yan, turned her head to look. Hmm, a very sunny and handsome junior. What's his name again? What how? Wan how? Senior, I'm Zhou Hao, don't you remember me? Zhou Hao was excited, he didn't expect to see Senior Song again after meeting her at the train station yesterday. Oh, Zhou Hao, I remember you. Didn't you sign up for the Ling Yun High School entrance exam? Why didn't you stay for extra classes after school? Song Yunshi also graduated from Lin Hai Middle School and naturally knew that those who participated in the Imperial Beast entrance exam after school had to stay behind for extra classes. Oh, I'm going to participate in the school's seed plan, the training location is off campus, and I'm getting ready to go there now, Zhou Hao said proudly. Oh, what about Xu Yan? Did he go too? Song Yunshi thought that with Xu Yan's high blood value, he must be part of this seed plan, so did she come to the wrong place? Xu Yan? No, he didn't join the seed plan. He's probably still in the classroom of class 10, Zhou Hao said proudly. Being able to participate in the seed plan while Xu Yan didn't, didn't that prove that he was better than Xu Yan? 
Of course, Zhou Hao knew that the reality was not as he imagined, but that didn't stop him from fantasizing and showing off in front of Song Yunshi. So he's in class 10, I never noticed him before, and I don't have that guy's contact number. Now it's much easier to find him, thank you, Zhou Hao, Song Yunshi said as she walked into the school in high heels. Song's senior sister is here to find Xu Yin? How is that possible? And my name is Zhou Hao, not Wan Hao, hey! Inside class 10, Lao Lutu was teaching a dozen students who were preparing for the Imperial Beast entrance exam. Xu Yen received special care from Chen Cici, and the two were now asking and answering questions with small notebooks. At that moment, a knock on the door broke the classroom's atmosphere. Excuse me, is Xu Yen here? A gentle, melodious voice sounded at the door of class 10 like a lark. The students who were still in the classroom turned to look, dumbfounded. Everyone in the class had attended yesterday's forum and naturally remembered the legendary figure from the previous year at Lin Hai Middle School. The woman standing at the classroom door was none other than Song Yunshi. Why was Song's senior sister here? She just said she was looking for Xu Yen? What was their relationship? For a moment, all eyes in the entire class focused on Xu Yan's location. And Chen Cici, who was helping Xu Yen with the question, frowned when she heard Song Yunshi's voice and abruptly stopped in the middle of the question. Oh, it's Song's student. Xu Yen is here, if you need him, I'll let him go with you now. Xu Yen, Song student is looking for you. I'll have the class monitor arrange a makeup session for you this weekend, so you don't have to worry about falling behind. Song Yunshi appeared, and Lao Lutu naturally wanted to give face to the other party. With a quick thought, Lao Lutu came up with a perfect solution. It wouldn't delay Song Yunshi's matters and wouldn't let Xu Yen fall behind in his studies, it was perfect. Teacher, I have plans this weekend and can't tutor him. Xu Yen can either stay here and finish the class or figure it out on his own. Chen Cici turned slightly toward Xu Yen, her voice cold. Lao Lyoto's face wrinkled in confusion. Weren't you just helping Xu Yen review the material? Why does it seem like you've changed suddenly? Lao Lutu was puzzled, but Xu Yen, as the person involved, was itching to hate his dear homeroom teacher. Lao Lutu, oh Lao Lutu, aren't you putting me on the spot? Chen Cici is just jealous, and she probably won't look at me with a good face for a while. Xu Yen sighed inwardly, glancing sideways to see that Chen Cici was immersed in the desk's questions, not even looking at him. Although he knew Chen Cici would be angry, Xu Yen still got up and left. It's better to act early, if he waited any longer, it would be even harder to explain. Teacher, I'm going out with Song's senior sister first. Class monitor, I'll find you for tutoring next Monday. After quickly packing up his things, Xu Yen left with Song Yunshi, who stood gracefully at the classroom door. Everything happened so suddenly that no one in the room had time to react. Chen Cici, who was buried in her studies, clenched her jade hands tightly. At some point, there was a cracking sound, and she actually broke the black water-based pen with great force. Chen Cici's blood and energy were in their 80s, so it was normal for this to happen if she didn't control it subconsciously. Leaving the classroom, Song Yunchi looked with interest at Xu Yan walking in front of her. The girl you were sitting with just now, is she your girlfriend? Not for the moment. Hearing this, Song Yunchi covered her mouth and giggled. Youth is good, full of youthful vigor. Hee hee, you're only a year older than me, so why are you pretending to be so mature? Xu Yen pierced through Song Yunchi's pretense of maturity without mercy. Just feeling emotional, let's go, let's resolve things as soon as possible. After all, I still have some reputation in Linhai. If someone with ill intentions captures something, you and your girlfriend won't be able to explain it. Xu Yen had this intention, and the treatment wouldn't take too much time anyway. After getting into the car, under Song Yunshi's guidance, the two arrived at the Macau River community. Song Yunshi also lived here, and her house was right across from Xu Yen's house. However, before meeting Song Yunshi in the black market, Xu Yen had no connection with her. After parking the car, Song Yunshi took a large box from the back of the car, which contained the props needed for today's treatment. I looked at several sets and didn't know if they met your requirements. So I bought them all. It looks heavy, let's carry it together. Xu Yan rarely showed his gentlemanly side. Carry it? He he, you underestimate me too much, don't you? Song Yunshi smiled and then took out a beast ball from which a beast named Xiaolan was released. Xiaolan, use bubble. The beast, like a blue slime, spat out a bubble that wrapped around Song Yunshi's box. The bubble slowly lifted the box into the air and stopped in front of Xu Yan. Okay, now you can move the box with a gentle touch of your finger. After releasing the bubble, Song Yunshi put Xiaolan back. So convenient? Having the help of a beast is really convenient. I want to get a beast that can breathe fire. Then I won't need gas to cook at home. Xu Yen's eyes lit up. Beasts not only could be used in battles, but also provided great help in daily life. You should hatch your first beast first, Song Yunchi teased Xu Yen, and the two went upstairs together. Opening the door, a musty smell hit them. 
Obviously, this room had not been inhabited for a long time. Even the living room sofa and dining table were covered in dust. Why is your house so dirty? It's better to go to my house. Xu Yan looked at the dusty room in disbelief and he even suspected that Song Yunqi brought him here to help clean the house. No one has come back for almost a year, so it's definitely dirty. Let's go to the bedroom. In the bedroom, Xu Yan didn't find it much cleaner than the living room. Xiu Lan, water purification. Song Yunqi commanded, and several water balls about the size of basketballs suddenly appeared. Then, with a bang, they burst open. Fortunately, before this happened, Song Yunqi had her beast put a shield on both of them, otherwise, Xu Yan and Song Yunqi would have been drenched. Song Yunqi's Xiaolan was a cleaning expert. With a wave of water, the entire room became spotless, even cleaner than Xu Yan's room. Why don't you lend me your Xiaolan for a couple of days? I can take it back to help me clean. Xu Yan shamelessly said. Song Yunqi was also amazed by his shamelessness. If you can make Xiaolan like you, even if she wants to leave me and follow you, I won't say a word. Is it a deal? Just kidding, did you really take it seriously? Let's start the treatment quickly and not waste time. Song Yunqi chuckled and wanted to playfully tap Xu Yan's head, but Xu Yan skillfully dodged. With your emotional intelligence, how could a girl be interested in you? Xu Yan replied with a smile. After a brief chat, Song Yunqi went to the bathroom with props. Prior to this, she had taken out the spirit wind snake contained in the beast egg and placed it on the table. Xu Yan could check on the spirit wind snake's condition at any time. Spirit Wind Snake, Type, Wind Element Beast, Talent Level, A, Highest SS Level, Level, LV15, HP, 134, Spirit, 10, External Skeleton, 0, Internal Skeleton, 0, Status, Startled, Wild. In this state, the beast is highly aggressive and may backlash against the beast master, so be careful. Cultivation Direction 1, Release. Hand over to the nearest beast center for release processing. Cultivation Direction 2, Subdue. A wild beast requires strong power or suppression from a high-ranking beast to be obedient. Tip, beast masters can tame the spirit wind snake by portraying themselves as a snake-shaped beast and unleashing their mental power during the portrayal to tame the spirit wind snake. Different degrees of portrayal will have different effects on the progress of taming the spirit wind snake, and the degree needs to be controlled by the beast master. It is impossible to release a beast with an SS-level talent, so Xu Yen provided Song Yunqi with the idea of cultivation direction too. In simple terms, if Song Yunqi wants to subdue the spirit wind snake, she needs to engage in what is called cospie, and she can only COS snake-like creatures, with different degrees of cos affecting the progress of taming the spirit wind snake. The sound of the bathroom door opening echoed in Xu Yan's ears. Xu Yan knew she was just pretending to be serious in front of Song Yunqi, but at this moment, she couldn't help but feel a bit nervous and even a little dry-mouthed. Would the one entering be a slender and beautiful female snake, or a delicate and beautiful female snake, or a slender and beautiful female snake? Xu Yan was curious, just curious, absolutely no improper thoughts. With anticipation, Xu Yan eagerly watched as the bedroom door slowly opened. The sight was dazzling white, leaving Xu Yan stunned. Of course, Xu Yan wasn't dumbfounded, but rather confused by Song Yunqi's actions. The all-white scene was particularly glaring in Xu Yan's eyes. Are you? Are you this beautiful snake? Are you trying to fool me? Xu Yan almost laughed. At this moment, Song Yunqi was wearing a white dress, with her two feet wrapped in what looked like a cheap imitation snake tail. The white snake tail was squeezed by Song Yunqi's two feet, making it look comical to Xu Yan. What are you doing? Are you trying to act like a fool who can't even pull up your pants? Xu Yan said weakly. Even if the beast was silly, it couldn't be scared into submission by this appearance, right? This is the white Sujin COS costume I specially bought. Inspired by ancient myths, Song Yunqi explained. Didn't you say you wanted to portray a high-ranking one? I thought that even Su Xian's beast, the white snake, could transform into a human form, so the rank must be high enough. Song Yunqi earnestly explained, leaving Xu Yan momentarily speechless. After a while, Xu Yan calmed herself down and waved her hand, change it, this is definitely a failure. You look like a fool right now. You're like me when I was a kid, hopping around with both feet in a sack, too ridiculous. Hey, don't. I finally managed to put it on. Let's try releasing Xiao Qing, Song Yunqi persisted. Fine, Xu Yan didn't want to argue with her, and directly let Song Yunqi release the spirit wind snake. In the moment Song Yunqi released the spirit wind snake, the beast with two small wings on its body flapped its wings and lunged towards Song Yunqi. However, the wind spirit snake did not succeed, in front of Snow Shadow Doll and Little Blue, it was not easy for it to harm Song Yunqi. After the attacks of ice and water, the wind spirit snake was temporarily frozen. Did you see that? Go change quickly. Seeing this, Song Yunqi no longer insisted, sighing, it seems I can only use my killer move. 
After a while, Song Yunshi, who had changed into a new set of clothes, pushed open the door again. This time, when she pushed open the door, Xu Yan was startled. It was unknown where Song Yunshi got the Medusa wig from, with each snake head looking so realistic as if they were freshly cut snake heads attached. Xu Yan was very satisfied with this hair. Of course, Xu Yan was not only satisfied with Song Yunshi's clothing, but even more than satisfied, his eyes were almost fixed. From the waist to the thighs of Song Yunchi's lower body, it was wrapped in a snake tail that was as smooth and covered with thick scales as a real snake. Xu Yen couldn't tell what material the realistic snake tail was made of, but he was sure it was not ordinary fabric. Ordinary fabric could not outline Song Yunchi's perky buttocks so perfectly. Moving on to the upper body, Song Yunchi had similar snake scale like items stuck to her skin. Her whole body was covered in this stuff, with special areas covered securely. However, the small items covering the special areas were also scale-like on the surface, matching the scales stuck to her skin, looking very natural. If Xu Yan were to comment, he would only say three words, too sexy still staring? Quickly help me see if Xiao Qing has any reaction. Song Yunqi gave Xu Yan a white look, with a hint of embarrassment on her face. She rarely, or even never, showed this kind of expression, today was an exception. Of course, the reason Song Yunshi was willing to cooperate with Xu Yan was not because she was deceived by his sweet words. She had her own judgment. After several encounters, Song Yunshi found that they had many similarities. They came from ordinary families, were unknown, and stood out on the eve of the college entrance examination, and so on. But what Song Yunshi admired most about Xu Yan was his courage and growing determination. The first time Song Yunshi saw Xu Yan was in the black market, where Xu Yan was confronting a raging flamehound. He was being watched by the raging flame hound alone, while the others either fled or watched. This scene reminded Son Yunchi of herself a year ago, wandering alone in the black market. Speaking of which, she really had a lot in common with this junior. However, these were just the reasons why Son Yunchi trusted him, she did not have any feelings for Xu Yan in that way. While Son Yunchi was contemplating, Xu Yan's investigation of the wind spirit snake had ended. There is a slight reaction, its state has changed from, fright, wild, just now to, doubt, probing. This is just the beginning, it is observing us, I think it is necessary to use a stronger medicine. Xu Yan rubbed his chin, pondered for a moment, and then spoke. How? Just having the appearance is not enough, the aura, and actions must also make it afraid. Let's act together, you pretend to be like a snake hunting, wrap around me, then open your mouth wide and pretend to swallow me in one breath. This kind of excitement should be strong enough. Xu Yan said seriously, but did not notice that Song Yunchi's face had turned as black as charcoal. Friday afternoon is the day when many boarding schools finish school. Yuling Middle School is one of them. Tang Xiaoxiao's Yuling Middle School is an affiliated middle school of the Yuling Academy of the Linhai Noble Academy. Just like the Yuling Academy, Yuling Middle School is a private school. Tang Xiaoxiao's grades are not good, so her mother, Tang Rou, had to spend money to send her to a private middle school. The school discipline and atmosphere in private schools are very different from public schools. Private middle schools in Linhai City have been criticized by the Education Bureau many times due to their chaotic management. At the entrance of Yuling Middle School, Tang Xiaoxiao, with long red wavy hair, dressed in a black school uniform, and wearing a pair of British-style leather shoes, was taking something out of her backpack. In front of her were three boys with dyed yellow hair. Tang Xiaoxiao, be smart and give us back the telescope. The three of us pulled our money to buy it, costing a thousand dollars. If you break it, you can't afford to pay for it. The three boys with yellow hair looked at Tang Xiaoxiao provocatively, with a smirk on their faces. Are you guys using this thing to peep into the girl's dormitory? Xiaobi told me that she saw you guys looking this way with this thing while she was showering in the bathroom. Huh, how interesting. Can't I look at the sky, the earth, and the air? Why does it have to be the girl's dormitory? Exactly, pushing girls, steam shrimp heads, you. The boys with yellow hair did not back down, launching a verbal attack on Tang Xiaoxiao. One incident doesn't prove anything. But you guys have been reported and caught red-handed by other boys before. The duty teacher even made you write self-reflections. Doesn't that explain the problem? Tang Xiaoxiao did not get agitated by the words from the other side, her calm and composed demeanor not typical of a middle school student. You're kidding, right? Who do you think you are? How dare you come and meddle in our affairs? Exactly, even the teachers don't bother with our affairs. Why are you poking your nose in? Our big brother is Su Hao from the Yuling Noble Academy. Who dares to touch us? Ha, ah, a bunch of hooligans. I'll keep this thing for you, go to the headmaster's office tomorrow and get it yourself. Tang Xiaoxiao waved the binoculars in her hand and then stuffed it back into her backpack. Stop her. The three boys with yellow hair immediately tried to grab it, but what followed were cries of pain. With your skills, you need a few hundred more years of practice. After knocking down the three boys with yellow hair, 
Tang Xiaoxiao clapped her hands, hummed a tune, and left the school. The three boys lying on the ground in pain struggled to get up, one holding his waist, one holding his kidney, and one holding his crotch, feeling helpless. How can this girl Tang Xiaoxiao fight so well? I guess her internal energy is higher than ours. Let's find the boss and stop her next Monday, and get revenge. Mom, I'm back. Ma Chaojiang Community, Building 10, 601. Tang Xiaoxiao opened the door with her key and peeked in. The living room was quiet, no one seemed to be home. Mom is working the night shift, she won't be back until late. Annoying Xu Yan is not here either. After observing for a while, Tang Xiaoxiao finally opened the door and walked in casually. However, just as she closed the door, a voice suddenly came from the kitchen. Xiaoxiao is back? Mom's voice, why is she at home? Shouldn't she be at work? Tang Xiaoxiao was puzzled, then suddenly realized, lowered her voice and said, sorry, wrong door and was about to run. But how could Tang Ro be fooled by her small actions? Almost the next second, Tang Ro appeared behind her. How was this week's test? Tang Ro didn't even mention Tang Xiaoxiao's mistake of going to the wrong door, mechanically repeating her previous question. Mom, I had a stomachache during the exam. Tang Ro's school had weekly tests, and the school claimed that weekly tests could allow the school and parents to timely and visually understand the child's learning outcomes for the week. Tang Xiaoxiao had never passed such tests. Don't make excuses. Wash your hands quickly, dinner will be ready soon. Tang Ro scolded her daughter with a smile, then turned and entered the kitchen. Hmm, something's not right. Based on past experience, shouldn't mom scold me for half an hour? What's going on today? Tang Xiaoxiao was puzzled, walked into the kitchen curiously and asked, Mom, why do you look so happy today? Can I not be happy? Uncle Zhang's death compensation has all been paid out, a total of 1,200,000, 20,000 more than originally agreed. Ah, really? How is that possible? Tang Xiaoxiao was somewhat skeptical. Although she was still in elementary school when Xu Yan's parents had their accident, Tang Xiaoxiao knew all the details very clearly. She also knew about Tang Ro's guilt towards Xu Yan, but didn't know how to comfort her own mother. This matter had been a knot in her mother's heart, and she never expected it to be resolved today. Tang Xiaoxiao was also happy for her mother. Mom, don't rush to tell him tonight, let me handle it. Let him stew in his own juices all day, let's keep him in suspense for a while, humph. All right, you quickly tidy up the table, I bought a cake, I'll give Xiaofan a surprise later. Tang Ro prepared the meal while speaking to her daughter. Okay, mom, you take care of that, I'll go watch the route Xu Yan takes home for you. I'll signal you when he's back. Nonsense, we live on the sixth floor, how can you see that far? He <laughs> he, mom, you don't understand, I borrowed a magical tool from a classmate, with this thing, Xu Yan can't hide from us. Tang Xiaoxiao ran to the living room, opened her school bag, and took out the binoculars she had confiscated at the school gate earlier. A thousand bucks gadget, you should look carefully, right? Let's use it today, and hand it over to the headmaster on Monday. Standing on the balcony, Tang Xiaoxiao eagerly looked around through the binoculars. Wow, it's really good, I can see clearly what the old lady downstairs carrying a basket looks like. Her gaze moved upwards from below, Tang Xiaoxiao was enjoying herself. Don't say, it's quite interesting to look at it this way. As she was looking, Tang Xiaoxiao's eyes suddenly stopped. Wait, what's going on in 601 across the street? Let me take another look. When her gaze moved up earlier, Tang Xiaoxiao suddenly caught sight of a strange scene. Is this cosplay? Why is that woman posing like that? Hmm. Wait, why does that guy next to her look so familiar? Tang Xiaoxiao's face was full of disbelief. She quickly adjusted the focus and took another look. Zhang, 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 Xu Yan. The scene rewinds to 10 minutes ago. After Xu Yan finished explaining his plan, Song Yunqi's face turned dark and somewhat terrifying. Xu Yan, are you sure you're not joking with me again? Listening to Xu Yan's description, Song Yunqi felt like he was being taken advantage of, how could he not be angry? This is a treatment method, I'm not lying to you. If you don't believe me, forget it, I won't help you. Xu Yan was speechless, did he look like a person who would use such despicable means to deceive a girl? Even if he did, he was a decent person, how could he deceive a girl in such a sneaky way? Song Yunqi's doubts were like a sharp blade piercing through Xu Yan's proud personality, this was something Xu Yan could not accept no matter what. If I catch you trying to touch me, I'll freeze your hands and feet immediately. If I catch Li trying to touch me, I'll leave immediately. Just as Song Yunqi issued a warning, he was immediately retorted by Xu Yan. You. Alright, I'll trust you this once, what should we do next? Xu Yan had been arguing back and forth with him, which made Song Yunqi somewhat annoyed. But then she thought, after this matter was over, she would return to Jinling, and she probably wouldn't see this kid again, so why get angry over a stranger? With that in mind, Song Yunqi's emotions calmed down a lot. This bedroom is a bit small, we can't really move around, let's go to the living room. 
Following Xu Yan's suggestion, the two moved to the living room. After a thorough cleaning, the living room also became very clean. You put the wind spirit snake on the table, don't unwrap the cloth strip covering its eyes first, then come closer to me, it's best if you can use the tail under your feet to wrap around my body. Of course, when you get close to me, try to keep your back to the wind spirit snake. After Xu Yan explained his plan, Song Yunqi nodded in agreement. Just as the plan was starting, the two encountered a problem. How should the effect of Xu Yan's body being wrapped by the snake tail be portrayed? Senior sister, why is your tail so weak that it can't even wrap around a person? Xu Yan looked at the snakeskin draped at his feet, speechless. Nonsense, I don't have time to get such a realistic prop in just an afternoon. Stand still. Song Yunqi coldly snorted, then her two feet, dressed in the snake tail costume, unexpectedly wrapped around Xu Yan's waist. The feeling of being tightly bound around the waist made Xu Yan startled. Before he could fully feel it, Song Yunqi's jade hand had already arrived at his waist and twisted it forcefully. What are you standing there for? Hurry up! With their bodies just inches apart, Xu Yan could even feel the faint scent of lilies emanating from Song Yunqi. And because of Song Yunqi's exceptionally enchanting appearance, the strange scales covering her body emitted a unique seductive aura. In order to maintain the current posture, Song Yunqi's hands inevitably hooked around Xu Yan's neck. She was already considered tall among girls, and now with her feet hooking Xu Yan's waist, she was towering over him. Therefore, Xu Yan inevitably faced a certain majestic area of Song Yunqi. If Song Yunqi exuded a faint scent of lilies and a captivating aura, then the majesty in front of Xu Yan was a seductive little demon. Gurgle Xu Yan's throat rolled. Hurry up and move, how long do you want me to hold this pose? Song Yunqi was annoyed. Oh Xu Yan reacted and then, as planned, Song Yunqi burst out with energy, as if she was going to swallow Xu Yan, while Xu Yan's body slowly softened and eventually fell to the ground lifeless. Song Yunqi's energy was exceptionally strong, and in the moment of her outburst, Xu Yan could feel that he was no match for her. As his body slowly collapsed, Xu Yan glanced at the wind spirit snake placed on the table, and suddenly, his gaze froze. Wait, the cloth strip on the snake's eyes hasn't been pulled off yet as he spoke, Xu Yan reached out to tear it off. But as soon as he moved, the sense of balance instantly disappeared, and he fell to the ground. Hey 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 ah! Two exclamations rang out in the living room at the same time. After a loud bang, both of them fell to the ground. Confused, Xu Yan tried to get up, only to find his chest being firmly pressed down by two soft masses. And when he tried to speak, he found his mouth being directly sealed by the softness. The fresh scent of orchids spread on Xu Yan's nose. He could even feel the gentle breeze caused by Song Yunqi's long eyelashes fluttering. Nest, I'm in big trouble. Xu Yan instantly realized that something was wrong. But Song Yunqi reacted even faster than him, almost bouncing back like a startled rabbit the moment they made contact. Her white as moon palm instinctively slapped towards Xu Yan's face. However, just before it touched Xu Yan's face, Song Yunqi stopped her hand. Her delicate body trembled slightly, then without a word, she got up and lifted Xu Yan, throwing him out the door. With a bang, the door closed, and Xu Yan found himself outside Song Yunqi's house. It was only now that Xu Yan, belatedly, realized that he had been thrown out of the house by Song Yunqi like a little chick. What's the matter with this? Xu Yan stood up and brushed off the dust on her butt, thinking of knocking on the door to explain, but then decided against it. 7 o'clock in the evening. Ma Chaojiang Community, Building 10. Apartment 601. After leaving Song Yunqi's house, Xu Yan didn't immediately go home, but instead ran to the street outside to buy two bottles of milk tea before heading back home. Just as she opened the door, Xu Yan smelled the aroma of food. Sweet and sour pork ribs, braised carp. All her favorite dishes. Xu Yan's appetite was aroused, but when she closed the door and turned around, she saw a woman and a girl sitting quietly at the dining table, staring at her. Xiao Xiao is back, I bought you milk tea. Xu Yan remembered that this girl with long red wavy hair in front of her loved milk tea the most. Tang Xiao Xiao didn't speak, her youthful face staring blankly at Xu Yan like a girl next door. Xu Yan was not surprised by the girl's reaction. In her past life, this little girl was always at odds with her. Aunt Tang asked her to call her brother, but she always called her by name. Aunt Tang, I bought you a cup too. Ignoring Tang Xiao Xiao, Xu Yan shook the milk tea in her hand towards Tang Ro. However, Tang Ro's reaction was somewhat unexpected. Shouldn't she at least say thank you for the surprise? Why did Aunt Tang look so embarrassed? Ah, uh -huh, Xiao Fan is back, the food is ready, sit down and eat. Tang Ro's expression was somewhat strange, but it soon returned to normal. Xu Yan was puzzled, but didn't think much of it, and sat down to eat heartily. Hmm, very good, delicious as always, Aunt Tang, your cooking is still so delicious. Xiao Xiao, eat more too. While wolfing down her food, Xu Yan also casually offered some to Tang Xiao Xiao. Xu Yan's behavior seemed natural, 
but in Tang Xiaoxiao's eyes, it was the first time she had seen him act like this. Xu Yin, why are you acting so strange today? Tang Xiaoxiao squinted. Xu Yin's attitude towards her was not much different from her own mother's on weekdays, so why was he suddenly so attentive and offering her food? Tang Xiaoxiao couldn't believe that Xu Yin's attitude towards her had changed so much after not seeing each other for a week. Xu Yin, if you have any ulterior motives, just say it. Are you trying to get me to introduce my good sisters to you? No way, they are still underage. Tang Xiaoxiao thought about it and this seemed to be the only possibility. After all, Xu Yen was also at the age of youth and passion. Plus, what she had just seen through the telescope made Tang Xiaoxiao think that her guess was almost certain. Hearing her words, Xu Yen, who was drinking water, whitened her eyes, then pfft, spat out all the water in her mouth. Cough, what are you talking about? Xu Yen was speechless, wondering what was going on in her little sister's mind. Is it not right? Do you happen to know that the money has come in? Tang Xiaoxiao's eyes rolled as soon as she finished speaking, realizing she had let slip, and quickly covered her ears. What money? Xu Yin's hearing was not bad, she heard Tang Xiaoxiao's words clearly, and couldn't help but ask in confusion. At this time, Tang Ro, who had been eating on the side, spoke up. It's the compensation money for Jiang Gu and the others, a full one. Two million. Oh, it's come in? I was planning to go find them for the money this weekend. Xu Yin's original plan was to wait until this weekend to settle the matter of her parents' death compensation, but she didn't expect the company to send the money ahead of time, which surprised Xu Yin somewhat. After all, according to her memory, in her past life, this money wasn't settled until after she graduated from college. Yes, it's come in. And they even gave an extra 200,000, saying it's interest. Tang Ro's eyes narrowed into a line, the knot that had been bothering her for a long time was finally untied today and she felt an unprecedented sense of relief and joy. I also bought a cake, while your younger sister is back today, let's celebrate together. Tang Ro got up and took the cake out of the refrigerator. This cake was obviously carefully customized by Tang Ro, and there was a card on the two layers of the cake that read, wishing Xiaofan a successful college entrance exam and happiness every day. There was also a little figure on the cake, next to which stood an egg with half of its shell broken, revealing a bald little head, it was unclear what it was. Without thinking, the little figure and the egg represented Xu Yen and his beast egg. Such a beautiful cake, it must taste good. Xu Yen gave a thumbs up and started cutting the cake to share with Tang Ro and Tang Xiaoxiao. Tang and one piece, me one piece. Xiaoxiao one piece, me one piece. Hmm, why do I have so much? Tang Ro, Tang Xiaoxiao. After the three of them were full and satisfied, Xu Yen was about to get up and return to his room when he was suddenly stopped by Tang Ro. Xiao Fan, wait a moment. And Tang, is there something wrong? Xu Yan turned around with a puzzled look. Sit down first, I have something to tell you. Tang Ro's expression was somewhat conflicted, but in the end, she gritted her teeth, as if she had made a big decision. Okay. When Xu Yan sat down, Tang Ro hesitated for a while, then took out a bank card from her pocket and handed it to Xu Yan. Xiao Fan, this is the compensation money from Jiang Gu and the others' deaths, a total of one, two million, all in here. The password is your birthday. When Tang Ro handed over the bank card, Xu Yan didn't hesitate and took it directly. What's the matter? Tang Ant, do you really need to hold back and not say a word for such a small thing? Xu Yan found it a bit amusing. No, no, besides this matter, I have something important to tell you. Tang Ro adjusted her expression. In these past few days, I and Xiao Xiao have moved out. Tang Ro's words were brief, but they left Xu Yan stunned. Moved out? Why? Xu Yan was puzzled. And Tang, if you still feel guilty about my parents' matter, there's no need. I know the whole story. My parents chose to save you, even if it cost them their lives. I won't blame you or add to your pain. At least not anymore, Xu Yan silently added in her mind. After hearing Xu Yan's words, Tang Ro, who had managed to remain calm, felt her nose tingle and couldn't help but burst into tears. Since the first day she lived with Xu Yan, Tang Ro could sense the distance and reproach from her, causing her great distress. But now, after hearing Xu Yan's words, Tang Ro felt that all her efforts were worthwhile. She cried, and her daughter Tang Xiaoxiao hurried to comfort her. At the same time, Tang Xiaoxiao looked at Xu Yan with a complex expression. She never expected Xu Yan to say such words, especially since just a week ago, he had a face as if someone owed him 80 million. What had happened in this week to make Xu Yan's attitude towards his mother change so drastically? Did he suddenly understand his mother's intentions? No. That explanation was even more implausible than his rebirth. However, regardless of the reason, bringing this matter to light was good for both his mother and Xu Yan. In this honest situation, it was already the best outcome. After a long time, Tang Ro's emotions finally calmed down. She wiped the tears from the corners of her eyes and then, 
with a slightly hoarse voice from crying, said, I didn't move out for that reason. Xiao Fan, you've grown up and need your own personal space. And we've already received the compensation from Jiang Gu, Xiao Xiao and I can't continue living in your house. I'll find a place nearby to stay for now, and when Xiao Xiao finishes this semester, I'll take her back to the countryside. Tang Rou explained her plan in a few words, showing that she had already thought it through. And Tang, what are you saying? Even if I need personal space, there's no need to kick you and Xiao Xiao out of the house, right? Xu Yan looked puzzled. Then what about fooling around with the woman next door? You two need more than just a living room. It's because of you that mom didn't even find a house before telling me to pack my bags. Tang Xiaoxiao's words rang in Xu Yan's ears. For a moment, he didn't know what she was talking about. What fooling around? Tang Xiaoxiao, don't make baseless accusations. Xu Yan was getting angry. This little girl was young but had a sharp tongue, and she was unjustly tarnishing his innocence. It's the house opposite our balcony. Both mom and I saw it through the telescope. Mom said the person living there is a senior sister from Jinling Imperial Beast University. Xu Yan, you're really lucky, even seducing a senior sister. Tang Xiaoxiao stood with her hands on her hips, looking like a fierce mother tiger. It was then that Xu Yan realized that his encounter with Song Yunqi had been witnessed. Even with Xu Yan's thick skin, he couldn't help but blush. You little brat, what are you playing with a telescope for? Xu Yan scolded Tang Xiaoxiao, then turned to Tang Rou to explain the situation. After hearing Xu Yan's explanation, Tang Rou's slightly embarrassed expression softened. When it rains, it pours. Tang Rou had anticipated the possibility of Xu Yan having a girlfriend, as she had vaguely sensed something when Xu Yan's monitor, Chen Cici, came to visit last time. Seeing the scene again under her daughter's report today, Tang Rou couldn't help but be surprised. She then began to blame herself. If she wasn't at home, would Xiao Fan be able to bring his girlfriend home? Yes, the reason Tang Rou wanted to move out was solely to allow Xu Yan to bring his girlfriend home openly without worrying about her gaze. In fact, Tang Rou was extremely reluctant to separate from Xu Yan internally, there was only this one man at home, and if she separated from Xiao Fan, who else could she rely on? She hadn't even realized that her indulgence towards Xu Yan had reached an irreparable point. If Xu Yan was just a lazy person who didn't strive for progress or even indulged in self-destruction, Tang Rou would probably be PUA to death. You're all like this, deceiving a three-year-old? And are you playing cosplay? My classmates say it's fun, men like that. Tang Xiaoxiao sarcastically remarked. Xiao Fan, you don't need to explain to me, I believe you. Tang Rou smiled gently at Xu Yan. Tang Xiaoxiao. What fun, what cosplay, you little girl, you're not learning well day by day, always thinking about these things, you must have learned bad things at school. Transfer schools next semester. Xu Yan coldly glanced at Tang Xiaoxiao. Then, with a soothing smile, he said to Tang Rou, Aunt Tang, please don't mention moving out again in the future. If you really leave, who will help me with laundry and cooking? You don't want me to eat takeout for the rest of my life, right? I can't do without Aunt Tang, who can cook so many delicious dishes. Xu Yan jokingly said to Tang Rou, to prevent Tang Rou from moving, it was actually very simple, just explain that he can't live without her, and she would definitely not want to leave. Since his parents passed away, Xu Yan had no relatives in this world. From the moment of rebirth, Xu Yan regarded Tang Rou and Tang Xiaoxiao, who had lived two lifetimes together, as his closest relatives. As life was getting better and better, there was no reason to drive away loved ones, right? Hey Xu Yan, how can you treat my mom as a maid? Tang Xiaoxiao gritted her teeth, dissatisfied with Xu Yan's words. At this moment, Tang Rou's eyes were teary, but she still glared fiercely at her daughter. Xiaoxiao, don't talk to Xiao Fan like that. Xiao Fan, since you still have a use for me, then I'll stay. If one day you find me, this old aunt annoying, just say the word, and I'll leave immediately. Tang Xiaoxiao sighed as she heard this, realizing her mother was beyond help. After hearing this, Xu Yan also found it amusing, got it, and Tang. After tonight's frankness, the relationship within the family finally changed. At least the atmosphere at home was no longer as tense and cautious as before. A night of silence. On Saturday morning, Xu Yan rarely slept in until 10 o'clock when the sun was already shining. Tang Rou had a weekend off and had already cooked a large pot of a treasure porridge early in the morning. Tang Xiaoxiao locked herself in her room, claiming to be doing homework. Taking advantage of the good weather today and before lunchtime, Xu Yin decided to take his demon egg outside to bask in the sun. Yesterday's matter with Song Yunqi was left unresolved, so Xu Yin naturally didn't get the snow shadow at all. Therefore, today Xu Yin could only endure the scorching sun and stroll around a newly built square not far from the residential area while holding the beast egg. This bizarre scene attracted the attention of many people walking in the square, but Xu Yen, with thick skin, didn't feel embarrassed. It wasn't easy to carry the demon egg on his back, so Xu Yen dragged it in front of his chest. 
A half-meter high demon egg blocked his line of sight, so Xu Yan could only look at the road sideways. It was because of this that an accident happened around 11 o'clock. Xu Yan, who was basking in the sun while holding a demon egg, suddenly heard a shout from beside her, move, move. The voice was within Xu Yan's blind spot, and she could only hear it but not see the person. Fortunately, Xu Yan had a high level of vitality, and her senses were much stronger than the average person. As the voice approached, Xu Yan sensed that the person was attacking from her left side and quickly dodged to the side. She managed to avoid the attack, but the person suddenly grabbed Xu Yan's arm and tried to forcefully twist it. The person exerted great force, and Xu Yan could clearly feel that their vitality was much higher than that of an ordinary person. It was evident that the person intentionally grabbed her arm. Sensing this, Xu Yan furrowed her brows, then lifted her foot and kicked towards the person. The kick landed solidly on the person's chest. Xu Yan used a lot of force, enough to potentially break a few of the person's ribs. Crack. Ah. The sound of ribs breaking and screams rang out simultaneously. It was only at this moment that Xu Yan put down her demon egg, squinted her eyes, and observed the person who had just tried to attack her. She saw a person dressed in trendy fashion lying on the ground howling in pain. Not far from this person was a skateboard, and his four companions hurried over. Two males and two females, along with the groaning male on the ground, making a total of five people. They were all dressed very stylishly. Colorful shirts, large gold chains hanging around their necks, and loose pants that could fit two legs. This group of people looked like a bunch of skateboarders. Chow, his ribs seemed to be broken. A shrill cry came from a girl not far away who was checking on the injured man. Among the group surrounding Xu Yan, a man with dyed golden hair and a sideswept fringe who had not spoken calmly instructed, take Chow to the hospital, I will handle things here. The man called Chow had a lot of authority among the group, and they immediately followed his orders. The burly man also went to help, leaving only the man with golden hair and a girl with a strand of green hair next to Xu Yan. My friend was skateboarding here, and you intentionally kicked him down, causing several of his ribs to break. How do you plan to resolve this? Blackmail for money? Xu Yan found the appearance of these people somewhat amusing. You brat, who do you think is blackmailing for money? We are students of the Spirit Academy, do you think we care about the little money in your pocket? The green-haired girl looked indignant and proudly identified themselves. Spirit Academy? Xu Yan recognized this name, a private elite school. Tang Xiaoxiao had attended the affiliated junior high school. Since it's not about money, what do you want then? Just to clarify, I only acted because that Chao guy was being disrespectful. Xu Yan, with an attitude of avoiding unnecessary trouble, explained to the two the cause and process of the incident. However, Xu Yan, with an adult mindset, forgot one thing, students of Chao's age group tend to emphasize principles at this stage of their lives. Even if it's not Xu Yan's fault, they can still find some faults to attack Xu Yan. Why are you carrying such a big egg to the square? And what kind of absurd cultivation method is it to bring out the beast egg to sunbathe? Is your family so poor that you can't even afford chi and blood potion? This green-haired girl seemed to become more displeased with Xu Yan the more she looked at him, constantly blaming him. Huh, how interesting. This square is not yours, so what if I come here? And what does it have to do with you how I cultivate the beast egg? When it comes to cultivating beasts, you are nothing in front of me. Xu Yan also has a temper, and since there's nothing wrong with speaking, he directly retorted to the girl's words. Xiao Hong, don't get excited, I'll handle this. Jin Mao stopped Xiao Hong, who wanted to continue arguing with Xu Yan, then looked at Xu Yan and said lightly, I'm Chui Ying Jun, a student at the Spirit Academy, and my dad is one of the school directors. Chui Ying Jun's introduction was very simple. His dad being a school director sounded impressive, but Xu Yan didn't care. You said you understand how to cultivate beasts? Chui Ying Jun turned to Xu Yan and asked, I should know a bit more than you, no, I definitely know more than you. Xu Yan didn't hesitate to answer directly, Oh, really? But I see you haven't even hatched a beast egg yet, how dare you say you know more about cultivating beasts than me? Come out, blaze monkey. Chui Ying Jun sneered, throwing out a beast ball. A half-human tall, fiery red-haired monkey with flames on its head appeared less than 5 meters away from Xu Yan. This Chui Ying Jun actually had a hatched beast. With a beast in hand, as long as he could pass the country's first level beast master assessment, he could become a legitimate beast master and enjoy policy benefits. This kid is really hiding his abilities. Xu Yan opened the Blaze Monkey's panel for analysis, Beast, Blaze Monkey, Type, Fire Type Beast, Level, LV3, Talent Level, B, Growth Potential, A, Qi and Blood, 120, Spirit, 1, External Skeleton, 1, Internal Skeleton, 1, LV3, Ha, huh, thought it was so strong, turns out to be a weakling. After looking carefully for a while, Xu Yan found that the values on the Blaze Monkey's panel were not even comparable to Paying House Dark Night Owl. Today's matter is simple. 
You brought this broken egg out to sunbathe, disturbing Changzi's skateboarding, not only that, but you also deliberately injured him. I could have handed you over to the security bureau, but I don't want to do that. Instead of having the security bureau lock you up for a while, I'd rather see the look of despair on your face. Choi Ying Jun sneered, then suddenly said, Blaze Monkey, use, flame fist, to smash his beast egg. With Choi Ying Jun's command, the Blaze Monkey's fist condensed into a flaming fist and smashed towards Xu Yan's demon egg. Xu Yan had originally planned to retrieve the demon egg into the beast ball before dealing with the monkey, but to his surprise, as the Blaze Monkey approached within a meter radius of the demon egg, it suddenly collapsed like a puddle of mud on the ground. Blaze Monkey. Choi Ying Jun, who was still proud, was dumbfounded when he saw this scene. He threw his skateboard on the ground and rushed to the monkey on the ground. Blaze monkey, blaze monkey, what's wrong with you? Don't scare me. Chui Ying Jun knelt on the ground, holding his monkey, his face pale. Ha, huh, more like kidney deficient monkey, almost collapsing after a few steps. Don't embarrass yourself. Xu Yan couldn't help but find it amusing, while his gaze was fixed on his demon egg. The last time he battled with Zhong Liang in the bedroom, his little sponge had a similar situation. Could it be the demon egg's doing? Xu Yan felt that there was a 90% chance it would turn out as she had expected. Chui Ying Jun knelt on the ground looking confused, but Xu Yan couldn't be bothered with him. After retrieving the demon egg into the beast ball, she went home to eat. Once Xu Yan left, the previously listless pansier regained its strength. Without a word, it darted into the beast ball, ignoring Chui Ying Jun's calls. Chui Gu, what's wrong with pansier? Xiao Hong, seeing this scene, was also frightened and couldn't help but ask. Chui Ying Jun's face darkened. I don't know, maybe it's sick? Oh, didn't Shinjia mention that there's a banquet tonight at her sister's house to thank the master of Pokemon breeding who cured her sister's Articuno? We've also been invited, let's go tonight and see if we can talk to the Pokemon master and ask for help. Chui Ying Jun suddenly remembered the evening banquet. Normally, they and Yi Yusin would only come out to skateboard at night. If it weren't for the banquet tonight, the skateboarding activity wouldn't have been pushed to the morning. And as the eldest sister, Yi Yusin couldn't come out to play because she had to prepare for the evening banquet. Chui Gu, that kid ran away. Xiao Hong looked around anxiously and shouted. Don't worry about him, since he appeared nearby, he must be staying not far from here. We'll catch him sooner or later. It's getting late, let's go to the hospital to check on Xiangzi, and then prepare for the banquet in the afternoon. Chui Gu is right, let's let this kid go for now, we'll have Xinjia deal with him later. After their conversation, as they were about to leave after picking up the skateboard from the ground, suddenly, a violent tremor threw them both to the ground. What's going on? An earthquake. What's happening? Xu Yan, who was walking home with his hands in his pockets like everyone else, was also caught off guard by the sudden vibration under his feet. This tremor, could it be an earthquake? Xu Yan was a bit confused. Why didn't he remember any earthquakes in Linhai City in his past life? Moreover, was Linhai City located in an earthquake zone? The tremor lasted only a short time before ending abruptly, as if it had softened before even starting. Xu Yan didn't know much about geography, so after thinking for a while and not getting any clues, he stopped thinking about it. As he reached the entrance of Macau River community, Xu Yan saw several middle-aged women standing next to the security booth, discussing animatedly. Oh my, why did I see this building leaning just now? That's right, this building is no longer level with the adjacent ones. Could it be because of the earthquake just now? Oh my. It seems our community is really in trouble. Just a slight tremor in a building is already leaning. Those who have money should move out quickly. The middle-aged women gathered together, discussing fervently, and Xu Yan glanced at the building they were pointing at. Indeed, this building was fine this morning, but after the recent tremor, it had noticeably tilted. This was too terrifying, wasn't it? The only thing Xu Yan was grateful for was that the leaning building wasn't his own. Well, it looks like I need to speed up my house buying plans. Otherwise, if the house collapses and crushes me to death, I would definitely be the most aggrieved reincarnator in history. Xu Yan hurried back home. There was nothing amiss at home, except for some dishes and utensils that had fallen and scattered on the floor, everything else was normal. Xiaofan, are you okay? Tang Ro grabbed Xu Yan's shoulders as soon as she saw him return. And Tang, I'm fine. How about Xiao Xiao? She's so calm staying in her room despite the commotion. Tang Xiao Xiao's room was tightly closed and it seemed that the recent tremor hadn't affected her at all. This lazy girl, she probably hasn't even woken up yet. I'll go call her now. When it came to her daughter Tang Xiaoxiao, Tang Ro's originally gentle face suddenly turned frosty. Oh and Tang, don't call her. It's rare that it's the weekend today, let Xiaoxiao sleep a bit longer. How did your house hunting plans go? If everything is fine, shall we go house hunting this afternoon? Are you in such a hurry? Looking for a house is a big deal, 
and Tang Rou is not prepared at all. Immediately, Xu Yin told Tang Rou about what she had seen in the square after coming back. When Tang Rou heard that one of the buildings in the neighborhood was leaning, her originally calm expression suddenly showed a sense of urgency. Oh my, we need to leave here first to avoid trouble. I heard that there are aftershocks after an earthquake, and it would be troublesome if we were affected by the aftershocks. Let's leave now and stay at a hotel outside for two days. Oh, also call Xiao Xiao, this little rascal only knows how to sleep all day, he wouldn't even know if he slept to death. Tang Ro hurriedly prepared to leave. Half an hour later, Tang Xiao Xiao was startled by Tang Ro's violent knocking on the door and slowly opened the room door. Can you be more sensible? What time is it now, and you're just sleeping? Tang Ro lectured Tang Xiao Xiao, and also told him about what had just happened. After finishing, Tang Ro handed several suitcases to Tang Xiao Xiao. This suitcase contains Xiao Fan's bedding, the hotel's is not clean, take this one. And this suitcase contains Xiao Fan's change of clothes. And this one has Xiao Fan's toys and some books. Hurry up and help me carry them downstairs. After placing three suitcases in front of Tang Xiao Xiao, it seemed like there were still some things left to pack, so Tang Ro went into Xu Yan's room. Mom, I'm your daughter, not livestock. Tang Xiao Xiao pouted and strongly protested against his biased mother. Finally, persuaded by Xu Yan, Tang Ro reluctantly changed into a new outfit, carrying a delicate small bag and nothing else. Tang Ro seemed to have a special fondness for skirts, Xu Yan had seen her wear skirts the most. Today was no exception. Tang Ro's light brown knee-length skirt wrapped her exquisite figure just right, with pleats and white lace patterns embellishing the skirt in a unique way. Of course, the skirt was just one part of the focus, the most eye-catching were the flesh-colored stockings that wrapped around Tang Ro's two snow-white long legs. The stockings clung to Tang Ro's body, seemingly due to the heat of summer, the sweat from her thighs seeping through the pores was firmly held by the stockings, accentuating a sense of fullness. She wore high heels that reached Xu Yan's shoulder level. After carefully examining her outfit, Tang Ro tentatively asked Xu Yan, does this look too old-fashioned? After all, young people don't like to be seen with someone like me, right? Mom, Xu Yan can't take his eyes off you. What do you think? Tang Xiaoxiao disdainfully pursed his lips, wearing a simple sports t-shirt and loose pants, revealing nothing. But at his age, there was nothing to show off. Xu Yan, who was exposed by Tang Xiaoxiao, felt a bit embarrassed. Since Tang Ro appeared in front of him earlier, he had been staring at Tang Ro's stockings. Although mentally Xu Yan was not young anymore, physically he was in the prime of youth, and when he saw something attractive, it naturally triggered a reaction. And Tang, you are not old at all, if we stand together, people who don't know might think you are my sister. Xu Yan laughed heartily. Smooth talker, Tang Ro rarely retorted Xu Yan. After everything was ready, the three of them left. At 3 o'clock in the afternoon, downtown Lehi City. Hohat Mansion Sales Office. Xu Yan and the other two came directly to the lobby with a clear goal. Tang Ro had said that a friend of hers worked here, so as soon as the three entered, they were warmly received by her friend. Tang Jia, you finally came, I've been looking forward to your arrival to boost my performance. The sales lady in a black professional OL suit warmly approached Tang Ro and shook her hand. Xiao Xiao, thank you, but I can't make decisions about boosting performance, the one who can make the decision is him. Xiao Fan, this is Xiao Xian, my friend. We have been childhood friends from the same village for over 20 years. You can call her Xiaoyi just like you call me. Tang Ro introduced the two to each other, and Xu Yan smiled back at Tang Ro's friend, saying, Xiaoyi. Xiao Xian was taken aback when Tang Ro pointed to Xu Yan. Then, as if suddenly realizing something, she also smiled at Xu Yan. After exchanging greetings, Xiao Xian immediately pulled Tang Ro aside and asked cautiously, Tang Jia, is everything settled? Tang Ro had originally wanted to boast about Xu Yan's heroic deeds in front of Xiao Xian, but she was surprised to be pulled aside and hear Xiao Xian say some things, leaving her puzzled. What's settled? Oh, you know, that thing, Xiao Xian gestured with her fingers. Did you get the compensation money for the child's parents' death? Tang Jia, you are amazing. How much did you get? Two people died. You should be able to buy a house in full, right? Xiao Xian couldn't help but give Tang Ro a thumbs up. At that moment, even if Tang Ro was foolish, she could sense the meaning behind Xiao Xuan's words. Did she think that Tang Ro was living with Xiao Fan to embezzle the compensation money from Xiao Fan's parents' death? Thinking of this, Tang Ro trembled with anger, and her face, which had been smiling, turned cold almost instantly. Xiao Xian also noticed Tang Ro's unease and quickly explained, Tang Jia, I didn't mean anything else. I was just asking, these kinds of things are common in society. Many people run away after taking the money, but you are willing to take care of him. Compared to those people in the news, you are already a moral role model. That poor kid should be grateful to you. Xiao Xian gave Tang Ro a thumbs up, while also casting a sidelong glance at Xu Yan. She truly believed that Tang Ro had done more than enough. 
Bringing this kid to buy a house, if it were her, she might have taken advantage already. Xiao Xian, I kindly introduced you to business, and this is how you treat a friend? And I told you, it's Xiao Fan who wants to buy a house, not me. If this is how you see me and Xiao Fan, then we'll leave now. I, Tang Ro, will pretend I never had a childhood friend like you. Xiao Xian had only wanted to chat with Tang Ro and gain some insights, but she never expected Tang Ro's reaction to be so strong. The friendship of over 20 years was broken just like that, which startled Xiao Xian. Oh my, my dear Tang Jia, please don't be angry, I was just talking casually, please don't take it to heart. Xiao Xian felt extremely bitter in her heart. Her loose tongue, usually fine when selling houses, had suddenly become muddled at this moment. Tang Ro completely ignored her and turned to leave. However, at that moment, Xu Yan approached and said, Tang auntie, let's not talk in private, let Xiaoyi take us to see the house quickly. Tang Ro had originally wanted to leave directly, but upon hearing Xu Yan's words, she was taken aback. She stared at Xu Yan with watery eyes, noticing a faint smile at the corner of her mouth and a mischievous look in her eyes when she glanced at Xiao Xian. Did Xiao Fan hear that? Tang Ro's heart skipped a beat, and she was about to explain, but then she heard Xu Yan say, Tang auntie, you don't need to explain. Can it be that I don't trust you? Xu Yan's words touched Tang Ro for a moment, thinking about her own actions, they were indeed quite similar to what Xiao Xian had said, being misunderstood was normal. But Tang Ro didn't care about that anymore after what happened last night. Let them say what they want, she was already losing a piece of herself. Xiao Xian walked over awkwardly, having heard Xu Yan's words as well. So, at this moment, they stood together with a hint of awkwardness on their faces. The process of viewing the house still had to continue, but Xiao Xian made an excuse of a stomachache halfway and left, letting another female salesperson take over to assist Xu Yan. If Xu Yan really buys a house here, the commission will also go to this new female salesperson, and Xiao Xian will not get a penny. Sir, currently we have five main types of units at Hohat Mansion, ranging in size from 80 to 150 square meters. In terms of price, it's basically around 800,000 to 1. 2 million per unit. You can take a look at the floor plans first. Xu Yan nodded, and after looking around, pointed to some units in the upper left corner with the word royal on them, which were generally more expensive than the regular units. What does this royal mean? Oh sir, these units with the royal word are what we call Royal Beast School District homes. Families who buy this type of unit will receive preferential treatment when their children attend the specialized Royal Beast Cultivation School. For example, they can directly enter the key classes at Linhai High School, they can go to the sales office every week to listen to lessons from Royal Beast teachers, and so on. There are many benefits. If you want to cultivate your child in the path of a Royal Beast teacher, buying a Royal Beast School District home is the best choice. Xu Yan, who was not expecting such extravagance in this world of Royal Beast teachers, was surprised. Sir, I see that your daughter is not young anymore. Buying a Royal Beast School District home now will be very helpful for her future. You can consider it. In addition to some academic privileges, the security of our Royal Beast School District homes is also top-notch. The security team includes three security captains with a chi and blood value of 90 points. The entire community is equipped with surveillance cameras and infrared detection rays, ranking in the top three in safety in Linhai City. And if you purchase a Royal Beast School District home at our Hohat Mansion, we will also give you a one-year VIP card for the Guilian Beauty Salon worth 3999 with this card, your wife can enjoy a 25% discount at designated stores. Obviously, Xiao Xian did not make it clear when she left, and the female salesperson mistakenly thought that Xu Yan and Tang Ro were husband and wife, while the middle school student Tang Xiaoxiao next to them was mistaken as their daughter. Miss, you misunderstood, I am his aunt. We are not husband and wife, Tang Ro waved her hand, feeling amused. How could someone think that way about my relationship with Xiao Fan? It's really strange. But doesn't this prove that I am not yet an old maid, after all, Xiao Fan is so young and strong, and I look like his wife. Thinking about it, Tang Ro couldn't help but blush. Ah the female salesperson looked astonished, not expecting to make such a big mistake. Hee hee, I was wondering how the madam had such a big daughter and still looked so young. And sir, you are also young and promising, with a bright future ahead. Um, the redhead little sister is also very cute. Then I'll take a Royal Beast School District home, and do you have furnished units? We might move in a short time. Xu Yan didn't take the compliments of the female salesperson to heart and made a decision after looking at the floor plans. Upon hearing this, the female salesperson's face lit up with excitement. We do have furnished units, but they are 30,000 more expensive than unfurnished units. However, the furnished units have a dedicated royal beast cultivation room inside, which can provide the most intimate care for your royal beasts, ensuring that you won't feel shortchanged, sir. For a five-bedroom, 2 living room, 160 square meter house at 2. 
2 million, adding 300,000 would make it too. 5 million. Okay, I'll take this one. Xu Yan wasn't particularly interested in the privileges of a school district home, he valued the safety of the community. The events that had happened before were still fresh in his mind, how could Xu Yan not be cautious? Xu Yan had a reward of 1 million from the security bureau, 1 million from Yi Euro for medical fees, and 1, 2 million in death benefits from his parents. Although he had used some of it before, buying a 2, 5 million house was not too difficult. Sir, we have a 20% down payment, 30%. Plan, which one would you choose? The female salesperson was already beaming with joy on her face. Sha Jia introduced herself to this family, unexpectedly they were so generous, her performance is going to rise rapidly. Down payment? No, I'll pay in full. Xu Yan naturally had the ability to pay in full. Last time she gave Yi Euro a few pointers, and the other party gave him a bank card with 1 million in it, enough to show the power of the system. Although she couldn't accumulate system points with the system's abilities, accumulating wealth was unlimited. That's why Xu Yan decided to buy it in full with a wave of her hand. What, in full? Xu Yan, are you crazy? Where did you get so much money? Tang Xiaoxiao was puzzled after hearing Xu Yan's words. She didn't use her phone at school and rarely had access to outside information. And when she came back on weekends, she locked herself in her room, no one told her about Xu Yan's situation, so she couldn't know that Xu Yan was actually a zealous citizen who had captured a first order beast tamer criminal. In Tang Xiaoxiao's understanding, Xu Yan had only a little over one, two million, even if she counted some money her mother secretly gave her, it definitely wouldn't exceed one, five million, wanting to buy a two, five million house in full with one, five million, isn't Xu Yan just pretending to be rich? Tang Ro had a similar idea to Tang Xiaoxiao. She didn't know that Xu Yan had 1 million in the black gold card she gave her before, she just felt that Xu Yan was a bit anxious. It's okay to pay the down payment first, and then slowly pay the monthly installments. After all, aren't many families living like this now? Xiao Fan, how about considering it again? If it's not possible, just get a more ordinary apartment. Tang Ro spoke up persuasively. No need, just this one. Xu Yan waved her hand, stopping Tang Ro and Tang Xiaoxiao from saying anything further. The female salesperson next to them, on the other hand, was accustomed to this and wasn't surprised at all that Xu Yan could come up with so much money all at once. All right, sir. Please show me your first order beast tamer certificate, I need to register it. The female salesperson said enthusiastically, but her words puzzled Xu Yan. What first order beast tamer certificate? I'm not even a beast tamer. Xu Yan was confused. The female salesperson was also confused. Not a beast tamer? Sir, you're so young, how could you have saved up so much money if you're not a beast tamer? Could it be that your family is in business? Ah, uh, my family is just a small farming household, nothing worth mentioning. But can only beast tamers buy this beast tamer school district house? Xu Yan once again felt the omnipresent privilege of being a beast tamer. Ha, uh, not entirely. If you, sir, can provide a guarantee letter from a beast tamer registered in a government department, you can also buy it. The saleswoman explained. Oh, I see. Xu Yan's eyes flashed. This introduction letter wasn't difficult to obtain. After all, he had contact with quite a few beast tamers. Director Wang from the school, Lu Tianfeng from the security bureau, Song Yunqi, this one crossed out, and so on. All right, I'll bring the introduction letter in a few days. Xu Yan didn't take it too seriously. He didn't want to complain about the fact that only beast tamers could buy a beast tamer school district house, because Xu Yan knew that he would soon rise to this level. The country gives so many benefits to beast tamers, it can't be just for them to eat, right? Xu Yan recalled what Song Yunqi said when he picked her up at the station, beast tamers have never been a privileged class. Hmm, he didn't quite understand, so Xu Yan decided not to think about it, he would know sooner or later. Boom! Xu Yan was thinking about who to get an introduction letter from when suddenly the ground shook. Again? This time, because he was sitting down, Xu Yan wasn't thrown off balance by the sudden shock. This time the shock was obviously more intense than the first time, and even the tea table for guests was overturned. Like last time, this shock came and went quickly. It lasted less than a minute before stopping. What's going on? Xu Yan furrowed his brow, thinking that if things continued like this, he would have to consider whether to buy a house in Linhai. In the afternoon, at a construction site of Tianhai City Construction Group, a university intern wearing a yellow hard hat rushed over to the foreman inspecting the foundation pit and reported, Lu, the pile driver has broken three machines, and we still can't get the foundation down. Stop for now, I have already contacted the group, and professionals will come to inspect soon. Lu, wearing a red hard hat, furrowed his brow and smoked a cigarette with a worried expression. 
He had received news that the Special Operations Department of the Linhai Security Bureau was coming. Although the Special Operations Department was under the Linhai Security Bureau, it operated independently and specialized in handling matters related to mythical beasts, not human beast masters. The appearance of the Special Operations Department indicated a strong message, a wild mythical beast had been discovered in Linhai City. Thinking of the two earthquakes in Linhai City, Lu became even more worried. If work couldn't proceed, the project would incur losses. As Lu pondered, a Mercedes-Benz Z300 slowly drove into the construction site and stopped beside him. For men in suits got out of the car and, upon seeing Lu, compared him to a photo in their hands. Are you Lu Chang? Yes, yes, leaders, please smoke. Lu offered his cigarette, but the four men directly refused. We are taking over here now. You and your people need to leave and wait for further instructions on when to resume work. I will follow the leader's arrangements, Lu dared not object knowing that at least one of the four men was a first-order beast master, and the others had at least 100 points of chi and blood, not someone ordinary could handle. However, driven by curiosity, Lu gathered his courage and asked, Leaders, are there mythical beasts under this construction site? As soon as Lu spoke, he was met with sharp gazes. Don't ask what you shouldn't ask. Yes, yes. Lu slinked away. After everyone had left the site, the four men exchanged glances, then opened a box from the trunk of the car and assembled a device similar to a radar in just 10 minutes. Three of them descended into the foundation pit with the device while one observed from above. Surface waves normal. Abnormal rock layer detection. Underground cavity. Detecting abnormal life energy with unique characteristics of mythical beasts. After a series of detections, the four men reached a preliminary conclusion. Good, all of you come up. Pangolin, it's up to you next. Dig through this place for me. The person remaining above the pit took out a mythical beast egg and threw it downward. A pangolin the size of a tiger, covered in hard scales with sharp claws, appeared and drilled into the ground like a drill. Dust flew, and the outcome was unknown. When Zhang Dao, Tang Ro, and Tang Xiaoxiao returned to the Macau River community, it was already past 6 in the afternoon, the peak time for office workers and students to return home. The Macau River community was livelier than usual at this time. As the three walked to their building, they saw a group of people gathered around a car, pointing and chatting. What's happening? Tang Xiaoxiao liked to join in the excitement, so she squeezed through to take a look and quickly returned to report, Wow, there's a Rolls Royce parked downstairs in our building. A Rolls Royce, considered a luxury car wherever it was, was even more so in an old community like Macau River. As the residents speculated about the car's origin, they couldn't help but wonder who in the community had made a fortune. What kind of car is a Rolls Royce? Tang Ro, not familiar with cars, didn't react much after hearing the news. It was Xu Yen who, after looking at the car, jokingly said, a super luxury car. The three-year period has ended, and the Dragon King has returned. Anyway, it's none of our business. Let's go home and cook first. I'm starving. Tang Xiaoxiao glanced at it and lost interest. Although she also admired luxury cars, she knew her family's capabilities and wisely refrained from looking too much, out of sight, out of mind. Today, I'll cook and prepare a good meal for you guys. Xu Yan rolled up her sleeves, showing a determined attitude. The three of them walked up the stairs, and as soon as they reached the door on the sixth floor, they saw an old man with a red tie, gray hair, bearing a striking resemblance to Colonel Sanders standing at the door. Who are you, and what are you doing in our house? Xu Yan raised an eyebrow, asking in a puzzled tone. Besides Xu Yan, Tang Ro and her daughter were also puzzled. Are you Mr. Xu Yan? Yes. Mr. Xu Yan. I've heard of your great name. I am Lin Fu, the steward of the Yi family. Our master invites you to a banquet. This person should be an old steward. And when he mentioned the master, Xu Yan guessed that it must be a wealthy person. Your master? The Yi family, in Yi city. The steward replied succinctly, and Xu Yan suddenly realized. Last time at the police station, Yi city asked him about his spirit beast Xiao Duya, and Xu Yan casually told him. Yi city probably believed his words and tried to treat it, achieving good results in the end. Is that Rolls Royce downstairs yours? Tang Xiaoxiao looked incredulous. Judging from the man's attire, he was undoubtedly a Rolls Royce driver. Yes, my master asked me to bring Mr. Xu Yen to the banquet. Xu Yen, did you hook up with someone's daughter? Otherwise, how could such a person be so polite to you? Tang Xiaoxiao started her wild thoughts again. Xu Yen gave her a look and then said to the old steward, I was about to cook. Xiao Fan and Xiaoxiao can just eat casually. Since they have kindly invited you, it's not a bad thing to go and take a look. Tang Ro was very understanding. Although she didn't know the relationship between Xu Yan and the other party, she wouldn't ask too much. Well, in that case, I'll come back later. Xu Yan thought for a moment, 
going to the Yi family was not a bad idea. Yi City was a third-level spirit beast master, and communicating with him might bring unexpected gains. Following the steward Lin downstairs, as soon as they reached outside, they found a group of people sitting or standing not far from the car, watching. After Xu Yan got into the car and left under Lin Fu's service, all the onlookers showed expressions of disbelief. Am I seeing things? Wasn't that person who just got in the car Xu Yan? Isn't Xu Yan a high school student? How come the Rolls Royce driver is so polite to him? Don't you all know? The Zhang family kid made a great contribution to the police station, I guess he caught the attention of some big shot who wants to make him his son-in-law. Various speculations and gossip continued, and these neighbors who had watched Xu Yan grow up originally felt sorry for him for losing his parents, but now, they wished they could replace Xu Yan and sit in that car themselves. After about half an hour of smooth driving, the car stopped steadily at the foot of a mountain in the center of Linhai City. The mountain was brightly lit, with houses arranged in rows, it was not just a mountain but a huge mansion on the mountain. Xu Yan knew that the Yi family was wealthy, but he never expected them to be this wealthy. Judging by the size of the mansion, it would cost at least tens of billions. Xu Yan suddenly felt that the one million sincerity Yi Euro had given him was a bit inadequate. Mr. Xu Yan, the master is waiting for you in the reception room. Please follow me. Lin Fu handed the keys to a nearby servant and led Xu Yan to the reception room. However, the spacious reception room, as empty as a basketball court, was devoid of any human presence at this time. Lin Fu's turbid eye showed a hint of confusion as he entered with Xu Yan. After arranging for Xu Yan to sit down, Lin Fu said he was going to find Yi Chang and then turned to leave. Bored, Xu Yan looked around to pass the time. It had to be said that the Yi family was truly wealthy. The furniture was made of rosewood, the scent of incense seemed to be worth a fortune, and those ceramic calligraphy and paintings were clearly not ordinary, so exquisite that it was hard for one's mind to not get lost in them. As she looked around, Xu Yan suddenly noticed something moving above her head. Because the guest room of the Yi family was in an antique style, there were beams inside in addition to the brick roof on the outside. Xu Yan discovered something moving on the beam above her head. Check with the system. Xu Yan opened the system and scanned around, indeed finding new information recorded. Beast, black-faced monkey, type, rock-type beast, talent level, A, highest S, level, LV35, health, spirit. Ha! Huh? There was actually a beast above her head, and it was a third-order beast at level 35? But the situation seemed a bit off. Xu Yan continued reading, skills, playful wooden monkey is fond of games, when entering battle mode, it will throw a banana at the enemy. Upon hitting the enemy, the enemy will be immobilized for 3 seconds and unable to move. Status, the black-faced monkey is in a playful mood and is currently out of control. Training direction, grab the black-faced monkey, give it 100 slaps, which can change it from an out-of-control state to a docile state and increase its health by 1 point. Just as Xu Yan finished reading the information about the black-faced monkey, she suddenly felt something hit her head. Looking down, she saw a yellow banana. I can't move my body. Just as Xu Yan was about to pick up the banana on the ground to retaliate, she found that she couldn't move at all. However, the black-faced monkey clearly had no intention of harming her. During the three seconds that Xu Yan was immobilized, the black-faced monkey did not lay a hand on her but instead jumped down from the beam to make faces at Xu Yan. Details, the black-faced monkey is extremely stubborn and not easily tamed. After reading the information about the black-faced monkey and seeing it making faces in front of her, Xu Yan understood that this creature was just a mischievous monkey. The three seconds passed in an instant, and at this moment, the black-faced monkey was still pulling its mouth and eyelids, sticking out its tongue, looking like a circus monkey. Not only that, after making this gesture, the black-faced monkey even turned its dark buttocks towards Xu Yan. It used its long hands to pat its buttocks, provoking Xu Yan. Enough is enough. How could a mischievous monkey dare to show off in front of a human who had evolved tens of thousands of years earlier? Xu Yan had to discipline this monkey. He he, since you are a beast, I will discipline you using the methods of a beast tamer. Xu Yan took out a beast ball and threw it at the black-faced monkey, trying to subdue it by force. However, the beast ball Xu Yan threw, which had no rank, was like a toy in front of the level 35 black-faced monkey. The beast ball emitted a light that enveloped the black-faced monkey, but the next second, the black-faced monkey grabbed it and threw it to the ground, causing the light to dissipate. The black-faced monkey held the beast ball and smashed it on the ground like a coconut, showing its immense strength as it created several large holes in the floor. No good? Xu Yan raised an eyebrow, then thought of her demon egg. The demon egg had suppressed Zhong Liang's sponge ball last time, and earlier today, it had suppressed the blaze monkey. If she threw out the demon egg, could it also suppress the black-faced monkey? With this in mind, Xu Yan directly threw out the beast ball containing the demon egg. 
Although the black-faced monkey was of a higher level than the sponge ball and blaze monkey, Xu Yan still wanted to give it a try. The monster ball separated not far from the dark-faced monkey, and the half-meter-high demon egg stood there stiffly, motionless. The dark-faced monkey, who was happily playing with the monster ball, saw the demon egg and a strange light flashed in its eyes. It paused for a moment, and just when Xu Yan thought it was working, the dark-faced monkey pulled out a hammer from behind. Ding, dark-faced monkey activates skill, play whack-a-mole, play whack-a-mole. The dark-faced monkey summons a hammer, and enemies hit by the hammer will suffer huge damage. Play whack-a-mole is a pure damage skill. Xu Yan couldn't help but raise his eyebrows when he heard the system prompt. This mischievous monkey wanted to smash his demon egg. Just as Xu Yan was about to regret and put away the demon egg, the dark-faced monkey rushed towards the demon egg at lightning speed. As the black hammer in its hand accumulated more power and was about to strike the demon egg, the dark-faced monkey suddenly stopped one meter away from the egg. The next moment, the hammer in the dark-faced monkey's hand fell directly to the ground. Its whole body also collapsed to the ground, trembling uncontrollably. Is it done? Xu Yan was delighted. He didn't expect that the demon egg could even suppress a level 35 dark-faced monkey. If it hatched, how terrifying would its strength be? Xu Yan couldn't imagine it, and he didn't want to think about it now, as there were still important matters to attend to. Seeing the dark-faced monkey collapsed on the ground, Xu Yan smirked. After measuring the monkey's face with his palm, Xu Yan rubbed his hands together and went straight to work. The dark-faced monkey's face, apart from being black, had no fur. So when Xu Yan's slap landed on its face, it made an especially crisp sound. Slap. 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 With each slap, the dark-faced monkey would whimper in pain. However, Xu Yan had no mercy, but instead said, Behave, take these hundred slaps obediently, it's for your own good. In the reception room, the sound of slapping continued, those who didn't know what was happening blushed and left as they passed by. The reception room was a room where Yi Chang met guests alone. In addition to the reception room, there were facilities such as the reception hall, banquet hall, and dance hall. Tonight's banquet was held in the banquet hall of the Yi family estate. It was close to 8 o'clock in the evening, and the banquet hall was already crowded and lively. In a corner of the banquet hall, several young men and women dressed in suits and dresses sat together. Beside them was a guy wrapped in bandages, sitting in a wheelchair with an four drip. How did Chaozi get injured like this? Yi Yusin held a highball glass, looked at Wang Chao sitting in the wheelchair, and frowned. Hey, the thing is, Chui Jun, wearing a blue suit tonight with a rose in the pocket of his chest, recounted everything that happened at noon to Yi Yusin, and sighed, if Chaozi hadn't been careless, he wouldn't have had his ribs broken by that idiot who came out to sunbathe with a monster egg. After listening, Yi Yusin's first reaction was not anger but rather looking at Wang Chao in the wheelchair with some surprise and saying, it shouldn't be like this. Chaozi's health points have reached 100, so it's not easy for an ordinary person to break his ribs. Chaozi, you didn't fall on your own, did you? Yi Yusin didn't fully believe Chui Yingyuan's words, and in her opinion, it was a logical loophole for Wang Chao to have his ribs broken by someone of similar age. Even she couldn't kick Wang Chao's ribs with one foot, so was that guy a superhuman? Hey, that kid used some tricks, something like Tai Chi. Having high health points doesn't turn people into iron men, they will still get hurt when they should. Chui Yingjun sneered, thinking about this morning's events, he harshly said, it must be because today's earthquake scared my blaze monkey, otherwise I would have definitely smashed that kid's beast egg to avenge Chaozi. Yi Yusin listened, smiled, and remained silent. Seeing Yi Yusin's lack of interest in the topic, Chui Yingjun changed the subject and asked, Xianjia, where is uncle and your sister? Why haven't we seen them? If they don't come to host the banquet, we won't know what to do. Yi Yusin furrowed her brows, as that was her current worry. She didn't know if dad and her sister had found that monkey, if it ran out and caused trouble at the venue, it would be troublesome. In the separate family meeting hall of the Yi family estate, Yi Chang, Yi Euro, and other core members of the Yi family sat with furrowed brows. It's been so long, is there still no news of that black-faced monkey? In the silent hall, Yi Chang, the current head of the Yi family, asked first. The black-faced monkey is a third-tier beast. If it's deliberately hiding from us, it will take some time to find it, Yi Yuro said, holding her articuno with a worried expression on her face. If it weren't for these two earthquakes, that mischievous monkey wouldn't have had the chance to escape. It has a stubborn nature, and if it ruins tonight's banquet, Mr. Zhang will definitely be displeased with our Yi family, Yi Chang sighed softly. If the black-faced monkey wasn't found, there would be a great security risk at the banquet. The last time the black-faced monkey escaped, people in the estate didn't take it seriously and as a result, the monkey cracked the heads of several attendants. Although they were saved in time, since then, the black-faced monkey had become a terrifying presence in the Yi family estate. Yi Chang had considered cancelling the banquet,
but Lin Fu had just informed him that Xu Yen had arrived and was in the guest room. If he stopped the banquet now, what would Mr. Jiang think? That the Yi family was playing with him? That the Yi family was incompetent and couldn't handle a single monkey? Perhaps an ordinary person would think so, but knowing how powerful Xu Yen was, Yi Chang had elevated Xu Yen's status higher than his own father's. He didn't want Xu Yen to think poorly of the Yi family. Sir, Mr. Xu Yen has been waiting for half an hour, Lin Fu reminded Yi Cheng cautiously, delaying a guest like this could easily breed dissatisfaction with the Yi family. Yi Cheng was well aware of the situation, but until the black-faced monkey was found, he couldn't let Xu Yen come out to attend the banquet. With this in mind, Yi Cheng turned his gaze to his daughter, Xiao Rou, you are about the same age as Mr. Jiang, so you should have plenty of common topics. How about you go talk to Mr. Jiang first, delay some time, I'll figure out the situation with the black-faced monkey. Okay, dad, I'll go with Lin Bo to take a look, Yi Yuro was understanding and didn't refuse, knowing the difficulties Yi Cheng faced, so she didn't refuse, and she was also somewhat looking forward to meeting Mr. Xu Yen. Last time, following his treatment plan, the dying Articuno did indeed come back to life, if she could learn more about the Articuno's cultivation from Mr. Jiang after this meeting, it would be a big gain, how could Yi Yuro not be looking forward to it? Oh, dad, isn't Mr. Jiang very knowledgeable about cultivating beasts? Maybe he can help tame that black-faced monkey, Yi Yuro suddenly thought of this and reminded her father. Mr. Jiang is a beast breeder, not a beast tamer. This kind of wild beast like the black-faced monkey is too dangerous, it must be handled by professional personnel. I have already contacted the special affairs department of the Lihai garrison, they are very skilled in dealing with beasts. Before the people from the special affairs department arrive, you just need to find a way to keep Mr. Jiang in the guest room. Ye Cheng waved his hand to signal his daughter to hurry over. It was easy to tell from his words that he already had a solution in mind, and all that was lacking was time. While the Ye Cheng family was in a frenzy over the black-faced monkey, the continuous clapping sounds from the guest room finally came to a stop after a long time. Sweat dripped from Xu Yan's forehead as he looked at the motionless black-faced monkey on the ground, its tail curled up like a sweet roll, looking satisfied as it clapped its hands. Xu Yan casually picked up the unranked beast ball that the black-faced monkey had been playing with, activated the beast ball switch, and threw it towards the black-faced monkey. Ding, capture successful. The current black-faced monkey is in a weakened state and can be temporarily stored in the unranked beast ball. If its body recovers, it will break free from the beast ball's restraint. Countdown to break free, 2 hours 59 minutes and 59 seconds. Wow, what luck, to encounter a wild monkey. But taming a wild high-level beast like this is difficult, if I hadn't become a third-level beast tamer, it would be hard to make it obedient. This is a big problem. The black-faced monkey was a level 35 beast, making it difficult for ordinary people or low-level beast tamers to tame it. Third-level beasts are not common. I guess Ye Ching didn't know where to capture it from and kept it at home as a guard. I'll ask him about it later. Xu Yan was not interested in this wild monkey, he was interested in Ye Ching's money. After all, this monkey had caused him quite a scare, so it was only fair to compensate for the mental distress. Xu Yan didn't think his thoughts were unethical. It was like being invited to someone's home and getting bitten by their dog, it was only reasonable to ask for compensation. After casually placing the beast ball back, Xu Yan sat back in his seat and sipped his tea. After a while, the door was pushed open from outside. Two rows of charming maids in high-slit red chongsams crowded into the room. Behind them, Yuruyu, wearing a long ice blue and snow white dress with a pure white flawless diamond necklace around her neck, appeared. Miss Yi. Xu Yen immediately recognized the woman in front of him as Yuruyu, who had taken care of his business on Phoenix Commercial Street. Today's Yuruyu was different from the one in Xu Yen's memory. Compared to the Yuruyu who sought medical advice on the street, the woman in front of him, with her long dress enveloping her delicate figure, exposed beautiful collarbones and a shallow cleavage, was more in line with the identity of a Miss Yi. Are you Mr. Jian? Yeruyu had only seen Xu Yen wearing large sunglasses with a goatee and had never seen his real face. She didn't believe her father when he said Xu Yen was about the same age as her. After all, Xu Yen knew so much about beast cultivation, how could he be the same age as her? One year older was about the same, two years older was about the same. Her father married a woman ten years older than himself and said they were about the same age, so in Yeruyu's eyes, her father's about the same was just a perfunctory term. But now, as she walked into the living room and took a look, Yuruyu was truly stunned. This Mr. Jiang in front of her was probably not even 20 years old, right? Miss Yi, we meet again, how is your Articuno doing? If you need, you can take it out for me to see, consider it a follow-up visit. Xu Yen chuckled. 
Upon hearing his words, Yuruyu, who had just been shocked by Xuyan's youthful appearance and whose thoughts were drifting, suddenly trembled, then, thank you, Mr. Xiang. As Xu Yan and Yuruyu were discussing the Articuno in the guest room, a low-key Mercedes E300 slowly drove into the Yeqing estate. Sir, the special operations personnel have arrived, Lin Fu whispered gently in Yeqing's ear. Following this, a man in a black suit walked into the meeting hall through the main door. Although they were wearing suits, they looked unkempt and far from the professionals that Yi Chang had described. They seemed more like construction workers who had put on suits for a party without cleaning off the dust. Director Zhang, what brings you here? Yi Chang was slightly surprised when he saw the four of them, almost not recognizing them. After all, the personnel from the special affairs office in Linhai had quite a high status. For example, the director Zhang Weiman in front of him, although only a second-tier beast tamer, dared to argue with his superior, a third-tier beast tamer, without any consequences. The three young men behind director Zhang were even more impressive, all graduates from prestigious beast taming universities, coming from wealthy and influential families. They had already taken over several projects in the special affairs office. Seeing these four well-connected beast tamers looking disheveled, Yi Chang found it strange not to be surprised. Ah, forget it, it's all because of that damn construction site. Director Zhang, in his 30s or 40s, sighed helplessly and recounted the incident. When the four of them went to investigate the cause of the tremors at the Tianhai City Construction Group site, they discovered something unusual underground. So Zhang Weiman had his second-tier beast, the pangolin, dig a hole to explore what was beneath the surface. However, the hole was not dug, and the precious pangolin's claw was broken, causing Zhang Weiman great distress. I have already reported to the higher-ups. They are very concerned about the tremors in Linhai City, and there may be orders coming down in a couple of days. I hope that Mr. Yi can assist our special affairs office in handling the situation. Director Zhang made himself comfortable in a chair in the hall, casually picked up a cup of tea and drank it, as if it were only natural for Yi Chang, a businessman, to help the relevant authorities deal with the emergency. Yi Chang had no immediate reaction but added after Zhang Weiman's words, Director Zhang, as long as you can catch the black-faced monkey in my house, I will absolutely not shirk any responsibilities required by your department. Zhang Weiman looked somewhat surprised, he did not expect Yi Chang to be so straightforward this time. When he had asked for help before, this old man had always made excuses, claiming to have a stomach ache or being on a business trip, almost to the point of holding a funeral for a family member. Today, he was surprisingly cooperative. Could it be because of that person? Mr. Yi, I heard that your daughter's critically ill frostbird was cured, so you specially hosted a banquet tonight to entertain the gentleman who came up with the idea, right? Linhai was a small place, and news spread quickly within a circle, so Zhang Weiman knew the purpose of Yi Cheng's banquet. Yi Cheng smiled and nodded, tacitly agreeing. Mr. Yi, we have known each other for a long time, I will be straightforward. I hope you don't mind. The young man you mentioned, I suspect he is a fraud, his random ideas just happened to work out. I even doubt if there was anything wrong with the frostbird in the first place. Yi Cheng smiled, acknowledging Zhang Weiman's thoughts. However, after using Xu Yan's method to cure the depressed little sprout, all of Yi Cheng's doubts had vanished. Yes, the sudden improvement in the frostbird's condition could be attributed to the immune system, but the psychological state of the little sprout could not be resolved by the immune system alone. Zhang Weiman, you clueless kid, you have no idea how powerful Mr. Zhang is. Yi Cheng silently criticized him, while Zhang Weiman, having finished his tea, stood up and said, let's get this over with quickly, it's just a monkey and I can help you solve it right away. With that, Zhang Weiman threw out a beast taming ball, and a red giant rat-like creature appeared in the meeting hall. This is my beast spirit, the sense-sensing brown rat, Little Red. My Little Red has the skill of scent detection, which can detect targets within a radius of 10 meters. Mr. Yi, give me something related to that black-faced monkey. Here is a small tuft of the black-faced monkey's fur, is that enough? He he, a small tuft of fur? One strand is enough. Zhang Weiman sneered twice, wiped the fur on Xiao Hong's nose, and said, Xiao Hong, remember the scent, find it. Soon, Xiao Hong, with a determined target, sniffed sharply with its nose, then with a squeak, ran straight out of the meeting hall. We have a lead, let's follow. Zhang Weiman raised an eyebrow and ordered his three subordinates to chase after. Naturally, Yi Chang had to go too, as no one else could control the three-tier black-faced monkey present. After rushing out of the meeting hall, the group soon stopped by a fountain pool. In a patch of grass, Zhang Weiman pulled out a half-eaten banana. This is a banana that the monkey ate half of, Zhang Weiman said confidently. Maybe it was someone from the manor who ate half and threw it away? Yi Cheng saw Zhang Weiman jump to conclusions upon finding half a banana, and strongly disagreed, this was too careless. 
Mr. Yi, you don't understand. If this banana doesn't have the scent of the black-faced monkey on it, Xiao Hong won't detect it. But besides the scent of the monkey, why is there also a faint lily fragrance on this banana? Are lilies planted in this flower bed? Yi Chang, Director Zhang, are you mistaken? It's just a patch of greenery, where are the flowers? Is that so? Anyway, it doesn't matter, let's continue searching. Zhang Weiman scratched his head, looking a bit embarrassed. The group continued following Xiao Hong around the estate, collecting items such as half-eaten potato chips, a piece of flesh-colored stocking fragment the size of a thumb, a shallow shoe print around size 37, and a bottle of cola frozen into ice. No mistake, monkeys, like humans, also enjoy snacks. This half-bag of potato chips is what it left behind. And this flesh-colored stocking fragment is clearly torn from a female servant by the black-faced monkey, or taken from a female's room and worn before being scratched in the bushes. This shoe print also indicates that, given the moisture level in this area, a person wearing size 37 shoes wouldn't leave such a shallow footprint. Obviously, the black-faced monkey wore the female shoes and left this mark while walking. This chilled cola was probably stolen from the fridge by the mischievous monkey. Zhang Weiman rubbed his chin, analyzing the situation thoroughly. Although Yi Chang looked skeptical after hearing this, he didn't say anything. Let's continue following Xiao Hong, maybe we'll make new discoveries. Zhang Weiman gave the order, and everyone immediately followed the red-nosed groundhog. After everyone had walked away, a pair of eyes narrowed slightly on a large tree where they had just stopped. Looks like we need to find that monkey quickly. Miss Yi, we've been chatting for so long, why hasn't your father come yet? Xu Yan glanced at the time, it was almost 9 o'clock in the evening. Normally, if Yi Cheng called her over, it would be to meet and exchange pleasantries. Why send a little maid to fetch her? Could it be that her methods didn't cure Yi Cheng's little sprout but instead killed it? So tonight's banquet wasn't a celebration but a trap? Xu Yan felt a chill down her spine, but then thought that if Yi Cheng really wanted to harm her, he would have turned her into a sieve long ago, no need to send Yi Yuro to talk to her. It seemed that something had delayed him, she would wait a little longer. If Yi Cheng didn't come before 10 o'clock, she would leave. Xu Yan made up her mind, but when she came to her senses, she found Yi Yuro softly calling her, Mr. John, Mr. John, Mr. John? Hmm, Miss Yi, what's the matter? Please continue. After Xu Yan regained her senses, Yuru, who was about to get up to check the situation, pressed her perky buttocks back onto the chair. Mr. John, just talking about the frozen bird won't make things clear. Why don't you take a look at the frozen bird? Can't experts in beast cultivation infer the condition of a beast by touching its bones? Indeed, then show me the frozen bird. Xu Yan felt the room was a bit hot for some reason. Even though the air conditioning was on and it was nighttime, it shouldn't be hot. Regardless, since Yuro asked her to look, she decided to bring the frozen bird over to cool down. Glancing at the two ladies in red chonsams on either side of her, Xu Yan noticed sweat on their foreheads, indicating they were feeling hot. After taking the frozen bird from Yuru, a sense of relief spread from her palm to her whole body. Ah, Xu Yan sighed comfortably. Everyone present looked at Xu Yan strangely or directly, or sideways. Ha, huh, seeing this frozen bird is like seeing my own son, so I couldn't help it, please don't mind. Xu Yan realized her voice was off and immediately explained. However, unintentional words can have intentional meanings. The frozen bird was Yura's beast, and she treated it like her precious child, Xu Yan saying she treated the frozen bird like a son implied. Yuru blushed and returned to her seat, she pressed her full chest with her delicate hands to calm her pounding heart. Why do I feel a bit hot, maybe I'm too nervous? Xu Yan's words made Yuru extremely embarrassed, as she had never received such a nearly naked confession from Xu Yan before. She couldn't help but feel her heart racing and confused. Mr. Zhang is handsome, knowledgeable, close to my age, excellent in all aspects, should I respond to him? Did dad call me here to chat with Mr. Zhang with the intention of matchmaking us? Ah, so annoying, so hot. Compared to the chaotic thoughts of Yuru, Xu Yan chuckled while holding the frozen bird. Ah, so cool. Their thoughts were not on the same wavelength, each preoccupied with their own concerns, unaware that a basketball-sized fiery red ball was hovering above them. The guest room was designed in ancient style, including the roof tiles. If someone climbed onto the roof, removed a tile, and used a small method to break through the barrier, they could clearly see the room's interior. Besides the fiery red ball, there were angry eyes staring at Xu Yan on the ceiling of the guest room. Yesterday, after driving Xu Yan away, Song Yunqi thought for a long time and ultimately decided to abandon Xu Yan's proposal and continue with the absurd and unrealistic treatment methods. However, since the wind spirit snake was unavailable, Song Yunqi had to find another beast to temporarily replace it. She had an urgent task and needed to ensure her strength was sufficient. 
After inquiring all night, Song Yunchi finally settled on the black-faced monkey from the Yi family manor. Although the black-faced monkey lived in the Yi family manor, it was a third-tier wild beast without an owner, meeting Song Yunchi's requirements. Tonight, Song Yunchi planned to sneak into the Yi family manor under the cover of night to borrow the black-faced monkey. But unexpectedly, the cunning black-faced monkey managed to escape when she caught it. Song Yunchi chased after it, tearing her stockings in the process, but still couldn't catch the black-faced monkey. Following the clues left by the black-faced monkey, Song Yunchi tracked it to the guest room, where she happened to find Xu Yan. All right, you little liar, you've deceived me and brought me to the Yi family. Song Yunchi thought to herself, but she didn't expose the other's intentions. She is now doing something shady, which is no different from stealing dogs in the village, so Song Yunchi can only try to avoid suspicion as much as possible. According to the clues, it should be in this room, why can't I find it? Song Yunchi frowned slightly. She thought of a possibility, could it be that Xu Yan caught the black-faced monkey? However, this thought only flashed through her mind. It is really far-fetched for an ordinary person to try to catch a tier 3 beast. With no clues, Song Yunchi could only pin her hopes on the sunflower beside her, melon seeds, increase the power, raise the temperature to 70 degrees, steam them all out for me. Melon seeds is the name Song Yunchi gave to her flame sunflower. The flame sunflower belongs to the grass-type beast, but also possesses light-type skills. The high temperature in the guest room is caused by melon seeds using the scorching light beam. Besides releasing high temperatures, items near the skill range may become particularly fragile due to the heat. Mr. Jiang, don't you feel a bit hot? Yi Yuro, after the ice bird, gradually began to realize that something was wrong. She was sweating all over, and if it weren't for her father's instructions to keep Xu Yan in the guest room, Yi Yuro would have left long ago. Yi Yuro, who couldn't stand the heat, walked gently to Xu Yan's side, while the ladies in Chipao around her endured the heat and brought a chair for Yi Yuro to sit next to Xu Yan. The ice blue long skirt on Yi Yuro seemed to hang on her body, her two white arms were exposed to the air. The sweat on her arms, combined with her body scent, had a unique flavor. Strands of long hair under her armpits were tightly stuck by the wet sweat. Every slight movement Yi Yuro made, Xu Yan could see a layer of thick flesh in her armpits clearly. With a unique smell, it was intoxicating. If you're too hot, you can go outside, I'll stay here with Mr. Jiang. Yi Yuro was very considerate, and seeing the Chipao ladies standing next to her were too hot, she quickly asked them to leave. Yes, everyone was eager to leave the place, and after Yi Yuro's order, they all left in unison. After those ladies left, Yi Yuro got even closer to Xu Yan. Mr. Zhang, I'm so hot, can I get closer to you? Yi Yuro said and leaned towards Xu Yan, or more precisely, towards the ice bird in Xu Yan's hand. Vaguely, Xu Yan's eyes glanced downward and saw a deep cleavage. Xu Yan was surprised, some people may not look extraordinary, but they unexpectedly had such a strong background. Yi Yuro got closer and closer, almost hanging on Xu Yan. Song Yunchi, who saw the scene from the roof, was filled with anger. Thinking of yesterday's events, she increasingly felt that Xu Yan was not a decent person, and she had misjudged him before. Now seeing Xu Yan's claws reaching out to another girl, Song Yunchi angrily smashed the roof. What kind of strength did she have? A tier 3 beast master. Her vitality was much higher than others. With one punch, the entire guest room roof trembled. Moreover, due to the scorching light beam, earlier, the roof had become extremely fragile. Song Yunchi's punch directly triggered a chain reaction, where she was crouching, the ground cracked open with a big hole, and Song Yunchi herself fell into the guest room in a very miserable manner. A scream came from above, and Xu Yan and Yi Yuro subconsciously looked up. Meet Silk. Black Lace. Xu Yan only saw these two things, and then everything went dark before his eyes. Xu Yan was surrounded by darkness, unable to see anything, and a strong lily fragrance mixed with a faint scent unique to young girls entered his nostrils. In addition, Xu Yan realized that his lips were pressed between two thick pieces of flesh. At first, Xu Yan didn't notice, but when he came to his senses, he felt a thump in his heart. When he looked up, he clearly saw a familiar pretty face, it was not Song Yunchi, who else could it be? The other party didn't return to school, how did they run to the rooftop to eavesdrop on his conversation with Yi Yuro? No, this is not the time to think about this, I have to get up quickly. Thinking back to the faint lace edge under the flesh-colored stockings just now, Xu Yan's blood surged. Song Yunchi had an excellent figure, her thighs were not like those of a girl who pursued thinness, instead they were plump and enviable. The hip-hugging stockings made her peach-shaped buttocks look particularly perky, and the whole thigh showed a sense of tightness under the flesh-colored stockings, making people unable to resist the urge to touch it roughly. Xu Yan found that his ability to resist the chill was not at all like that of someone who had lived two lives, always unable to help thinking in strange directions. Xu Yan reached out and grabbed the thing on his body, not knowing what it was, 
but it was soft, and when he pinched it, his fingers sank directly into it. Mm, a whimper sounded, startling Xu Yen. When his face saw the light again, Xu Yen stood up and looked at the scene in front of him. Song Yunchi fell straight down with her face facing the ground, her upper body crawling on the ground, while her peach-shaped lower body was raised high, just like a mother dog stretching lazily. Needless to say, Xu Yen already knew what was pressed against him just now. Compared to Song Yunchi, Yi Yuro's situation was obviously much better. As Yi Yuro's beast tamer, the frost bird unfolded an ice wall barrier to protect Tang Yuro when she was in danger. Yi Yuro was unharmed, but she was completely shocked by the scene. When she reacted, she suddenly shouted towards the door, Help, thief, catch the thief. Yi Yuro seemed to have forgotten her identity as a beast tamer, compared to the people outside with weapons, the frost bird in her hand was obviously more intimidating. However, with such a commotion, even if Yi Yuro didn't say anything, others rushed over upon hearing the news. The first to arrive was a group of people led by Zhang Weiman. They followed the beast Little Red all the way here and suddenly heard a loud noise, so they came to check. In the crowd, Xu Yan saw Xu Yan standing in the empty guest room on the rooftop, his face turning green with anger. Quick, come quickly, what happened? Zhang Weiman's mouth trembled as he quickly called for help. At this time, Xu Yan also saw Zhang Weiman walking quickly towards him, Mr. Yi, why are you here? I thought you were not at home, making me wait for so long in vain. Xu Yan's tone was flat, but he was thinking about the main guest's return, wondering if the banquet could start. But hearing Xu Yan's indifferent expression, Yi Yuro automatically imagined Xu Yan smiling and joking in his heart. Having delayed Mr. Zhang for so long, if he didn't give a reasonable explanation, he might not even look at our Yi family in the future. Yi Yuro's eyes rolled, and he happened to see Song Yunchi standing up and rubbing her waist, someone, catch this little thief for me. How dare she come to our house to steal things, she's really tired of living. He he, mister. Zhang, you don't know, the reason I haven't come for so long is to deal with this little thief. Immediately, Yi Yuro directly fabricated a story of catching the thief for Xu Yan. After hearing Yi Yuro's words, Xu Yan looked at Song Yunchi with a strange expression. I didn't expect a top student like Senior Song to do such a thing. Indeed, appearances are the biggest deception. If you peel away this woman's facade, her heart must be black. This contrast is like a top student who also moonlights as a prostitute, somewhat collapsing. Since the thief has been caught, let's quickly hold the banquet. It's getting late, and I'm in a hurry to go home. Xu Yan did not immediately take out the black-faced monkey. He planned to negotiate with Yi Yuro at the wine table to make more profit. All right, Lin Fu, you take Mr. Zhang to the hall, I will finish dealing with this little thief and come over immediately. After giving the order, Yi Cheng's steward Lin nodded and led Xu Yin towards the banquet hall. At this moment, Yi Cheng's smiling face suddenly turned cold, and he quickly walked up to Song Yunchi wanting to question how this woman had caused a commotion scaring his distinguished guests by collapsing the roof. Approaching Song Yunchi, Yi Cheng was about to speak when he saw Song Yunchi suddenly look up. As their eyes met, Yi Cheng's angry expression froze for a moment. Then he immediately put on a smile and said, Miss Song, it's you? As a well-known entrepreneur in Linhai City, Yi Chang naturally recognized Song Yunchi, the rising star from last year. He greeted Song Yunchi with a smile, not because she was a genius, but because he had heard through unofficial channels that Song Yunchi had advanced to the third rank beast tamer. A young and promising third rank beast tamer like Song Yunchi naturally wouldn't be given a cold shoulder by Yi Chang. However, Yi Chang couldn't understand why Song Yunchi, who was perfectly fine, had come to his estate and even damaged the roof of the guest room. Surrounded by onlookers, Song Yunchi looked a bit embarrassed. She brushed off the dust from her clothes and flesh-colored stockings and smiled at Yi Chang, Mr. Yi, long time no see. I was passing by the outskirts of your estate and found a monkey-shaped beast causing trouble for the residents, so I followed it all the way here to investigate. Like Yi Chang, Song Yunchi was also skilled at lying, and in just a few words, she portrayed herself as a hero beast tamer helping the common people. Her words sounded convincing, coupled with her identity as a student from the Golden Capital Beast Taming University, Yi Chang naturally had no reason to doubt her. I didn't expect Miss Song to also come to catch that black-faced monkey. You've worked hard. How about this, since we have no leads on that monkey yet, Miss Song, why not join the banquet? We can continue the search after the banquet. Seeing that the banquet was dragging on, Yi Chang invited Song Yunchi to join. Naturally, Song Yunchi readily agreed, she wouldn't refuse a meal. Sharo, take Miss Song to change into a new outfit first, then bring her to the banquet later. Song Yunchi was a mess and needed to tidy up before attending the banquet. She had no objections to Yi Cheng's arrangements. She turned to the girl who had been flirting with Xu Yan earlier and found her staring at her with big watery eyes, You, are you senior Song Yunchi? It's almost 10 o'clock, why hasn't it started yet? Exactly, although Mr. 
Yi is a third rank beast tamer, he shouldn't keep us waiting like this. If Yi family can't afford guests, they shouldn't host banquets, we came here today for one purpose, to see that beast taming master, hurry and bring him out. Yes, bring him out. People had been arriving at the banquet since the afternoon, but by 10 o'clock in the evening, the main event had not yet begun. They felt like fools standing there waiting, and it was understandable that they were getting impatient. In a corner, Chui Ying Jun and a few others joined the crowd in shouting. Yi Yusin had gone to attend to the guests, or else they wouldn't have dared to act so boldly. Brother Chui, is it appropriate for us to shout like this? What's wrong with that? I'm just hoping that beast taming master can help me with my blaze monkey. Besides, Xian is not here right now, so it's fine. Chui Ying Jun casually replied, then his eyes caught a familiar figure. Oh my, how did this silly boy end up here? Chui Ying Jun was first surprised, then suddenly delighted. Quick, you two push Changzi's wheelchair and follow me, I saw that silly boy. Chui Ying Jun urgently said. The two people he called were puzzled but followed Chui Ying Jun's instructions. In no time, they squeezed through the crowd and arrived next to Xu Yen. Hey kid, stop right there. Xu Yen was walking when he suddenly heard a commotion beside him. Turning his head, he realized it was the skateboarders he saw at noon today. Although they were dressed decently now, Xu Yan recognized their unique aura. Recognizing them didn't mean he had to acknowledge them. He continued walking forward, only to be stopped by a wheelchair carrying a mummy. Kid, trying to run? Chui Ying Juan's brows furrowed, his gaze fierce on Xu Yan. The banquet was crowded, any disturbance would attract attention. Chui Ying Juan's actions quickly became the center of attention in the dull crowd. How did you sneak in, kid? Well, it doesn't matter how you got in. Since I caught you today, I won't let you off without a beating. Chui Ying Jun pointed at Wang Chang on the wheelchair, saying, Wang Chang, my friend, you broke several ribs while kicking him alive, today, I must seek revenge. Hug 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 ugly ugly Wang Chang mimics Chui Ying Jun, pointing at Xu Yan. So you're here for revenge. I thought you were going to kick me out of the banquet, luckily, luckily, Xu Yan patted his chest, looking relieved. Enough talk, on and all, hold these two kids down. I'll use my fist, with over 120 points of energy, to smash his chest. Chui Ying Jun clenched his fist, a sinister smile on his face. Oh, you're going to do it yourself, really giving me some credit, Xu Yan smiled wryly, letting the two kids restrain his hands. I'm not as good as Principal Wang, who would have had people beat you up, get ready to pay compensation, you fool. After saying this, Chui Ying Jun rushed towards Xu Yan with a fist. However, just as his fist was about to reach Xu Yan, a figure suddenly stood in front of him. Seeing the person clearly, Chui Ying Jun's expression changed slightly, Lin, Butler Lin? Chui Ying Jun didn't understand why Butler Lin was protecting Xu Yan and showing a protective attitude towards him. Mr. Jiang is a guest of the Yi family. If you dare to cause trouble again, I will kick you out. Lin Fu had noticed the situation earlier but waited for the right moment to intervene, subtly elevating Xu Yan's status. Lin Fu had read many novels and knew this was a classic plot twist. Only by erupting from suppression could the protagonist show strength. Mr. Xu Yan was the protagonist of today's banquet, so Lin Fu naturally wanted to take care of his mood. What, this fool is a distinguished guest of the Yi family? Chui Ying Juan's expression was worse than if he had eaten shit, even the friends of Miss Yi Yusin couldn't be called distinguished guests, so what made Xu Yan so special? Could it be that Xu Yan was the lost son of Mr. Yi? Chui Ying Jun was puzzled, his arrogance disappearing instantly, retracting his neck like a turtle. Hug 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 ugly ugly, revenge. However, Wang Chang in the wheelchair clearly didn't buy it, still wanting Xu Yan to pay for his actions. Patients should stay in the hospital, why run around? Someone, take him outside the estate, and also take his phone, let him wheel himself home. Lin Fu snorted coldly, and a few waiters immediately came to carry Wang Chang away. All this happened so suddenly that the onlookers didn't react at first. Just as Wang Chang was being carried away, everyone saw Yi Yusin walking over in a long dress, Uncle Lin, Wang Chang is my friend, is there a misunderstanding here? Yi Yusin glanced at Xu Yan next to Lin Fu, looking puzzled. But the priority was to save Wang Chang. Miss, this person has offended the master's guests, we can't let him stay here any longer, Lin Fu whispered persuasively. Then arrange a car for him and send him away, Yi Yusin heard Lin Fu's words and didn't insist further, but Wang Chang was her friend, so she had to take care of him. Arrange a car? Humph, someone take away his wheelchair, let this kid crawl back on his own, Yi Yusin's words had just finished when Yi Chang's authoritative voice was heard from behind. At this moment, everyone's gaze turned towards Yi Chang. They had been waiting for so long, and they finally saw the real master. When Yi Yusin saw Yi Chang, she also exclaimed, Dad, Wang Chao is my friend and classmate, how can I face them if you treat him like this? Yi Yusin protested with a pout. 
On the side, Chui Ingjun and others also spoke up, Uncle Yi, I am Chui Ingjun, the son of Chui Mao from the Chui Beauty Salon. Wang Chao is the son of Wang's pig farm. You can't treat him like this. If you take away Wang Chao's wheelchair, how will he get home? Chui Ingjun's face looked grim. He didn't expect Lin Fu's words to be true, that silly kid was really Yi Cheng's guest, this was too much. Oh really? Since you sympathize with him so much, then you can leave with him, Yi Cheng ordered Chui Ingjun to leave with just one sentence. Uncle Yi, why are you protecting him? He kicked my friend's ribs, Chui Ingjun was frantic, waving his hands and unable to swallow his saliva, his mouth twisted in anger. Dad, Chui Ingjun and they are my friends, Yi Yusin also pleaded with Yi Chang for Chui Ingjun and Wang Chao. Friends or not, he offended Mr. Zhang and that's not acceptable. Mr. Zhang is our benefactor in the Yi family. If it weren't for Mr. Zhang, your sister's frozen bird would have died long ago, and my little bean sprout ah, forget it. Anyway, these two must leave now, they are not welcome in our Yi family, Yi Chang said before apologizing to Xu Yin. After hearing Yi Chang's words, all the guests present were dumbfounded. The Mr. Zhang mentioned by Yi Lao, the master of beast cultivation, turned out to be this young man in front of them? Was it true? Among these people, especially Wang Chao, Chui Ying Jun, and others were the most incredulous. Chui Ying Jun remembered meeting Xu Yan at Honda Square today. It used to be an old residential area, after several years of development, a high-end villa area was built. The villa area faced the old residential area across Honda Square, making the square a clear boundary between the rich and the common people. Chui Ying Jun would sometimes play in the square, over time, he could easily distinguish who lived in the old residential area and who owned the high-end villas. Today, seeing Xu Yan like that, there was no doubt that she was from the old residential area, no brand on her clothes, lack of grooming, low quality, and even holding a beast egg as if it were a treasure to sunbathe. All these signs fit the image of a loser. It was precisely because of this that Chui Ying Jun dared to trouble Xu Yan. And now, hearing Yi Chang suddenly say that Xu Yan was the beast cultivation master he had always admired, Chui Ying Jun's whole mindset collapsed. Damn it, a poor loser inexplicably turned into a beast cultivation master admired by a third order beast tamer. This just didn't make sense. And Xu Yan was so young. Dad, you mean he is that Mr. Jian? Yi Yusin furrowed her brows, waiting for her big eyes to look towards Xu Yan. The more she looked, the more Yi Yusin felt it was true, combined with the previous situations, it was almost certain. Now, even Yi Yusin was dumbfounded. Just a moment ago, when Chui Ying Jun mentioned a fool sunbathing with a beast egg at noon, she laughed out loud. If she had known that person was Xu Yan, not only would she not have laughed, she might have even taken her own beast egg to sunbathe. It can only be said that different people's actions have different effects. If it's Chui Ying Jun sunbathing in the square with a beast egg, Yi Yusin would just laugh at him, but if it's Xu Yan, the master of beast cultivation who cured the frozen bird, doing this, Yi Yusin might follow suit even though she knows it may not be effective. Wang Chao, what's going on? Mr. Jiang is a respected person, doesn't seem like someone who would bother with you guys. Yi Yusin had doubts when she heard Chui Ying Jun and Wang Chao talking earlier. Normally, someone carrying such a large beast egg would be too busy to bother with you guys skateboarding. It's like people walking their dogs in the park and playing basketball in the court, it's hard to see any conflict unless someone is deliberately looking for trouble. Wang Chao's face turned red, feeling chest pain due to his emotional state. If you're not going to say anything, then just leave. Yi Yusin didn't want to waste words seeing him like this, she could investigate later. If it was Wang Chao's fault, she would have to endure the anger, but if it was really Wang Chao's fault, she would definitely have to draw a clear line with him. Uncle Yi, he's so young, at most a college student, maybe even a high school student, how could such a person be a master of beast cultivation, he probably hasn't even hatched a beast, what does he know about beasts? Chui Ying Jun had been brewing for a long time, finally expressing the doubts in his heart. Yi Cheng's words were serious, but there were also significant loopholes. A normal doctor would be around 25 or 26 after studying and participating in internships, let alone the stricter requirements for a beast cultivation master. A beast cultivation master would be considered promising if they graduated at 30, this foolish kid is at most 20 years old, what does he know about beasts? You're right, I'm still just a regular high school student now, and I haven't hatched a beast, but when it comes to beasts, I understand more than you. At least I can see that your blaze monkey has been a bit fiery lately, does it breathe fire when it farts? That's a sign of being too fiery. I know how to treat it, but I won't say. Xu Yan looked at Chui Ying Jun with a smile that wasn't a smile. Hearing this, Chui Ying Jun felt a jolt in his heart. How did he know? His blaze monkey was a powerful weapon prepared for the college entrance exam, rarely used, and no one knew about its fire breathing except himself. Chui Ying Jun was sweating profusely, 
suddenly realizing he couldn't see through this foolish kid in front of him. Could he really be a master of beast cultivation? Look, it's Miss Yi from the Yi family. Wow, Miss Yi Euro is so beautiful. But who is the girl holding hands with Miss Yi Euro? She's also very beautiful. While Choi Ying Jun was deeply immersed in self doubt, Yi Euro and Song Yunchi had changed into their clothes and arrived at the banquet hall. Yi Euro was still wearing the ice blue long dress, and Song Yunchi beside her had changed out of her previous clothes and put on a wine red evening gown. This wine red gown was obviously carefully selected, paired with Yi Euro's ice blue dress, like a pair of lotus flowers, beautiful and alluring. Song, Senior Song. When Choi Ying Jun saw Song Yunchi next to Yi Euro, his stunned expression instantly lit up with a dazzling light. About half a year ago, Song Yunchi had been invited to give a lecture at the Spirit Academy, and at that time Chui Ying Jun happened to be the vice president of the student council, so he had the opportunity to get close to Song Yunchi. At that time, Chui Ying Jun not only asked Song Yunchi about beast-related questions but also got Song Yunchi's phone number. He was so excited that he didn't sleep all night, staring at the string of numbers all night, but in the end, he didn't have the courage to call. However, this didn't mean that Chui Ying Jun had self-awareness the day after the sleepless night, he vowed to face Yi Euro in the best possible way next time he saw her. He had already hatched a blaze monkey, and he heard that some university students of beast studies hadn't even hatched a beast, wouldn't this outstanding achievement be enough to impress Senior Song? Thinking like this, Chui Ying Jun went straight up to her. Song Shui Jie, I'm Xiao Tsui, do you remember me? Song Yunxi looked around, looking for any trace of the black-faced monkey. But someone appeared in front of her, which made her a little annoyed. Normally, Song Yunxi wouldn't act like this, but tonight she was inexplicably irritable. Oh, it's you. What's up? Song Yunxi didn't even look at Chui Ying Jun, casually responding. But Chui Ying Jun obviously didn't give up. After hearing Song Yunxi say she remembered him, he was overjoyed. Thanks to Xu Jie's guidance, I have successfully hatched a beast before the beast mastery exam. Look, Xu Jie, come out, blaze monkey. Chui Ying Jun threw out the beast ball and in the blink of an eye, the blaze monkey with flames on its head appeared. However, an embarrassing scene happened next, the blaze monkey unexpectedly sprayed a flame from its butt in front of everyone. It's on fire, it's really on fire. The monkey's butt is on fire, my goodness, is it a spicy butt? He really hit the nail on the head. Wokeo, this young man is amazing, he really understands beast mastery. After the blaze monkey sprayed a long-lasting flame from its butt, everyone at the banquet was momentarily stunned, then amazed. Just now, when Xu Yan's voice was not restrained, everyone heard him say that Chui Ying Jun's blaze monkey would catch fire, and the Pianchi would spray fire. Today, seeing it for themselves, it was true. When Chui Ying Jun took out the blaze monkey in public, Song Yunxi was a bit surprised. But when she saw the flame between the two red monkey buttocks, she suddenly covered her mouth and chuckled. Beside her, Yi Yuro did the same, however, while finding it funny, she glanced lightly at Xu Yan. Yi Euro had long known that Xu Yan had unique insights into nurturing beasts, but she didn't expect him to spot the blaze monkey's problem at a glance. If Xu Yan could see the problem with the blaze monkey at a glance, wouldn't that mean he could also see the condition of the Articuno with his eyes? Instead of telling her directly, he asked her to bring the Articuno over. Could it be that he wanted to find an opportunity to get close to her? Yi Euro was in a dilemma, her pretty face turning redder as she thought about it. At this moment, Yi Chang stood up directly and snorted, See, mister. Zhang was right about your monkeys but catching fire. Do you believe in Mr. Zhang's abilities now? Yi Cheng didn't want to talk much with Chui Ying Jun, but with so many guests present, he felt it necessary to cooperate with Xu Yan to expose this pretense. Chui Ying Jun's face turned pale and then red, after mumbling for a long time, he couldn't bear Xu Yan's humiliation, the embarrassment in front of Song Yunxi, the countless mocking gazes around him, and left alone. Throw him out too, and remember to confiscate his wheelchair after throwing him out. Yi Chang glanced at Wang Chang, and the next moment, Wang Chang followed Chui Ying Jun out, disappearing from everyone's sight. Although this incident was just a small episode, Xu Yan's words about the blaze monkey's illness made all the guests present admire him. When Yi Chang announced the start of the banquet, many people crowded around Xu Yan, wanting to get some beast nurturing prescriptions or something similar from him, but they were all stopped by Yi Chang. At Xu Yan's table were the Yi family father and daughter, Song Yunxi, and four unkempt men in suits. Yi Chang sat on Xu Yan's left, and Yi Yusin on his right. Originally, Yi Euro wanted to sit on Xu Yan's right, but for some reason, Song Yunxi suddenly pulled her to sit opposite Xu Yan. Watching Song Yunxi and Yi Euro whispering to each other, Xu Yan was a bit puzzled. Could it be that these two know each other, and their relationship is good, like best friends? What kind of perverted hobby is it to eavesdrop on your best friend talking to someone else on the roof? Xu Yan ate heartily, not wanting to see Song Yunxi, this pervert. At the end of the meal, 
Xu Yan prepared to take out the black-faced monkey from the beast ball and ask Yi Chang for some compensation. But who knew that an accident would happen at this moment? A sudden voice abruptly sounded from outside the banquet hall, fire, fire. Upon hearing this, Yi Chang, as the host, was stunned. Just now, he was glad that nothing had happened during the banquet, but who would have thought that in an instant, he heard such words, his face paled a bit. Yi Chang clenched his fists tightly, his face showing anger, it must be the black-faced monkey playing tricks. I knew it couldn't be so well behaved, it hasn't appeared for so long, I didn't expect it to give me such a big surprise. Yi Chang was furious, and quickly asked the steward Lin Fu to go check. Mr. Yi, let's go take a look too. Zhang Weiman stood up immediately upon hearing the commotion and walked outside. The Yi family estate was large, and although they heard about the fire, Yi Chang didn't worry too much, at most, a few buildings would burn down, and they could rebuild. As long as there were no casualties, everything would be fine. Mr. Yi, your house is on fire, aren't you going to check? Xu Yan was a little admiring of Yi Chang's calmness. If it were her house on fire, she would have run out to check the situation long ago. It's just a small matter, Lin Fu and the others will handle it, come, Mr. Jiang, let's continue drinking. Yi Chang raised his glass to Xu Yan, who was about to mention the black-faced monkey but was ruthlessly interrupted by Yi Chang. Hey, Mr. Jiang, don't worry, good news will come in due time. Yi Chang thought Xu Yan would continue to ask, so he preemptively spoke to stop Xu Yan from speaking. Alright, Xu Yan also felt that it might seem like taking advantage of the situation to bring up the black-faced monkey for compensation right after the fire, so she decided to put the matter aside for now. Before long, Lin Fu returned. He whispered a few words in Yi Chang's ear, Sir, the fire is out of control, you may need to intervene personally. What's the situation? Yi Chang frowned, could it be that the black-faced monkey caused some trouble? Sir, you'll know when you see it, Director Zhang and the others can't handle it either. Lin Fu looked troubled. Zhang Weiman couldn't handle it either? Hearing this, Yi Cheng couldn't sit still, he was afraid the fire would burn down his estate completely. Mr. Zhang, please excuse me for a moment, this fire may have been caused by a gas leak in the kitchen, I'll go deal with it. Okay, Xu Yan nodded and continued to eat without saying much. Yi Cheng signaled to his daughter Yi Yuro, who immediately understood and prepared to sit next to Xu Yan. After leaving the banquet hall, Yi Cheng, led by Lin Fu, arrived at the scene of the incident. It was none other than the guest room where Xu Yan, Yi Yuro, and others had just been. At this moment, the entire guest room had turned into a charred mess, with flames engulfing the external structure, ready to collapse at any moment. Mr. Yi, Zhang Weiman and the others, covered in soot, came to Yi Cheng's side. Director Zhang, what's going on? Where is the black-faced monkey? Until now, Yi Cheng still believed that the black-faced monkey was behind all this. We didn't see the black-faced monkey, but in the flames, we found a beast that looks like a sunflower. That beast seems to be a grass-type beast, and there's a risk of it dying in this intense fire, Zhang Weiman said in a low voice. What? A grass-type beast? Hurry and save the beast, do you want it to burn to death? Yi Chang's eyes widened at the news. Regardless of who the owner of that beast was, as a beast tamer, Yi Chang naturally had a close relationship with beasts. Now that a beast was being roasted in his home, Yi Chang was definitely anxious. The fire is extremely fierce for some reason, we can't rush in. Mr. Yi, don't you have a water-quenching turtle? Let it try. Zhang Weiman quickly suggested. But who knew that after hearing this, Yi Cheng's face instantly turned black. Xiao Jie is being trained at the Royal Beast Center, it will take another day for him to come back. Xiao Jie is the name of the Royal Beast of Yi Cheng Zishui Wangba. Ah, what should we do? Zhang Weiman's face suddenly stiffened. Actually, it's not a big deal. Just let the flame sunflower roast a little longer inside, it's good for it. A voice came from behind as everyone was in a panic. Who? At the moment the voice came out, Yi Chang suddenly turned around and saw Xu Yan holding a toothpick appearing behind him. Mr. John, why are you here? Where are Xiao Rou and the others? Yi Chang's face changed, he clearly remembered asking his daughter to hold Xu Yan back, so Xu Yan shouldn't be here. Miss Yi was stopped by Miss Song, they probably have something to talk about secretly. Mr. Yi, I noticed that you've been distracted all night, probably because of this flame sunflower thing, right? Ah, uh, oh, yes, I didn't expect Mr. Zhang to find out even after I tried to hide it. Yi Chang was stunned at the words, after thinking for a moment, since things had come to this, it wouldn't be a bad idea to go along with Xu Yan's thoughts. Xu Yan had already sensed that something was wrong, normally, Yi Chang would have come out to greet her when he invited her to the banquet. But he kept delaying, indicating that something troublesome had happened. So as soon as Yi Chang left, Xu Yan, who had eaten and drunk enough, got up to come over and see if she could help. 
At first glance, she discovered the information about the sunflower in the flames and only after knowing the situation of the flame sunflower did she say not to interfere with Yi Chang and the others. The royal beasts are almost suffocated, and you actually say it's beneficial, it's ridiculous. Zhang Weiman coldly snorted after hearing Xu Yan's words. When he heard Xu Yan immediately reveal the symptoms of the flame monkey at the banquet hall, Zhang Weiman felt something was strange. Now hearing Xu Yan's unprofessional remarks, Zhang Weiman was immediately angry. The reason you were able to say that Chui Yingjuan's flame monkeys but was on fire is because you've seen that monkey before, right? I did see it at noon today, Xu Yan did not deny, however, the flame monkey did not spew fire at noon today, Xu Yan learned about it by checking the information of the flame monkey. But Zhang Weiman didn't think so. Ha, huh? so you admit it? You're not a master of royal beast cultivation at all, just a fraud. Zhang Weiman, as a veteran of the special affairs office, was one of the best in understanding royal beasts. It was pure nonsense to say that Xu Yan, a newcomer, knew more about royal beasts than himself. Believe it or not, I'm just reminding you, anyway, this royal beast has nothing to do with me, Xu Yan shrugged. Mr. Yi, quickly notify the Lehigh City Fire Brigade to come over, if it's too late, this royal beast won't be able to hold on. Zhang Weiman ignored Xu Yan and quickly suggested to Yi Chang. This Yi Chang frowned, feeling torn. He had heard Xu Yan and Zhang Weiman's words just now, and it was this conversation that made Ji Cheng's trust in Xu Yan waver. But he also felt that what Xu Yan said might be true, after all, the frost bird and his little bean sprout were cured by bizarre methods. Roasting the sunflower royal beast with fire didn't seem so unreasonable. Hey, Mr. Yi, what are you hesitating about? If the people from the Royal Beast Protection Association find out that a royal beast died in your house, you'll be in big trouble. Hearing this, Yi Cheng's heart skipped a beat. Yeah, no matter what, the most important thing is to save the royal beast. It's not his own royal beast anyway, who cares if roasting it with fire is good for it or not. Thinking of this, Yi Cheng smiled apologetically and immediately instructed the housekeeper Lin to put out the fire and contact the fire brigade. Xu Yan did not react to this. He stretched lazily and casually threw a beast ball towards Yi Chang, saying, Mr. Yi, here is this back for you. Seeing your house in such a mess, I won't charge you for mental damages. But remember to return this beast ball to me. If there's nothing else, I'll head home first. Yi Chang's mind was now filled with thoughts of trouble from the Beast Protection Association, and Xu Yan's words just now greatly reduced Yi Chang's trust in him, so when he heard Xu Yan say he was going home, Yi Chang did not stop him. Lin Fu, escort Mr. Jiang. Yi Cheng casually kicked the beast ball containing Xu Yan into his pocket and continued to focus on the fire. Guided by Lin Fu, Xu Yan left the Yi family along the winding paths of the estate. Not long after Xu Yan left, the Yi sisters and Song Yunqi arrived at the banquet hall together. Yi Yuro wanted to stop Xu Yan from leaving, but was stopped by Song Yunqi. Senior sister, why did you stop me from approaching him just now? After much thought, Yi Yuro finally asked the question in her heart. Song Yunqi casually replied, she was fine with scolding Xu Yan alone, but she didn't have the habit of speaking ill of others behind their backs. Although she thought Xu Yan was a bit unscrupulous, she stopped Yi Yuro from getting close to him, but if Yi Yuro insisted, Song Yunqi could only wish her good luck. Hey, why is there a beast in the fire? Yi Yusin looked around and suddenly said after seeing the burning guest room. Yi Yuro and Song Yunqi looked towards the fire, and when they saw the situation in the fire, Song Yunqi's heart skipped a beat. It's Guazi. How could I forget about her? Without further ado, Song Yunqi saw the trapped flame sunflower in the fire and immediately summoned her water-type beast, Little Blue, to protect her. Little Blue, go put out the fire, Guazi is in danger. Song Yunqi was extremely anxious, her red high heels continuously hitting the ground under her smooth feet. She trembled all over, and the red dress rippled with her body's movements. Guazi, you must be safe Song Yunqi was extremely worried. At this moment, Little Blue, who had always been obedient, did not follow Song Yunqi's orders and floated in the air, unmoved by the fire. Little Blue, act now, use Aqua Tornado. Song Yunqi noticed Little Blue's inaction and immediately gave the command. However, Little Blue still did not respond. Little Blue, use Rippling Waves. Little Blue, use Furious Waves. Little Blue, use Holy Water Baptism. Song Yunqi issued several commands in a row, but Little Blue still did not move. Song Yunqi was at her wit's end. She couldn't understand why her beast, Little Blue, would not obey her. On the other side, Zhang Weiman, who was observing Song Yunqi's situation, walked over and said to Song Yunqi, Miss Song, is this your beast? If so, please mourn, its life force is fading, it looks like it's not going to make it. We could have saved it, if it weren't for that Xu Yan spreading misinformation and delaying the rescue. Zhang Weiman's face was grim. Mr. Zhang? What does Mr. Zhang have to do with this? Yi Yuro looked puzzled. 
Song Yunshi was also puzzled, didn't the fire happen a while ago? What does it have to do with Xu Yen? Uh, well. Zhang Weiman hesitated, it was Xu Yen who insisted that letting the beast stay in the fire for a while would be beneficial for the beast. Mr. Zhang did not obstruct the rescue, Director Zhang, don't falsely accuse others, your role would be a typical villain in a novel. Lin, the housekeeper, stepped forward to defend Xu Yan's innocence. Compared to Zhang Weiman, Yi Yuro naturally believed more in Lin Steward's words. She looked at Zhang Weiman with a dumbfounded expression, almost wanting to throw the words idiot directly in his face. Song Yunshi also had the same expression. However, the situation was urgent now, and Song Yunshi didn't have time to deal with this. She held Xiao Lan in her arms, trying to sense Xiao Lan's inner thoughts through the unique connection between Beast and Beast Master. Xiao Lan doesn't resist me, which means it still follows my orders, but why? Song Yunshi had not reached the level of being able to communicate with the Beast's mind, so she was also puzzled by Xiao Lan's thoughts. However, at that moment, a sudden change occurred. The raging flames unexpectedly gathered into a flame vortex out of thin air, like a tornado. The flame sunflower was at the center of the flame tornado, and a terrifying energy was brewing within it. The flame sunflower was Song Yunchi's beast, and at the first sign of the anomaly, Song Yunchi sensed something unusual. This anomaly was not a bad thing, but a great opportunity. The sunflower is about to evolve. Song Yunchi exclaimed, after she finished speaking, the fierce tornado was instantly absorbed into the flame sunflower. The flame sunflower, originally the size of a regular sunflower, instantly grew to the same height as Song Yunchi after absorbing the power of the flame tornado. Its two branches extended outward, with a fireball appearing at the tip of each branch. The roots of the flame sunflower were no longer visible, instead forming a cloud of fire under its feet. Its seed face, originally covered with immature acne, turned into blackheads after evolution. These blackheads fell off without needing to be cooked, ready to be eaten while watching TV. After absorbing all the flames, the flame sunflower's withered body was now covered with burning flames. The flames seemed to be its life force, vigorous and full of vitality. Everyone present was stunned by the scene before them, including Song Yunshi. Among her many beasts, the sunflower was not considered particularly strong, just entering the second level beast level, Song Yunshi had never expected the sunflower to be her third evolved beast. Previously, the only two beasts that Song Yunshi had evolved were the snow shadow doll and the holy water guardian, but today she gained another flame sunflower. The surprise came too suddenly, and Song Yunshi was momentarily at a loss for words. Th this. Zhang Weiman's mouth formed an O shape. He was completely dumbfounded and couldn't understand how a grass-type beast like the sunflower could evolve just by being roasted with fire. Could it be true what that guy surnamed Zhang said earlier, that using fire on grass-type beasts is beneficial? Yi Chang had been worried about trouble from the Beast Protection Association's people, but when he saw the scene before him, the weight on his heart was finally lifted. However, just as he let go of one worry, another one hit Yi Chang hard. He had been indifferent to Mr. Zhang just now, would Mr. Zhang hold a grudge against him for that? Right, the beast ball Mr. Zhang gave me. Yi Chang had been in a state of confusion earlier and hadn't had time to think about what Xu Yan had given him. After all, he had glanced briefly and found it to be just an ordinary beast ball with no rank. But now Yi Chang wanted to open the beast ball and see what was inside. Dad, what's wrong? Yi Yuro saw that Yi Chang's expression was not good, so she asked. This beast ball was given to me by Mr. Zhang. What's inside? I want to open it and see. Yi Chang hesitated, fearing it might be something bad, because it was given to him by Xu Yan before she left, and he had already angered her at that time. Just open it, there are so many of us here anyway, Yi Yuro said softly. Um what should come will always come, Yi Chang couldn't suppress his curiosity at all, so he simply opened the beast taming ball in front of everyone. In an instant, the beast taming ball burst into a dazzling light, and a beast with a body somewhat similar to a human appeared out of thin air in front of everyone. Chirp 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 as soon as it appeared, the beast scratched its ears and appeared very restless, its dark face revealed all its inner insecurity. When everyone present saw this black-faced monkey, they were all dumbfounded. Wasn't this monkey the black-faced monkey everyone had been looking for? How could it be here, and how did it emerge from a low-grade beast taming ball? Everyone looked at each other, and an image of a person suddenly appeared in their minds, it's Mr. Jiang. Yes father and daughter exclaimed in unison, while Song Yunchi and Zhang Weiman looked a bit embarrassed. Song Yunchi was embarrassed because she had witnessed Xu Yan's true ability today, in other words, the method Xu Yan mentioned to her earlier about taming the wind spirit snake was likely true, and she had misunderstood him and even kicked him out of the house. Zhang Weiman was embarrassed because he found that Xu Yan seemed to have some real ability, while he was like a clown who kept provoking the other party. Anyone in his position would feel embarrassed and ashamed. 
I never expected that the black-faced monkey we've been searching for all over the world had already been caught by Mr. Jiang. I thought he was already very skilled in various methods of beast cultivation, but I never expected Mr. Jiang to have such a profound study on taming wild beasts. I really don't know what kind of person can teach such an outstanding genius. Yi Chang sighed and left with his hands behind his back. Song Yunxi looked at the wild third-rank beast, the black-faced monkey, on the ground, her big eyes filled with deep confusion. Xu Yan was just a high school student who hadn't even hatched a beast, so how did he manage to capture the third-rank beast, the black-faced monkey, in the beast taming ball? Could it be that he really had such an extensive knowledge and understanding of beasts? Throughout the night, those who witnessed the evolution of the flame sunflower couldn't sleep. Not because of the beast evolution itself, but because they belatedly realized that everything that happened that night seemed to be within Xu Yan's expectations. Whether it was the fire monkey spewing flames, the flame sunflower evolving in the fire, or the black-faced monkey causing chaos in the Yi family manor. All these things seemed to be related to Xu Yan. Close to midnight, Xu Yan returned to the Maochao River community with Lin Fu's escort. Normally, Tang Rou would have already been asleep at this time, but to Xu Yan's surprise, she was still sitting on the living room sofa watching TV. Aunt Tang, why aren't you sleeping so late? Xiao Fan, you're back? I'll go prepare a bath for you. Tang Rou immediately got up and went to open the bathroom door upon seeing Xu Yan return. Xu Yan couldn't help but smile wryly, did Aunt Tang still see him as a child? Back in his room, lying on the bed, Xu Yan suddenly remembered something. The introduction letter from a beast master needed to purchase a house. Oh no, how could I forget about this, I should have asked Yi Chang for one earlier. Xu Yan felt a bit frustrated, as he had been too preoccupied with how to extort Yi Chang and had forgotten about the important matter. Forget it, I'll go back to school the day after tomorrow and ask Director Wang if he can provide me with one. Xu Yan took out his third rank beast taming ball and activated the mechanism, and the demon egg appeared before him. Counting yesterday and today, it's been two days of sun exposure already, it will take another eight days to reach a 25% hatching progress, isn't that too long? But what exactly is inside this demon egg? It even scared a wild third rank beast like the black faced monkey into submission, its true strength is probably beyond imagination. Today's Xu Yan did not come back empty handed either. At least he learned that the demon egg can suppress a third order beast, which is very good news. Tomorrow, continue sunbathing with the beast egg, and the day after tomorrow, go back to school to ask Director Wang for a recommendation letter to buy a house. The five school joint exam is coming in half a month, I must hurry up. After organizing his thoughts, Xu Yan was about to go to sleep when suddenly he remembered something. Where did that disguised lizard go? With recent events piling up, he had actually forgotten about the little guy. Xu Yan jumped up from the bed and started searching around the room. Knowing that the disguised lizard had camouflage abilities, Xu Yan deliberately activated the system's scanning function, but after scanning the entire room, including all the blind spots, he found nothing. Ran away? The system's training methods shouldn't have failed, right? Xu Yan was puzzled. After thinking for a while with no clue, he decided to ignore it. Since the disguised lizard had no attacking power, he let it wander around. With the system's training plan, Xu Yan was not worried about the lizard running away. In the past few days, Xu Yan had noticed that this little creature was very obsessed with Pokemon, even if he didn't force it, it would open the phone to watch by itself. Xu Yan lay down on the bed to sleep, while in the room opposite him, Tang Xiaoxiao was holding a Pomeranian and watching her phone. The Pomeranian in Tang Xiaoxiao's arms made a whining sound, enjoying Tang Xiaoxiao's touch while watching cartoons on the phone, looking content. However, after a while, the Pomeranian became limp. Its whole body collapsed, eventually turning into a palm-sized lizard in Tang Xiaoxiao's hand. Ah, Shaba, why did you change back so quickly? You're so useless, I haven't had enough yet. Tang Xiaoxiao pouted, looking disdainful. The lizard in her hand stuck out its tongue in response to her words. Wait for the skill cooldown and transform into a little kitten, for a change. Tang Xiaoxiao grabbed the lizard's tail and hung it in midair with a smirk. The next day, Sunday, passed without incident. Xu Yan went out to sunbathe with the demon egg in the afternoon, and in the evening, he casually dropped Tang Xiaoxiao off at school. At night, he continued to review his cultural studies materials and contemplate the demon egg. On Monday morning, after a simple breakfast, Xu Yan walked towards Lin Hai High School. On the way to school, Xu Yan was greeted by his classmate Su Jiwei sitting in an Audi A6. Sitting in the car, Su Jiwei, full of gossip, asked Xu Yan, Xu Yan, didn't the class monitor help you with your homework over the weekend? No, Xu Yan shrugged. He hadn't seen Chen Cici for two days and didn't know what Su Jiwei meant by the question. You didn't look for her either? No, it's just a weekend, not necessary to meet, right? You're done for, kid. 
Su Jiwei's face changed drastically after hearing Xu Yan's response. What do you mean, done for? Do you know that on Friday night, the class monitor passed by your neighborhood? And she saw you coming out from under Miss Song's building. It wasn't surprising that Chen Cici knew where Miss Song Yunqi lived, as she was a well-known figure in Linhai. Really? What a coincidence. Xu Yan's face stiffened, making it a bit difficult to explain. But Xu Yan's expression only lasted for a moment. He knew Chen Cici well and knew how to handle such situations. I called you, and you hung up directly. I thought something had happened to you. Su Jiwei wanted to remind Xu Yan, but when he called, Xu Yan hung up directly, which made Su Jiwei somewhat annoyed and speechless. My phone was taken by Xia Xia to play with, this little girl didn't even tell me she had a call. Xu Yan's face showed a look of helplessness when he heard Su Jiwei say he had called. Tang Xia Xiao, this little girl, was so engrossed in playing with her phone that she didn't even tell herself when she had an incoming call. In fact, in this regard, Xu Yan misunderstood Tang Xiao Xiao, because the one who usually played with his phone the most was not Tang Xiao Xiao, but the disguised lizard. That little lizard had already reached a preliminary level of mastery in using the phone, and Su Jiwei wanting to call to disturb it from watching Pokemon was definitely out of the question. But these are stories for another time. After the car had traveled a distance, it stopped in front of the gate of Lin Hai Middle School. Xu Yan, who was about to get off the car, glanced over and unexpectedly saw Chen Cici standing at the school gate with a broom. Xu Yan, the monitor specially took a broom and waited for you at the school gate, you're done. Su Jiwei's expression changed instantly upon seeing this. Get lost, have you forgotten that the path from the school gate to the teaching building is the cleaning area for our class? It's probably their turn for the monitor's group to do the cleaning, Xu Yan said impatiently. Monitor's group? How come I remember that we are in the same group as the monitor for cleaning the area? Su Jiwei expressed his confusion after hearing Xu Yan's words. The two of them realized belatedly, looked at each other, and said at the same time, Damn, we forgot about this. Xu Yan and Su Jiwei hurriedly got off the car and ran to Chen Cici. Monitor, sorry for being late, Su Jiwei was the first to speak. It's okay, go back to the classroom and get a broom, Chen Cici said. In addition to cleaning the area, Chen Cici also had the task of recording attendance. Considering the current time, Xu Yan and Su Jiwei were already considered late. You? Su Jiwei heard Chen Cici say you and looked at Xu Yan mournfully before quickly leaving the scene. Monitor, I'm sorry for being late, Su Jiwei said as he left, and Xu Yan followed suit, scratching his head and saying to Chen Cici. However, Chen Cici seemed to ignore him, continued sweeping, and paid no attention to Xu Yan. Xu Yan immediately noticed Chen Cici's mood. But instead of comforting her, he said, Monitor, I haven't finished my homework on the beast culture over the weekend, can you let me copy yours? Chen Cici remained silent and distanced herself from Xu Yan. Seeing this, Xu Yan scratched his head in distress, forget it, I'll go find Su Jiwei to copy. Xu Yan did not join the team cleaning the area but walked into the classroom by himself. On the way, he met Su Jiwei coming out with a broom and asked him where the homework was. Xu Yan did not speak to Chen Cici all morning. At noon, when Chen Cici collected the Beast Culture homework, Su Jiwei nervously handed over his work. He had been affected by the Cold War atmosphere between Xu Yan and Chen Cici since this morning and felt uneasy. As soon as he handed in the homework, Su Jiwei didn't even wait for Xu Yan and went outside to have lunch by himself. Xu Yan handed his homework to Chen Cici, but she did not take it. Helpless, Xu Yan could only leave the homework on the table, only then did Chen Cici take his workbook to correct it. High school teachers always like to have students correct homework, and Old Lu was no exception. The Beast Culture homework amounted to about 10 books, and Old Lu did not correct them himself but handed them over to Chen Cici. He believed that correcting homework could also learn a lot. Noon was the time for Chen Cici to correct homework, and after that, she would go to have lunch. Xu Yan, as usual, went outside to bask in the sun with the demon egg. Around noon, Chen Cici, who had finished eating outside the school with her classmate Xiao Wei, walked side by side. When they entered the school gate, they saw Xu Yan swinging a beast egg on the school playground. The scorching sun emitted high temperatures, and sweat soaked Xu Yan's shirt, but he seemed unaware, standing under the sun as usual, enduring the heat. What is Xu Yan doing? Even if he has high energy and blood, he can't sunbathe like this under the sun. If he gets dehydrated, it would be bad, and he hasn't had lunch yet, in case of low blood sugar, I guess we'll have to call an ambulance. Xiao Wei said seriously, glancing at Chen Cici's reaction beside her. Don't worry about it, let him starve if he insists on not eating. Chen Cici's face changed, saying coldly. But Cici, didn't you already eat something outside just now? Why did you bring back another portion? Xiao Wei asked with a puzzled look, tilting her head. I, I feel like my blood is rising recently, so I eat more. This portion is for when I get hungry in the afternoon. Chen Cici said with a stiff white neck, 
then she forcefully pulled Xiao Wei towards the classroom. Xiao Wei naturally couldn't resist Chen Cici, who had a blood value of over 80, and had no resistance under her dragging. After a cry of ah, Xiao Wei was quickly dragged back to the classroom by Chen Cici. The whole afternoon was self-study today. It's not because of the schedule, but because the school suddenly had an important meeting to attend, and all the teachers, without exception, went to the meeting. Now, in the classrooms of Lehi High School, the class monitor is the highest authority. Chen Cici sat on the platform, then picked up two homework books and raised them up. Su Jiwei and Xu Yan, what's the matter with your homework? It's exactly the same. The homework assigned by the teacher over the weekend are some simple questions. How did your homework turn out to be exactly the same? Which one of you copied from the other? Chen Cici's tone was severe, displaying the authority of the class monitor to the fullest. Su Jiwei used to be a prominent figure in the class, although his limelight was now taken by Xu Yan, in the eyes of many classmates, he was still the academic genius with a blood value of over 90. Would such a person copy someone else's homework? It was Xu Yan who had just emerged these days, and everyone was not very familiar with him, so everyone's suspicious eyes were directed at Xu Yan. However, copying homework is not uncommon, not only in regular classes but also in key classes. If it was a teacher like Old Lu who asked this question sternly, people might sit in their seats with a sense of anticipation and unease. But when Chen Cici brought it up, everyone just treated it as an interesting joke. Some people even directly shouted, let Su Jiwei and Xu Yan both stand outside. With that said, everyone burst into laughter, and surprisingly, many people agreed. However, unlike other students, Chen Cici took this matter extremely seriously. That's just her personality, striving to do her best in matters within her responsibilities. Seeing the class making fun, Chen Cici slammed the huge set square on the table from the platform. Quiet, is this matter funny? If your hard work is stolen by someone, would you still find it funny? Chen Cici's voice was loud, and everyone suddenly quieted down, realizing that the class monitor seemed genuinely angry. Xu Yan, this morning I heard you say you were going to copy Su Jiwei's homework. What's going on? Stand up and explain. Chen Cici lowered her voice, staring at Xu Yan lying on the table with a hint of resentment. Under everyone's gaze, Xu Yan slowly raised his head, but his eyes were wandering, looking somewhat weak. When he finally stood up with his hands supporting his body, everyone also noticed something unusual. Xu Yan seemed to be in a bad condition, is he sick? Chen Cici's expression also froze when she saw the scene. She didn't know what Xu Yan was up to, but she inexplicably felt that Xu Yan's appearance was fake. After all, a person with a blood value of over a hundred shouldn't be this weak. However, the next second, a shocking scene unfolded. Xu Yan, who had just stood up with his hands on the table, stumbled and fell directly. He saw the scene next to him like Lu Lao Lao entering the Grandview Garden, rare and exclaimed loudly, Not good, Xu Yan has hypoglycemia. He didn't eat lunch today. This sentence puzzled everyone present. What's going on? But now is not the time to consider this matter, saving people is the most urgent. The strong boys in the class wanted to surround him, but the next second they were pushed away by a huge force. Chen Cici didn't know when she had already come to Xu Yan's side and lifted his body up, the anxiety in her eyes could almost condense into drops of water falling. Xu Yan, what's wrong with you? Are you okay? Hurry to the school clinic to find a doctor. Chen Cici was completely panicked. At the same time as the accident in class 10 of grade 3, an emergency meeting was being held in the staircase conference room of Lin Hai Middle School. Principal Zhou Yofu sat at the meeting table with a serious expression. Director Wang next to him was speaking into the microphone. This year, our school's graduates must take a step further on the premise of ensuring quality. In last year's Imperial Beast College entrance examination, we had 70 people with blood and energy values exceeding 80 points, performing well, 30 people with blood and energy values exceeding 90 points, excellent, 15 people with blood and energy values exceeding 100 points, outstanding. And there was one person with a blood and energy value exceeding 140 points, creating a legendary myth in the history of our school. Excluding the legendary achievement of Son Yinchi with a blood and energy value of 140 points, the performance of our graduates from Lin Hai Middle School last year was outstanding. It has surpassed many high schools in the city. But this is not enough. With the five-school joint examination approaching, we will be competing with a total of five key high schools. They are the private college Yuling Middle School, the Ocean Middle School in Tianhai District. Among these five schools, we ranked last in the five-school joint examination last year and our performance in the Imperial Beast College entrance examination ranks second to last. One last, one second to last, I believe all the teachers present are clear that if it weren't for Son Yunchi's outstanding performance in the Imperial Beast College entrance examination, our performance would also be last. After all, this ranking has been going on for a full 10 years. 
This year, the Linhai City Education Bureau has issued a strict order that if our school does not make it to the top three in this year's five school joint examination, within three years, the salaries of all teaching staff will be reduced by 30%. When Director Wang mentioned how Linhai Middle School was doing, no one took it seriously, but when they heard that their salaries would be cut, they were all suddenly frightened. It should be noted that teachers and other professionals in this world are high income groups. The starting salary for high school teachers is 5,000. With various benefits, it can reach 6,000 to 7,000. If there is a student in the class with a blood and energy value of 80, 90, or even 100, there will be various bonuses. When calculated, the annual salary easily exceeds 100,000. This is in 13 years, and as time goes on, teachers' salaries will increase. Because in the national plan, the education industry has long been treated as a top priority. And big shots like Jack Ma, Mahua Tang, and Wang Jianlin also invest heavily in the education industry every year. Even stars like Kunkin, Xiaozhan, and the Manure Boy are actively donating to the education industry. The thriving development of the education industry is evident. Therefore, when Director Wang said that their salaries would be reduced by 30%, everyone couldn't bear it, and the conference room was in an uproar. I disagree. I've only been teaching here for three months, why should my salary be cut so much? If the school's performance doesn't improve, it's because you useless leaders? If you cut my salary, I'll resign immediately, anyway, I don't have to teach at Lin High Middle School. Just as Director Wang finished speaking, a voice of opposition immediately sounded in the conference room. Hearing this, Director Wang's face changed, nonsense, now all records are interconnected, how can you just leave? If you go elsewhere, you can only get 70% of the salary of your peers within three years. The headmaster's words were not exaggerated, this is the current situation. The country has extremely strict control over matters related to education, or more precisely, over matters related to being a first-tier beast tamer. As soon as the headmaster spoke, the meeting room fell silent. However, at that moment, another voice spoke up, Headmaster Wang, Principal Zhou, are your salaries being deducted? This question directly voiced the doubts in everyone's minds. If we are being deducted, shouldn't the school leaders also be affected? Principal Zhou and I will not have our salaries reduced, and we will receive a 10% increase on top of our current pay. The other school leaders will be treated the same as you. Headmaster Wang spoke truthfully, but this statement immediately ignited the emotions of the crowd. Why should the two of you, as first-tier beast tamers, receive special treatment? The most vocal protesters were some young teachers who once harbored dreams of becoming beast tamers themselves, aspiring to be among the elite. However, reality dealt them a heavy blow, causing them to miss the opportunity to become beast tamers. So, when they saw Zhou Yofu and Wang Tian, both beast tamers, being exempt from punishment and even receiving a salary increase, they refused to accept it. Why should beast tamers enjoy privileges? Why should we work for them and let the beast tamers enjoy these benefits? This system is fundamentally unfair. The teachers were indignant, almost to the point of saying, why should nobles and officials have it easy? But little did they know that when Headmaster Wang heard their questioning, he did not feel ashamed. Instead, he responded vehemently, almost shouting, damn it, you are losing money, but I am risking my life. If I could, I would gladly let you have this blessing and enjoy these privileges. Headmaster Wang was also furious, not even considering his position as an educational leader, and he began to curse openly. Compared to the teachers below, he now felt more aggrieved. The abnormal activities underground in Linhai City had already alerted the authorities. In order to investigate the situation, the Jiangnan Provincial Education Bureau issued a direct order. In the upcoming joint examination of the five schools in Linhai Middle School, the school must rank in the top three. Otherwise, Principal Zhou Yofu and Headmaster Wang Tian should prepare to investigate underground. This was both a motivation and a warning, a punishment for Lin High Middle School's failure to improve its educational performance over the past decade. According to the intelligence provided by the Special Affairs Office, the Beast Tamer forces lurking underground in Lin High City were extremely powerful, with a wildness surpassing that of ordinary beasts by tenfold. A professional team had already been dispatched to dig a tunnel, and the day the tunnel was successfully opened would be the day when Zhou Yofu and Wang Tian would be sent underground as cannon fodder. They were likely to lose their lives, while these ungrateful individuals were only complaining about a deduction in their salaries. Could Headmaster Wang not be angry and aggrieved? Everyone shut up. Now, each class needs to report the number of students with critical qi and blood values of 80, 90, and 100 points. Joe and I will personally fund those who have the potential to break through the bottleneck to purchase qi and blood supplements for their breakthrough. This matter is settled. Headmaster Wang looked pained, this time, he would likely have to pay a hefty price. In the principal's office, after the meeting, Principal Zhou Yofu called for a small meeting. 
This trial is a test for all the teachers and students of Lin High Middle School. The Qi and blood scores of the other four key high schools this year should not be much higher than ours at Lin High Middle School. If we can produce a person with a Qi and blood value of 140 points, we will definitely secure a spot in the top three. Unfortunately, exceptional individuals like Song Yunqi are not common every year. In the history of Lin High Middle School, we have only had one such individual. It will be difficult, very difficult, to produce another one. Principal Zhou Yofu furrowed his brow. Although he appeared to be in his 40s or 50s, his face was now covered in wrinkles, resembling a Sharpe dog. However, his expression did not last long, as if he had thought of something, Zhou Yofu's eyes lit up. Last time, when the former director of the security bureau, Lu Yunfeng, came to the school to present a banner to Xu Yen, Zhou Yofu had seen Xu Yen's test data, which reached a terrifying 128 points. If it's Xu Yen, maybe there's a chance to save himself and director Wang in a crisis. With 128 points of vitality, is Xu Yen the student with the highest vitality in our school now? Zhou Yofu excitedly asked, grabbing director Wang's shoulders. It's true that Xu Yen has the highest vitality, but as the principal, you should also know that this student is somewhat stubborn. Besides the school's beast culture class, he never participates in the school's beast system training. Normally, when a beast master's vitality reaches 120 points, it basically meets the conditions for hatching a beast. But there is no sign of hatching in Xu Yen's beast egg. And I've heard many students and teachers say that Xu Yen now sunbathes with his beast egg on the playground every day, saying that this can help hatch the beast inside the egg. Director Wang smiled bitterly and shook his head. Xu Yen's situation is indeed somewhat special, and he doesn't know how to handle it. Not participating in the school's system training? Sunbathing with the beast egg outside? Does he think he knows more about beasts than the school's professional teachers? Zhou Yofu frowned at the words. And you said his vitality is already 128 points, but there's no sign of the beast hatching. Could his egg be a bad egg? Zhou Yofu learned about Xu Yen's beast egg acquisition from the old man Lu. The quality of beast eggs on the black market varies, and many people buy bad eggs there. It's impossible. If it's a bad egg, how could it increase his vitality so much? Director Wang did not agree with Zhou Yofu's opinion. Xu Yen's various values are too high, even surpassing the average first-tier beast master. Director Wang would never believe that his egg is a bad one. Maybe his egg is stronger, so it hatches slower? Director Wang, both you and I are beast masters in education, and we have been in the education industry for so many years. Do you believe in such a reason? Zhou Yofu said with a serious expression. There is no theory in the entire country or even the world that the longer a beast egg hatches, the stronger the hatched beast will be. With 128 points of vitality, even if we try our best to help him increase it to 130 points, it probably won't change the fact that Xu Yen is at the bottom of our school. Xu Yen probably can't reach 140 points of vitality like student Song Yanshi. Our focus should be on cultivating those students whose vitality is at the critical value to raise the average strength of our school. Zhou Yofu pointed out his opinion, and Director Wang nodded in agreement after hearing it. Although Xu Yen's vitality is high, if the beast egg doesn't hatch, it's not going to work. I know a person, Ji Xinchen from the seed plan, whose vitality has reached 117 points under the training of the seed plan. And his beast egg shell shows signs of cracking, so we should focus on cultivating him. There are other participants in the seed plan, such as Zhou Ping, Zhou Hao, Long Kuan, and so on. The seed plan school has made great efforts, and with the resource donation from Master Jack Ma, the results are much better than in previous years. This is currently the most gratifying aspect. Okay, let's do that. Of course, Xu Yen should continue to maintain, give him a vitality pill and let him try to break through the 130-point barrier. If not, then forget it. Zhou Yofu shifted his focus away from Xu Yen and paid more attention to the students participating in the seed plan. At this time, on the sidewalk below the teaching building, Xu Yen was being supported by Su Jiwei and Chen Cici as they walked towards the school clinic. Xu Yen's legs were weak, and he couldn't exert any force. His entire weight was on Chen Cici, and his elbows were even touching the two little white rabbits on Chen Cici's body. Oh, squad leader, I remember there seems to be medicine in Xu Yen's drawer. I'll go get it. Xu Yen is in your care. Having said that, Su Jiwei casually handed the box of lunch in his hand to Chen Cici, then turned and left without looking back. Hey, take the lunch with you, I can't carry so much. Chen Cici used both of her delicate hands to hold Xu Yen in place to prevent her from falling, unable to free her hands. Su Jiwei hung the bag containing the lunchbox on her bent fingers, which made Chen Cici very distressed. I'm fine, let's sit for a while. Xu Yan's weak voice came out. You say you're fine, listen to how your voice sounds? Chen Cici pouted, forcefully dragging Xu Yan towards the school clinic. 
She didn't understand why her blood oxygen level of over 80 was having trouble moving Xu Yan, increasing blood oxygen levels shouldn't affect weight, right? There's a bench over there, let's sit and wait for Su Ji Wei. Xu Yan pointed to a chair in the school flower bed with trembling fingers. Are you really okay? Seeing that Xu Yan didn't seem as confused as before, Chen Cici finally felt relieved. She helped Xu Yan sit on the bench, then let Xu Yan lean against her to prevent her from falling, and finally opened the lunchbox and handed it to Xu Yan. Here, my dinner, eat it. Chen Cici looked pained and didn't want to waste the lunch on Xu Yan, but still forcefully separated the disposable chopsticks and handed them to Xu Yan. I don't have the strength to eat. Xu Yan's eyelids drooped, looking like a real patient. Since you know you're not feeling well, why didn't you eat lunch? I really admire you. Just this once, let me feed you. Chen Cici rolled her eyes, then picked up a piece of egg and brought it to Xu Yan's mouth. Wow, these are all dishes I like to eat, class monitor, our tastes are surprisingly similar, we must get along well. Xu Yan's eyes lit up when she saw the dishes in the lunchbox, and she started eating eagerly. Chen Cici couldn't keep up with the speed of picking up dishes compared to Xu Yan's speed of swallowing them. Who said our tastes are the same? I bought these because I arrived late, and the fast food restaurant only had these dishes left, so they sold them to me cheaply. Wait a minute. Aren't you hypoglycemic? Why are you eating so fast? In the afternoon, on a bench in the flower bed of Lin Hai Middle School, a young man was frantically eating with his chopsticks, while the girl sitting next to him had her arms crossed in front of her, with a hint of blush and anger on her pretty face. Class monitor, your lunch is really delicious, but if you personally feed me, I will definitely eat more. After finishing the entire lunchbox, Xu Yan gave Chen Cici a thumbs up. Oomph, no way, go find your senior sister Song Yunxi. Xu Yan's words carried a tone of praise, but Chen Cici would not easily be swayed by his sweet words, not even showing a hint of emotion to Xu Yan, and stood up to leave. Hey, class monitor, where are you going? We still have to wait for Su Ji Wei to get the medicine. Hey, class monitor, will you accompany me to the school clinic? I'm feeling dizzy again. Hey, class monitor, wait for me, let me explain the homework to you. Xu Yan followed behind Chen Cici, but Chen Cici didn't even turn her head. She wasn't a fool, and from Xu Yan's performance, she could deduce the various situations that had occurred before. What hypoglycemia, what going back to the classroom for medicine, all of these were lies. Xu Yan, together with Xiao Wei and Su Ji Wei, set up a trap for herself, and this trap was set up at noon. At noon, Chen Cici was puzzled as to why Xiao Wei suddenly mentioned hypoglycemia, as if setting the stage for this play, and unconsciously, she ended up acting in a play with these people. Chen Cici felt like a clown, embarrassed, naturally, she didn't want to talk to Xu Yan. After returning to the classroom, Chen Cici sat back at her own seat, while Xu Yan shamelessly drove Xiao Wei, Chen Cici's deskmate, away, and pressed her hot face against Chen Cici's cold face. However, this time Chen Cici did not get up and leave like she did in the morning. She let Xu Yan sit beside her, but did not speak to him. Of course, this was only temporary. By the time it was almost time for school to end in the afternoon, Chen Cici had already picked up her notebook where she recorded key points and started asking Xu Yan questions. Chen Cici, what does qi and blood resonance refer to? What conditions are needed to achieve it, and what is its effect? Qi and blood resonance refers to the method by which a beast tamer temporarily enhances their own qi and blood by borrowing from the qi and blood of the tamed beast. The higher the intimacy, compatibility, between the beast tamer and the tamed beast or beast egg, the greater the chance of successful resonance and the more temporary enhancement of qi and blood obtained. Qi and blood resonance can enhance the beast tamer's combat abilities and also help the beast tamer and the tamed beast understand each other. Shin Sisi, between the beast tamer and the tamed beast, who holds the dominant position? Although there is a contractual relationship between the beast tamer and the tamed beast, their positions are equal, it is a companionship relationship. There is no issue of superiority or inferiority. If the tamed beast or the beast tamer is dissatisfied with their companion, they can break the contract and abandon the companion. The two whispered questions and answers, and by the time school was over in the afternoon, the old man Lu appeared at the classroom door as usual. After the students participating in the regular college entrance examination had left, leaving only those participating in the Beast Tamer college entrance examination, the old man Lu walked in excitedly and said, Students, good news, good news. After our teachers meeting this afternoon, the school will distribute varying amounts of qi and blood potions to students whose qi and blood values are approaching 80, 90, 100, based on their qi and blood values. Now everyone come with me to test your qi and blood values and receive the corresponding resources. Old man Lu smiled and did not convey the bad news from the meeting. Rarely generous, the school leaders did not want to burden the children psychologically. Oh, Xu Yan, you don't need to go for the qi and blood value test. This is a qi and blood pill given to you by Principal Zhou and Director Wang, 
with a chance to increase your qi and blood by two points, you can take it. Amidst the envious looks of everyone, Xu Yan took the qi and blood pill from old man Lu. This qi and blood pill is very valuable, worth three to four hundred thousand, you better take it now to avoid losing it in an accident. Old man Lu reminded Xu Yan. He had intended to give it to Xu Yan discreetly, but Principal Zhou and Director Wang had spread the news to every class teacher under the guise of motivating students. This slightly annoyed old man Lu. Teacher, I don't need to use it urgently now, I'll keep it for later. Xu Yan put the bottle containing the qi and blood pill in his pocket, increasing qi and blood was simple for him, so he didn't care much about the qi and blood pill. As you wish, old man Lu shook his head and said no more, after all, the current social security was good, and the chances of accidents were low. Testing qi and blood values would take a lot of time, and since Xu Yan didn't need to be tested, he simply packed up and went home. Just as he walked out of the school gate, the calm ground suddenly trembled, almost causing Xu Yan to fall face down. Again? This was the third time Xu Yan had felt the ground shaking, that was why he didn't go to ask Director Wang for a letter of introduction to buy a house today. If this shaking continued, Xu Yan would have to consider moving his whole family, there would be no point in buying a house. The shaking wasn't severe, but it made the pedestrians on the street panic. Some shouted and ran away, some hid in open spaces, and some crossed the road regardless of traffic lights. Because of this, three cars ended up rear-ending each other, creating a scene of horror. After looking at the three deformed cars, Xu Yan couldn't help but shake his head and then turned to walk home. However, at that moment, a sudden screeching of brakes pierced the sky, causing everyone to scream in surprise. Xu Yan heard the sound and guessed that it was another driver who failed to stop in time and rear-ended the cars in front, just like before. Curious to see what was happening, Xu Yan turned around to take a look. But as soon as she saw the situation behind her, her hair stood on end. At that moment, a runaway van was swerving towards her from side to side, heading straight for her. The distance between them was estimated to be less than 2 meters. In such a situation, an ordinary person would not have reacted in time and would have been hit by the van, risking death or paralysis. However, Xu Yan's qi and blood value reached 150 points, and her mental value far exceeded that of an ordinary beast tamer. In a split second, Xu Yan's body cell suddenly activated, narrowly avoiding a collision with the speeding van. The van swerved a few times and stopped beside Xu Yan. Anger covered Xu Yan's face as she walked up to demand compensation for the mental distress. But as she approached, the van's door suddenly swung open, and seven or eight burly men wielding sticks charged towards her. Nest, are you coming for me? Xu Yan reacted swiftly. In that instant when the burly men rushed out of the van, he turned and ran towards the school. Although Xu Yan's qi and blood value was 150 points, he could sense that these burly men also had strong qi and blood values, estimated to be at least 90 points or higher. In this situation, Xu Yan had no intention of fighting multiple opponents. Even if he had a chance of winning, he wouldn't take the risk. Sneaking away was the best choice. Normally, the school gate of a high school would be guarded by security personnel. When Xu Yan was being chased by nearly 10 burly men, the old security guard in the security room noticed but did not intervene. He was also timid and afraid of death, never having encountered such a situation before. He didn't even consider the possibility of someone causing trouble at Lin Hai High School. Did the other party not care about Principal Zhou and Director Wang, both first-tier beast tamers? The security guard could only brainstorm in his mind, cowering and watching as Xu Yan passed by without a word. Damn, you coward. Xu Yan glared at the security guard and continued running. At that moment, there were not many people in the school, the first and second year students participating in the ordinary college entrance examination had already left early, leaving only a few nowadays spending their youth on the basketball and football fields. The third year students participating in the Beast Tamer college entrance examination were all at the Beast Tamer Center in the school undergoing qi and blood tests, so there were hardly anyone who could help Xu Yan. After a moment of contemplation, Xu Yan looked back and saw that the group of men was still chasing him, so he decisively ran towards a certain wall. That wall was where Xu Yan used to sneak out during class time in his past life to go online. Behind the wall was a graveyard, with dense small woods, perfect for escaping. With his high qi and blood value, Xu Yan's overall physical condition was stronger than those men. By the time Xu Yan climbed over the wall, the burly men were still 10 meters away from him. You guys take your time, I'm not waiting for you. Xu Yan laughed at the men and then leaped over the wall, disappearing into the small woods. By the time the men arrived, there was no trace of Xu Yan to be found. In a dense green shade not far from Lin Hai High School, Xu Yan cautiously peeked out, looking around. This exit was close to Lin Hai High School and the bustling commercial street nearby, and Xu Yan was familiar with the route, appearing here accurately. 
In front of her was a busy street with cars and pedestrians, many private cars were illegally parked on the roadside, a sight Xu Yan was used to. Phew, finally safe. Xu Yan breathed a sigh of relief, then furrowed her brow, who exactly is trying to harm me? Xu Yan considered himself not a righteous gentleman, but also not the kind of despicable person who makes enemies everywhere. The other party mobilized so many people and held sticks, obviously wanting to cripple or kill him. Who could hold such a deep grudge against him? Xu Yan thought of two possibilities, one was the group that compensated for his parents' death compensation, the other party felt that compensating 120,000 was not worth it, so they wanted to take it out on him. The second possibility was the black market and he met on the night he met Song Yunshi. From the wild fifth order flame hound the other party had at the time, it was clear that the ant was either wealthy or noble. Did the after effects of the flame tiger act up and then blame him? Of course, there were also people like Wang Chang, Chui Ying Jun, and others. But did they have the audacity to openly block someone at the school gate? Xu Yan was puzzled, he walked out of the bushes, thinking of taking a different route home, but suddenly heard a creak creak vroom vroom sound. This sound was all too familiar to Xu Yan, wasn't it the sound of that old dilapidated van? Xu Yan hid behind a Maybach and peeked out, only to see the van slowly approaching. In a moment of urgency, Xu Yan immediately wanted to hide back in the bushes. But at that moment, a very young voice suddenly sounded from the Maybach next to him. Heh, I thought he was so powerful, turns out he's just an old rat who only knows how to run away. He's actually the person with the highest chi and blood value in our Lin Hai High School. What an irony. Xu Yan? Was this person in the car talking about himself? Xu Yan leaned his body against the car and pressed his ear against it to hear more clearly. Young master, I heard that this kid named Xu Yan has a qi and blood value of 128 points, just a bit lower than last year's Song Yanshi. So what? He's just a poor kid favored by the goddess of luck, how long can his luck last? Without resources, someone like him probably won't go beyond 128 points of qi and blood. The young voice carried a tone of disdain, then as if to prove that he was not weaker than Xu Yan, he continued loudly. I haven't been using my full strength in the previous qi and blood tests, if I were to unleash my full power, my qi and blood value should be higher than that waste, around 129 points. After resonating qi and blood with the beast, the qi and blood can even reach 135 points. If it weren't for the beast high school entrance exam in Kyoto, I would have already unleashed my full power of qi and blood to show this kid who's boss. Young master, I heard from the grapevine that this year, the admission criteria for the two universities in Kyoto have been raised by one level. Students who haven't hatched a beast are not accepted, those with a chi and blood value below 130 points are not accepted. The elderly voice sounded somewhat worried. What's so difficult about this? I, Ji Xianchen, am the number one talent in Linhai, besides, I have already hatched the beast ironclad Tyrannosaurus. Entering one of the top two beast universities in Kyoto is a sure thing. As for this Xu Yan, I heard he's been quite popular recently. The principal gave him a chi and blood pill, but only gave me five bottles of qi and blood potion. Who does he think he is looking down on? On the day of the five schools joint exam, I will unleash my full qi and blood power, let Zhou Yofu and this poor kid realize my strength. By this point, Xu Yan had basically heard enough. It turned out that the calamity he faced was caused by this kid named Ji Xianchen. Just because he received better rewards from the school than him, he arranged for people to teach him a lesson, acting arrogantly. But the most speechless and incomprehensible thing for Xu Yan was, one qi and blood pill, worth three to four hundred thousand, five bottles of qi and blood potion, worth over five hundred thousand, this damn idiot clearly got better things than him, yet still envied him. Was he struck with jealousy? Oh well, let him show off for a while. Xu Yan had already marked today's encounter with several big men surrounding and chasing him on Ji Xuanchen's account. During the joint exam of the five schools is the day to settle the accounts. Lunar December 29th. Two days before New Year's Eve, 8.30 p.m. M. Jinling City, Wanlong Shopping Center. Xu Yan, who entered the Jinling Warriors University and bought a house in Jinling City, brought Tang Rou and Tang Xiaoxiao to Jinling for the new year. Of course, besides celebrating the new year, Xu Yan's main purpose was to persuade Tang Rou to stay, and to discipline Tang Xiaoxiao, who was studying at Lin Hai High School. And Tang, this is the largest shopping center in Jinling City. The things inside are much better than those in the small shopping centers in Linhai City. Take a look at what you want to buy. Since Tang Rou was brought over, it was certain that the New Year's Eve tomorrow would be arranged by the other party. Xu Yan planned to sleep until noon the next day. Let's buy some groceries first, chicken, fish, tofu, vegetables. We can't miss anything. These things are all more expensive during the New Year. I originally planned to buy them from Linhai, but you insisted we didn't need to. Tang Rou glanced at Xu Yan and said impatiently. And Tang, you're only in your 20s, don't nag like an old lady all the time, 
hurry up and pick something. Xu Yan watched Tang Ro about to lecture her and hurriedly covered her ears. Mom, give me a thousand yuan, I want to buy something myself. Tang Xiaoxiao reached out to Tang Ro for money. Since Xu Yan was admitted to Jiling Imperial Beast University, there had been a drastic change in the family's life. Tang Xiaoxiao would never have asked for money before, of course, she wouldn't ask during normal times either. It was only on the occasion of the upcoming New Year that Tang Xiaoxiao mentioned it to Tang Ro. You brat, what do you need so much money for? This is all saved by Xiaofan through frugality. Tang Ro blared fiercely at Tang Xiaoxiao. Tang Ro was always strict with Tang Xiaoxiao and always accommodating to Xu Yan. After seeing the scene, Xu Yan proactively transferred 10,000 yuan to Tang Xiaoxiao via mobile phone, then secretly gestured to her to keep quiet by placing a finger on her lips. I've transferred a thousand yuan to you, it's New Year now, buy whatever you like while you have the chance, there won't be this opportunity after this. Looking at the money transferred by Xu Yan on the phone, Tang Xiaoxiao rubbed her eyes in disbelief. Ten, hundred, thousand, ten thousand yuan. Tang Xiaoxiao's eyes widened in an instant, thank you, Xiaoyan Ji. After saying that, she happily left with the huge sum of money. Normally, Tang Xiaoxiao would never call Xu Yan Xiaoyan Ji, this time, it was probably because of the money that she used this term. After Tang Xiaoxiao left, Tang Ro pulled Xu Yan towards the vegetable market. However, Xu Yan stopped halfway, and Tang, you keep wearing the same few clothes? Let's go to the clothing section and pick out two new pieces for you first. I'm just an old aunt, I don't need anything new. Tang Ro was interrupted by Xu Yan's fierce glare before she could finish her sentence. Seeing this, Tang Ro didn't continue and agreed to Xu Yan's suggestion, okay, but you should change your clothes too. Let's buy yours first, and then mine. Although Tang Ro made a compromise, she also gained some initiative. Xu Yan originally thought that having the Jinling Imperial Beast University uniform was enough, but she couldn't resist Tang Ro's insistence and had to agree. The two took the elevator all the way up and finally stopped on the sixth floor. When the elevator on the sixth floor opened, a dazzling array of goods instantly caught their eyes. Tang Ro was dazzled by the various styles in the men's section, but Xu Yan, apart from being able to distinguish the colors and types of clothes, didn't study them much. Without paying attention, Xu Yan was dragged by Tang Ro to a full-length mirror. Xu Yan didn't even realize when Tang Ro had already picked out several different colored clothes for her, and there was a salesperson smiling next to her, watching Tang Ro help Xu Yan try on clothes. Mrs. Tang, I think these styles paired with your husband look particularly young and handsome. Do you have any favorites? Or do you like them all? We can offer up to an 80% discount based on the quantity purchased by customers. Wrap them all up. Tang Ro let Xu Yan try on clothes while scanning Xu Yan's body with her eyes, becoming more and more satisfied as she looked. And Tang, I really can't wear so many, Xu Yan chuckled. What do you mean you can't wear so many? These are for spring, these are for summer, and there are also ones for autumn and winter. In the end, in a daze, Xu Yan directly bought five sets of clothes. In addition to the men's and women's clothing sections, the entire Wolong shopping center also had various private shops, chain store entrances, such as Armani, Urban Beauty, Hylan Home, and so on. When passing by a store named Victoria's Secret, Tang Ro's footsteps stopped. Walking side by side with Xu Yan, after seeing this store, her gaze was immediately drawn to it, and she nervously grabbed Xu Yan's sleeve, Xiao Fan, let's go in and take a look. With that said, Tang Ro's head was almost buried in the ground, her blushing face could even drip water. At first, when Xu Yan saw the store's name, she didn't know what kind of store it was, but when her gaze moved down to look inside, Xu Yan immediately understood. No wonder Aunt Tang's face was so red, it turns out this store sells lingerie. Compared to Tang Ro, Xu Yan's face was much thicker. Let's go, let's take a look. There weren't many people in the store, mostly women, of course, there were also boys accompanying female friends to make selections, so Xu Yan didn't feel too lonely. How about this one, it feels pretty good. Tang Ro picked up a milky yellow bunny bra from the shelf and asked Xu Yan. No, it's too ordinary. Isn't this something from the 50s or 60s, it's too outdated? Xu Yan gave her answer after just a glance. Although Aunt Tang's figure could handle this, only the right trend could better highlight her graceful figure. Xu Yan would never agree to Tang Ro choosing such a fully covered piece. After hearing Xu Yan's words, Tang Ro secretly breathed a sigh of relief. It took all of Tang Ro's courage to have Xu Yan accompany her into the store. After coming in and seeing the various lingerie on display, Tang Ro reluctantly chose a plain bunny plum. She was afraid that Xu Yan would say she was too promiscuous if she chose sexy lingerie. Fortunately, Xiao Fan passed on this one, Tang Ro thought to herself. Then how about this one? Tang Ro took out another piece. However, in Xu Yan's eyes, this piece still didn't suit Tang Ro, this young aunt. So Xu Yan shook her head again. Seeing this, Tang Ro hesitated for a while before taking down a set of black lace-edged lingerie from the shelf. 
Of course, it wasn't just black lace edges. Xu Yan also found a magical little zipper on it, along with a snow-white transparent gauze, she didn't know what it was for. What about this one? Tang Rou held this outfit against her slender body, turning left and right, trying to let Xu Yan see more carefully. Because it was winter, Tang Rou was dressed a bit thick. Just by comparison, Xu Yan found it hard to tell if this set suited Tang Rou. If only Aunt Tang could try it on. Xu Yan was thinking, but Tang Rou seemed to have guessed what he was thinking and hugged the lingerie, lowered her head, and said to Xu Yan, if you want to see, I can try it on. Yes, lingerie is different, every inch matters, it must be tried on. Xu Yan nodded in agreement. However, just as Tang Rou turned to go to the fitting room to try on the item in her hand, a scream suddenly came from inside the fitting room, ah oh, there's a pervert. A woman with nothing but her hands crossed over her chest ran out directly from the fitting room, then immediately hid behind her male companion. Xu Yan only saw a flash of a snow white figure pass by in front of her, by the time she came to her senses, the store staff had already surrounded them. Before long, a light brown cat walked out of the fitting room. This cat looked similar to a regular domestic pet cat, the only difference was that its tail was curled up to form a circle. The circle was neither big nor small, just about the size of the woman's bunny from earlier. Xu Yan used the system to check the information of this cat, beast, size cat, type, ordinary system beast, characteristics, likes to measure various plump things with its tail. If it encounters an item larger than its tail can measure, the size cat will feel uneasy, even go crazy. Conversely, if it encounters a suitable measuring item, the size cat will firmly wrap it with its tail, thus feeling at ease. Female, level, LV5, health. After reading the information about this cat, Xu Yan was speechless for a moment. Truly, the world is vast and full of wonders. This size cat actually needed to wrap around soft things to feel at ease. Wasn't that woman just taken advantage of by it? But fortunately, this size cat was a female, so it wasn't too much of a loss. Hey, how did you come back into our store again? Get out. Several female staff members quickly picked up hangers to drive the size cat away. But who knew that this agile size cat, in a few swift movements, actually used its tail to wrap around a staff member's steamed bun, then tightened its tail and rolled onto another staff member. In the back and forth, all the female staff members in the store fell victim to this cat's thievery. After the size cat rolled out of the store and ran away, several staff members immediately chased after it. With such an incident happening in the store, the other customers dared not stay any longer and left directly. Xu Yan was watching the commotion when she suddenly felt a force pulling her arm to move. When she came to her senses, Xu Yan found herself in a small, enclosed fitting room. Aunt Tang? Don't make a sound, I'm scared. If another cat like that shows up, it'll be a disaster. You're a beast tamer, you should be able to protect me, right? Tang Rou asked softly. The two were very close, and Xu Yan could feel the warm breath Tang Rou exhale tickling her earlobes. Both were wearing just enough clothes, the fitting room, which could accommodate two people, became cramped due to the thick clothing. Xiao Fan, let's take off our coats. It's too crowded for me to try on clothes. Tang Rou's head was just below Xu Yan's chin, at this moment, she was pressed against Xu Yan's body. The sight of Xu Yan's ear close to Tang Rou's chest could even feel Xu Yan's heartbeat. Okay, Xu Yan swallowed and then reached out to unzip the coat. As soon as he unzipped halfway, Xu Yan felt something soft. Tang Rou gasped softly, then hummed, mm after the sound, Tang Rou suddenly let Xu Yan turn around with her back facing her. Xu Yan had the same intention, and he reacted when the two were pressed tightly together. It was not a good place to have a reaction, and Xu Yan didn't want to make the news tomorrow. After turning around with difficulty, Xu Yan took off the coat and threw it on the ground. And Tang, you can change with peace of mind. With me here, that weird cat won't dare to come over. Hmm. Tang Rou nodded gently, then began to peel off her clothes. Xu Yan's vitality was so strong that even without using his eyes, he could sense what Tang Rou was doing. Now, Aunt Tang behind him was stripped bare, as long as he turned around, Aunt Tang's wonderful figure would be fully visible to him. However, Xu Yan didn't do that. He turned his back to Tang Rou, and only after hearing the rustling sound behind him, Xu Yan asked, Aunt Tang, are you done? Wait a moment. Tang Rou's voice sounded a bit anxious, with a hint of embarrassment, who designed this underwear? Why is there a zipper in the middle of the panties, and even on the bunny protector, it's like a T-Mall genie. I can't zip it up. Tang Rou was getting a little impatient, Xiao Fan, turn around and help me. Uh, Aunt Tang, this doesn't seem appropriate. Xu Yan scratched his head, feeling a bit embarrassed. Xiao Xiao is not here, so don't be shy. You weren't this shy when you treated me like that before. Hurry up and turn around. Tang Rou's tone carried a hint of shyness. Xu Yan slowly turned around, and when he saw the scene behind him, he was suddenly taken aback. Tang Rou was not wearing ordinary underwear at all, but rather a lingerie set. 
The kind that was tantalizingly revealing, making Xu Yan unable to help but slowly raise his hand. Hmm, a soft hum suddenly sounded from the small fitting room, and it gradually returned to calm after a long time. In the parking lot of the Wulong shopping center, Xu Yan and Tang Rou finally met Tang Xiaoxiao, who had been waiting for a long time. Why are you two so slow? I've been waiting for you for half a day. Tang Xiaoxiao pouted, complaining. Hey, wait a minute, what's that strange smell? Just as Tang Xiaoxiao was complaining, she suddenly turned into a police dog and sniffed around Xu Yan and Tang Rou. Fortunately, she didn't find anything. Forget it, let's go home. Upon hearing Tang Xiaoxiao's words, Xu Yan finally relaxed his grip on something he had been holding tightly in his pocket. Why does it feel much colder tonight than yesterday? My lower body feels chilly. Well, let's hurry up and get in the car to go home. Tang Rou looked up at the sky and casually twisted around Xu Yan's waist. Xu Yan couldn't help but smile wryly at Tang Rou's little gesture. Yeah, the weather is getting colder, let's go back and rest early. It would be nice if someone could warm my bed tonight. Xu Yan returned home safely that night. Later in the afternoon after school, a scene of several big men chasing after Xu Yan caused a stir inside the school. Xu Yan's reputation had long been known at Lin Hai High School. His classmates more or less knew him. When they saw Xu Yan being chased by so many people after school, some immediately ran to find a teacher to explain the situation. In the principal's office, Zhou Yofu and Director Wang had just selected students worthy of cultivation who had the potential to shine in the five school joint exam. When a duty teacher rushed in to report, Principal, Director, something happened, it seems like Xu Yan is being chased and attacked by a group of gangsters. What? Upon hearing this, the two school leaders exclaimed in surprise. However, their astonishment did not last long, as a young man dressed in Armani walked in. Principal Zhou, Director Wang, I didn't expect such a small matter to alarm you, I'm really sorry. The young man had slightly blonde hair and dressed similar to a fashion influencer on a video platform his overall style surpassing that of a high school student. Ji Xianchen? Director Wang was surprised to see the young man who entered and asked, Ji Xianchen, what do you mean by this? Director Wang was in charge of the seed plant at Linhai High School, so he naturally recognized Ji Xianchen, after all, he was the top student in the seed plan. Moreover, Ji Xuanchen's beast was about to hatch, so Director Wang would definitely pay special attention to him. However, Director Wang didn't understand why Ji Xianchen appeared at this time and said such words. Principal Zhou, Director Wang, I came here this time to show you something. Come out, ironclad Tyrannosaurus. Ji Xianchen threw the beast ball on the ground, and in an instant, the beast ball emitted a radiant light, revealing a Tyrannosaurus as tall as Director Wang standing in front of him. The armored Tyrannosaurus is covered with hard scales all over its body, bearing a striking resemblance to the long extinct Tyrannosaurus Rex. Its sharp teeth seem capable of piercing through a person's skull, and its front claws are as sharp as knives able to cut a piece of paper in half. This is only the juvenile form of the armored Tyrannosaurus, if it continues to evolve, its power will become even more terrifying. Wang, feeling the breath of the armored Tyrannosaurus on his face, suddenly stiffened, Ji Xian Hua Chen, you, you hatched an armored Tyrannosaurus? It was just a stroke of luck. I came here today to bring good news to Principal Zhou and Director Wang. The people who were chasing Xu Yan just now are my family's servants. I originally wanted them to invite Xu Yan to my house as a guest, but they misunderstood my intentions. I am deeply sorry for the negative impact caused by this, and I hope Principal Zhou and Director Wang will not pursue this matter further. After all, I also have my reputation to uphold. Ji Xianchen spoke politely, but did not show any remorse, smiling at the two school leaders with a fixed gaze, leaving them wondering what he was thinking. Zhou Yufu and Wang Tian frowned upon hearing his words. Both of them were shrewd individuals and immediately sensed that Ji Xianchen's words carried a hidden meaning. He first intimidated them with the armored Tyrannosaurus, then directly admitted to being involved in the incident at the school. But was this an apology? Not at all, it was a blatant provocation and pressure tactic. This kid must have somehow learned about their situation through some insider information, hence his arrogant and brazen behavior. Director Wang took a deep breath, intending to sternly reprimand Ji Xianchen and demand an apology for Xu Yan. However, to his surprise, Zhou Yufu interjected, Oh, it was just a misunderstanding. I thought it was something serious. Let's just let this matter go, and I will compensate Xu Yan on your behalf. After all, Xu Yan encountered trouble at our school, and as the principal, I also bear responsibility. Zhou Yufu quickly shifted half of the blame that originally belonged to Ji Xian Chen onto himself with just a few words. Upon hearing this, Ji Xian Chen laughed heartily, even letting out a loud howl. Ahahaha <laughs> cough cough, sorry, I got too excited. After a couple of coughs, Ji Xian Chen composed himself and returned to a calm demeanor. Principal Zhou, I am willing to compensate Xu Yan with a qi and blood pill. 
I believe he will not blame me if I do so. Ji Xian Chen was full of confidence. A Qi and blood pill meant little to him. All he needed was the pleasure of overpowering Xu Yan. A Qi and blood pill sounds good. I will also provide Xu Yan with an extra bottle of Qi and blood potion. This way, he surely won't say anything. Oh, Ji, since your spirit beast has hatched, have you considered obtaining a first order spirit master professional certificate? Having a first order spirit master certificate can earn you quite a few extra points during the college entrance examination. Zhou Yufu looked at Ji Xianchen as if he had discovered a rare treasure. It was understandable, considering Ji Xianchen was the first person at Linhai High School to hatch a spirit beast. I have already registered for the first order spirit master professional certificate, I can take the exam tomorrow. Of course, after obtaining the certificate, I have one more thing I want to do, and I hope to have Principal Zhou's support. You have a plan, many of our students are stuck on the path to becoming spirit masters because they haven't planned their growth well. Gee, share your thoughts, as long as it is within my capabilities and does not violate laws or morals, I will definitely support you. Principal, I want to challenge the Spirit Academy, of course, not just the Spirit Academy, but also the other three top high schools. Challenging the Spirit Academy in this world roughly equates to spirit beast battles. Ji Xianchen has just hatched a beast and is already looking to challenge four other key high schools, which makes Zhou Yofu frown. This matter is not illegal or unethical, but it does involve an element of gambling. If Ji Xianchen loses when challenging the other schools, Linhai Middle School will become the laughingstock of the entire city and surrounding areas. Ji, are you really confident? Zhou Yofu feels a bit skeptical and even thinks he is arrogant. But at this moment, Ji Xuanchen's face reveals a mysterious smile. He leans in to whisper to Principal Zhou, I am from the Ji family in Jinling. Upon hearing this, Zhou Yofu's eyes widen, then turn into a look of joy. All right, we'll do as you say. After a detailed discussion, Ji Xianchen leaves the principal's office satisfied. However, Director Wang, who has been sitting silently on the side, frowns and says to Zhou Yofu, Principal, is it appropriate to hand over the school's honor to a student? Zhou Yofu replies, he is from the Ji family in Jinling. What? Okay, forget I asked, Director Wang wisely keeps quiet. The next morning, Xu Yan just arrived at the school gate and found Su Jiwei standing alone, anxiously stomping his feet. His worried look is like that of a king in distress. Xu Yan walks up to him with a smile, Su Jiwei, did you grow lice on your body, or did lice grow on you? Upon hearing Xu Yan's voice, Su Jiwei immediately jumps up. Xu Yan, why are you only coming now? Something happened, a big thing happened, the class monitor, she's Su Jiwei seems to be too excited, stuttering as he speaks. Xu Yan learns that it is related to Chen Cici and immediately becomes serious, asking, slow down, what happened to her? No, it's not the class monitor who had an issue, it's you no, not you, it's, it's oh, let me cut to the chase and keep it short, seeing Xu Yan's speechless expression, Su Jiwei stammers through the story. Xu Yan finally understands the situation. It turns out that because the school did not address the incident where she was chased around the school by a group of people with sticks the day before, Chen Cici went to argue with the principal. Hey, what's going on, let me go check it out. Xu Yan is a bit speechless, but upon further thought, it's understandable, after all. Chen Cici's personality is like that. Xu Yan heads to the principal's office, where Zhou Yofu's face is extremely grim. Earlier, the class monitor of class 10 in the third year, Chen Cici, knocked on his office door. Zhou Yofu initially thought she was there to inquire about school rules or other activities, but he did not expect this girl to come in and accuse him of sheltering criminals right away. Principal Zhou, the whole school knows that the people chasing Xu Yan were instigated by Ji Xianchen. Why aren't you punishing Ji Xianchen? This is the most infuriating part for Chen Cici, Ji Xuanchen's actions can even be defined as criminal, yet Principal Zhou, as the head of the school, is protecting him. How many benefits did he receive from Ji Xianchen? Student, calm down first. If there is something, let your class teacher communicate with me, I have many things to handle, so go back to class first, and I will give you an answer later. Zhou Yofu completely disregards Chen Cici, although she is pretty and charming, her vitality is only in the 80s, unchanged for several months. In Zhou Yofu's eyes, such a person is just a vase, worthless. Who would explain anything to a vase? No, I must have an explanation now. You really, hey, Xu Yan is not anyone special, why do you need to speak up for him? After Zhou Yofu says this, Chen Cici's expression freezes. The red glow on her pretty face disappeared in an instant, and then she spoke firmly, Xu Yan is a classmate of our class 10, and as the class monitor of class 10, I naturally have to help classmates solve difficulties. Even if it were another classmate, I would do the same. Is it necessary to emphasize this? Zhou Yofu was a bit speechless, then his imposing manner emanated, and he said sternly, you are Chen Cici, right? 
I remember you are also on the list for the qi and blood supplement. If you don't want the qi and blood potion given by the school to be taken back, you will attend classes in the classroom and stop meddling in this matter. Zhou Yofu directly played his trump card. Even if you have a sense of responsibility, in front of a bottle of qi and blood potion worth a hundred thousand, would you still stand up for an ordinary classmate? Normal people wouldn't, and even his younger self wouldn't. Zhou Yofu thought so. However, just when Zhou Yofu thought he had successfully intimidated Chen Sisi, she did not speak but directly took out a bottle of green liquid in a glass bottle the size of a mineral water bottle from her small bag and gently placed it on Zhou Yofu's desk. This is the qi and blood potion distributed by the school, I haven't touched it, it's intact, and now I return it to you. Can the principal continue discussing the matter we just talked about? Chen Sisi's words were decisive, and she didn't hesitate even when placing the qi and blood potion on Zhou Yofu's desk. This time, Zhou Yofu finally looked at Chen Sisi, sizing up this ordinary-looking girl. Why? Your parents had to save money for two years to afford this bottle of qi and blood potion, and it's not even guaranteed to be available, don't you want to become a beast tamer? Zhou Yofu was very puzzled. In his youth, he had gone to great lengths to become a beast tamer. If someone had asked him to choose between his father's oxygen tube and this bottle of qi and blood potion back then, Zhou Yofu felt he might even choose the latter. That's the allure of the qi and blood potion for ordinary people. Zhou Yofu couldn't understand why, with such a good opportunity in front of her, Chen Sisi didn't cherish it. Instead of becoming a beast tamer, I think it's more important to be a good person first. Chen Sisi didn't give a long explanation to Zhou Yofu, her goal was clear, to make Zhou Yofu deal with Ji Xianchen and give Xu Yan the compensation she deserved. But Zhou Yofu seemed to be choked by Chen Sisi's words and couldn't speak for a long time. After a long time, Zhou Yofu finally sighed softly, take back this bottle of qi and blood potion, I will give the compensation to Xu Yan as needed, you don't have to worry. You can ask your class teacher about this. Although the qi and blood potion was returned, Chen Sisi would not give up so easily. Compensation alone was not enough. If Ji Xianchen was not publicly apologized to, what would happen to Xu Yan? Everyone would say that Xu Yan was just a coward who dared not speak up. An apology is impossible, even if punished, he will not suffer any loss. This matter ends here. Zhou Yofu waved his hand, and a small blue bird beside him suddenly spewed out a tornado, pushing Chen Sisi out of the door, then locked the office door, ignoring Chen Sisi's knocking. Frustrated, Chen Sisi decided to block the door as soon as class was over. There would be a time when they would meet. Just as she turned around to go back to her class, she saw Xu Yan walking towards her from the corridor. Class monitor, what are you doing here? Seeing Xu Yan, Chen Sisi immediately put on a stern face, it's almost time for class, why are you here? Go back quickly. If you're late, see if I deduct your points. Chen Sisi said fiercely, and Xu Yan immediately begged for mercy. When Xu Yan left side by side with Chen Sisi, she glanced back at the principal's office. He had heard everything that was said just now. Today, in addition to Chen Sisi causing a scene in the principal's office, two major events also occurred at Linhai High School. One event was Ji Xianchen hatching an ironclad Tyrannosaurus, becoming the first senior student at Linhai High School to hatch a beast. The second event also involved Ji Xianchen. Along with hatching the beast, Ji Xianchen declared that he would challenge the other four key high schools in Linhai City. This matter was approved by the school authorities at Linhai High School, and official documents were distributed to each class. In addition to Ji Xuanchen's challenge, Linhai High School was also going to form a support team and a reserve team. The support team was essentially a cheerleading squad, not very important. But the reserve team was different. It consisted of students with top qi and blood values at Linhai High School. Xu Yan was naturally pulled into the team. The challenge was set to begin on Wednesday, which was tomorrow. It was expected to last a week. No wonder the principal didn't want to deal with him, turns out they still have to rely on him to bring glory to the school. Chen Sisi said sarcastically after hearing the news. What principal? Deal with what? Xu Yan, sitting next to Chen Sisi, asked in confusion. Nothing, nothing. Chen Sisi hesitated for a moment, then immediately waved her hand. She didn't want Xu Yan to know about this matter. What if he misunderstood her? She was just doing what she should do, yes, just doing her duty. Oh, I see. By the way, squad leader, I heard from Su Jiwei that your qi and blood levels haven't improved since the last time we tested at the hatching center, is that true? Xu Yan asked in confusion. Chen Sisi's eyes dimmed at the mention, yes, but it's okay, I found a way to improve my qi and blood levels. Just watch, I won't lose to you. Chen Sisi raised her fist confidently and said to Xu Yan, I see. I actually have a secret method to improve qi and blood levels and tips for nurturing the beast egg to tell you, but since you are confident, let's forget about it. Xu Yan turned his head and pretended to sleep on the table. However, as he was about to lie down, he found his sleeve being pulled by a force. 
Xu Yan turned his head and saw Chen Cici with her head down, blushing, even her ears turning bright red. Tell me, she whispered almost inaudibly. What? I didn't hear you, Xu Yan frowned and asked. I said tell me, Chen Cici whispered in Xu Yan's ear, as if sharing a secret. Ha? Huh? Xu Yan still sounded puzzled. Xu Yan. After two consecutive calls, Chen Cici couldn't help but realize that Xu Yan was teasing her. In a fit of anger, Chen Cici grabbed Xu Yan's ear and twisted it as if winding up a spring. Ouch, 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 it hurts, I heard you, I heard you. In the end, with his ear throbbing in pain, Xu Yan told Chen Cici the method. At 8 o'clock tonight, at my place, don't be late. One sentence, like enticing an inexperienced girl. Chen Cici blushed after hearing it, but out of trust in Xu Yan, she nodded in agreement. If you dare mess around, next time I twist won't be your ear. Chen Cici threatened Xu Yan playfully, then turned back to do her work and ignored Xu Yan. At noon when school was over, Xu Yan received a phone call. It was a local Linhai number, but Xu Yan didn't recognize it. Thinking it might be important, Xu Yan answered the call. Hello, is this Mr. Jiang? A soft voice came from the other end of the phone. Who is this? I'm Yi Euro, Mr. Jiang, don't you remember me? We met last Saturday. There was a hint of resentment and displeasure in her voice. Oh, it's you. I remember now. But why are you calling me? Is your Articuno acting up again? Xu Yan thought that was probably the reason the other party was contacting him. But who knew that on the other end of the phone, Yi Euro expressed her apologies, saying, Mr. Jiang, about what happened on Saturday, it was our Yi family's inadequate hospitality. You clearly helped us catch the black-faced monkey, but we did not fulfill the duties of a host. Hey, stop, did you call just to talk about this? If that's the case, you don't need to worry, I'm not angry. Xu Yan didn't really think there was anything lacking in the Yi family's hospitality. After all, she had what she needed to eat and drink, and Yi Euro had even paid a million in medical fees before. Both sides were even. Xu Yan didn't naively expect the Yi family to treat her like an honored guest. So when she heard Yi Euro mention apologizing, Xu Yan immediately cut her off. What's the use of apologizing in business matters? Practical actions are what matter. That's what Xu Yan thought, but Yi Euro clearly didn't understand Xu Yan's words. When Yi Euro heard Xu Yan say she wasn't angry, she finally breathed a sigh of relief. I've been feeling uneasy these days, afraid to call Mr. Zhang, and my dad was suddenly called away for a mission and can't contact the outside world. Now that I've heard Mr. Zhang say this, I can finally relax. Do you have anything else to discuss? If not, I'll hang up, I still need to sunbathe. Wait, Mr. Zhang, wait. Yi Euro's voice became urgent, stopping Xu Yan. Mr. Zhang, I heard that your Linhai Middle School is coming to challenge our Royal Spirit Academy, is that true? Yes, what about it? Xu Yan wasn't too concerned about this matter. Is this something arranged by Mr. John Or? Yi Euro was a bit anxious. If Xu Yan wanted to challenge them on her own, she would need to come up with a suitable plan to fully demonstrate Mr. John's powerful defeat. Oh, I'm just a bystander, there's someone else challenging. Speaking of which, this guy and I don't get along too well. If you encounter him, beat him to a pulp for me. His name is Ji Xianchen, I heard he hatched an ironclad rampage dragon. Xu Yan casually leaked Ji Xuanchen's information to the enemy. Ji Xianchen? From the Jinling Ji family? I don't know, but he seems pretty wealthy. Alright, I got it, since he has a grudge with Mr. Zhang, it's a grudge with me. Just a descendant of the Ji family, I'll make him eat dirt. Yi Euro said excitedly, and Xu Yan could even hear the sound of her fist swinging on the other end of the phone. Then I'll leave it to you, Miss Yi. Xu Yan was happy to have someone deal with Ji Xianchen. After chatting for a while, they hung up the phone. After sunbathing with the demon egg, Xu Yan returned to the classroom for the afternoon lessons. After school in the evening, Chen Cici called home to say she was going to study at her deskmate Xiao Wei's house, then she followed Xu Yan to the Macau River community. Zhu Ziwei said your blood and energy haven't improved since last time. This is illogical. Can you show me the spirit egg? After returning home, Xu Yan pulled Chen Cici into her room. At first, Chen Cici thought Xu Yan was going to tease her like last time, but once they entered the room, Xu Yan spoke to her in a serious tone. Xu Yan's improvement in blood and energy was evident to everyone, although Chen Cici couldn't be sure if Xu Yan could help her, she had no choice but to try. Chen Cici carefully took out the spirit ball from her bag. This spirit egg and ball cost Chen Cici's parents over a hundred thousand yuan, and she treasured it. Since forming a contract with the spirit egg, Chen Cici had always kept it with her. Just in case of any changes, she could instantly know. When my parents and I were choosing the spirit egg, the salesperson said this was a frost flower lynx cat egg. It can hatch into an A-level spirit beast. 
When I touched this magical beast egg, I felt a sense of familiarity from it, so I bought it. Shen Cici repeated the basic information of the Ice Flower Lynx cat egg to Xu Yen. Of course, even if Chen Cici didn't say it, Xu Yen could figure it out. Magical Beast Egg, Ice Flower Lynx Cat Egg, Type, Ice Type Magical Beast, Talent Level, A Level, Currently B Level, Status, Unhatched, Life Force, 86, Spirit, 0, External Skeleton, 0, Internal Skeleton, 0, A Very Ordinary Magical Beast, Almost the Most Ordinary Magical Beast Egg Xu Yen had ever encountered. However, Xu Yen did not underestimate this Ice Flower Lynx Cat because of it. The great writer Lu Sun once said, There is no distinction of strength among magical beasts, the key to victory in battle lies in the tacit cooperation between magical beasts and their trainers. In addition to this basic information, Xu Yen focused on the line describing the status of the Ice Flower Lynx Cat Egg. Status, under the tough ice and snow eggshell lies an Ice Flower Lynx Cat with a congenital disease. The congenital disease makes the ice-type Ice Flower Lynx Cat extremely afraid of the cold. Its body cannot absorb nutrients from the eggshell. Thus it cannot grow and hatch normally. So that's how it is. After seeing this information, Xu Yan finally understood why Chen Cici's life force value had not been increasing. It seemed that this ice flower lynx cat egg was basically no different from a rotten egg. Spending a hundred thousand yuan on a rotten egg, Chen Cici's luck was really something. After reading the status, Xu Yan shifted his focus to the column of training direction. Training direction 1, roast the ice flower lynx cat over a fire for 10 days to drive away its coldness. This direction has a 90% chance of mutating the hatched ice flower lynx cat into a fire type magical beast, with a 30% increase in basic stats. There is a 10% chance of normal hatching. Training Direction 2 Boil the ice flower lynx cat egg in boiling water for 10 days. This method has a 90% chance of mutating the hatched ice flower lynx cat into a water type magical beast, with a 30% increase in basic stats. There is a 10% chance of normal hatching. Originally feeling sorry for Chen Cici, Xu Yan was dumbfounded after seeing the training directions for the Ice Flower Lynx Cat Egg. This thing could actually mutate. Mutated magical beasts were highly sought after everywhere. Xu Yan had heard in the news that Ma Hua Tang had spent 10 billion searching for a mutated flashing shrimp, but in the end, they never found it, the matter had to be dropped. Was Chen Cici really that lucky? Could it be that this type of stubborn and competitive girl was the type favored by the goddess of luck? Why are you looking at me like that? Xu Yan stared blankly at Chen Cici, at first, the latter noticed but was too embarrassed to meet his gaze. However, after waiting for a while and seeing that Xu Yan didn't speak, Chen Cici couldn't help but give Xu Yan a look and ask. After Chen Cici said this, Xu Yan finally came to his senses, he looked intently at the girl in front of him and said, word by word, there are two paths in front of you now. Xu Yan told Chen Cici all the training directions for the Ice Flower Lynx cat egg and let her choose for herself. Of course, he couldn't reveal what the system had said so he vaguely made up some excuses. Th this, Xu Yan, are you joking with me? After hearing Xu Yan's training plans, Chen Cici was taken aback. She was not a fool, nor was she a girl easily deceived by sweet words from men. Upon hearing Xu Yan's words, Chen Cici's first reaction was that it was absurd. If she really followed what Xu Yan said, wouldn't her ice flower lynx cat egg turn into a roasted egg or a boiled egg? It's okay if you don't believe what I say. But you should understand, Based on your current performance, it will be very difficult for you to get into the Magical Beast University, let alone the same one as me. I hope you understand this. Who said I have to go to the same Beast University as you? Stop being so full of yourself, Chen Cici pouted, but her reaction to Xu Yan's words was not intense. Do you want to give it a try? Xu Yan said this just to lighten the mood, making Chen Cici's choice the top priority. Last time, before we tested the blood value at Zhou Ping's Beast Hatching Center, didn't you say the same thing? You said Zhou Ping's Crimson Flame Dragon Lizard Egg had to be roasted over a fire to hatch quickly. Do you think all beast eggs can be hatched by roasting over fire in your eyes? Chen Cici snorted, obviously not very satisfied with Xu Yan's suggestion. Didn't I also provide you with a boiling water solution? Hey, don't twist my waist after a playful exchange. Chen Cici's serious expression relaxed a bit. She murmured a few words with her cherry lips, then said as if resigned, then let's go with your boiling water method. But if I cook it at home, my parents will definitely think I'm crazy. So I'll leave my ice flower links to you. If it really hatches successfully, I will reward you. If it fails to hatch, be prepared to be stuck with me for a lifetime. Chen Cici waved her fist lightly, revealing a small white tiger tooth. After saying this, Chen Cici handed the ice flower links egg to Xu Yan and then ran off like a child who had done something wrong, leaving Tang Ro, who was preparing dinner in the living room, looking puzzled. The ice flower links egg was not large, only about 20 centimeters long. Xu Yan looked at the ice flower lynx egg in his hand with a wry smile. 
It seemed that he had gained Chen Cici's trust, and according to Chen Cici's personality, being able to say stick with me meant that his strategy had achieved great success. However, Xu Yan was not complacent, the revolution was not yet complete, and comrades still needed to work hard. Wednesday, cloudy weather. At 9 o'clock in the morning, Linhai High School prepared a mobilization meeting for Ji Xianchen, who was going to battle. Ji Xianchen didn't need to be mobilized, it was the cheerleaders and substitute players who needed to be motivated. Xu Yan was theoretically supposed to attend this mobilization meeting, but he didn't go. Ji Xianchen was busy there, and he couldn't be bothered to attend. At most, Xu Yan would wait until Ji Xianchen went to the Spirit Academy before going to see how he was beaten up by Yi Yuro. Xu Yan had never seen Ji Xianchen's ironclad Tyrannosaurus, but with his strong spirit, he could sense the approximate range of the opponent's blood value. It's about 130 points of blood. Yi Yuro's Articuno, in its dying moments before encountering him, he could sense 120 points of blood value from the Articuno. And last Saturday when he went to the Yi family's banquet, he specifically looked at the Articuno's blood value, which had already reached 140 points. Blood values can fluctuate up and down based on the physical condition of the beast and the beast master. If Yi Yuro were to unleash her full power, 150 points were also possible. So when Tang Yuro said she would teach Ji Xian Chen a lesson for him, it was definitely not an empty talk, she had the strength to do so. The Yi family is really well off to be able to cultivate a genius like Yi Yuro. Xu Yan did not hesitate to praise Yi Yuro. Of course, he didn't think Yi Yuro was that strong. Heroes appreciate each other, and geniuses are either formidable rivals or mutual admirers. Xu Yan's comments indicated that he was either a keyboard warrior or a level above a genius. Obviously, Xu Yan belonged to the latter. After the mobilization meeting, Ji Xian Chen led the army directly to his first target, Xuanyang Middle School, a key school in Linhai. Among the team heading to Xuanyang Middle School were many of Xu Yan's old acquaintances, Zhou Hao, Long Kuan, and Wang Jing, who had gone to pick up Song Yunqi with Xu Yan before, were there, as well as Zhou Ping, the Class 4 monitor who had some unpleasant encounters with Class 10 before. Sitting on the bus arranged by the school, everyone looked spirited. Gate crashing, this is a serious and officially recognized activity. If they win, then the prestige of Linhai High School in front of other schools in Linhai will reach its peak, but if they lose, no, they won't lose. On the bus, a group of students had a belief in their hearts, for their alma mater, for honor, they will definitely not lose. Xu Yan, Xu Yan, is Xu Yan here? On the bus, the leader of class 4, teacher Mei Tian Liang, frowned and called Xu Yan's name three times, but heard no response. Is Xu Yan dead? If not, speak up. Teacher, maybe Xu Yan got scared as soon as he heard about the gate crashing. Look at how timid he is. I didn't see him during the pep rally. Zhou Ping sneered. He still remembered being suppressed by Xu Yan's higher vitality points before. Perhaps out of hatred, Zhou Ping trained hard during the seed plan, and with the method of increasing intimacy with the beast egg taught by teacher Fong, his vitality points had reached 114, just one point more than Xu Yan, but that one point was an insurmountable gap between them. Among the many geniuses in the school, Zhou Haolong Kuan, a person like Zhou Ping, was no longer considered an opponent. After hearing Zhou Ping's words, Mei Tian Liang's face twisted in frustration, has anyone else seen Xu Yan? If no one has seen him, I will mark him absent. Teacher, this is a school activity, is it appropriate to mark him absent? Zhou Hao, who got along well with Xu Yan, stood up from his seat and said, he thought Xu Yan was a good person, so it was okay to speak up for him. And he was also a seed player of Linhai High School, so teacher Mei Tian should give him some face. That's what Zhou Hao thought. But ideals are lofty, reality is harsh. Those who speak out of turn will be dealt with for disrupting the order of the activity, Mei Tian Liang said coldly. You! Zhou Hao's eyes widened at Mei Tian Liang's words, clearly angered. Zhou Hao, everyone has seen how timid Xu Yan is, you saw it before, I had my servant chase him and he didn't even dare to make a sound. How could someone like that have the courage to participate in such an exciting event as gate crashing? Don't speak up for him anymore, otherwise, we might be missing a substitute in our team. Ji Xianchen, sitting in the front passenger seat next to the driver, spoke lightly, there was a clear sense of excluding Zhou Hao if he didn't listen. As soon as Ji Xianchen spoke, Zhou Hao immediately fell silent. The message was clear, if he spoke up for Xu Yan again, Ji Xianchen would definitely deal with him. Hey, I've said what I needed to say. Xu Yan, oh Xu Yan, you missed such a good learning opportunity for gate crashing. I really don't know if you're stupid or have other plans. Zhou Hao remained silent, not having a deep personal relationship with Xu Yan. He just thought it was easy to be with him before, so he wanted to speak up for Xu Yan. The day's classes quickly passed. After school in the afternoon, old Lu did not appear at the classroom door as usual. The students of class 10 knew. 
The school sent Ji Xianchen to the neighboring prestigious school, Xuanyang Middle School, for gate crashing, and some teachers were also called over. But usually, it was the head teachers of the key classes who went, and the reason old Lu could go was because there was a student like Xu Yan with extraordinary vitality points in the class, and also because of his seniority, he could retire in a few years. Phew, since old Lu isn't here, can we just leave? Su Jiwei packed his bag and came to Xu Yan's side, while Xu Yan was currently chatting with Chen Cici. Even if Mr. Su is not here, you can still study on your own. But if you want to leave, I won't stop you. Next time Mr. Su asks, I won't say you left early. Chen Cici saw Su Jiwei grab Xu Yan's arm and immediately changed her tone when asking questions. Su Jiwei looked and thought, wow, is the monitor trying to steal my man? Why do I feel like I've become the third wheel? Clearly Xu Yan's deskmate is me Su Jiwei's face twitched, feeling helpless. Xu Yan added, Su Jiwei, wait for me, we'll leave together later. Wait for you? Wait for you to feed me dog food? Su Jiwei, feeling embarrassed and angry, grabbed his bag and left. Just as he reached the door, he bumped into someone coming towards him. It was a student wearing glasses, looking eager and excited, announcing, breaking news, breaking news. Ji Xianchen defeated Xu Yan High School. Breaking news, breaking news. Ji Xianchen defeated Xu Yan High School. Ji represented our Lin Hai High School and successfully challenged the top students of Xu Yan High School. The latest news is already in the Lin Hai Daily. The people who were preparing to leave were momentarily stunned upon hearing this unexpected news. Gradually, the news sank in, and some students murmured, Really, they won? The next moment, the whole class erupted in cheers. Not just the class, the entire school building trembled with the cheers. Ji Xuanchen's victory injected a dose of excitement into the otherwise mundane Lin Hai High School. Ji Xianchen won, and he won brilliantly. Words couldn't describe the excitement, only cheers could express their elation. At the school gate of Lin Hai High School, three figures looked back at the buzzing school building and then left. What's the point of these guys making a fuss? What does that kid's victory have to do with them? They won't get any money from it. Su Jiwei grumbled. He was already unhappy with Ji Xianchen for laying hands on his brother Xu Yan, and now hearing about his resounding victory made him even more irritated. You're just sour grapes. But I also don't understand why they're so excited, Chen Cici said to Su Jiwei standing beside Xu Yan. So what if I'm sour? When I go back, I'll burn incense for Sanqing Yusho and make sure Ji Xianchen gets beaten up tomorrow. Since he's confident enough to challenge a prestigious school, he must have some skills. He probably won't lose in the short term, Xu Yan shook her head. Su Jiwei hoped Ji Xianchen would lose quickly, but Xu Yan didn't want that. If Su Jiwei collapsed before the battle with the Spirit Academy, how could she let Yi Euro deal with this kid? In terms of tolerance, Su Jiwei, you should learn from Xu Yan, Chen Cici added at the right time. Su Jiwei. Deep down, Su Jiwei felt bitter, damn, am I not worth it to Xu Yan? How could she say that about me? Okay, the clown is me. As the three of them headed home together, in the principal's office of Linhai High School, Zhou Yofu and Director Wang were sitting on the sofa, looking at the Linhai news on their phones, unable to contain their laughter. Ha, huh, I knew trusting Ji Xianchen was not wrong. He really surprised me. I feel like he's the second Son Yunxi of our Linhai High School. Zhou Yofu praised Ji Xianchen without reservation, but Director Wang seemed more composed. It's only the first day today, there are still several days of tough battles ahead, don't be too happy too soon. It's not that I'm happy too soon, it's just that Ji Xianchen has given me such a big surprise. Look at this report. Ji Xianchen used the earth splitting tail move all day today to make Xu Yang Middle School surrender without a single person being his match. And look at this. During the match, Ji Xianchen even had time to play the cool run game. This shows that he didn't really use all his power to control the spirit beasts. Today, he probably only used about 50% of his strength. Zhou Yofu became more and more excited, having a super genius appear at Lin Hai Middle School was naturally a great thing for him. At least this indirectly proved that his educational policy was good, which would make the leaders of the Education Bureau have a better impression of him. The top combat power at Xuanyang Middle School is indeed not that great, but their average energy and blood values are frighteningly high. If Xuanyang Middle School hatches a few more spirit beasts in the future, Ji Xianchen won't win so easily. He didn't win this time without some luck. Director Wang, as a first-tier spirit beast master and head of education, gave his unique insight. Hey, this can't be considered luck. If you're not as skilled as others, then you're not as skilled as others. Our Lin Hai Middle School only had Ji Xianchen hatch a spirit beast egg by himself, while Xu and Yang Middle School had two, but they still lost. Who is stronger and who is weaker, it's clear at a glance. Zhou Yofu was very satisfied with Ji Xianchen's achievements, so he didn't calm down because of Director Wang's words. 
It's decided, if this kid Ji Shen Chen can really defeat four key middle schools, I'll personally fund him to buy another advanced spirit beast egg. New spirit beast masters have just started, if you give them so many spirit beasts, won't they run before they learn to walk? Director Wang was a bit speechless, and what if Ji Shen Chen loses, or if another substitute successfully replaces Ji Shen Chen in the challenge? The debate over the quantity of spirit beasts in the education sector has always existed, having one more is not a big problem. And rewards are definitely prepared for the successful ones, not to mention if a substitute wins, even if a janitor comes to help our Lin High Middle School win, I won't give any less. Joe Yofu was generous and naturally didn't care about the money for an advanced spirit beast egg. He just hoped that Ji Xian Chen would continue to win and bring glory to Lin High Middle School. Thursday, clear. Ji Xian Chen challenged Saint De Middle School and won by a large margin. Friday, clear. Ji Xian Chen challenged a Haiyang Middle School and still won by a large margin. The only school left was the Yuling Middle School located in the center of Linhai City. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, clear turning to rain. Due to the weather conditions, considering the large number of spectators watching the challenge, and the fact that spirit beast battles are not suitable to be held indoors, the challenge date was postponed. But postponing indefinitely was not a solution, after all, the five school joint exam would be held next Monday. If too much time and energy were wasted on the challenge, it would lead to unstable performance in the five school joint exam. So after consultation between Linhai Middle School and Yuling Academy leaders, it was decided that the challenge would take place tomorrow, Tuesday, regardless of whether it was sunny or rainy. During this period, Ji Xian Chen was shining brightly. The former Linhai Middle School top energy and blood value holder, Xu Yen, had long been forgotten. Now, if someone were to think of Xu Yen, the first thing that would come to mind wouldn't be Xu Yan's energy and blood value, instead, they would imagine the amusing scene of Xu Yen being beaten by Ji Xian Chen's men and running away in a panic. In short, Ji Xian Chen was now a heroic figure in the entire Lin High Middle School. Xu Yan was just a topic of conversation for people after meals, once outdated, slowly forgotten. Just when everyone's attention was focused on Ji Xian Chen, two small holes cracked open in Xu Yan's demon egg shell. Two horns protruded from the small holes. Xu Yan's demon egg hatching progress reached 25%. Monday night, in Xu Yan's room. After basking in the sun for 10 days in a row with the demon egg, Xu Yan encountered a serious problem. It seemed that the spirit beast inside his demon egg was stuck. I haven't heard of a mythical beast hatching with only two horns. Normally, either it doesn't hatch at all, or the whole creature comes out. What's going on with this halfway hatching? Xu Yan checked the system to avoid any mistakes. Mythical beast egg, type, demon type mythical beast egg, talent level, SSS, species value, 100 points, can continue to increase after evolution, hatching progress, 25%, health, 150 points, spirit, 65 points, external skeleton, 0, internal skeleton, 0, talent skill, demon's touch, newly unlocked, demon's touch, a move that attacks with demon horns. Effect, inflicts a large amount of damage on enemies and causes enemies of lower rank to enter a state of fear for 30 seconds. Demon's touch? The skill is unlocked. Does that mean the demon egg now has combat power? And it makes enemies of the same rank completely fearful, so am I invincible at the same rank? Xu Yan looked at the two red demon horns protruding from the eggshell, identical to those in comics, lost in thought. He could feel the connection between himself and the demon egg, and with a command, he could make the mythical beast in the egg release its skill. If he wanted to truly experience the power of demon's touch, he had to find someone to test it on. But who should he find? Xu Yan was a bit puzzled, then suddenly the doorbell rang. Tang Ro came out of the kitchen and was startled when she opened the door. You. Oh, hello, Ms. Tang. We are from the Lin Hai Security Bureau, and this is our director, Lu Tianfeng. We came to see Xu Yan for something. Is he home now? Tang Ro didn't know the purpose of the Security Bureau's visit, but after a bad experience last time at the Bureau, she became wary of them. She was about to say that Xu Yan wasn't home when she heard a middle-aged man surrounded by several officers walk out. Ms. Tang, we mean no harm. We hope you can let Mr. Jiang come out to see us. And Tang, if Director Lu really wanted to arrest me, he wouldn't be so polite. Maybe it's because of the criminal I caught last time, and Director Lu thinks I did a great job, so he came to give me a commendation. Let them all in. Xu Yan, who heard the commotion in the room, walked out to welcome Lu Tianfeng into the living room. Tang Ro wanted to say something, but seeing Xu Yan's indifferent expression, she swallowed her words and turned back to the kitchen to make tea. Director Lu, you wouldn't come here for no reason. Xu Yan smiled, seeing Lu Tianfeng's awkward expression, he knew the other party must have come with a purpose. He he, I can't hide anything from Mr. Jiang. Actually, I came here to ask for Mr. Jiang's help. 
Lu Tianfeng looked a bit embarrassed. Director Lu, just say what you have to say. I don't know if Mr. Zhang has heard of a person named Zhang Weiman? Lu Tianfeng's tone was cautious, with a hint of probing. I have some impression, I think there was a person named Zhang Weiman when I was dining at the Yi family before. Yes, that's him. I'm here for this matter. Lu Tianfeng's face was excited. What happened to him? Xu Yan had no impression of this Zhang person and couldn't understand how he was related to him. Director Zhang is fine, I wonder if Mr. Zhang has any doubts about the recent anomalies in Linhai City? Director Lu, you're changing the topic too quickly. Don't beat around the bush with me, just say it clearly. Xu Yan was too lazy to guess, if Lu Tianfeng had something to say, he should say it, or Xu Yan would just show him out. Sensing Xu Yan's impatience, Lu Tianfeng straightened up and explained the situation about Zhang Weiman and the underground anomalies in Linhai City to Xu Yan. Here's the situation. Lu Tianfeng explained a lot to Xu Yan, finally clarifying the situation. Did you say Director Zhang hopes I can join the operation to explore the underground mythical beasts? Yes, that's right. Director Zhang sees that Mr. Zhang has great abilities, so he invited Mr. Zhang to join. Not only Mr. Zhang, but also Yi Chang from the Yi group and Miss Song Yunqi from the Song family will participate in this operation. Lu Tianfeng did not hide anything from Xu Yan and told her everything he knew. But I have to participate in the mythical beast exam, Xu Yan shrugged. Lu Tianfeng's proposal sounded exhausting, and it also involved going underground, so Xu Yan decided to come up with an excuse to get out of it. Well, no rush. The operation will take place before the exam, and as long as Mr. Zhang participates, there will be extra credit for the exam. If you perform well, you might even be recommended to the top 10 mythical beast universities. Of course, besides that, Xu Yan will also have the opportunity to encounter the mythical beast she likes during the operation, after all, the special affairs department has discovered that there may be an alternate dimensional space underground. The probability of encountering mythical beasts in this alternate dimension is almost 100%. Isn't Mr. Zhang moved by this? Lu Tianfeng obviously knew a lot, and what he said indeed stirred Xu Yan's interest. Will there be danger? With Mr. Yi and Miss Song, two third-level mythical beast masters, there won't be any life-threatening danger. Well, if that's the case, then it's not impossible. After all, as Mr. Lu Sun said, a qualified mythical beast master is one who desires to acquire more mythical beasts. Then count me in, but before that, Director Lu, I hope you can accompany me to do something. Xu Yan was indeed curious about the so-called underground, but what made her decide to agree was the palpitation she felt from the demon egg. It seemed like the demon egg also wanted her to go. What is it? As long as it doesn't violate the law, morals, or my personal wishes, Mr. Zhang can give the order. Xu Yan. It's not that serious, just be my sparring partner for a while. Xu Yan chuckled. Lu Tianfeng, sparring partner? Night. In an inconspicuous open space at Hanga Plaza, Lu Tianfeng stood facing Xu Yan, with a distance of about 10 meters between them. Standing opposite Xu Yan, Lu Tianfeng lit a cigarette in a very chic manner, then blew a smoke ring and said to Xu Yan, Mr. Zhang, I heard from Mr. Yi and Director Zhang that you have unique insights into mythical beast cultivation. In that aspect, I can't compare to you. But when it comes to mythical beast battles, how could a first-level mythical beast master like me, the dignified bureau chief, possibly lose to a high school student like you? Come out, black bear spirit. Lu Tianfeng's black bear spirit sounded impressive, but in reality, it was a mythical beast about the size of a puppy. Seeing the fluffy appearance of the black bear spirit, Xu Yan couldn't help but chuckle, thinking that Lu Tianfeng's black bear spirit might have the potential to steal monk robes when it grows up. Mr. John, don't laugh. The black bear spirit is the strongest mythical beast in my possession. Its real name is Black Wind Dog Bear, a wind attribute mythical beast. After I became a first level mythical beast master, I had the opportunity to enter a dimensional space, by chance, I encountered the black bear spirit. Our minds are in sync, and the power we can unleash far exceeds that of an ordinary first level mythical beast master. Lu Tianfeng was very confident. Xu Yan could see the stats of the black bear spirit and knew that Lu Tianfeng was not lying. However, Xu Yan's goal this time was not to defeat Lu Tianfeng but to test the power of the demon's touch. Then let's give it a try. Xu Yan threw out the mythical beast ball, and a mythical beast egg with two antennae appeared in front of the black bear spirit. Huh, Mr. Zhang, is this a mythical beast egg or a mythical beast? Lu Tianfeng originally thought Xu Yan had brought a ready-made mythical beast from somewhere to challenge him. But who would have thought that what Xu Yan threw out was such a strange thing? Lu Tianfeng felt greatly insulted. He felt that Xu Yan was insulting him, 
But Xu Yan was completely unaware that he had just released his demon egg. After releasing the demon egg, Xu Yan gave an order to the demon egg, Demon's Touch. As soon as Xu Yan spoke, a red halo emanated from the demon egg, purifying the surroundings. The vast square of the Black Knight appeared somewhat gloomy under the glow of the streetlights. After the red halo purified the surroundings, the gloomy atmosphere took on a heavy black color. Lu Tianfeng seemed to see a pair of crimson eyes opening in midair, staring fixedly at him. Black Bear Spirit. In an instant, Lu Tianfeng felt a chill down his spine. He sensed an unnamed danger, which made his heart race and involuntarily made him call out the name of his beast. The black bear spirit did not respond, and when Lu Tianfeng looked closely, he found that his black bear spirit was already trembling on the ground, completely losing its mobility. That's enough. A loud shout came from Xu Yan's mouth, and the red halo disappeared under Xu Yan's reprimand. Everything seemed as if nothing had happened. Xu Yan stood in place as before, while Lu Tianfeng, who had just been proud, was now sweating profusely on the ground, gasping for air. Mr. John, this. Lu Tianfeng hesitated to speak. The experiment is over, let's go home. I didn't expect Mr. John, besides being very knowledgeable in beast cultivation, to have such strong personal strength. I'm afraid that now, Mr. John, you could easily obtain a first-tier beast tamer certificate. Back in the living room of room 601, Lu Tianfeng's hand holding the tea was still trembling. His tone was still filled with lingering fear, clearly frightened by Xu Yen. Xu Yen naturally did not explain anything to Lu Tianfeng, and the two chatted for a while. Lu Tianfeng brought up the recent uproar about the challenge event. Mr. Zhang, isn't your school supposed to challenge the Spirit Academy tomorrow? I was going to remind you to beware of the president of the Spirit Academy Student Council, Li Yi, but it seems unnecessary now. Lu Tianfeng had originally planned to tell Xu Yen about the Spirit Academy after discussing the underground matters, as he knew Xu Yen was studying at Linhai High School. In Lu Tianfeng's eyes, Xu Yen was a distinguished student representative of Linhai High School and would definitely participate in the challenge event. Student Council President? Yes, Student Council President Li Yi. He is the strongest student at the Spirit Academy, even surpassing that Miss Yi from the Yi family. He had the opportunity to be directly admitted to the top 10 beast universities last year, but he has high aspirations and insisted on challenging the two beast universities in Kyoto, so he repeated a year. This kind of thing is not uncommon. Some top students who fail to achieve their desired results will choose to repeat a year in order to break through themselves in the next year. After speaking, Lu Tianfeng took out his phone and detailed Li Yi's information in front of Xu Yen. You know so much about Li Yi's information? People who don't know might think you're the director of the Education Bureau. Xu Yen teased. At this point, a hint of annoyance appeared on Lu Tianfeng's face, Hey, it's not that I want to know, the Public Security Bureau is responsible for managing household registration. People like Li Yi and Ji Shenchen, who are outsiders, are under the jurisdiction of the Public Security Bureau. These people are just opportunistic cowards. Unable to enter prestigious beast universities in their own areas, they run to cities with generally lower education standards to occupy spots, while we locals can only watch helplessly. As Lu Tianfeng said, the president of the Spirit Academy Student Council, Li Yi, was also an outsider. Lu Tianfeng's anger was justified, after all, Linhai City has limited educational resources, under the national policy of vigorously supporting the education industry, the more high-quality students emerge in various cities, the more resources the city authorities will receive. And the presence of Ji Xianchen and Li Yi is undermining the rules. This situation is like them paying taxes to the government of City A, but when they apply for a tax refund, City B has to give them the money back. Will City B be willing to do so? So that's how it is, but you might have the wrong person. It's not me who challenged our school, it's Ji Xianchen. I will go to the Spirit Academy tomorrow to take a look, but I won't intervene. Xu Yan didn't want to help Ji Xianchen clean up the mess, he didn't have a habit of wiping others' butts. Ji Xianchen? He's no good, just a silver gun wax head. Although he hatched the ironclad Tyrannosaurus, he is no match for Miss Yi, let alone Li Yi. Mr. Zhang, are you really not going to intervene? Since you were able to defeat my black bear spirit, Li Yi definitely isn't your match. If you intervene, Linhai High School may create history. Lu Tianfeng's tone was somewhat excited, he seemed to see the birth of a major news event in Linhai City. This has nothing to do with me, I'll just go and watch the fun tomorrow. Xu Yen shrugged. I see, then it seems that Linhai High School is bound to lose. Lu Tianfeng sighed at the words. But he didn't pay too much attention to this matter, just going to watch for the excitement. At around 9 o'clock in the evening, Xu Yen saw off Lu Tianfeng and then went back to his bedroom to review his lessons. He went to bed promptly at 11 o'clock. Tuesday, light rain. 
Xu Yan took a taxi to school this morning. When Xu Yan arrived at Linhai High School, a number of buses were just entering the school gate. Xu Yan couldn't recall any major event happening today. It was only after he entered the classroom and heard his classmates talking that he learned Principal Zhou had arranged for over 10 buses to take all the students participating in the Beast exam to watch Ji Xuanchen's showdown with the Spirit Academy. Principal Zhou is really rich, judging by his serious look, he must treasure that kid Ji Xianchen. On the bus carrying class 10 students, Su Jiwei turned to Xu Yan sitting on the aisle to his left. Normally, Su Jiwei would sit with Xu Yan on such outings, but now with the addition of Chen Sisi, Su Jiwei graciously gave up his seat. Watching the beast battles is quite helpful for the exam students, let's consider it a trip to the Spirit Academy. Su Jiwei, ah, uh, yes, yes, we can write reflections when we get back. Xu Yan shrugged, his words were actually directed at Su Jiwei and Chen Sisi beside him, he himself didn't need this kind of abstract learning. Xu Yan, how's my egg doing? Chen Sisi sat next to Xu Yan, wearing a black and white summer dress. In front of her chest on the dress, two golden threads outlined two golden ears of wheat. Below the ears of wheat was fertile land. Due to the position, Xu Yan could see the scenery below the ears of wheat by just lowering his head. Ahem, I had Tang Yi help you hatch it I mean help you nurture it. I told Tang Yi it was your request, and she even took 10 days off for this, it seems she values you quite a bit. What nonsense are you talking? If you say one more word, I'll punch you. Chen Sisi raised her fist towards Xu Yan's chest. But at that moment, the leading old man Lu stood up from the front and coughed lightly twice. Students, while we're on our way to school, let's use the car's TV to watch Ji Xuanchen's recent exciting battle performances. This is a live recording. Everyone watch carefully and try to learn something. With that, old man Lu inserted a disc into the car's TV. Everyone knew this was a school assignment. With a disc and a car TV conveniently available, the students of class 10 would never believe old man Lu had a sudden idea. As the disc played, Ji Xuanchen's tall figure appeared on the screen. The ironclad Tyrannosaurus beside him immediately caught everyone's attention. When no one had a clear concept of the spirit beast, Ji Xuanchen's large spirit beast naturally made everyone yearn for it. So big. Is the bigger the spirit beast, the stronger it is? Ah, if the ironclad Tyrannosaurus was mine, how great would that be? In the scene, Ji Xianchen faced the top students of Xuanyang Middle School with just a disdainful smile. He gave orders to the ironclad Tyrannosaurus, and the next second, the ironclad Tyrannosaurus spewed out a strong shockwave from its mouth, directly knocking down the spirit beast of the top students of Xuanyang Middle School. Seeing this scene, the people present couldn't help but exclaim, Ji Xuanchen's success was the success of Lin Hai Middle School. The success of Lin Hai Middle School was the success of the students of Lin Hai Middle School. Next were the other two schools, just like the previous battle with Xuanyang Middle School, Ji Xianchen achieved remarkable results. Ji Xianchen is probably going to be written into the history of our Lin Hai Middle School. A student sighed. Xu Yan is still somewhat trash. Look at Ji Xuanchen's ironclad Tyrannosaurus. I can only say there is a big difference between regular class and honors class. This person spoke without fear of Xu Yan hearing. Among these people, it was impossible for anyone not to envy Xu Yan. Everyone was in the regular class, why do you have such high vitality, why are you famous throughout the school, why are you the great hero who captures criminals in the city, watch him build tall buildings, watch him entertain guests, watch his building collapse, this is a good thing. Xu Yan didn't care about such words, he didn't pay attention to many people on the car, naturally he wouldn't care about what they said or did. Reborn, Xu Yan still had this mentality, but Xu Yan could endure, while others couldn't. What did you say, Chao Bin? Say it again. When Chen Sisi heard someone mocking Xu Yan, she immediately felt upset. How dare you call others trash when you have high vitality? Are you relying on defending yourself? Chen Sisi's words were a bit vulgar, and she felt something was wrong after saying them herself. Her face turned pale. Chen Sisi glanced at Xu Yan beside her, found that he had no reaction, and then secretly breathed a sigh of relief. I wasn't like this before. What's wrong with me lately? No, I need to control myself. As soon as Chen Sisi spoke, no one dared to continue talking, but faintly, you could still hear people discussing how Xu Yan was a waste chased away by Ji Xianchen, which made Chen Sisi clench her fists, feeling very uncomfortable. It's okay, let them say what they want, it's just a piece of flesh less. Xu Yan took the opportunity to grab Chen Sisi's hand, and she didn't resist, or perhaps she momentarily forgot to resist. Along the way, Xu Yan truly felt Chen Sisi's soft and delicate little hand, tender, white, elastic with a slightly trembling feeling, holding it was very comfortable. After nearly half an hour, Lin Hai Middle School's bus arrived at the Spirit Academy. The style of the Spirit Academy was very different from Lin Hai Middle School, with a prominent luxury in sight. 
Most of the children of wealthy people in Linhai City or other cities studied here. Frankly speaking, the Spirit Academy gathered the most abundant educational resources in the entire Linhai City. Compared to it, schools like Linhai Middle School, Xuanyang Middle School, Xingda Middle School, etc., all appeared dim and colorless in front of it. If it weren't for the private nature of the Spirit Academy compared to public schools like Linhai Middle School, Linhai Middle School would probably have been renamed as the Spirit Middle School Linhai Branch long ago. As soon as Xu Yan got off the bus, he felt a scorching gaze coming towards him. He looked in that direction and found it was Zhou Ping, that kid. He seemed dissatisfied with the fact that Xu Yan had surpassed him in vitality before. However, Xu Yan ignored him, looking at the Spirit Academy in front of him, a question arose in his mind, with Ji Xuanchen's level, he actually wants to challenge the Spirit Academy, this guy must have a trick up his sleeve. Xu Yan could tell the strength of the Spirit Beast at a glance, and Ji Xuanchen's level was indeed like that. So the reason he can stand so confidently in front of the Yuling Academy gate is only one, Ji Xuanchen has a deal with the Yuling Academy. As Xu Yan was thinking this, his phone rang in his pocket. Opening it, he found that it was a call from Yi Euro. Who is it? Chen Cici glanced over and happened to see the five words Xu Yan had saved for Yi Euro, Miss Ye's family. My friend, I'll take this call, you guys go with the teacher first. You better catch up quickly. If you get lost and can't find anyone, I won't come looking for you. Chen Cici threatened Xu Yan a little and then left straight away without asking about the call. Xu Yan answered the phone, and Yi Euro's voice came through the receiver, Hello, is this Mr. Jian? Yi Euro's voice was very familiar to Xu Yan so he naturally recognized it as Yi Euro's voice on the other end of the line. Miss Yi, what's the matter? Mr. Jiang, time is running out, so I'll get straight to the point. Yi Euro's tone was very serious, as if she was about to say something extraordinary. I was wondering why Ji Xianchen was so confident to challenge our Yuling Academy. After hearing the message from the student union President Li Yi today, I finally understood. Ji Xianchen and Li Yi have a close relationship, and Ji Xianchen has been acting as the heir to his elder brother in the family, so they teamed up for this show. How do you know this? Although Xu Yan had only met Yi Euro twice, he didn't think she would be interested in him, so he was skeptical of what Yi Euro was saying. Li Yi told me himself. He didn't come to school today and deliberately found an excuse to stay at home, wanting me to go easy on Ji Xianchen. After all, apart from Li Yi, I am considered the most powerful student at the Yuling Academy. Yi Euro wouldn't dare say this when her Articuno was in trouble, but now her Articuno had recovered and was even stronger than when it first hatched, giving her the confidence to say this. This confidence was given to her by Xu Yan, and Yi Euro was very grateful for it. So you're supposed to go easy on him? Xu Yan frowned. He had come today to see Ji Xianchen embarrassed, if he didn't see that, he would inevitably feel regretful. How is that possible? What does Li Yi take me for? He was bossing me around when he talked to me. If he were an outsider, I wouldn't even bother with him, if it weren't for my dad being called up these days. Forget it, I won't mention that. Anyway, Mr. Jiang, rest assured, I will definitely make Ji Xianchen lose face, not only to vent your anger but also for our Yuling Academy. Yi Euro's tone was resolute, and after chatting with Xu Yin for a while, she hung up the phone. The matter of Yi Chang being called up should be related to the underground operation, right? It seems that this operation is quite dangerous, otherwise, Yi Chang, the pillar of the Yi family, wouldn't have been bullied as soon as he left. But since I promised Lu Tianfeng, there's no room for turning back, we'll take it step by step. For now, let's watch the upcoming battle of the spirit beasts, and then focus on hatching the spirit beasts to enhance our self-defense capabilities. Although he had already guessed that the underground operation would be risky, Xu Yan did not back down. One reason was his personality, the other was his strong interest in the mystery of the underground, and the third reason was that if the matter of the underground operation couldn't be resolved, he might have to move his whole family, this was a step Xu Yan was unwilling to take. Thinking of this, Xu Yan steadied himself and prepared to catch up with the 10th grade team, but as he turned around, he noticed two suspicious figures not far away whispering to each other. One of them he was very familiar with, Ji Xianchen from the same school as himself. The other person was dressed casually, with his arm around Ji Xuanchen's shoulder, clearly one of Ji Xuanchen's cronies. The students from Linhai High School wear uniform school uniforms here, and this guy is obviously not from our school. And judging by his familiar appearance with Ji Xianchen, could he be Li Yi, whom Yi Euro mentioned as being sick at home? Are these two guys teaming up to cause trouble? Xu Yan shook her head at the thought. Whoever he is, he is definitely not her opponent anyway. Underscore 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 today's rain is very heavy. 
At 12 noon, the dripping rainwater flooded the large football field of the Yuling Academy. Although it is a prestigious school, the drainage system of the Yuling Academy's football field does not seem to be very good. In a short period of time, the accumulated water has covered the green lawn, and if someone tries to step on it, they will find that the water is already above their ankles. Despite the ongoing rain, all the students present were standing under makeshift shelters to avoid getting wet. It's not that they are wealthy, quite the opposite, as participants in the Yuling Beast exam, they have stronger physical fitness than ordinary people, you did this just in case. The value of qi and blood fluctuates based on a person's physical condition. A student with an original 100 qi and blood value may have only 95 points or even less after catching a cold from getting soaked in the rain. This kind of loss is unbearable for both the students and the school. Damn, bringing us here in this lousy weather, it's ridiculous, Su Jiwei said unhappily next to Xu Yen, he was not originally a reserve team member, let alone a cheerleader, and being brought here under the guise of studying, he naturally was unwilling. This unwillingness is similar to when the school asks a top student to give a speech, forcing everyone to attend. Learning nothing, wasting everyone's time just to watch the top student show off. Of course, Su Jiwei would only complain when Xu Yen was around, at other times and places, he would never say such things. The competition between Ji Xianchen and the Yuling Academy has not yet begun, and the old man who was missing from the Class 10 team just returned, appearing in front of everyone. Where's Xu Yen? Come with me. Aren't you a reserve team member? You haven't been here before, and now you've probably been caught. Su Jiwei patted Xu Yin on the shoulder, looking like he was wishing him good luck. Xu Yin ignored him and, after falling into line, followed the old man to the team from Linhai High School. Here, Xu Yin saw many familiar faces. Ji Xianchen, Zhou Hao, Wang Jing, Long Kuan, and of course, Zhou Ping. Hey, isn't this the top Qi and blood student from our school? Why did he come to our small team? Long Kuan showed hostility towards Xu Yen, something Xu Yen had sensed before. He ignored Long Kuan and greeted Zhou Hao instead. Although Zhou Hao responded, Zhang Fan could feel his embarrassment, as if he didn't want to get too involved with him. Seeing this, Xu Yen's eyes rolled a few times. It seemed like he had figured something out, so he smiled and didn't continue talking. Aren't you close with Senior Song? Remember Zhou Hao and a few of us? Long Kuan sneered. Xu Yen looked at Long Kuan. Sorry, what's your name again? You. Xu Yen, come here, I have something to tell you. Seeing Xu Yen about to confront Long Kuan, the old man directly called Xu Yen over. Seeing this, Long Kuan, with an angry face, had to temporarily give up. Old Ban, what's the matter? This time, competing against the Yuling Academy, you reserve team members also need to play, be mentally prepared. We also have to play, why? And I haven't hatched my beast yet, I can't take on this responsibility. The old man Lu in the school should know that the beast in his beast egg has not hatched yet. If a student like Yi who hasn't hatched their beast can still participate, how will the competition proceed? Xu Yen even imagined two students each throwing out a spirit beast egg, facing each other with wide eyes. Just thinking about it made her feel amused. The leaders of the Spirit Academy have discussed with Principal Zhou, if only the students who have hatched spirit beasts participate in the competition, it cannot fully demonstrate a school's comprehensive strength. So, in addition to Ji Xian Shen, those of you who have not hatched spirit beasts must also compete, the competition will be about the resonance of qi and blood, which happens to be part of the five schools joint examination. The qi and blood resonance competition and the spirit beast battle competition will be held together, and the two projects will be compared. As the challenging party from Lin Hai Middle School, we must win in both projects, at the very least, we must achieve one win and one draw to consider the challenge successful. Qi and blood resonance, in simple terms, is a comparison of qi and blood, and the school and I have confidence in you in this aspect. Moreover, Zhou Ping and Zhou Hao from our Lin Hai Middle School have participated in the seed plan systematic training, which greatly improved their qi and blood. Not to mention winning, achieving a draw will be easy. You don't need to feel any pressure. Old Man Lu told Xu Yan everything. So, I just need to perform normally, after all, it still depends on Ji Xian Shen. There's no need to tell me this separately, right? The others have already learned from Principal Zhou. Principal Zhou was worried that you might get emotional, so he asked me to come and talk to you. Old man Lu looked a bit embarrassed, but he did not hide anything from Xu Yen. It was Principal Zhou, I haven't received the compensation he promised before, so this matter is quite difficult to handle. Xu Yen raised an eyebrow. Principal Zhou said that as long as you perform normally, he will compensate you three times as promised before. Old man Lu held out three fingers in front of Xu Yen. Deal, but I can only guarantee a draw. Xu Yen grinned, taking advantage of the situation, as Ji Xin Shen wouldn't be able to pass Yi Euro's test anyway. A draw is fine, a draw is fine. I'll go back and inform Principal Zhou now. Old man Lu left, 
Xu Yan stood in a corner of the shed, far away from Ji Xian Chen and the others, closed her eyes to rest, waiting quietly for the competition to begin. On the other side, at the podium of the Spirit Academy, the leaders and teachers of the two schools sat on either side, and Ji Xian Chen was called over at some point. Principal Zhou Yofu patted Ji Xian Chen's shoulder, his eyes filled with admiration that was hard to conceal. Ji Xian Chen, we have all seen your hard work these past few days. Today is the final competition, don't feel pressured. Lin Hai Middle School and all of us present here are your strongest support. If you win against the Spirit Academy, you will be the hero of our Lin Hai Middle School. Thank you, Principal. I don't think I will lose, and I can't lose. Ji Xian Chen was full of confidence. As far as I know, there are currently three students from the Spirit Academy who have hatched spirit beasts. One is the student council president Li Yi. He didn't come to school today, probably because of his status as a repeating student, the Spirit Academy didn't let him participate. The second one is the student council vice president Chui Ying Jun. His spirit beast, the Blaze Monkey, has been spitting fire these days, probably due to illness. It doesn't have much combat power. You don't need to worry about the first two. But you have to be cautious of Yi Euro from the Yi family. Teacher Wang analyzed tactics for Ji Xian Chen on the side, but Ji Xian Chen didn't pay attention at all. Yi Euro? Heh, she has already been bought by Li Gu, she won't use her full strength during the competition, so how could he possibly lose in this situation? By the way, Teacher Wang, didn't you say there would be another Qi and Blood Resonance competition besides my match? There will be five people selected for the Qi and Blood Resonance competition, and if the Qi and Blood Resonance value of the five people exceeds the opponents, there shouldn't be a problem. Oh, I see. Alright then. Should we start with the Qi and Blood Resonance competition or the Spirit Beast Battle competition? We'll start with the Qi and Blood Resonance competition before moving on to the Spirit Beast Battle competition, Teacher Wang said, looking at the form in his hand. Is that so? Well, it's fine. Anyway, no matter what, in the end, I will have to clean up the mess. Ji Xianchen flicked away the non-existent water droplets on his body and smiled lightly. The competition arrangements were made very quickly. On the vast football field, ten tents were already divided into two sides, one side for the Linhai High School's field, and the other side for the Royal Spirit Academy's field. The resonance of qi and blood required the participants to stand with their spirit beast eggs on a device similar to a large electronic scale. This device could collect the participants' qi and blood data in real time collecting data before and after the resonance of qi and blood. The result was based on the post-resonance detection values, the pre-resonance values were just for reference. Linhai High School had participants like Xu Yan, Zhou Ping, Zhou Hao, and three others. As for the Royal Spirit Academy, they sent their top students. Xu Yan felt that the opponent's qi and blood values were not low, showing a posture of evenly matched strength. Hello, everyone, I am the referee for this competition, you can call me Sir Chen. Without further ado, let me introduce the rules of this Qi and Blood Resonance competition. Each of you has a Qi and Blood Detection tablet under your feet. Before starting the test, you need to jump as hard as you can on the detection tablet, which will then show your current Qi and Blood values. After the test, you can release your Spirit Beast Egg and try to resonate with it for 10 minutes. You can end the resonance early to test the post-resonance Qi and Blood values. If you do not perform a second Qi and Blood test after the resonance ends, the initial test value will be used as the result. After repeating the rules three times, the referee named Chen finally said, Next, you have three minutes to prepare, adjust your state well, and don't feel any psychological pressure. During the break, Xu Yan did nothing, simply closing his eyes to rest. However, his appearance made some people unhappy. As soon as footsteps approached Xu Yan, he opened his eyes and saw that it was Zhou Ping. Long time no see, Xu Yan. Have you made any progress in your qi and blood compared to before? After joining the seed plan, my qi and blood has reached a major milestone of 114 points. You're not still stuck in the same place, are you? Zhou Ping's words were sarcastic, as he had been focusing on breaking through his qi and blood values these days, not being well informed. The only piece of information he knew was that people in the school were spreading rumors that Xu Yan was the genius with the highest qi and blood values at Lin Hai High School. And this rumor was not reliable, heard from a school leader who accidentally let it slip to his nephew while drunk and then it started spreading in the school. Zhou Ping just treated this rumor as a joke. If Xu Yan could become the top student in the whole school with 113 points of qi and blood, where would Ji Xianchen be placed? Where would he be placed? Xu Yan glanced at Zhou Ping and noticed that his qi and blood values were somewhat unstable, probably due to excessive drug use. Qi and blood potions, qi and blood pills, and similar items were considered health products for humans and spirit beasts. Overconsumption of these items could be harmful to the body, let alone health products. 
Xu Yin thought that Zhou Ping's qi and blood values would not improve for a long time from now on. Thinking this, Xu Yin ignored Zhou Ping and closed his eyes to rest. His appearance made Zhou Ping feel irritated. Xu Yan, I will show you later that my strength cannot be surpassed by your occasional stroke of luck. Three minutes passed quickly, and at this moment, both Lin Hai High School and the Royal Spirit Academy, with a total of ten people on each side, were ready. With the sound of a whistle from the referee Chen, the people at the front of both sides jumped simultaneously. The person from Lin Hai High School who jumped was Zhou Hao, his originally handsome face now turning red due to exertion. The person facing Zhou Hao was a chubby individual. This chubby person had thick limbs, resembling a short winter melon, with a considerable weight, giving off a terrifying sense of power. With a jump, the entire blood and energy detection tablet couldn't help but shake twice, making many onlookers startled. Zhou Hao, blood and energy value 112 points. Wang Bin, blood and energy value 113 points. The difference between the two is one point. Zhou Hao, who was originally full of confidence, couldn't help but look surprised at the fat man opposite when he heard this result. As the saying goes, appearances can be deceiving, and Zhou Hao did not expect the other party to have such strong power. He he, I concede. Fat man Wang Bin scratched his head. The difference in this result was not significant for both parties, so it did not cause much of a stir. Zhou Hao then went to Zhou Ping. His eyes were sharp as he looked disdainfully at the girl from the spiritual academy opposite him. Humph, let me show you the strength of my blood and energy value. Zhou Ping exerted all his strength, and the large number 114 appeared on the blood and energy detection tablet. As soon as his blood and energy value appeared, many people were shocked. Especially the students from Lin Hai High School, who always used Xu Yan's 113 blood and energy points as a measure of strength. If Zhou Hao's 112 blood and energy value was in the category that still needed effort, then Zhou Ping's 114 blood and energy value had already reached a transcendent realm. In just a short time, Zhou Ping's progress was so rapid that it was truly astonishing. It seems that the girl opposite Zhou Ping is no match for him. Just by looking at her gentle appearance, you can tell that her blood and energy value is not high. The strength of blood and energy is to some extent reflected in a person's body. Being fat, tall, strong, and having great strength are standards that many people use to measure a person's blood and energy. Conversely, being thin, short, and gentle can to some extent reflect a person's weak blood and energy. Many people did not have high expectations for the girl wearing glasses opposite Zhou Ping, who was silent and looking down, and some even wondered why the spiritual academy would let such a student participate. However, the next moment, everyone was dumbfounded. The girl lightly jumped, and her blood and energy value unexpectedly reached 119 points, 5 points higher than Zhou Ping. Zhou Ping, blood and energy value 115 points. Yi Fong Fong, blood and energy value 119 points. How is this possible? Zhou Ping, seeing this situation, was dumbfounded. He had just boasted confidently, only to be immediately proven wrong. This was not how things were supposed to go. Laughter suddenly came from somewhere, and Zhou Ping turned his head to see Xu Yan beside him, pointing directly at Xu Yan with his finger and saying, What are you laughing at? Do you think your blood and energy value is high? Are you upset? Did your one eye see me laughing? Seeing Zhou Ping's embarrassed and angry look, Xu Yan sneered and even raised a middle finger, making Zhou Ping even more agitated. All right, all right, I want to see how high your blood and energy value really is. If it's not over 119 points, you have no right to make fun of me. You're not worthy. Zhou Ping's lips trembled with anger, and his body shook. Oh, Xu Yan casually responded and then lightly kicked the blood and energy detection tablet below with her foot. The number 120 appeared in front of everyone. Zhou Ping, who was waiting to see Xu Yan embarrassed, suddenly widened his eyes in disbelief. How, how, how is this possible? Xu Yan must have held back her strength, right? On the platform, despite the thin layer of mist, Zhou Yofu could clearly see Xu Yan's blood and energy value. Last time, Lu Tianfeng showed him Xu Yan's blood and energy detection value, which reached 128 points. Now it was only 120 points, so it couldn't be that she was going easy on him. It might be because her condition has deteriorated. And I heard that when Xu Yan was testing her blood and energy value at the security bureau, she got into a fight with someone, her whole body's strength exploded, and her emotions were very excited, so the test value might be somewhat inflated. Director Wang commented upon seeing this scene. It's not impossible. Anyway, 120 blood and energy points are quite a lot, so let's assume she gave it her all. In the end, the result will depend on Ji Xuanchen's side. Zhou Yofu shook his head and smiled. Xu Yan, blood and energy value 120 points. Su Fong, blood and energy value 114 points. 
the results of the first test are all out. It is worth mentioning that, except for Xu Yan, whose blood and energy value is higher than Su Feng from the Spirit Academy, the blood and energy values of the other four people from Linhai High School are lower than those of the Spirit Academy. This is not a good sign. Don't be discouraged, the blood and energy values of the first test don't mean much. Didn't teacher Fong and director Wang teach us the method of blood and energy resonance? After resonance, our blood and energy values will not be weaker than theirs. Zhou Hao's attitude is very optimistic, even encouraging everyone. As a public high school in the city, Linhai High School has national resources tilted towards us, we won't be weaker than the Spirit Academy, let's all work hard together. Yes, and we also received sponsorship from Master Jack Ma before and then we met a good teacher like Teacher Fong, we won't lose. Spirit Academy, if you want to fight, then let's fight. Xu Yen. Xu Yen is already past the age of being overly dramatic, so after hearing the passionate speeches of these guys, he doesn't feel his blood boiling. On the contrary, he even feels a bit embarrassed. Preliminary blood tests cannot determine victory or defeat, only the values after blood and energy resonance can be the measure of performance. The preliminary blood tests have ended. Spirit Academy's initial average blood and energy value is 115 points. Linhai High School's initial average blood and energy value is 113 points. Students, you can now take out your spirit beast eggs. After referee Chen finished speaking, the 10 participants released their spirit beast eggs from the spirit beast balls one after another. The surface of Zhou Ping's crimson flame dragon lizard egg was covered with cracks, indicating faint signs of hatching. Zhou Hao's palm-sized red presale egg was the same. Xu Yan, when I went to pick up Senior Song with you before, Senior Song said that you are the most likely among us to hatch a spirit beast before the spirit beast exam. Now my flame puppet is about to hatch. What about your spirit beast egg? Zhou Hao still remembers the conversation with Song Yunqi before, although he didn't argue as forcefully as Long Kuan did, he was still secretly resentful. It is said that these days Xu Yan still takes his spirit beast egg to the school playground to sunbathe every day. With such a foolish method, how could he possibly hatch a spirit beast before him? He wanted to see how Xu Yan's spirit beast egg would hatch, whether there were more cracks on the shell than his own. My spirit beast egg is just ordinary, nothing special. Xu Yan shrugged and released his demon egg. Among the 10 people present, if we were to say whose spirit beast egg was the largest, Zhou Ping and Xu Yan's were probably neck and neck, as soon as they released their spirit beast eggs, they attracted the attention of many students. Especially Xu Yan's spirit beast egg, with two red horns protruding from the shell which made all the students and even the leaders on the platform feel surprised. Has Xu Yan's spirit beast egg hatched? Zhou Yofu asked in confusion, even though he was well informed, he was still stunned when he saw Xu Yan's spirit beast egg. No, the spirit beast is still inside the shell. I've never seen a spirit beast that hatches halfway and doesn't come out, his situation is rare, probably a new species of spirit beast. Director Wang also scratched his head in puzzlement, I'll go ask the competition committee how to handle this situation. Director Wang left and returned shortly after. How is it? Handle it as if the spirit beast hasn't hatched, proceed with the normal competition. Director Wang shrugged, he had guessed this result before he left. That's good, don't you think Xu Yan's high blood and energy value might be due to this unique spirit beast? Zhou Yofu rubbed his chin, trying to analyze the reason for Xu Yan's sudden rise. Maybe there are some reasons, but now is not the time to think about that. Let's focus on the student's performance and the resonance of qi and blood. While Zhou Yofu and Director Wang were puzzled by Xu Yan's peculiar beast egg, others felt the same way. On the side of Class 10 of Linhai Middle School, Su Jiwei was amazed to see Xu Yan's beast egg, almost dropping his jaw. Wow, Xu Yan's beast egg didn't look like this yesterday. What method did he use to achieve this unique effect? Su Jiwei, who had spent a long time with Xu Yan, naturally knew what Xu Yan's beast egg originally looked like. Besides Su Jiwei, Chen Cici was a bit stunned after seeing Xu Yan's beast egg. Originally, she was somewhat worried about handing the ice flower lynx cat egg to Xu Yan, but now, seeing Xu Yan's strange beast egg, Chen Cici finally felt relieved. Not only that, she was now even looking forward to the scene of the ice flower lynx cat egg hatching. Xu Yan, your beast egg looks extraordinary when it's active. Zhou Hao, after seeing Xu Yan's beast egg, inexplicably felt a slight sense of fear. Huh, all show. Look, there are no cracks on the eggshell. Even if a beast hatches, it will be self-defeating. Zhou Ping said coldly, feeling that Xu Yan was just showing off with this kind of beast egg. After all, Xu Yan's family was ordinary, and to get good resources, he had to attract the attention of big shots. Xu Yan, I won't let you stand out in this competition. You will always be just a waste under my feet. After everyone was ready, the competition officially began. The time for qi and blood resonance was 10 minutes. 
After 10 minutes, there would be another qi and blood test, and the average of 5 people's values would be used to determine the winning result. Of course, if the participants were confident in themselves, they didn't necessarily have to wait for the full 10 minutes. If they felt the resonance was close enough, they could proceed directly to the second qi and blood test. As the competition began, everyone placed their hands on the beast egg, some even cradling and caressing it, while others knelt down and cut out in front of the egg, which was extremely absurd. Compared to others, Xu Yan appeared much more normal. He recalled the scene of the battle with Zhou Liang hiding in his bedroom that night. At that time, he was hiding outside the door, concentrating with his eyes closed, feeling a subtle connection with the demon egg. Then his qi and blood surged, overpowering Zhou Liang, a first-order beast tamer, and successfully dealing with him. Thinking of this, Xu Yan closed his eyes again, he focused his whole being on the beast egg in front of him, unconsciously, his two palms even gripped the two red demon horns protruding from the demon egg. A feeling of mounting a donkey to look for a horse made Xu Yan inexplicably want to straddle the demon egg. Just as this thought crossed his mind, his body shuddered as if struck by electricity. This electric shock sensation, like static electricity, wouldn't cause much harm, but it instantly invigorated the spirit. Xu Yan suddenly opened his eyes, his powerful mental strength making him aware that countless pairs of eyes were watching him. Xu Yan turned to look at Zhou Hao, then at Zhou Ping and several other classmates, and finally his gaze shifted to the students from the Royal Spirit Academy across from him. Everyone was watching him. What are you all looking at me for? Xu Yan looked puzzled, and at that moment, the voice of referee Chen sounded in his ear, Xu Yan, there is one minute left for the qi and blood resonance. Everyone except you has completed the resonance and tested their qi and blood values. Please make good use of the time. Ha! Huh? Xu Yan was puzzled at the words, squinting for a moment. Ten minutes had almost passed? He looked up at the hourglass not far away, then at the scoreboard next to it, and the numbers on it were unexpected. The average qi and blood value of the Royal Spirit Academy is 127 points. The Linhai Mental School has an average qi and blood value of 123 points. The numbers clearly reflect the situation between the two sides. After the five people from the Royal Spirit Academy experienced qi and blood resonance, the average qi and blood value jumped from the previous 115 points to 127 points. In other words, the average increase in qi and blood value for the five people from the Royal Spirit Academy has exceeded 10 points. On the other hand, the Linhai Middle School, from the initial average qi and blood value of 113 points, only saw a slight increase of around 10 points after the qi and blood resonance. This comparison of average values does not even include Xu Yen, but it already explains a lot. Although 127 points may not seem much different from Jishuan's point, it is important to note that this is an average value, not just a simple numerical comparison. If the Linhai Middle School wants to match the Royal Spirit Academy, Xu Yen's qi and blood value must reach at least 139 points. All the students from the Linhai Middle School were dumbfounded. This result was completely unexpected for them. What's going on? How come the Royal Spirit Academy's average qi and blood value is so much higher than ours? Zhou Yofu was in a panic, this was something he had never expected. As the principal of the Linhai Middle School, Zhou Yofu had a very detailed understanding of the other four key middle schools in Linhai. Although the students from the Royal Spirit Academy may have no shortage of money to buy various qi and blood supplements, those things have limited effects on improving qi and blood. During the student stage, especially when the spirit beast eggs have not hatched yet, it is generally difficult for the top students from each school to open up a big gap, so it shouldn't be this much of a difference, right? Moreover, the students from the Linhai Middle School also participated in the seed plan, with the guidance of Master Jack Ma, how could they possibly be inferior to the students from the Royal Spirit Academy? Something seems off with these students from the Royal Spirit Academy. Just as Joe Yofu's mind was in chaos, Director Wine's voice came slowly. Look, the five students from the Royal Spirit Academy opposite us have hardly ever appeared in the top ranks of the Spirit Beast exams, but today, they suddenly emerged like bamboo shoots after the rain. After Director Wan's reminder, Zhou Yofu became alert. Are you saying that the Royal Spirit Academy has hired outside help? They resorted to such despicable tactics just to win? No, the names and photos of these students can be found in the data of the Royal Spirit Academy for the past three years. They may have been deliberately hidden by the Royal Spirit Academy. For this matter, hidden for three years? Zhou Yofu's eyes widened. Could it be that the Royal Spirit Academy has a prophet who can foresee events three years in advance? No, maybe they had already planned to challenge all the middle schools in Linhai like us three years ago. Director Wang shook his head with a bitter smile. As the saying goes, you can't walk by the river without getting your shoes wet, and the Linhai Middle School unexpectedly stumbled at the Royal Spirit Academy today. 
Zhou Yofu's face looked very unpleasant, he had hoped that Jixuanshin could defeat Yuru and bring glory to the Lin Hai Middle School, but now it seems that this fantasy is likely to be stillborn. This is a disaster. With such a big commotion, the leaders above probably can't ignore it anymore. Zhou Yofu slumped in his chair, he was full of energy before, but now his face was filled with worry. There is still a chance, as long as Xu Yan's qi and blood value can reach 139 points, we can catch up with the Royal Spirit Academy. Director Wang said so, but his voice became quieter and quieter. He he, do you think it's possible? Yeah, is it possible? Xu Yan's qi and blood test just now was only 120 points. He has not undergone systematic qi and blood resonance training like Zhou Ping and Zhou Hao. Even if he can figure out how to resonate qi and blood, the improvement is unlikely to reach 19 points. The Lin Hai Middle School's attempt to challenge has come to a complete end here. On the other hand, Jixuanshin from the Royal Spirit Academy was dumbfounded after seeing the average value of 127 points. His heart was pounding wildly as he ran to a corner when no one was looking and called the president of the Student Union of the Spirit Academy, Li Yi, Li Gu, what's going on? How come the average qi and blood value of your school is so high? How can I compete next? Ji Xianchen was somewhat at a loss, feeling like Li Yi was setting him up. Oh, I don't know either, you only gave me 10 million, and I managed to persuade Yi Euro, which is already good. I have an idea for you. If your school loses in the qi and blood resonance test, you should insist on competing with Yi Euro. This way, you can highlight your perseverance and make people look up to you. And most importantly, as long as you defeat Yi Euro, you can blame those useless people in your school. This way, you will still be the king without a crown in your school and in the entire Linhai City High School. Even if your elders at home know about this, they will definitely praise you for doing a great job. Originally feeling anxious like an ant on a hot pan, Ji Xianchen felt enlightened after listening to Li Yi's words. Yes, why worry about their problems? Just focus on doing well. Li Ji Yi's profound realm is truly admirable to me. Oh, it's nothing. Just focus on preparing for the upcoming competition. If Yi Euro doesn't want the Yi family's business in Jinling to be completely destroyed, she will definitely go easy. You can rest assured about that. With the tone of a big brother, Li Yi's words finally lifted a heavy burden off Ji Xuanchen's heart. Okay, I'll listen to Li Gu and prepare for the upcoming battle of the spirit beasts. This shouldn't be happening. If Li Yi wanted to help Ji Xuanchen, why would he send five people with such high qi and blood values? Zhou Ping, Zhou Hao, and the others are no match for them at all. Xu Yan was puzzled. But that was all. Since the old man Lu said it should be a draw, then she would give him a draw. In fact, Xu Yan wasn't very concerned about Principal Zhou's compensation. She agreed for two reasons, to give face to the old man Lu and to earn some qi and blood medicine, qi and blood pills, etc. For Chen Cici to use. Of course, Xu Yan wouldn't treat others unfairly, she would also give some to her deskmate Su Ji Wei, but only if Su Ji Wei called her dad. Xu Yan, hurry up and test your qi and blood values. Why are you dragging your feet? Don't delay everyone's time, standing here is really bad luck. Zhou Ping's face was extremely dark, as were Zhou Hao and the others. The outcome was already determined, Lin Hai High School was bound to lose. This was undoubtedly a heavy blow to them, the top students of Lin Hai High School. Xu Yan, please proceed with the second qi and blood value test as soon as possible, otherwise, the value from the first test will be included in the average. Oh. Upon hearing this, Xu Yan lightly lifted her foot and then stomped on the qi and blood testing tablet under her foot. It was just an ordinary stomp, and Xu Yan didn't even resonate her qi and blood. 100, 110, 115, 120 as the numbers on the qi and blood testing tablet under Xu Yan's foot continued to rise, everyone watching couldn't help but gasp. It's still rising, it's still rising, it's still rising. Zhou Yufu was excited, although he felt that Xu Yan couldn't turn the tide, he couldn't help but feel a tightness in his heart. Everyone hoped for a miracle, even though this miracle seemed elusive. Like Zhou Yufu, Ji Xuanchen's originally low spirits were suddenly ignited when he saw Xu Yan's continuously increasing qi and blood values. Although he was prepared for failure, hadn't he also fantasized about truly defeating the Spirit Academy? Being called the king without a crown sounded impressive, but the honor gained was far less than victory. Ji Xuanchen didn't want to be the king without a crown, he wanted to become a true god of victory. 125 130 135 139 when everyone stared wide-eyed and looked at Xuyan's blood and energy test value, Xuyan's blood and energy value finally stopped at 139 points. Not too much, not too little, just right, Xuyan smiled. It's 139 points, it's 139 points of blood and energy value. Unbelievable, Xuyan's blood and energy value has actually reached such a terrifying level. Back then, our pride of Linhai City, classmate Song Yinshi, 
only had 140 points of blood and energy value. Referee Chen was incoherent, clearly shocked. A blood and energy value of 139 points is top-notch in the entire Linhai city, especially considering that Xu Yan achieved this without hatching a beast egg, a feat that astounded everyone. Not just referee Chen, but everyone who witnessed this scene was shocked. Among them, Zhou Ping, Zhou Hao, and others who were close to Xu Yan were particularly amazed. They knew that Xu Yan's family conditions were not good, so when they found out about Xu Yan's high blood and energy value, they did not consider him a rival. Moreover, Xu Yan did not participate in the seed plan, and no one provided him with resources to cultivate a beast, all these factors made people underestimate Xu Yan even more. But who would have thought that such an ordinary student from a regular class, a student with no background, a student who had just been lucky, would shine so brightly in today's blood and energy resonance competition? Zhang, Xu Yan, how did you do it? Zhou Hao asked stutteringly. Previously, due to Ji Xuanchen's threat, Zhou Hao had not planned to have much interaction with Xu Yan. But now, seeing Xu Yan's terrifying performance, a feeling of regret surged in Zhou Hao's heart. Damn, 139 points of blood and energy value, and even more. Isn't this kind of achievement reserved for the top 10 beast universities? I bet even the top beast universities in Kyoto would want him, Xu Yan's future is absolutely limitless. Missing such an opportunity to expand his network, ah. Zhou Hao felt extremely uncomfortable, like him, Zhou Ping's expression was so gloomy that it seemed water could drip from it. He could not accept this result, he had worked hard to cultivate a beast for so long to reach 114 points of blood and energy, thinking he could prove himself by surpassing Xu Yan. But now, he had not even proven himself and was overshadowed by the people from the Spirit Academy. Xu Yan seemed to ignore him completely, as if he had never considered him an opponent. Zhou Ping had never felt so seriously disregarded before. It felt like how the people from Class 10, whom he had once looked down upon, must have felt, leaving a bitter taste in his mouth. Xu Yan, how did you do it? Did you really just sunbathe with a beast egg outside as they said to achieve this blood and energy value? It's true, it's really 139 points of blood and energy value. On the stage, Zhou Yofu didn't even realize his voice was trembling. He had truly been shocked just now. The incident of challenging the school had escalated so much that if they lost, Lin High Middle School would become a laughingstock in the education industry. And this situation was partly created by himself as the principal, a fact that Zhou Yofu could not accept. Good, 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 I knew this kid wouldn't let me down. Zhou Yofu repeatedly clapped his hands against the seat next to him, unable to contain his excitement. Director Wang nodded repeatedly while looking at Xu Yan's figure. I noticed a long time ago that Xu Yan was extraordinary, indeed, letting him participate in the blood and energy resonance competition was the right choice. It's a pity he couldn't hatch a beast, otherwise, he could have brought glory to the school like Ji Zuanzen. After calming down from his excitement, Zhou Yofu analyzed Xu Yan's situation. Given your differential treatment of Xu Yan and Jixuanshin before, Xu Yan helping the school is already good enough. What more do you want from him? Director Wang gave Zhou Yofu a blank look. The latter, knowing he was in the wrong, scratched his head and smiled. Next, it's up to Jixuanshin. His ironclad Tyrannosaurus is among the top in the first order beast taming, and he is also from the Jin Ling Ji family. He shouldn't lose to that Yi Euro. After Xu Yan revealed her blood value, on the other side, in front of the camp of the Spirit Academy. Today, Yi Euro was dressed in a black and white school uniform. The distinctive feature of the Spirit Academy uniform is a sense of nobility and customization. Although everyone's uniform is generally the same, the details are different. Yi Euro's uniform collar was carved with a pair of gilded phoenixes, similar to her articuno. A red silk tie was draped over her perky snow peaks, and the form-fitting uniform accentuated her graceful figure. The black pleated skirt barely reached her knees, with two legs clad in whiter than snow stockings tightly supporting the stockings. A small strap with a white bow tied at the junction of the stockings and flesh extended straight up into the void. Yi Euro sat there simply, but her eyes occasionally glanced over here, accompanied by subtle swallowing sounds. However, apart from the current scene, these peeping individuals would never touch her deeper charm in their lifetime. Huh, Mr. Jiang, what do you mean by this? Yi Euro lightly exclaimed, then walked to a corner where no one was looking under the gaze of many eyes. As the beep 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 of the phone rang, Yi Euro answered the call. Hello, Mr. Jiang, didn't you say to let me win against Jixuanshan? Why? Just follow the plan, I'm just making some extra money along the way. Extra money? Mr. Jiang, do you still need to make extra money? As long as you're willing, our Yi family can hire you. The price will ensure your satisfaction, Mr. Jiang. Yi Euro was puzzled. Well, then consider me a player in this game. Hmm, I knew it would be like this, 
The saying hidden in the city refers to talents like you, Mr. Jiang.